So it looks like two or three dropping off real quick uh, for raw material. Uh, we have one still in the Dorito corner. He looks like he might be by himself there. Yeah, violence, I believe they have three bodies alive right now currently. One in that uh, center wedge, one in the Doritos, and one pushing up the snake right now. I think they just took out the last guy. Last guy, yep. So these violence guys will do a, a quick walk down, make sure that everybody's dead here, and go hit that buzzer and try to take that 3-0 lead. So for those of us that are just joining us, anybody that's new, uh, everybody com everybody commentates a little bit different. We're going to name some of these bunkers, and you're going to hear a lot of uh, very, uh, you're going to hear a lot of repetition on the names. Uh, you're going to hear about the home bunker. You're going to hear about, well, Kyle, what do you want to name these things? You want to name it the, we got the Dorito Corner, yeah, the Snake Corner. Yep. We'll take a regular snake uh, beams one through one through three. Um, I think we're gonna call the inside snake the viper. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. So for those that are watching at home, there are two sets of snakes. Um, the inside one, more towards the inside of the field, we're gonna be calling the viper. So if you hear us calling the viper, that's where they're at. If you hear us calling the snake, they're gonna be on this outside, uh, most outside part of the snake here, ready to party. Let's, uh, we'll name these center wedges, center wedges? Center wedges. Sound good to me. Let's and do a uh, Dorito bricks? side, Dor yeah, yeah, Dorito side tower, i say. We'll do the god, will be the W here. So right on the front of your screen here, this W looking bunker, we're gonna call that the god. Um, pretty common for, for whatever reason, for a lot of uh, WCPPL teams to name it that. So if you hear that, that is what you'll know. Uh, on the box now, we have, I think it's, that's going to be Grind City and CEP. Um, looks like CEP on the left. CEP getting aggressive, sending one up to the brick. Looks like five alive off the break for Grind City. Ref going in to check the uh, player in the god for Grind City right now. We'll see if he's clean here in just a second. And it looks like he is, so five alive. Do we know anything about CEP? What does that stand for? Oh, hey, look at that. Both sides losing a body uh, just about at the same time right now. So four alive on either side, I believe. Center player for CEP getting getting hit out of the, out of the center brick. We got a running ref. Nope, no, we do not. So we got a center can, a Dorito side, tower, and I think somebody's over there in the Doritos for CEP. I believe on Grind City side they matched the Dorito player and their other three bodies are staying in the pocket. One at the home, the Dorito tower, and the snake can. And you have a snake, a snake two here. So you can't quite see it on your screen, but there is a snake player. Oh, and now they've matched. So we have dueling snake players here. We got one in the snake too. Oh, and the snake player for Grind City. Go ahead and get shot out. So CEP is going to take a dominant position here in the snake 50. If he looks inside and he's going to get, there it is on his pack. Yep. He's going to get the kill on the Dorito Tower player. Now he's going to shoot the guy coming out of the home into the command center. Yeah, he's going to die as well. I don't think CEP snake player right now. Unfortunately, not on your screen at the moment, but uh, Grind City does have a player that did fill the snake. He knows now. One, and he does know now. So this should be wrapping up pretty quickly. It looks like a 41. Uh, looks like the, the Grind City snake player, the only one left here. Meanwhile, the CEP snake player taking his time, just calling out the, uh, he's not 100% sure if they're all dead. He's looking, he's looking across, he's looking at the home. And they shoot that snake flare. So they have lost the kill count. CEP was uh, just shooting a ref that was laying down on the field. I, I thought that I saw that. I wasn't sure. Yeah. 
So we don't know a ton about CEP. Um, for those that are listening, everybody that has a team was given a little form to fill out so that me and Kyle here could talk about you guys on the stream. And you were going to tell us who's on your line, um, a little backstory about your team, who your sponsors are, you know, little fun facts and whatnot. Basically about 27 of the 130 some odd teams did that. Um, so if we don't have a lot to say about you personally, it's really your fault. <laughs> that it is. I don't really, yeah, not a whole lot to say for you there. So I do have a tiny bit on CEP. When they get back on the field, I will tell you the very small amount that we do know. Violence versus uh, raw material coming up next now. Violence up three to zero with nine minutes left in the game. Who do you think is going to take this one, Andrew? I like a good violence squad. Um, I do remember watching Raw Material at Event 4, and they had a really up and down event. They had uh, a couple really, really good matches and a couple really bad ones. Looks like they are uh, not starting things on the greatest foot. Um, down 3 out of violence, who is a basically a, a mishmash squad of, uh, of guys. Um, did not play last year as a team. However, um, all the individual players did play in one shape or form. Standard breakout looks like for the violence guys, um, five alive, taking both the towers, the home, uh, and both corners. Looks like raw material avoiding a penalty. Uh, a ref, ref ran in to check that Dorito tower guy, called him out, player didn't leave. I think he was confused whether he was clean or hit in uh, his pack. As that was happening, one of the violence uh, Dorito players takes the walk, as well as one of the um, raw material guys just out of the Snake side tower.
CEP throws the towel and concedes that point to Grand City to save a little time on the clock. Yeah, so a concession for those that don't know, if you are playing, if for instance you're Grand City in that, uh, that particular point and you are off to the sideline and you're watching your team just get spattered a bunch and um, you have no chance of winning and you'd like to save some time, there's a tiny little box in your little pit that you can uh, basically say, we want no more. <laughs> we'd, like to, we'd like to give up, please. We would like to reset ourselves and do this again on the next point. Um, what that will do is that we'll just uh, give the point to the opposing team. We'll stop the game time clock. And when they go to their next game, they will just start five alive again and pretend basically the last point didn't happen. It also stopped the bleeding uh, momentarily. And they are an X ball um, because the violence team um, won so quickly and so do in such a dominant fashion. That means that the next game that you're going to see is CEP and Grind City again. Um, in X ball, the teams have two minutes to get themselves um, back into the pit and then back onto the field after their previous match. So they have just two minutes to get themselves wiped down, get as all the paint that they need, get all the air, get their game plan, and get back out. So it does get um, a little quick, and you do need to be on top of things. Definitely need a good pit crew to help facilitate that kind of deal. But it looks like at least CEP has found themselves five on the box. Minute and a half to go in this break. Seven minutes of game time. That's plenty of time to make something happen. And we are just getting into these layouts, but these points have been pretty quick so far. Pretty quick. It's looking like a uh, really Really fun layout. I honestly can't wait to get on the field and play. One minute. And uh, Kyle, what team do you play for? I currently play for Arizona Pope position on the D4 wow. line. I heard they're good. I would uh, hope so. Yeah. I mean, we did just win uh, the first event at Texas, the USXBL event. Did you? Out at uh, Waxahachie, Texas. The Waxahachie. I heard it was just beginner's luck, though. Oh, yeah. They... What All I hear. beginner's luck. What I hear. It wasn't, guys. It wasn't <laughs> beginner's luck. Zero luck. So, 20 seconds left. Like we said, seven minutes left in this game time. Plenty, plenty of time for CEP to adjust their game plan, figure out what didn't go right, um, fix things, and even this game up. All right, let's see if CEP can uh, win this point to tie it up. Looks like CEP charging up the uh, center to that center brick. CEP is actually going to change nothing um, from what they did last. Meanwhile, Grind City is going to do exactly what they do as one of the cameras gets shot. That's going to be unfortunate. Um, we'll get a different view for you. There it is. And it looks like uh, CEP was doubling up the home, one breaking out to the snake and one going to that uh, center wedge. Still five alive. Still five alive for Grind City. As one of the Grind City guys breaks the way up from the god into the snake one, but a running ref is gonna call him clean. Oh. Oh. Did they trade? Oh. No trade. So we'll one, of the, one of the Grand City guys uh, makes an excellent move, gets himself into the, oh, he does trade. Okay. One of the, one of the C, uh, Grand City guys gets himself into the middle brick here and trades with the Snake 50 of CEP. That was actually a much bigger deal. And, oh, as the, as the Grind City guy is going to make his way all the oh way down. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be insane. Oh, and he missed him. So the Grind City guy managed to crawl his way. Oh, and a, that's too that's bad. That's a spin. Yep, I was just about to say, I'm surprised there's no flag for that. But uh, The Grind City guy made himself such a good move, making himself all the way from his own snake one to the opponent's snake one, missed his opening shot on the CEP player, decided to spin into across into the command center and then draw himself a red penalty, which is going to cost Grind City the game. That was a bummer. They definitely could have won this. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that major might have uh, pulled the last 
few bodies um, for Grind City. CEP recognizing immediately what happened, uh, charging down the Dorito side, and now hitting the buzzer, tying up. That was a gift given the given to CEP by Grind City. Totally yeah. a gift. After Grind City sh shot that CEP snake player, that all that C the Grind City snake player just had to play smart. So now uh, just under five five minutes left in the game. Grind City and CEP all tied up now after that gift given to CEP by Grind City. Um, minute and a half of break time left. We'll see uh, who's going to take this next point to maybe flip the lead or if Grind City can take that lead back. I'll spend this next minute and 10 seconds or so sipping on my Starbucks and eating my sandwich and wrapping myself up in this blanket because it's cold out here, guys. If you're not out here and you're watching from home, not warm. My toes are freezing. The rest of my body's warm, but my toes are definitely a little chilly. Yep, icicles coming out of my nose. Oh, we got TJ next. Sweet. TJ? I think so. TJ Bastards. Oh, man. Next match is going to be very exciting. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite little teams. Split deck with TJ uh, Bastards is the Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. What a name. Dig that. Dig that. That's that's A plus. That's A plus naming right there. The Mighty Dolphins. <laughs> man. I, wa I wonder what their jerseys look like. Do they have dolphins in Baton Rouge? I don't even know where Baton Rouge is. That would be in Louisiana. Oh, okay. So, uh, Grind City is who you're looking at here. Let's see how they break out. Standard breakout to both corners. Again. Uh, yeah, again. So they only lost, they did lose the point, obviously, but they only lost about, was it 45 seconds or so? Yeah, just about. So still plenty, plenty of time. Four minutes, 14 seconds left in this match. Grind City clearly knows how to win some points on this layout against this team. Um, they lost both of their running corners there in the beginning, which kind of sealed their fate initially. If they can keep five alive, then they should have a decent shot. Five alive and no penalties, and, and uh, Grind City might just have a decent time. It looks like uh, because of the way this layout is working in the middle with those uh, center wedges and center bricks, you definitely do not want to lose your wide players. Um, I mean, Grind City just kind of got stuck in the pocket there towards the end, losing both their runners, like Andrew said, um, and it <laughs> sealed their fate really, really quickly. Ten seconds. Grind City making a late run for it. They are late to the box, but they are all going to make it. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I certainly like to be there when 10 seconds of order Oh, it might have been an early jump from CEP off their box, uh, unless he got that timed perfectly, but 
They don't get called for it. Grind City going to lose one out of the Dorito side. Quickly Phil. It's going to be a 45. Here comes that center player again. He's going to do the exact same thing again. Oh, but he does get blasted this time, and he does not take a body with him. So what worked the last time is not going to work this time. Let's see if that Grind City player recognizes, and he does, that there's a snake eye. Um, so we got snake two against the center 50 brick. Now both bricks for both teams are filled. Looks like CEP has this snake corner as well, looking across the field. So Grind trying to pick out a body in the middle. Grind City's going to try to, looks like, pinch this snake player here. They got one on the tape, and then one looking on the inside. Oh, but he changed his gun. I was going to say, both guns for Grind City just changed to Dorito side at the same exact time. One walking out for CEP off the Dorito side. Grind City is going to lose two really quick, both from the snake side. I'm not 100%. Oh, oh and a jump shot. Wow. A jump shot from Grind City to snipe the snake. That was excellent. What a shot. I didn't know he hit him. And this Grind City guy, unfortunately, guy's about to just get it destroyed by the snake player. But he takes the, he does take the center. Uh, command center player out with him. So uh, this is a 1v1. I think, I think it is a 1v1 right now with uh, CEP and the Snake and Grind City in that center wedge. I think that they both know it. Honestly, I would love to be in that center wedge. Uh, oh. As CEP Snake player snipes out Grind City's uh, last body. Shot him in the top of the head, I believe. Looks like a lo little bit of pink on the top of that headband. And a concession from Grind City is going to put CEP up two minute, uh, two points with only 2.20 to go. So, wow, what an interesting change in the last couple points here. That lead and that momentum flipped really, really quickly. Um, I think Grind City kind of giving up that major penalty to lose that point for to allow CEP to tie up really helped CEP gain momentum to then take the next two points really, really quickly. 100%, and they also, in that particular point, had a, if they would have been better on their communication, would have known that they had this Snake 2 guy pinched from the command center, or rather from the center brick and from the uh, from the Snake 1. If they would have worked together a little bit better, they should have been able to get him out of there and been able to push that Snake down uh, much further, much quicker. And that Snake player for CEP was the one that uh, shot both of them out of, the, out of the Snake side real quick and kind of blew that side open. So they should probably put some guns on the snake. Last time I heard, it's hot. Snake is always hot. 24-7, snake is hot. Uh, Andrew, if uh, you were Grind City, what would you do here with 220 left down two points? Well, you got to change something. Whatever they're doing might have worked in the beginning, but CEP, CEP has clearly found something in the middle. They're able to get all up into Grind City right now. Um, that shouldn't be happening. So... They either need to cross things up real hard, much harder than they're already doing, and push one side, or try to match them on the center push stuff. But something has to change. Yeah, I think uh, the first thing that I would say that Grand City needs to do is uh, minimize the penalties in the next uh, <laughs> two minutes and 20 seconds in this game. Now, if uh, you're CEP now, do you, do you make that center push again? I wouldn't. Stick I would not either. Right. I would... Uh, Post up, play defense. Yeah, let them come wait, to you, right? Yeah, wait for Grand City to make the mistakes. Oh, it looks like they're oh, CEP was tripling up the home there for a brief three seconds off the box. I think there was a little bit of confusion of where uh, players should have gone. So we were totally wrong. Basically the same breakout from both sides, except for uh, Grind City is going to take a little bit higher chunk out of the Dorito side as they're going to get in the Dorito 300 there. There is a running ref. Bobby, the head ref, calling for a pain check on the center on the center brick player for CEP, but I guess they're going to let him play. He is shot in the foot. It looks pretty clear to me. They're going to let him go. Grind City uh, kind of sitting on their heels, getting comfortable in their bunkers. I mean, Not this is something you really want to do with only a minute and a half left in the game and down two points. I'm um, watching the, that center that center brick player for Grind City shooting at nothing on the snake side. They need to be going, and here he goes. And sending up the middle, going for a 
gets the trade. He gets the trade, it's just not good enough. They're finally starting to make a little bit of push. Grind City is on the Dorito side as they get into the 400, trying to shoot that Snake Tower out. They do shoot the Dorito Tower out. Yeah, see, 60 seconds. They need to be pushing way faster. As they shoot the home and the Snake can, leaving the CEP Snake There is still left. a Snake one as he's about to come get run down. That was spicy. Sprinting to the box. Doesn't look like he's hit. 43 seconds left. We'll see if uh, this point is good. And point approved. All right, so Grand City taking that point now. Only down by one with 43 seconds left. We've seen way quicker points than that. Not necessarily out here today, but in, in general, and especially in, in any of our time playing, we've seen far, far quicker than 43 seconds. We've definitely played 20 to 30 second points against teams. We've definitely had them played against us. We've definitely lost a couple of these uh, points and we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> good memories, good memories. <laughs> I, he Yeah. So 15 seconds here. Grind City going to try to go for this tie. 43 seconds. seconds. Plenty of time. Hopefully they got themselves a coach and a game plan to try to exploit something here. You think, think that they're going to do some center stuff, but we'll see. I think they're going to have to at least send one player really deep, really quickly. It looks and like they their Dorito do on player the Dorito is side into the 400. Makes it there alive. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Oh, oh now he's shot. hit. Their snake player is definitely making a move now. CEP's uh, center brick. So now retreating. Ryan City is in the opponent snake one. He needs to stop right there. Stop 20, right there. Twenty seconds left. Looks like uh, Grand City They're making going. the rundown. Oh, get him out. Oh. Ten. 10 seconds left. Oh, and Grind City just escaped a penalty. Six seconds. Oh, and there's a major. There's a, there's there's a, major, a major on CEP. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so before we go to explain exactly what happened, we're going to wait for the refs to figure out what they're going to call here because under a minute with a red penalty is an automatic swing point. Um... So you see on the screen here all the refs uh, getting themselves into the center. They are talking about what just happened here, what they're going to call, and what's going to happen. So the, they're, with five seconds left in the game, they are not going to play another point. So honestly, this should be fairly quick and easy now that I think about it. It should be a swing point to Grind City and no other penalty because there's no other point to be played after this. Normally right. after this, you'd see... You would see CEP start with a with a body down, at least one body down, being told to get off the field by the refs. They do not like that. I think what they're trying to figure out is how many bodies were actually alive when that penalty was assessed on CEP. But it's figure not out. matter. Well, I know that, but just trying to figure out how many bodies that they're going to be starting down with. But there's no, they're not going to play another game because there's only five seconds left. Will they not pull bodies going into overtime? They don't, they're not, I don't, oh, well, that's a good question. I don't think that they do overtime in the prelims. Oh, that's right. This is prelims. We're about to find out from Bobby, head ref here. Okay. So it's 
So the, the points going to Grind City. No. They will be under P for penalty points. Go to B E T. Right here. So if you got Grind City or B E T. B P. Grind City. Okay. So Grind's coming down the middle, the second runner coming down the center here. Yeah. Oh, some very interesting information right now come from Bobby, the uh, the head ref. So it looks like what Bobby was just saying, I overheard the refs talking. Um, so the penalty wasn't actually on CEP. Yeah, we totally got it wrong. It, it looked like the, it was, but it definitely was on the Grind City. Uh, they said the, the center player, center runner player that shot the that snake tower there. I guess he had yes. been hit on the ribs, and we didn't see it from this side. Right, he was uh, he was shot on his left rib, so that is the side that was facing away from us. So uh, a lot of us couldn't see it here. You couldn't see it here on the camera either, uh, on the stream. But uh, that point is going to CEP. So and with five seconds left in the match, they're up six four. You don't play anything under 10 seconds. So CEP wins that match 6-4. Grind Whoa. City definitely gave that game away, in my opinion. 100%. 100%. It's unfortunate to see. It is a bummer when that happens to you. Um, hopefully, Grind City can take away that. they, If they weren't the better team, they were certainly as good. And they just shot themselves in the foot. It all started with that... Uh, I believe it started <laughs> with that snake player uh, yep. spinning, yep. Cause, uh, yep. pulling that major penalty, and from then on, uh, yeah. CEP scored four unanswered points. Yeah, this one needs to start now. Yeah. So, yeah, perfect. So, that was super fun and exciting. That was a really, really cool set. What a really, really awesome way to get ourselves started here. <laughs> my, hey, my bad. I miss I, like, um, So we were having a small discussion with the referees, just telling them how what an amazing job they're doing. Guys, if you're watching this and you play paintball and you play competitive paintball, do yourself a favor. When you get on a competitive paintball field and you see all of these 10 referees, 8 to 10 referees, depending on what field you're on, working their ass off, getting shot all day long, give say thank you. Their job is hard. Say thank you. We'll come back to that. On the box right now, TJ and Maintain. Guys. Before the point, before this first point concludes, I'm gonna go ahead and say, oh, as two two TJ guys take the walk and five alive for maintain right now, do, having a solid breakout, kind of staying in the pocket. Nobody went out wide. I'm calling TJ is gonna win this tournament. I know they just lost two on the break, <laughs> nearly nearly three as one uh, pops his way into the viper. So a viper won a home and a snake corner for TJ. Uh, TJ's Viper 1 just moved over to the Viper 2 now. That inside snake bunker. Maintain going to the outside snake right now. I think he knows he's here, possibly. He's going to scoot right on by him. Oh, I wish you guys could see what I could see right now in front of me. That was awesome. TJ's snake player uh, reading 
maintain snake player move uh, beautifully. Now just slowly moving up the field, about to shoot uh, a lot of packs. Unfortunately, TJ Snake player does get shot by that uh, center brick player for maintain as maintain just loses that player in the center brick. Oh boys, we got it. We got boys and girls. We got a drone view. And it looks like TJ being down three v five off the break now comes down and now is up two bodies to one against maintain. Just to make it clear, Kyle, and you all, everybody heard it. I called TJ I was going to win this tournament as they were losing two bodies going down right away. They're going to win this point. Wow. All this one back. Monsters. If that so, doesn't show you what TJ can do, I don't know what does. Honestly, I mean, first point of the tournament, uh, losing two bodies off the break is not something you want to do, but coming back and winning that point, that's definitely going to fuel the fire and uh, gain that momentum for TJ. So a little history on TJ. Um, they took second place last year in the Premier Division, only to Golden Misfits. If Golden Misfits was here and still a team, I would have picked them to win. With, with TJ having the resume that they've had the last couple of years and the roster that they have and the coaching that they have. By the way, they're coached by one Kyle Spica. Not sure if you've heard of him, but he is pretty good. Um, oh, we're getting a little drone shot of the of the, uh, what do you call that? The, all uh, the vendors. Vendor alley there, vendor alley and all the parking. 30 seconds. Got a pretty nice selection of vendors. Matrix gear, HK, Devoted, Weapons, Die. 20 seconds. There's a Planet Eclipse booth, ooh, which I need to take my guns to. Oh, and there it is in all of its glory, ladies and gentlemen. Four amazing fields of speedball paintball coming here right at you. We got the Philippines and Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. Mighty Dolphins. And I'm cheering for the Mighty Dolphins. That is 100% sure. Oh, man. They got the purple and black jerseys, so they look fly. It looks like uh, Philippines, uh, the bottom of your screen right now, five alive against the Mighty Dolphins. Dolphins also five alive in a, in a much more aggressive approach. They're gonna take that uh, that center brick as well as the, three, the Dorito 300, Dorito Tower, uh, home and snake corner. From what it looks like God. the Philippines are doing a uh, great job holding the lanes, doing the jobs that they need to do to keep the uh, Dolphins uh, from pushing up the field. As one of the Philippines goes and takes the walk from the home. Neither team has uh, anybody's in the snake right now, which is really interesting. Which is weird because the snake is always hot. Yes, except right now. Don't tell either of these two teams that though. <laughs> Looks like the Philippines uh, snake can player is uh, doing a really good job holding that lane to keep the god. One of the Philippines players takes the walk out of the Dorito. Meanwhile, the center player is going to take the run down. He, he only trades with one. Philippines only with two bodies left alive now. Uh, that snake can move into that center wedge. The god player tried to move out to the snake, got shot on his way there. And a concession. And a towel being thrown. I would assume, yep, the Philippines threw that. Um, Mighty Dolphins taking the first point with uh, Mighty Dolphins. <laughs> 13, what? Going up early. Oh, man. Mighty Dolphins looking mighty right now. They are very mighty. So, TJ, as they make their way back on the field, um, here's a little bit of their roster Clayton Hughes. Played for the Ironmen in 2022-2023 and currently plays for Aftershock. Um, as well as that, they got uh, Alex, they got Kerrigan, Eric, Tyler, Manny, Angel, and Vince. Uh, these guys are snipers. These guys are absolute killers. I did a um, little self-promo here. I did make their, I did make their little video um, a couple months ago for the WCPPL. A little welcome, to what's going on with the league this year kind of deal. Um, so I, I feel like I kind of know these guys a little bit. They, don't, they have no idea who I am. Um, 
but I haven't watched them play for a little bit. I've definitely seen the highlight views. They are very, very good. And TJ on the bottom of your screen right now. Looks like five alive off the break. Big change from the first point, uh, losing those two bodies, those first point off break. One of the main tank guys is going to take the walk. Oh, and oh. one of the TJ guys is going to take the walk. So 44. Total pocket for TJ. The home, both towers, um, and the command center there. That is definitely some pocket play if I've ever seen it before from TJ. Maintain, um, com almost completely matched them. They're going to take the center brick instead of the command center. That'll be the only change. It looks like uh, Maintain just peeked out. That Dorito uh, tower player peeked out to the Doritos just unfortunately at the wrong time. So that clipped in the face. TJ looks really, really comfortable. Not a shocking surprise. They should be as ready as any uh, team in this tournament. Man, these drone shots are amazing. TJ taking the taking the walk off the Dorito side, trying to get a little wide there, not getting it. So back to a 33 here. Neither team is very wide either, which... Uh, no team is wide. They're both pretty pocket. Widest guy is going to be the Viper one here. Oh, as one of the main tank guys gets shot out of the snake can. That's only going to leave two for maintain. Um, if TJ's able to pick this up, they should send that Viper fully into the Viper, and there it goes. That Dorito Tower for Maintain is going to be looking that way. He does know he's there. I do have to say Maintain, uh, I believe they do have very good situational awareness. They're both crossed up, not switching sides at all. TJ no. has to know, though, that there's only two, and they should know that the center guy has the ball. He's got to make some moves. He had a, I mean, he basically had free runs. If Maintain stays crossed up here, they can uh, waste some time and let TJ try to make a mistake. I don't think that's going to happen, but we shall see. I mean, you never know. TJ very comfortable and very happy sitting and waiting for this clock. As they make two little moves here, they do make a little bit of a center play here. Yeah, and here's that center push that I'm talking about. It looks like, oh, Poison. So oh, a, yeah, both these uh, poison center brick players don't break. know they're there. Oh, he does now. Oh, he does know. And <laughs> maintain, going in for the trade. So they are going to trade out of that center. That's going to leave just the home for maintain. And I believe it's a one-on-one -on -one right now. It sh should be a two-on-one. Oh, it's on a two-on-one two on in favor of TJ. TJ going to blast that home player and take this one as well. Going to make this 2-0. And kind of like I said, they're pretty good. Point approved. One minute. Taking a look at one of our other fields. I couldn't tell you who's playing on this field. Um, I can't even unfortunately see the names on the bunkers tell you what field it is, but it is green and black. And it is field three, I believe. Oh, the WCPPL field. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, and that was field two, so I was wrong on that too. So Baton Rouge, Mighty Dolphins over here on your right, Philippines on your left. It looks like it's going to be a two bodies dropping pretty quickly, three bodies dropping pretty quickly for the Dolphins. And come on, Dolphins. Got to be better than that. So no, only uh, two bodies dropping for the Dolphins. They oh, have three alive. Yep, yep. So this is going to be a 43. 53. 53. Boy, Philippines I'm, have the uh, Dorito it. Tower now making a big move up into that 300. So that was great. I would call that the 400. Get 
Look at that. Philippines guys making, wow, that was nice. That was some really, 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 really nice movement there from the Philippines. Every, everybody moving all at the same time. That Torito guy making the move from all the way to the corner to the 400 there without being touched. That was nice. It was a 29 second point. I hope to see that from myself there tomorrow. It was very Somewhere. quick. That was, that was killer. So Philippines obviously uh, figured something out in the pit after that first point. Gonna need the and Dolphins to recollect though. These, they're my, they're, they're, they're my favorite team. I mean, I think TJ's gonna win the whole thing, but I'm picking the Dolphins to you know, not let me down. And if the Dolphins make it to the finals with TJ, I, I'd have to choose the Dolphins. The bastards versus just because. the Dolphins, jeez. It's just powerhouse names. I mean, how awesome or belittling would it be to lose against the mighty Dolphins? I can't even imagine losing to the, the, to the mighty Dolphins. When this point finishes, remind me to tell you a story about the, uh, the pink ponies. I will do my best. Yeah. All right, TJ up 2-0, 10 minutes left. You're looking at maintain. They're on the bottom of your screen. Uh, TJ's at the top of your screen. Looks, we're going to have a 55. Five alive, both sides. Looks like both teams matching that center brick bunker. For the viewers that don't know, me and Andrew have probably been saying 55, 45, 43. Um, that call means the body count. Um, now, obviously, when we're on the field and we say it's a 43, uh, we say our team's bodies first and then the other team's um, bodies next. So if we say 43, we have four live and they have three live. But for commentating uh, purposes, 55 means five live on both sides. And if we say a 45, we will say 45 in favor of whatever team has the most bodies. Excellent explanation. Just crossing the uh, nine minute mark in the game. Still looks like it's a 55, so five alive for both sides. Once again, both teams in the pocket. TJ, fairly, fairly mirrored. TJ really showing their discipline. I mean, I know neither team's lost a body, but they, they just look very content to just <laughs> sit in their bunkers, roll their lanes, not let anybody through, and just end this thing. As they go ahead and let the uh, main tan guy into the viper. So, um, maintain fills from the snake tower to the viper one. TJ doing a great job at mirroring. I, I think they are almost exactly mirrored right now on both T sides. TJ did just match into the Viper. Oh, as one of the TJ guys takes the walk out of the command center, the center player for TJ uh, goes and breaks out to the snake corner. So still in fine position. Maintain his Dorito tower player filled out to that baby Dorito. That um, TJ guy, you can tell that he wants to go. Yes, he does. TJ now has a uh, outside snake player uh, charging up the field, knowing that there's nobody out wide. For and here's maintain. the problem, guys, as you're watching this, that the camera stays put. That TJ player in the snake, I don't think anyone knows he's there. If he, oh boy, just stay right there. Just stay right there. He's going to go up to this wedge and just. So he's going to waste this player that has a gun problem. Everybody. He's going to shoot the home player. He's got two players. He's going to shoot the uh, cross two, Dorito player. That's three. He's that's four. And that's five. That's a five pack, ladies and gentlemen. You don't see those very often. That is wow. a full, full, full five pack. Boy, oh boy. Oh, and, and hey. Who is that? Who do you know? It's Clayton Hughes. Number 27. Yeah. You know, he plays for wow. Aftershock, the pro team. <laughs> So boy, if we were in the NXL, I'd call for one of those uh, those play of the play of the day, those 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 bonuses that they give out at the tournament. That would be at the oh. absolute top of the list. I don't know if you're gonna be if you're gonna see another five back today, guys. That was that was awesome. Wow. And don't don't ever Clayton, if you rewatch this later, don't ever listen to me. You just you just keep doing you. Pretend I'd, I don't, I'm just gonna stop talking when when Clayton's on the field. I'm honestly speechless right now. I can't believe that just happened. That was that was super killer. That was, that was awesome. I mean, honestly, if anybody's going to do it, it is going to be him. Yeah. Um, with that situation, it was perfect for him. 
the only player that could have seen him wrapping around that wedge was the God Bunker, and unfortunately, he was having gun issues. Got us Dolphins back up again. Dolphins are going to be on the left side of your screen. Uh, Philippines on the right. Dolphins have a Snake One player, but there are two running refs in both the Snake One and the Dorito Corner. Looks like the Snake One player is clean and the Dorito Corner player is clean. So we're going to stick five alive on both sides. Oh, and I think I was mistaken uh, last point. I thought the Philippines won that point, uh, but apparently it was the uh, Mighty Dolphins. Oh, up did, we mess, did we mess that up completely? And it was actually a, a Dolphins domination? I think it might have been. Oh, boy. Okay. Guys, we are, we're not professional commentators. We do, we do try, but this is, this is not our job. Meanwhile, so the Dolphins are up 2-0 then. Um, it looks like they have four alive to Philippines three alive. Um, Mighty Dolphins definitely in the more dominant position as they as they shoot the center player as well. Going to make it a 42. If that Dolphins player can recognize that he has the entire snake side and he shoots the home player as well. Philippines tried to fill it to the home, unfortunately got there and then got shot, uh, leaving his Dorito player so left all by himself. One. And here comes the towel once again. So we're giving a lot of love to TJ, or I am, I guess, and they're playing maintain. Uh, maintain, they, they have a lot of D3 players, um, so they're playing, they're, 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 they're trying to punch a little bit above their weight class right now, which is, you know, it's fine. It, if, if you play D3 and you felt like you dominated, you did well, and you want to you try some things out, great way to do it is to, is to go up to the division, take care of, and try to take care of some things. Unfortunately, when your first match is, when your first match is TJ, and you're going against a coach in Kyle Spica and a real, real, real pros pro in Clayton Hughes. You know, you're fighting a super uphill battle. But Maintain does have some uh, some good guys. They got uh, Rudy Javier, Jose Paz, uh, Marcelino Navarro, Frankie Montoya, Sam Wagner, Steve. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher your last name. I'm not even gonna say it. We're just gonna call Steve 187 there. Uh, Checo Carrera, Nick Garcia, Omar Loera. Um, they, they're based out of Ambush. They're a core team derived from the LA Collision and Violence Camp. And they broke off and started their own team in 2021 after winning multiple championships and a series title with Collision. So, like I said, you know, you go and play D3, you do well, you want to bump up. They're just having a rough go of it right now. But they do have some new members that join in 2024 from the Hunters and LVPP, which are two excellent, excellent teams. Um, I know the Hunters are not here. I don't know if LVPP is. Um... Under maintain, they have two second places. They have a third place in the last two years in Division Three. No wins, um, but I mean, it's hard, man. It's hard to play out here. Coached by Edward Crosby, who previously coached and played for Collision and Violence. So shout out Edward. Shout out maintain. You guys are doing great. You're just having a rough go over right now. You're, be, you're gonna be just fine. Also, a little shout out to the sponsors here on the bottom of your screen. Defy, Violence, DOS, Paintball, home from Arizona, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law, Committed Paintball, Max Paintball, and Lone Wolf Paintball. And Matrix Gear, of course. Oh, as we got players running out the field. I got two maintained players uh, getting shot right on the rip. All five alive for TJ as they doubled up the home and, and really punished him right there off the break. Another running ref for maintain. That player's going to be clean. So a 53 for TJ. A 52 now for TJ as the Viper player shoots the running snake player. There was a ref going to run in to check that uh, Dorito player for TJ, and he is called clean. So maintain uh, only with a Dorito uh, tower and home bunker, and I have a pretty good feeling they know exactly what's going on here. TJ as, gonna make uh, quick work. Yeah, as TJ's gonna shoot that guy in the pack on the Dorito tower, and luckily did not draw a flag, but a concession nonetheless. So TJ's gonna go up 4-0. They had five alive on that point. There's still six minutes, 29 seconds left in that match. Did I say 4-0? They just went up 4 0? Yes, yeah. they are up 4 0. So they only one need more one more point, point from them, and they're going to lock up that game. That was, um, they, boy, they, they look good, guys. They look good. 
you know, if I was maintained, I'd go back in the pit, take a deep breath, forget about the last four points, Just and try and make <laughs> something happen. Because if I'm maintained, I do not want to lose 5-0. I want to put at least one point against TJ. So if you're maintained, a little bit back, yes. If if you're maintained, what's the plan? You got six and a half to go. Are you trying to, you just trying to play defense and let them make the mistake, or are you just trying to push it to them? I I think uh, play a little bit of defense, um, because I mean, if you risk bodies up the center, you have six and a half minutes. That's plenty of time to win a couple points to close that point margin. Um, I don't think they're going to beat TJ. No. Um, but definitely try and let TJ make some mistakes. Um, they make very little, but. We got Dolphins moving on your right. We got Philippines on your left. Philippines are going to double up the home. Um, our lovely Dolphins going to take a nice wide approach. They're going to get wide into the Dorito side tower uh, and the God Bunker here on the lower side of your screen. Also the center wedge, uh, center 50 brick. Philippines to double up the home. They are five alive as well. So we are at a 55. But Philippines paint a little bit more pocket, which, to be fair, they are down 3-0 as one of the Philippines takes the walk. So it's going to be a 54 for Baton Rouge. Dolphins home player pushing up to that snake can now, looking across field, trying to find some bodies to shoot. Oh, boy, the Dolphins are making some nice moves as they, the Dolphins eliminate the Philippines center player. So they are very wide in both the 300 the snake three, they're in the center. Oh, one of the Dolphins uh, does get shot, looks like out of the Dorito side and trying to take that bigger jump into the 300. The uh, Dolphin center playing that brick uh, was, saw the snake move uh, by the Philippines, called out to his snake player and uh, so they know that snake's <laughs> hot. Got one of our awesome referees, Juan here, right here on the snake side. Philippines yes. take out the Dolphins uh, snake player. That's a crucial kill right there for Shaking them. Shaking his <laughs> So the, that ref here that just put his hands up, that's Juan. He's the man. He will get all up in your business to call the call correctly. Um, he doesn't like getting shot when that kind of thing happens. Uh-oh. Oh, so that I was don't, a really, really I nice move think there. He got there, and I don't know if he got that. Yeah. So the Philippines player makes a move into the snake three and then moves himself back. I really that like that move. retreat. I really like that retreat. Well, I would have stayed. So the Dolphins had two players that saw the Philippine snake player, though, make that move. So Dolphins trying to throw this away. That's going to be a pen. That should be a major. Oh, yep, it is. yep. Yeah. And Bobby saw what flags we saw. come flying. So yep. This is really going to hurt the Dolphins. So because the Philippines snake player made that retreat, he, he was able to save his teammate from getting shot and run down by the Dolphins. And I um, think. Drew that penalty. Sure. One minute. So we weren't 100% certain. We, as, they, as Bobby threw that, uh, that red flag, I wasn't sure if there was enough bodies um, to be pulled from the Dolphins, but there was. So. What's going to happen is Philippines are going to take that point, um, but the Dolphins are going to have five alive on the next point. So they are going to start the next point, 55. So that point was really quick. I think that the Dolphins really threw that one away. They had a really good opportunity there. The running center player got himself a penalty, taking a massive chunk that it was just never going to work. Back to TJ and maintain here. Um, Andrew's TJ, favorite team. It's, I mean, let's be <laughs> real. Yeah. TJ fanboy. I am. A, that, I am. You know what? It's official. I need a jersey. TJ, if you're listening, you need a jersey. TJ looking to close this thing out here. Going to Mercy, maintain 5-0. Looks like maintain pushing up to that center break. Uh, not doing a very big push. Um, I think, uh, like I said, that I, they should do is sit back. TJ Dorito oh. Tower player making up, taking the walk. Looks like as maintained then draws a penalty, gets oh, a minor, pulls out the Dorito corner and the Dorito Tower. But uh, TJ also loses one without a penalty, so a 33 the hard way. Yes, maintain, 33 the hard way. And maintain is all up in 
TJ's business in their center brick, and I don't know if TJ knows he's there. I'm kind of rooting for maintain this point. Um, I want them to kind of get a little bit of confidence back. Oh, we're about to get a poison. TJ, oh, he does know he's there. TJ reads Great that. Great move from Arietta. And maintain about to only have their snake player left. And they don't and know he's here. Don't know he's here, they but he's here. TJ's about to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> TJ now. So TJ finally does pick up that there is, in fact, another maintain snake player. Wow. And so. TJ's just going to hit the buzzer. They're going to take a look at Arietta. Because he did flinch. He did get shot at, I believe, by his own teammate. But they're calling the point good. Okay. So he wasn't hit. He was standing at the box for a while. He was trying to tell his, his own snake corner player that it was good and we were fine. And the snake corner player was, I think, maybe trying to tell him, uh, I don't think so, buddy. Yep. Um, so that, that uh, Arietta the center TJ runner there with a great stab of his own brick, then shooting the snake tower player, but he just lost count on the snake and they kind of missed each other there. He was sitting there at the start box for all of, you know, five, six, seven seconds uh, before the before the maintained snake player uh, took a couple shots at the corner, let Arya to know that he was there. Arya took a couple shots at him. I think he missed and just went ahead and hit the buzzer anyway. So that's going to do it on that match. As TJ is going to take a very, very commanding 5-0 domination of, of maintain. Like I said, maintain, just keep your head up. It's no big deal. TJ, they're going to win this whole damn thing. So, you know, no big deal. Just under nine minutes left in this uh, Mighty Dolphins and Philippines match. They are going to be on X-Ball now um, because TJ uh, Mercy maintain. It's like... Only four live off break for Philippines and three alive um, for the Mighty Dolphins. Oh, now 33. Both sides only have three players as the Philippines uh, Snake King moves up to that center brick. Now to the Dolphins center brick on their side of the field. Um, trying to take out some bodies. It looks like Dolphins have the Dorito Corner, the Dorito Tower, and the home. Philippines have the Dorito corner, the Viper one, and that center brick on the opposite side of the field. And I'm not certain they might know that he's at the center. I don't think they know because they've had no gun look that way at all. One of the Dolphins um, players just got tagged out of yep. the out of the Dorito side corner as the center. And for Philippines it looks like Philippines move. might. Philippines Let's moved go, up to there. Just gonna Dorito wedge going to make a run go. down. Yep. And he's gonna gets a trade. Out. It's gonna leave two alive for the Philippines. It should be that they're should about be to pinch out that home. Yep, they and do. they do. Philippines gonna take this point now with two alive against uh, Mighty Dolphins. Gonna be three-two in favor of the Dolphins with uh, 740 left in this game. This one's gonna be an X ball, so they gotta get off the field and back on real quick. Two minutes seems like a lot of time, but it is not. It goes by so quickly, especially if you just had a, a fast point. You're running all around the place. You gotta run to the one side of the field, run back to the other side of the field, get yourself paint, get yourself air, get yourself a play, get yourself back on there. It is a quick 120 seconds. So I'm listening to the Dolphins here as they're kind of staged right here to the next of us. They changed something on that last play. They did not like it. So they want to, they're very yeah. calm in the pit. They're all just talking to each other, but they did not like that last play. Can we just uh, say, look at those jerseys. It's like more of a hockey style jersey. Love the Dolphins jerseys, they're just killing it. <laughs> Dolphins, if you're listening, I'm gonna need one of these jerseys too. I mean, really putting a logo to the name Mighty oh, Dolphins. No. That dolphin is Mighty. ripped. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It's, I actually didn't even really look too closely at it, but you're totally right. I mean, the the shoulders on that on that dolphin are incredible. The dolphin's arms are as big as me. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got like a he's got like a dog chain on, like a I mean, that thing is. Guys, I know you can't see what I'm seeing, but you guys should just get down here just to check out the mighty dolphin's jersey. Let's be real. Oh. And I did make a comment earlier. I was like, man, I wonder what their uh, 
wonder what their jerseys look like. And I am definitely impressed and pleased. <laughs> now that's a that's a team logo. That is great. <laughs> that is a team logo. Great team name. Great logo to go with it. I mean, if I wasn't such a fanboy of TJ, <laughs> I might I might just not stop talking about the Dolphins from, from here on out. Every match just makes some Dolphin reference. Like I said, I'd, I'd love to see the Mighty Dolphins versus TJ in the finals. Mm -hmm. I really want to see that too, but we're not commentating tomorrow, so we're not even going to be able to call that match. That's okay. Bummer. We get to play tomorrow. That's true. It's a privilege. So for some of you guys that are listening and have any or care at all, uh, my name is Andrew. This is Kyle. We play for Arizona Pole Position D4. And um, we're here to mess you guys up. <laughs> if we got some D4 players out here that are listening, you can go ahead and put the target on our back. We'll take it. And they're going to play aggressive. So Philippines down two to three against Mighty Dolphins. Seven forty left in this match. Five seconds left on the box. Dolphins side players trying to tell them. That the Check out this breakout. Strong. Dolphins on your right. Philippines on the left. So Philippines do take a little bit of a different move. They uh, work their way from the center inside out to the Dorito three hundred and make it alive and get a kill. Two Dolphins lo losing uh, two bodies off the break really quickly on their snake side. One of the side. Philippines guys, that three hundred player, does get uh, does get shot out of there. So 43 in favor of Philippines right now. And the Philippines definitely have the advantage. They've got a nice center push. They've got a Dorito 200, but the Dorito 200 is matched now. Both God Bunkers matched up. Strong shot uh, bringing you to the Philippines side of the uh, field currently. I think the Philippines are just waiting, trying to pick off one more body. Philippines do understand that they've shot two of them, so they do know that they're up on bodies as they work their way out of the Dorito uh, 200 and the, into the Dorito 300. And a little bit of a, well, just a change of position from that ref, not a running ref. Oh, so Philippines oh and there's the, the running and ref and a penalty. penalty That's going to lose Dolphins. two for, the Phil uh, for Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge player is going to make a Gonna make a fill out to the snake corner. This is gonna be all for naught. <laughs> I was gonna say four guns yeah. on him in the snake corner. Not looking good for the Dolphins. All tied up now. Well, as we see if the, uh, oh, point is approved. Okay, so all tied up now with 615 in this match. Once again on X-Ball, Philippines making a uh, huge comeback. I think that was three unanswered points. Was it really? I believe so, because I'm pretty sure the Mighty Dolphins we're up 3-0 at one point, and Philippines just scored three in a row. I have, a, I, you know what I think it is. I think we're giving them too much praise. I think I'm giving them too much, too much dolphin praise, and we need to wait till after the match. And they're really just gonna get a little bit full of themselves, and it's just not working out for them. So maybe we'll talk some smack instead. Come on, dolphins, you guys suck. Get it together. You know, as, uh, as good as that Dolphin looks on that jersey, they're not looking good on the field right now. They were looking great in the beginning, and I want to see that again because I want to see the Mighty Dolphins make it out of prelims. It seems like they might have gotten away from what they were doing in the beginning. I'd like to see them probably just go back to maybe that original game plan. Oh, well, look at this beautiful view. Oh, look at that. Look at all that greenery. Yeah, we don't get that much green in Arizona. No, it's been raining in Paris for about the last, I don't know, four and a half months. <laughs> so uh, lots, very lush and very, very green out here. Also very cold, in case we haven't mentioned that, as I am doing this commentating um, from the comfort of a blanket wrapped around myself. I even brought myself two sweatshirts. I wish I had a blanket with me. I wasn't as smart as Andrew. Well, you know, I did, did warn everybody it was going to be cold. Um, 20... Three, 22 seconds left, and not a whole lot of players left on the field. Let's see if we get a timeout. Wow, so no timeout. Um, all the players are going to make it on the field just barely. Six minutes, 15 seconds to go. 
Looks like one of the Dolphins players tripped, but he is going to make it. We're going to end up 55. Five alive, both sides. Running referee on a Dolphin player is going to pull out the Snake Tower Bunker, but meanwhile, the Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins get themselves into the 400. Philippines I losing a body now out of the Snake Can. So I think it's 44. Four alive on both sides. I've been waiting for a player to get into that 400, that 400 Dorito, to see if he can really do some work from there. I know that you can see the wire from there, and he's just hanging out, waiting for that Dorito 200 player for the Philippines to pop himself out on the outside. As he switches his gun, he's going to look inside. Got that God player for the Dolphins looking across the Snake Tower, looking down at the God. Looks like both teams have are fairly mirrored. Not a ton of shooting right now. Mighty Dolphins uh, God player filling out to the Snake Corner now. I think he's trying to get a better angle on uh, that Snake Can. Trying to see if he can make it into the Snake. Seems very calm right now on the Dolphins side. Um, oh, as, as that 400 player for the Dolphins does get shot out, trying to hold that tape. See if the Philippines can get that information around the field to their snake player to get in the snake and try to flip the field. Inside out move from the Dorito corner player. The Dolphins get himself into the 200. Try to rehold that tape position. I like that inside out move. I believe that doing so, um, that one of the Doritos kind of blinds you from their Dorito tower on the opposite side of the field. Yeah, I think you know, these 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 middle pins here, right, kind of at the center of the field, there might be able to block out that move so that he doesn't have to take the outside tape part. Oh, uh, meanwhile, one of the Dolphins players get shot out of the. Viper. Looks like only one body left alive in the Doritos for side. Dolphins Damn. as they towel. So that's going to be a concession for the Dolphins, which is going to give Philippines the point with three minutes, 40 seconds to go. We are still on X ball, so it's only a minute, 50 seconds till these guys find themselves back on the field. And my, my poor Dolphins here. I just confirmed that is four unanswered points Four on and so yeah. So the Philippines. So the Philippines. You don't see this a whole. You don't see this very often. Going down uh, three nothing in the Premier Division and coming back and winning four points in a row. Um, I don't want to say it too loudly, but that can't feel great if you're a Dolphins player. Not so at all. If you're in the pit right now, um, it looks. I see one of their. Looks like one of their coach here, Jocelyn. Um, guy directing these guys around. They're having a conversation. They're trying to figure some things out. You know, I think what could be a factor is the fact that they got into x ball very quickly because that TJ match ended really quickly as well. Um, as soon as they as soon as they got into x ball um, and the Dolphins lost a point, they kind of got back in the pit. And with only two minutes left, I think they might have just been freaking out, trying to change something, not having enough time to discuss what they want to do the next point. They are very and, calm uh, here. I will say, they're very calm. Calmer than I would have expected, losing four points in a row like that, losing the match now. Interesting. Okay. They, looks like they have made a bit of a lineup change. 30 seconds. Yeah, two of their guys from last point are, are going to sit, and we're going to get two two fresh Dolphins out here, see if they can make, make a difference. So the Dolphins just barely getting themselves in the box. Seems like they're having a tough time getting out of the pit and onto the box. I don't understand. They, they, they looked so calm in here. It's like two points in a row. Uh, Philippines the Philippines losing players. their uh, Dorito Tower player. 
Oh, it looks like they, the home is hit on that. They got to check that the, home on his hopper. Yep. They got to throw that one absolutely 100%. And that's a penalty. Yeah. So the Philippines are getting just wiped off the field as, as Mighty Dolphins completely recognize that they have throttled this game. They're going to go stab this last guy out of here and go with the trade. So looks like only one body left alive for the Philippines right now. Not going to concede as they're up a point, trying to run as much clock off as they can. Philippines yes, player is going to get shot. Mighty Dolphins going to go in for the tag. Two minutes, 40 seconds to go left in the match. Let's see if the point is approved. It is. All tied up, 4-4. So back to winning ways with the Dolphins there. They were able to figure something out on that last point. Whatever substitution they made seemed to be worked. Looked like they got a, a kill run on the break that helped, and then they really recognized where, uh, where the Philippines were light, pushed hard, got the W. As soon as the Philippines uh, got that penalty as well, uh, from that home player. Mighty Dolphins recognized that immediately and 100%. just flooded the field. And we both saw that penalty coming from, from all the way up here. So, Yeah, he was trying to shoot up over the top. Um, I mean, those as a player, I know those hits on the loader, they're really, really hard to notice sometimes because uh, a lot of times you don't see the spray coming off and you don't feel it. Sometimes you don't even hear it, um, but it's a hit nonetheless. And if you continue playing, it's a penalty. Can't do that. Not at all. A lot of flags so far in these uh, last couple of these, you know, first two matches of the tournament. So maybe some refs that. Didn't quite get enough sleep last night. Coming out a little angry, throwing flags all over the place. It makes things uh, more interesting for us. I mean, hey, they're cold. Yeah. Trying to stay warm by uh, moving the arms by throwing flags. I think I might have to. I might have to get out there soon and try to warm myself up. I don't know if they. I don't know if I can go out there and uh, flip flops and no and no mask though. I don't think they'd let me. Nope. Not on a live field. That would not be smart. So the, the yeah, so all the Dolphins are on the box. Meanwhile, uh, Philippines getting out very, 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 very late. I just, I hate that. Dolphins did a little switcheroo on the start gate right before the buzzer sounded. Uh, looks like Dolphins losing their Damn. snake corner off break. Dolphins lose, um, no, they lost their, their running Dorito player, their running 300 Dorito player. Oh, I apologize. I was looking at the field flipped. That was a good move from the Dolphins player, too. He must have got caught just on his way in. Dolphins, uh, the Philippines lost their snake corner player off the break. So it looks like. 44, so four live for both teams with just two minutes left in this match. Ref going in to check and uh -oh. minor and, uh, There on. goes the penalty. That's going to be on the Dolphins. Another flag Another once again. Flag. That's going to leave the Dorito side blown completely open of the Dolphins. The Philippines can recognize that and they have slightly as they push from the Dorito corner into the Dorito 200, now into the 300. The Dolphins try to combat that, moving a little bit wider out into the Viper um, and keeping that god. Unfortunately, they just they need to get into something taller so that they can look they can look more around. Yeah, both of them being kind of on their heels. Oh, as the uh, as I say, the Dolphins snake player how is goes up he, in the center. How is this guy trying to? What go is happening? Out. Can't get there. Did he get the Dorito player though? I believe he got the Dorito player. Uh, he does. Uh, towel being thrown, I believe, by the Dolphins. That's yes, a good idea. Is. Yeah, that's a good idea. Point goes to Philippines, now up 5-4 with just over a minute left. Plenty of time. What do you think the odds are that there's a uh, major penalty with uh, under a minute to go in this match? High. High. I think I've seen a p at least one penalty almost every point this match so far. Yeah, I think the ref should give us some flags so that we can just throw them too. And we'll just we'll just add to all of that.
So what started out to be not that exciting of a match as the Dolphins went up 3 nothing. Philippines battle back, get themselves up 4-3. Yep, 4-3, yeah. then Dolphin, losing a point. Dolphins go ahead four, and tie at 4-4. Four, four. Philippines now go back up 5-4. We've got a minute nine seconds of game time left. There's a minute left. Uh, until these players need to find themselves back on the field, and we are going to have a very exciting minute nine seconds. We might even have two points in a minute nine seconds, the way some of these points have been going. Let's see if the Dolphins really, really push themselves, or if they just go a little bit conservative, maybe throw one runner a little bit deep on one side or the other. I haven't seen anybody getting... The, the, whatever player they're throwing deep and quickly seems to be on the Dorito side and not the Snake side. Correct. Uh, neither right neither side is really uh, going out very wide on the snake. That last point, the Philippines did try to go out wide to that snake corner off break and did get shot. So I think a lot of teams are pulling up short in the snake because since we do have this uh, snake layout, very interesting with the inside and the outside snake. Um, you know the snake is hot 24-7. You want to put guns up off the break on that snake side because... As you saw earlier with that TJ player, get that five pack from the snake. God, that was. You so don't want to let that happen. Man, I wish I could find Clayton Hughes and just and just have him come up here and just tell us what he was thinking when he was just dominating those players. It's got to be so much fun. It's like one of the funnest things ever. It's nice. Back on this field it's nice when you're able to stand up from a bunker and look at five backs. It's it's you just start salivating. It's one of the cooler things that you ever get to experience on a paintball field. I do have to say he was he was nice, and I didn't say this earlier. I noticed he That's only true. shot he, them. He, he only shot not, them in the packs. He didn't put it on them. A yeah. lot of players <laughs> overshoot, ripped them, and apart. ripped people to pieces, <laughs> and shoot people in the back of the head where that doesn't feel good. But you know what? He did shoot um, a lot of the players in their packs. That's so. true. I was so in awe with the five pack that we we didn't really talk about how how nice that he made that five pack because he could have absolutely wasted some of those players, especially that guy that was that was in the in the viper that he ended up turning around. I mean, he could have put eight on the back of his head easily. So five four minute nine seconds. Philippines mighty dolphins. Dolphins on the right. Philippines on the left. Dolphins with five alive. A player in the snake, I think, for the. Philippines five alive. First time off break yep. this match. As we just talked about them not pushing super hard in the snake, they end up pushing, they're into the snake too. Uh, the Dolphins are into the snake too. They're also into the 200, the Dorito corner, the Viper one, and the snake side tower. So player being checked for the Philippines in that snake can gets called clean, luckily because. Dolphins, Dolphins definitely with the more advantageous position, so that's for sure. They should be able to get a cross shot or two as one of the Philippines players takes the walk from the center. 30 seconds left. Dolphins need Second to player. Move. Dolphins Viper player moving up into the Viper 50. Trying to shoot. Players in the packs. I think he clipped that can. Oh, and that yep. God Bunker. If Definitely he stands got up, him. Just, if that God Bunker gets outside for a left. second, he could waste this Viper player. He doesn't. 10 seconds left. Dolphins need to make a move. It's that God player. And I think they're. I think they might run out of time. Four. Are they gonna make it? Three. Oh! Where's the penalty? All right. So a flag has been flown. So by the way, yes, on a flag. So we win that bet. We're gonna have referees talk about this. I think. I think that the penalty is on the Dolphins. I think it is as well. I think he got shot. It should have been a trade. So we're gonna wait. Bear with us just a moment. We're uh, letting the refs discuss, trying to figure out any information we can to let you guys know what's happening in this match right now. All right, so I'll, 
a lot of fives here coming at you right now. So <laughs> score is 5-5. Five, five. We have going into overtime, five bodies alive, both sides with five minutes in overtime. Um, we got a minute, just under a minute and a half of break time before these players need to be out in the box. So it looks like what happened was the Philippines drew a penalty or the Dolphins might have drew that penalty but had enough bodies alive. So I'm not sure exactly what happened with that penalty, but regardless, the Dolphins did get the, did get the point to tie it up to go to overtime. Okay, so that that penalty, that late penalty, that was on the Philippines, not on the Dolphins, like I got wrong uh, for the second time now um, as to where penalties are being declared. Um, it's tough when penalties get thrown when there's a whole group of players on both from both teams in the same area of the field. And then you have everybody discussing, discussing it all at the same time. You got coaches running uh, into the center here, trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, the clock is still running the whole time. We got players still coming onto the field. Philippines is definitely gonna be late to the box again. Uh, this is gonna be everything, so five minutes. And it cost them five, a body. Five. Cost them a body on the snake side. So the Dolphins are gonna go up um, on a 54. Five alive for the Dolphins, four alive for the Philippines. Five minutes, and this is for the match. Dolphins gonna find themselves in the um, Dorito 100, Dorito corner. Just uh, filled the snake. And the walking into the, or crawling into the snake two. He is gonna hold up at the snake two. Let's see if he can get a shot in on that tower. He gets a shot in on the snake tower. He, now he's shooting at the home. Does he get the kill in the home? He does not. And Running uh, oh, is that going to be a penalty? No penalty. No penalty. He is this. He's going to clear this up here in just two seconds. Yeah, this, this point is uh, he's pretty much shoot over. The Dorito Tower. Maybe not. You now yep. out. Dorito Tower out. Getting called out. Oh, and but he does get shot. Snake Tower. Uh, the Snake Player for Dolphins does get shot, but not until he got three or four bodies, as there's still four bodies left. I can't see where Dolphins. this last player is for the Philippines. The so there is a Philippines player left. I believe that he's in the Dorito yep. corner. Um, that bunker is being painted. Dolphins are trying to just figure this out. Hopefully they realize they, need, they, they can go slowly. And, and here comes four bodies in. about to storm the Dorito corner right now. Take out that last guy. Trades with the last player. No, he didn't trade. Are you kidding? Uh, now the Philippines player is hit. Boy. Last guy definitely put up a fight. Got to give it to him. That Dorito corner player had himself a little force field there wow. for about a minute. But the Dolphins going to close that out. That was really good. That was, I mean, from how the Dolphins started this set to how they ended this set, that was the toughest 6-5 victory you're going to see in some time. Played 11 points in that 10 minute match plus another minute and, and, and 40 seconds or so of overtime. So they're gonna be tired. That was very, very well earned. Well done. Well done to uh, these mighty dolphins here and they're very, very ripped pink dolphin. <laughs> very jacked dolphin. Just jacked. You know, I think uh, honestly, they won the match, good for them, but they made it very, very difficult for themselves yes, along the way. Did. They, you know, hopefully, they learned from some of the things they're making mistakes with, and they're able to dominate there on their second one because they look like they're a pretty good team. They look like they had their stuff together. So maybe them Dolphins not a, not a terrible pick. Hey, I'm stepping out of the tower for a second. It's all you guys. All right, uh, Bloodhawks and Violence seconds. coming up next. Twenty seconds on the. Uh, on the box left. On the right is going to be violence. On the left, Bloodhawks. Boy, do I love these Bloodhawks jerseys, though. So I put myself on mute to try to talk to these Dolphin guys, and they want nothing about it. They didn't, they didn't acknowledge me at all. Violence losing uh, snake corner player off the break, doubling up the home. Home filling out to the... Uh, Center wedge. 
They have the snake can and the Dorito Tower as well. Four alive against five for the Bloodhawks. As the Bloodhawks get themselves into the snake, move themselves into the snake two, now into the snake three. As that player stays nice and low. I don't think that they know that he's here. Bloodhawks have the snake 50, yeah. ripping up the snake can. So this snake player should understand that there's a home. And he is taking paint from said home. As I just get splattered with paint in the booth. So Bloodhawks playing very, very aggressive here to start as they are in their own. They are in Violence's Brick. Um, Violence's Snake. I have a feeling they're flipping this field in just a second. If this violence player is about to be in a world of hurt. Oh, oh maybe not. Okay, uh, Bloodhawks as try the, to go the, run down. Bloodhawks center player, player gets torn apart, but the, that center player does end up getting shot. The Bloodhawks now with two into the snake, just punishing that Dorito side corner. They do shoot him as well. So the Bloodhawks are going to take this first point. Get themselves up 1 0. Who are you picking in this match? Um, I would take Bloodhawks. Honestly. I'll take violence. Okay. Bloodhogs have always been phenomenal. Well. From what I've seen. Well, from what I've seen. Well. When I've watched them, they've done good. So maybe I'm their lucky charm. Chat, why don't you why don't you cue in here and tell us what you think about the, this Bloodhogs versus violence match. Here's the deal. Bloodhogs, um, fairly new organization. I think, yeah, their first year was last year. Um, was it? Yeah. They okay. had um, they had they had the premier line last year, and then they had I think a D three and a D four line as well. I don't know if they played in all four tournaments, uh, but they definitely played in a few. Had some struggles, um, had some good things, had some bad things. Uh, didn't take a crazy look at their seconds. roster to determine if it's mostly the same as it was last year or not. But they are. HK Army's um, team, they're, they're what, what, do you, what do you call that? Flagship, poster boy? Fla flagship team, I, flagship divisional team um, that, you know, that's not an NXL team. So they do have a lot of support um, from one of the biggest paintball companies in all of the sport. So that's gonna be helpful to them. Seattle Cartel right now against Grind City. I believe Seattle Cartel with five alive, doubling up the home. In the Viper one, the snake corner, and out to the Dorito three now. So here's uh, another team Grind in City, Cartel who's outstanding. Grind City uh, did lose a body off break, now losing two more. I believe it's just leaving two alive. This the Cartel snake player corner. taking the inside Viper snake move, which you haven't seen a lot of yet. But he's able to get himself all the way into their side of the field, but he can't really see a whole lot from here. He has a Dorito player that he can't see. That he can't see. Oh, and now, and now he can see him. Catches him on the move. The kill. So leaving one player left for Grind City in the snake corner as so one inside, four one bodies outside. are going to be coming charging down the field. And Grind City throws the towel, conceding that point to Seattle Cartel with uh, that was a 54 second point. I know that you, I know that we really want we collectively selfishly would like TJ and the Dolphins to be in the finals. I see Cartel in the finals against TJ. Um, Cartel had a really, really outstanding year last year. They are a really, really, really good camp. Um, they are all D2 guys on this roster. They got David Best, Justin Hunter, uh, Clayton McDonald, Justin Haggard, Chris, uh, Chris Ward, uh, Greg Cleaver, Bla Brian Blosh. Um, yeah, they've been around since the late 90s, early 2000s. One of the most winningest camps on all the West Coast. Um, and, you know, they, they put on this paper, we strive to continue the legacy today. And I, I think they're doing a really good job of it. Um, I think that they have a divisional team um, under Premier this year as well. I think that they have a D3 team. Don't quote me on it. But they are excellent. They are very, very well put together. They're very well run as we hop into this Bloodhawks violence match. Bloodhawks on the right, Violence on the left. Bloodhawks five alive. Violence five alive. Coming up home, well. trying to fill out. Oh, losing their snake can and losing their Violence Dorito tower. Violence calling for a paint check. Yeah, as two of the Bloodhawks take the walk early. Three. 
three. And now four. Oh, and another, oh boy. Okay, so the Bloodhawks just got absolutely dominated on this point. Bloodhawks might as well uh, throw the towel because they had just lost four bodies really quickly. Yeah, so all five of the Bloodhawk players getting shot now. Uh, Bloodhawks not gonna not gonna hit the buzzer. They don't need the concession as they are up a point. But there's a million million minutes left here in this match. This one this one's gonna be very exciting. Here's the deal: when you deal with a team that's gonna be aggressive like the Bloodhawks, or it looks like they're trying to play, you one or two things can happen. You can you know you can win points real quick, and you can lose points real quick. And we just saw both of those things happen here in this, these first two points for the Bloodhawks. So a bit of an unknown in this particular match between Bloodhawks uh, and Violence, as would not they didn't neither one of the teams gave us any information to read off of. So I don't necessarily know who's on the rosters. I don't know if they're the same or they're opposite. So now that match is all tied up. Uh, Bloodhawks and Violence one to one. Coming back to Grind City and Seattle Cartel. 40 seconds of break time. Takes us time to shout out our sponsors. Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball, Out of AZ, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law PC, Committed Paintball, Max T, Lone Wolf Paintball, and Matrix Gear. Thank you guys to everybody watching. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Just to let you guys know, we are dealing with some weather over here in Paris, California, like I said, for about the last four and a half months. Um, that being said, that's going to take the drone down here for a little while, so you're going to have some on-field camera angles. This one in particular is brought to you by AFG Filming, one of the best uh, local videographers around. Love this guy. He does tremendous work. Um, he's got Grind City here on your screen. You've doubled the home. Both sides lost the body off break really quickly, so I believe it's 44. Four live both sides. As Grind City is gonna, gonna just go all the way down. Oh, could we, oh, we could see something very fun here. And Grind City. Grind City's gonna shoot the home, and he's also, yeah. Then he's gonna get bunkered by, oh boy. Seattle Cartel's uh, inside snake player noticed that um, Grind City snake player pushing up to their side. Bunkered him, stayed alive, standing up now at that juice box, and... Grind Art City's snake player gonna get their head blown off, and a concession from Grind City, so... That was a really chaotic point. Bodies flying and moving everywhere, but, ca but Cartel is gonna take that one. Cartel looking very, very dominant right now. It's almost like I said that. Hey, I'm not doubting you. Oh, I just, it's, it's, for, the, it's for the viewers. I, I, can, I can see the viewers not believing me. Gotta put them in their place. And back to this Bloodhawks violence match, tied up, just over 12 minutes left. A lot of game time. They start out with 15 minutes, and that is a lot. Yeah, so of two minutes, 45 play. seconds gone, and two points gone as well, which makes it way fun for us. We definitely have been seeing some quick points yes. so far in this layout. Um, 20, seconds. 20 seconds left on the box. You're looking at Bloodhawks right now on your screen. So I don't have the chat in front of me, guys, but I know that uh, I picked Violence, Kyle picked Bloodhawks. Let us know what you're thinking here. Tell us who you got. Let's see if Bloodhawks is going to take a snake off break. I hope they do. And looks like they're going to play a little bit more pocket. Oh, boy. Bloodhawks catching a bounce, oh. asking the referee a check, and he's clean. In the clean. middle of nowhere, and was able to get away with it. That was very lucky. So the Bloodhawks don't take the snake on the break. Instead, they, they, they focus more on a center push. Violence doubling the home, but losing their Dorito side. Meanwhile, Bloodhawks is going to lose one from there. Oh, and a penalty. And a penalty on Bloodhawks. Dang it. That's going to lose. That's going to take three bodies off real quick from the yep. Bloodhawks. Only two left. And it looks like another body walking off for violence. So there's four alive, four alive for violence. Two on four in favor of violence. And they, yeah, they don't have anything on the Dorito side. Violence doesn't yet, and they do have the Dorito tower, but that's the widest they have on that side. 
Yeah, they need to get a little wide. They need to understand that I don't. I, they might not know that they have a 42 here. Uh, and the Bloodhawks losing their center brick player. So that's going to be a 41 now. You'd think that they probably, oh, here comes the uh, Violent Snake player. He's going to make mince meat of this command center here in just a second. As he's standing up nice yeah, and tall, nice gets shot. roasted. Yeah, so Violence didn't quite know the kill count, but plays very smart paintball and know how to handle themselves and take a 2-1 lead. Only a minute, 20 With point there. A minute and 20 <laughs> points, yeah. Very quick points. Come on, Bloodhawks. I don't want to be wrong in the booth. Well, I've been wrong a lot on these on some of these penalties and other things, so it's okay. I guess it is time for me to be wrong, but we'll see if Bloodhawks come back to tie it up. Man, McDonald over there for, for Cartel with a deep ponytail. Who is that? Oh, Clayton. Mm -hmm. Clayton McDonald. That's a nice ponytail, my friend. If you listen to this later. Well done. Oh, and sick, sick uniforms for Cartel. I don't know if you guys can really seal that all that well, but fire. Fire for sure. Um, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. Cartel will take one of your jerseys too. We just get a jersey from pretty much every premier team. That'd be killer. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be personalized. Just, you know, whatever. Oh, see? My camera guy hear me. AFG heard me. Showing you those excellent jerseys. So, Cartel making a... They made a snake push. Um, and also a center push. Looks like both players are clean. Meanwhile... Ryan City losing the Dorito player. Ryan City losing the Dorito. No flag thrown. He did move up after he was hit, so I'm surprised there wasn't a flag. Cartel uh, player moving in the 200, and he wants to go. Ryan City's home player making a big bite to that center break. But that's not going to work. There. And have a running ref. Oh, who I thought was going to pull himself a penalty. Does not. Called clean. I thought, I thought a penalty was going to be thrown as well. One of the Cartel guys taking the walk out of the center. Uh, but still definitely a, a, a much more dominant position for Cartel as they have the center brick, the 200. Grind City oh, taking out. One of the Cartel guys gets Cartel takes, gets takes in the walk, trying to get the snake. Uh -oh. Grind City now into the opposite side of the field in the snake. Going to go all the way down so. and probably pop up and look at the back of Pax right now. Um, Nobody knows that he's there. Catches that Cartel player in the middle. Um, Grind City, I think, is going to close this one up. And he does. He Dorito does player shoot that Dorito Cartel. player as well. So Cartel, just they just lost control of the bodies there. Um, Ryan Hoskins here. Actually, I don't know if Hoskinson. that's actually. Well, yep. he's got an X-Factor jersey on. So I'm not a little more promptly than maybe some of the others and get to work. Meanwhile, jumping back into this violence and Bloodhawks match. 11 minutes, four seconds left to go as violence is up 2-1. Uh, Bloodhawks took that first point extremely quickly. Violence kind of parried and punched back um, with two quick points of their own. So like we said, these games start with 15 minutes and we've already had three games in with just four uh, minutes off the clock. So these two teams are looking to mess each other up as violence, did they have five on the bar? Okay, there's their fifth. Oh, ref's Looks calling like for. I reset the 10. Oh, oh. 10 seconds. A little bit of a clock malfunction. We're going to get going again. Looking at Valentine's on your screen. See where they break out to. Valentine's doubling up their home. They seem to love that. Taking the god uh, and both towers. One of the home guys, this is why that's why I hate doubling the home. As one of the violence guys from the home takes the walk. You just can't live in one of those bunkers for that long. Violence losing another body. Bloodhawks looking uh, good this point. Let's see if they can take this one. Bloodhawks Just's definitely making out. a center push and a Dorito side push into the 200. They have the uh, snake corner, the snake can, center brick. Dorito and the Dorito Tower. Violence popping out to the snake side corner. Try to take away that center angle. Bloodhawks now in the snake, pushing up to the snake three. Oh, and one of the violence guys in the center, uh, one of the center towers taking the walk. So only two alive left for violence. They just need to lock things down now. If they can. I believe, I believe it's five. 
against two in favor of Bloodhawks. See, I don't know. What, I mean, Violence, instead of locking things down, decides to escape the corner and jump himself into the snake one. Their so. snake player did just shoot out the uh, Dorito guy, and now I think they're taking out, they took out Bloodhawks center guy as well. So shooting two bodies when they only had two alive, so this is a two on three This situation. is really turned into a 32. Oh. Really quickly. 31 as one of the Violence players ends up does second. Oh, and and uh, Violence loses their last guy. So let's see if Bloodhawks can recognize this. Slowly move up the field. Yeah, there are still two alive for the Bloodhawks. Identify that there's no bodies left. And Looks like they've figured it out. Yes, they have. So he will hit the buzzer, get checked by the referee, make sure there is no paint on him. You will get the thumbs up, and then you will get one point. That will make things two on two, or rather, uh, score two or score two. How much, how much time left in that game? I had that nine minutes, nine? just over nine minutes left in that game. It's another very exciting match here. Grind City and Cartel find themselves back on the field. Clayton McDonald over there with that amazing ponytail. These are the type of matches I love to see, the back and forth, you know, changing leads, just like that Dolphins so, and Philippines match. Yeah. We love the fast games. Lots of points, beating each other up. Playing a lot of paintball. That's Try to get your money's worth. Do. That's what we're here to do. And if you don't know already, for those of you watching, paintball is a very, very expensive sport. So when you come out to these tournaments, I mean, you want to make it worth it. You don't want to lose 5-0. Uh, no, no, you don't. You want to play as many points as you can. Or if you're the team or mercy, really fast, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can win really fast. That makes it cheaper. Or at least just play a lot of paintball and still win. Grind City with a huge dive into the snake corner. Doubling up the home. Again. If I had to bet, one of these guys are going to get clipped out here very soon. You can't live long at all in that home. Cartel is well doubling up the home. Looks like they have the uh, that inside snake, Viper 1, um, the Dorito Tower. They do escape that center and move one of those center players out into the command center. Grind. Oh, that one of the Viper players. They're calling for the Viper player to get out. This might be a penalty. Yep, and, and there's another flag flying uh, as uh, so Grind City is pushing their snake player all the way up the field. My running ref, Juan, goes in, pulls his second guy. Um, meanwhile, that Grind City player is going to make himself, oh, he looked, he's very tall in there. Oh, he just got lucky that that home player wasn't looking that way. Grind City sending their snake player all the way down the field to Cartel's side of the yeah, snake. Grind City about to just out. wipe them to pieces. Did just take out two bodies with him as he died, uh, leaving just the Dorito player left for Seattle Ooh, Cartel. And one of the Grind City guys getting a little crazy. But they do. Yep. <laughs> one of the Grind City guys doing a little bit of a dance on there. He's oh, doing okay. a dance a at the pins on the Dorito side. What is he? The ref's checking him out right now. Uh, make sure he's clean. And do call him clean. Grind City going down. And... Wait for the point approved, and thumbs up. Yep, all tied up. So both matches now, two to two. This is gonna be a fun one. Some really excellent, excellent action here. So we were just listening in on a little conversation between one of the cartel players that just got called for the penalty and the head ref Bobby. Cartel player was was wondering what it was that exactly drew him that penalty as he feel like he he, he he felt like he got in and then asked for a check um, and then was checked and then called for the penalty. The uh, Bobby head ref is basically saying you were shot on one side of your body, turned into that side of your body and then asked for a check, basically trying to hide it. And that's going to get you a penalty. And really, there's no arguing with the ref. They're always going to have the, um, you know, the final say. So I guess good for the player to get an explanation as to maybe so he doesn't do it next time. But 
Uh, violence player in the back home dying. One of the violence players takes the walk. All five alive still for the Bloodhawks. As it looks like they got some rain. Looks like another violence player taking the walk yep. as well. Second violence player. Home fills out to that Dorito Tower. Bloodhawks take the 100 as well and the center brick. Looked like he took a bounce off his elbow and... There's no way he got into that god. I don't think so either. He uh, did. Bloodhawks pushing and now he's very, shot. very comfortably up the snake right now, running down the field with his gun up. I will say the Bloodhawks look very comfortable. They, they definitely have a game plan. They are definitely doing their best to stick to it. I like the pressure a lot. And if this point is approved, Bloodhawks are going to go up 3-2. So as you, uh, you kind of can't see as they're moving the, the pan away, we, sometimes from some, for some of our newer listeners, there's a buzzer um, where, that, where that player is standing there at the end. He's getting checked out by the ref. You're not technically looking at. He, once, he, once he hits that buzzer, the game time stops. And that player has to be checked out by the referee. And if that player has no hits on them, then the point is approved. They get a point. If, unfortunately, that player has been hit and hits the buzzer, it's a penalty. They don't get the point. Depending on when they hit the buzzer and how much game time is left, the other team could get the point. So sometimes you will see players run themselves down, um, get, to the, get to the box, about to hit the buzzer, kind of give themselves a little spin, seconds. check themselves out, maybe ask one of their teammates to check themselves out to make sure that they're okay first. Um, and then they'll hit the buzzer. A little cartel there with a little uh, barrel, a, a little barrel clap there. So Bloodhawks now going up 3-2 in that match against Violence. I hope they keep the lead because I do not want to be wrong. No, it's not happening. Violence is definitely taking this one back on the next one. Cartel's going to win this one too. All right, Cartel on your screen right now. Looks like they're going to go out to the snake corner. Up to the snake can. He is going to make it. Double up home for just a shot. second. See, that's better. I like that play better. If you're going to double up the home, no more than 10 seconds. Get your paint downfield and get out of there. Yep. Five alive is going to stay alive for, for Cartel, and then they're going to bounce themselves into both the snake and the viper. Grind City, uh, one player taking a walk, so four alive for them as Seattle Cartel is just and charging down the snake. That is a beautiful looking snake crawl. And if he, yeah, if he can just get the viper out of there. Fortunately, he shot at the home, missed. The yes, home recognized it and is now shooting at this snake, trying to keep him in. And that Viper guy looks like he's just going to go to sleep in there, if I'm him. I'm getting, I'm getting as tight as I possibly can in that Viper and waiting for someone else to make a move. Unfortunately, as he, as that snake player just switched sides, he missed the Dorito push on the other side. Ryan City moving up from the Dorito Tower, or the Dorito Corner into the Doritos now. Cartel has three in the snake, something we haven't seen yet today. We got one in, in their snake, 40. Seattle Cartel Snake 2 and the Viper 50, basically, playing kind of halfway in between um, the Viper and the Viper 2. Oh, the, the Viper 2 does get shot. By the Dorito player, and uh, Cartel oh, and does have a, a whole uh, bunch on Dorito their way out. As Another well. one. Charging up, uh, going to take out that Dorito player. And then, oh my City. goodness, and a penalty from the Hunters. And it looks like that penalty is going to take out the last body oh, all the way across the field in the Doritos for Cartel. Um, so, Grind City kind of been, they're, they're given another gift. That penalty is just going to clear the field for them. They just didn't have to go that fast. They did not. Cartel absolutely had that wrapped up and proceeded to just, I don't know, go to sleep and talk to each other, have a little mini conversation with themselves over here and then get their heads blasted off on the Dorito side. Drew a penalty when they were all the way. I can't, you can never draw up. If you were in their snake and you're that deep on the field, you should never get a penalty. You should be taking one to two with you at all times, doing your job and getting out the field. Like, I, that's just crazy to me. That was, that's a, that, those are mental errors from Cartel. At minimum, just being in their snake is applying that pressure to allow the rest of your team to yeah, do their jobs and the clear the field. And... I would say you wish to take at least one with you, maybe two, maybe more, but at minimum, at least just being there applies that pressure. So as we're talking about all this, the clock is still running. Um, Cartel kind of fell asleep a whole bunch of times really on that point. That was terrible. Um, Cartel didn't didn't give up the point. They, they had to they had to tell themselves they had to go tell their coach to 
to go hit the, the concession button on that one as um, as the other team just kind of stood at the box and let the let the time stick away. So, yeah, uh, memory of a goldfish, the Seattle Cartel. You need to just forget that whole last minute and a half or so happened. Regroup, figure things out, do what you did the first two points, and get back to what's get back to what works. Yes, be a goldfish. As uh, mine and Andrew's coach tells us all the time, be a goldfish. Shout whether out, there shout out, Brent Nielsen. Whether something good happens, whether something bad happens, be a goldfish. Shut Only up. remember those last seven seconds because it's a new point, every point, and the next one counts just as the last. Just like this one's going to count for violence as they're about to put it on the Bloodhawks. I don't think so, Andrew. Make my pick right. Oh, they almost left early. Bloodhawks making it clean. Five alive into the Dorito corner. Dorito tower. Violence Snake as well. can. Viper 2 and the home. Five alive for violence as well. The double the home. The Oh, as the god gets shot. And another a penalty. penalty. Penalty on violence. But so where's, where's the pull on the penalty? That's that's what I'm confused about as well, actually. Okay, um, I personally think that was a mistake. The Bloodhawks, on the other hand, are going to win this point no matter what. The Bloodhawks are in the there are in cartel. I'm sorry, violence's viper. And I believe that that's all five dead for violence now. So I believe uh, even if the refs did throw a penalty and didn't pull an extra body, it's not going to matter as Bloodhawks have five alive charging down the field. Bloodhawks up 3-2. Just going to let the time burn down. So this is what I'm know, talking about. They know they're going to win this point regardless. So they're just going to either have to hit the buzzer if the time completely expires or let violence just concede the point um, to save time. But Violence might feel, you know, the violence might feel that they're maybe that they're overmatched here and they would prefer that the time run down so that they can close the, uh, they can keep the gaps close. I don't. The, the point margin's close. I'm looking over into the violence pit, and I don't see anybody getting ready to hit a concession. Um, it looks like now they're running over and looking for the concession button. And there we go. Violence finally throws the towel. Bloodhawks now up four to two. They let about a minute run off of that clock there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that was a mental mistake or not. It's tough to tell as we don't have any cameras or microphones in these guys pit to hear what they're thinking but I mean if you're going to let time go you either let it go or don't take a minute off, you're not really doing a whole lot So Grind City and Seattle Cartel getting back at it. This Grind City guy has made it pretty much every time getting himself into the snake corner. Which is always good to be alive as the one of the cartel guys gets shot out of the snake tower. Looks like Grind City still with five alive home, filling out to the snake corner. Big fill, makes it there alive. Grind City gonna make themselves into the Viper 2, the Snake 1, now the Viper 3, the Snake 2. And there's oh, and get him out. Yeah. As the Shout Viper player gets shot. Oh, that could have been a penalty as he touched his player on the way out. You can't do that, but that's okay. I don't think it was intentional. He didn't know he was there. Snake so. three player guys. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, and a... Uh, so that cartel player, he does make the switch. Like that could have been a penalty also. But Grind City, I don't... They, there is a home player left for cartel. Grind City about to close this point out. Oh. Oh. Is that cartel guy getting wiped up. 
And Grind City going up 4-2. Wow. 630. Cartel was looking really strong at the beginning. Oh, a little bit of uh, commotion going on right now. Some of the Seattle Cartel players talking uh, to the head ref from behind the net in the pit. Um, a little upset about something. Don't know exactly what it was, but not a good idea to sit there and mouth at the ref from your pit during a match. I mean, it's not going to make your life any, and any better or any more enjoyable while you're on the field. Like Andrew said earlier, I mean, these refs are out here for you as a player, for us. They're out here all day, and regardless of the weather. And Bobby doesn't take any shit. No, he does not. And it looks like he's uh, a little upset right now going back to that oh, yeah, hotel Bob, pit. Uh, uh, going to give him a little, him little word of wisdom. As um, looks like Violence and Bloodhawks both losing a body off break. Violence in the snake corner of the home. Bloodhawks going to lose a second body. So Bloodhawks down to three. I think violence might be down to three as well. I only see a snake, a home, and um, a snake one. Both towers. Um, oh, <laughs> running ref takes a takes a fall. So the violence uh, here in the snake 50. The Bloodhawks player is looking snake side, but I, de I don't think he knows where exactly where he's at. He might know now. I don't think this Bloodhawks player knows oh, where he's two, at. He's just kind of being cautious. Two I mean, Bloodhawks players pointed this way, so I. And if the Bloodhawks center player didn't know where he was, he does now. And he definitely knows. That violence player able to stay alive. If you're this violence player, you move backwards? I, I don't know if forward's the right way. As one of the Bloodhawks Torpedo players takes the walk, Bloodhawks left with just two. Um, violence with their snake three and a snake one player so and then pushing on the Dorito side as well. It's four on three in favor of violence right now. Is it four on three or four on two? Yeah, four on three in favor of violence. I only see two blood hogs, so there, there might be a third. And blood hogs taking out the violent snake player. Yep. But As man. the Violence Viper player taking out that center brick for Bloodhawks. Violence now charging down the field, taking out the home. Last player alive for Bloodhawks. Going to secure this point with four and a half left. If this point is approved, it'll be Bloodhawks four, Violence three. Thumbs up. Good Thumbs point. Up. So Violence clearly learning a little bit. From some of those last points, they're I think taking a little bit of advantage of uh, of of the Bloodhawks' aggression. So props to Violence for locking that one up, getting that done. Now here's the problem: if you're Seattle Cartel, you're down two points. There's six and a half minutes to go. You have a player, the same player for a Cartel, uh, best right there, who's really done his best to get on Bobby's bad side. Um, you don't want to be there, man. You just don't want to be there. There's nothing that you can win from trying to have a conversation with a ref after the point, talking about how you shouldn't have been called out, but in fact were out. I just, you're just never going to win that argument. And these guys, these refs, they do not have goldfish memory. In fact, they have elephant memory. They do not forget. So, you know, keep doing whatever you want to do, Seattle Cartel. I would just suggest you play more paintball and do less talking. In my opinion, the only time you should really be talking to the ref is uh, if you're well, saying asks. thank you, yeah. asking uh, if there's a little bit of confusion during a point or what happened to get kind of clarification. And when you get that clarification, whether you agree with it or not, say thank you anyways and move on. So that player who was doing the complaining is the first player to die for Cartel as well. So maybe in his own head a little bit. But Cartel still with good positioning um, in the snake now. Moving themselves into the snake, two. Grind City's home uh, player. Both home players filling out. Oh, oh boy. it looks like Did two, they just It looks like two bodies made it to the same bunker. They both went to the oh, guy. That oh, that was. One continued on to the snake one. one so on. Good read for that player. Filled out to the snake corner. 
Um, oh, and we might have a penalty. Yep, yep. they sure do. And pulling their snake player. Three so, player for Grind City running down and, and oh another my penalty goodness, over there. Two flags. Oh, and that's only uh, Oh, so hold on a second. Looks like oh, a major oh, 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 oh. Looks like a major for Seattle Cartel. You've got to be joking. So Grind City is going to take that point after I don't know maybe one of the worst penalties I've seen from Cartel. I mean they were slapping them around. They had everything going for them. Grind City had just drawn a penalty on themselves as had the well. The entire snake side blown out and open. So Bobby and the and the other rest on the Dorito side are going to have a little chat about it. I think that they're going to talk about whether or not they pulled the right bodies, enough bodies. If they're, if Cartel is going to have to start down a player next point, I don't think so. I honestly thought it was one extra player that needed to be pulled. Yeah, I believe so as well. Um, it might have been that last player being pulled might have been just the last guy at the home, uh, yeah. but it could be. So what I hear from the rest, it looks like that uh, they did have enough bodies to be pulled. It was the, they were able to pull just the last player. Um, so going to be five up that next point for both teams. And that is what they were talking about is whether or not they pulled the correct amount of bodies if anybody needed to start down, whatever they needed to do. Um, we'll just jump right back into this violence Bloodhawks game. Three to four in favor of the Bloodhawks. Four and, oh, almost left early, the violence player. Four and a half minutes to go as one of the violence players gets cyclops right away. Looks like uh, two Make players two. taking a walk for violence. Make that two of them. So, oh, and a Bloodhawks player from the Dorito corner taking a walk right now. Home field out to the snake corner as their snake player pushes up to the snake three. Oh, and that should be and a penalty. Oh. Another violence player taking a walk and. Oh boy. So that. Another one. That leaving just the Dorito player for violence left alive. I believe it's a four on one right now in favor of Bloodhawks. This is not the position you want to be in no. when, if you're violence. And that tower player got shot in the pod as he was reloading, tried to drop it, they called him out. That is a penalty. That's a major penalty. Um, I, at, when, we, when we were playing in Texas, I had the same thing happen to me, I got shot in the pod. And in my head, I'm like, Do I, need, I know that I'm out, but I need to drop the pod. It was very, it was very bang, bang, and as the ref pulled me, he said, you know, if you drop your pod, that's a, that's a major penalty. I was like, I know, but I just, I was, I just finished the reload. It's a natural reaction to drop the pod. It's a tough one. It's a tough call to make, um, but that was definitely close. Luckily, in, uh, in some lower divisions like D6, D5, and D4, uh, the refs sometimes give you a, a little bit of a break when it's some close calls like that. Um, now, obviously, if it's blatant, they are going to throw the flag, but a lot of times they want to, you know, give the players the benefit of the doubt sometimes, depending on situational and how the refs are feeling that day. And that's why we stress it's really, really big to be nice to these refs because when situations like that, like what happened to Andrew, uh, we didn't get a major penalty for it. Um, and the ref just explained what, what could have happened. And now back to Grand City and uh, Seattle Cartel. Grand City's going to lose the Dorito corner, but they're still going to be doubled up at the home, so one of those guys needs to go out and fill out immediately. Cartel losing a body as well. He's taking a walk. Cartel has three alive. Cartel. One in the Dorito. The home filling out to the Dorito Tower right now, and the uh, inside Viper one losing their Dorito Tower. Two alive now. So it looks like it's a... For Cartel. Oh, now it's, a, now it's about to be a 33. Yep. So it's a 33, but one of the Grind City Grind guys. City, two guys from Grind City. Uh, and, and look, watch this. And the, I think it's so a, you, a one on two. So if you look on your screen right now, we have a Viper and a Snake, and they don't know each other's there, and then gets wiped out. And now it's a one on one. Cartel run into the box and Ooh, did hit get the shot? buzzer. I think he hit the buzzer and then got shot. Point. So mm. point is approved. That ball might have bounced if he was lucky. Mm. But Seattle Cartel nonetheless getting that point. Okay, so Cartel get, did get that point? Yes, Cartel did get the point. Ooh, that was that um, was that was that was mighty close. 
they kind of did a little ring around the rosy. The last two players, uh, well, each player left alive for uh, both teams, kind of went to the opposite side of the field. Didn't know where each other were at. Seattle Cartel thought that was it. He thought it was five dead. Started getting shot at, hit the buzzer anyways, and was clean. So I don't know if we just went live on Instagram or if we've been live, but we are live now on the Instagram. Um, so you can feel free to join us there as well or instead of or tell your friends, tell your family, tell your pets, your grandkids, your friends, friends. Let's just get everybody. Just get everyone watching this. We're going to hop right back into this Bloodhawks violence match. Bloodhawks up 5-3. Three, three, just under four minutes to go. Bloodhawks been looking in control in this game. That was an interesting move. Inside out and all five alive for the Bloodhawks, but the violence snake player is, oh my goodness, tore that center player apart. He is about to feast right now. I don't think anybody knows he's in a snake. I don't see a single gun looking snake, be, like at all. That snake corner is somewhere around there. He needs to look across right now, yeah. Snake corner looking oh, on the tape to now. To cross. He's about to get his head blown off. And he the does. violence snake player is dying. Unfortunate. I just, you gotta. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't love that play from the violence player as one of the Bloodhawks players shoots the Phil Snake player out for violence. Bloodhawks in the Snake one, trying to get a shot in on the on the outside violence player for the Snake who is inside his bunker, outside of his bunker, all over the place. Boy, these guys playing very much outside of their mirrors here. Looks like Valens has three alive right now. The center break, the Dorito Tower, and the Snake three. Three alive for Bloodhawks as well as the Snake one, the uh, Snake Tower, and the Command Center. They do recognize that Violence has a Snake two player. I believe it's a 33. Yeah, I just heard Snake two for sure. They definitely know where he's at. Bloodhawks are going to seem very uh, calm, cool, and collected in this uh, in this situation. I mean, up two points, five to three against Violence, yeah. with only two minutes left. They know that if they secure this point, it's a very comfortable situation. And the Bloodhawks and should know that now they just need to play defense. Yes. they got two minutes to kill on this clock. Just stay alive. Uh, so it looks like that's what's happening right now. The uh, center player in that wedge for Bloodhawks and the Snake Can. They were crossed up for a minute. It looks like they're going to stay crossed up. Um, their main threat right now is this snake player for violence as he's taking a lot of heat. Um, and he's really kind of pinched. He's really kind of pinched from both the, this outside blood hot snake player. My, I mean, is, is not playing behind any bunker at all. He is just waiting for him to pop anything out of here. And if he looks on the inside, blood hawks have a player um, about to torture him from the command center on the inside. If there's anything you want to do, um, and As he does I was just about shot. to say, pinch out the snake player, um, pinch out your biggest threat, and that's exactly what Bloodhawks just did as Violence loses their snake player. Um, Violence left with just two alive in the center brick and the Dorito Tower. Dorito Tower filling out to the Dorito corner right now. Bloodhawks going to make themselves into the Viper, I but he believe does get clipped going in there. See, this is what I'm talking about with playing a little bit of defense. You have a minute left. You're up two points. Where are you going? But he is going to take... A good trade right trade, there. Trade, and that other violence player was shot. So there are still two alive for the Bloodhawks. They are still going to win this point. Um, I mean, if violence needs to tell right, right now, right now. 45 seconds left. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Bloodhawks are just going to let the time burn out as best as they can. Violence, if there's anything you do, you got to decide whether to tell or let the time run out. Um, but regardless... It's either going to be 5-3 or 6-3. Yeah, so violence, I mean, this seems pretty clear. Violence is saying no moss. We would like no more of the Bloodhawks on this round, and we will uh, regroup and and play the next match. Yeah, they're just going to let this, gonna let the clock roll down. So, oh, damn, I'm wrong. Kyle's right. Thank you, I thank hate you. saying that, but Kyle's going to win his pick on this one. Bloodhawks are going to win this one. They should hit the buzzer with some seconds left. Yeah. Because they want that point, so um, point margin is a, is a thing. So um, winning six three is better than winning five three. 
Um, those things can make a difference when it comes to who makes the playoffs and who doesn't, depending on record. So smart of the smart of the Bloodhawks to let it go, um, but still hit the buzzer with uh, at least two seconds left. Also, that point margin is important because uh, getting out of prelims, if there is a buy available that you can get to make it into the quarters instead of having to play that match in the Ochos that next day, um, you definitely want to get that buy. It's super advantageous for you and your team. Um, and point margin can decide whether you get the buy, whether you make it, or you don't. 20 seconds. So now Seattle Cartel and Grind City are going to be an X ball with uh, four and a half minutes left in their game. Ten seconds on the box. This has yep. been a little bit disappointing in my opinion if you're a cartel. I think you're one of the best teams out here and you've been doing a lot of ref arguing, getting shot on the break, and a lot, a lot, a lot of penalties. If there's one thing about paintball, you gotta be a, uh, a good winner and a good loser. If you're losing points or losing ref decisions, I mean, you gotta just accept it and move on. Cartel. Like I said earlier, be a goldfish. Cartel uh, do get themselves into the Viper 1 and the Snake 2. Grind City making a big dive into the Snake 1, unfortunately but not being not able to make it. There. Only four live left for Grind City. So, so Cartel's been here before with multiple players in the Snake and dominate, and, 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 oh my uh, god, it happened again. And the, the Snake 50 player gets shot up by the command center um, for Grind City. Looks like Chris Ward just took that uh, shot to the face in the Snake 50. Oh, good name drop. Oh, running referee. Going to check the home player for Grind City. He's gonna call him clean. I mean, yeah. if you're Cartel, you have a better position. You're, oh, someone check that Dorito Hopper. Oh, looks like he's clean. There's still time. Just don't, don't throw it away like you threw it away last time. You're up on buys, it's 43, they're in the pocket, now it's 42. Yep, 42. Oh, and as that center player for Seattle Carter gets bounced out, but they do. And oh, they, they lose they their last guy, so Grind City Oh, no, now. no, 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 there's a snake one. Oh. Still a snake one, who bounces all the way back. Because it's a 31. Snake one for Grind City. They should understand where he's at. And oh, I don't know. I don't know if he shot him. What? Nope, he did not he's shoot him not in the corner. shot? So it's a 21. Wow. Now it's a one-on-one. One-on-one. One on one. You've got to be kidding. If Seattle Cartel lets this Grind City player come back. And the player that's left for Cartel has been the guy who's been complaining about the penalties, getting the penalties, doing all the talking. I don't, lo I don't love this for him as he plays a, an, a, a different kind of move, playing the outside, outside of the Viper, essentially behind no bunker at all. I think he just got and clipped in the pack. And he does get shot. Got shot by a Grind City player. Seattle Cartel forced boy, to oh towel boy. that. Point uh, two thirty left in the game time. Grind City up six to three. I mean, I I literally said it. I said, do not do what you did last time. Be up and blow it away. And they did literally exactly that. Next ball. So I don't know if you heard it on our mics. They're calling for X ball. That means the other match is over as we just talked about that Bloodhawks violence match. So with two minutes, 29 seconds of game time left in this match, this match will go into X-Ball. So these teams you're gonna see right away, right again, um, in the next minute and 20 seconds. Um, and Cartel now really has to push harder than they've, than they've ever had to. They, they, can they can take two routes of this. They can choose to um, not hurt themselves on the point margin or and, and try to keep this thing 6-3 and just uh, lick their wounds and go to the next match. Or they can try to really, really push this and try to make this game closer. The, the issue that they can run into by trying to push guns on Grind City is them losing yet another game, going down 7-3, being down 4, or even in, in the playing another game after that, maybe being down 5, and really, really getting the point spread uh, get away from them. So interesting strategy for cartel here very interested to see what it is they decide that they want to do grind city coming out looking very strong they i mean that was that was top notch play from that remaining body um from grind city that we didn't even know was alive until they popped themselves out of the snake one 
crushes the snake player, doesn't let himself get run down, shoots the Dorito player, and then plays the one-on-one -on -one and shoots the Viper player as well. That was that was really, really outstanding. Good job to that Grind City player. Honestly, if I'm Seattle Cartel right now, only two and a half left, down three points, you gotta make a fast point this one. I mean, what do you have left to lose, really? And they really don't. Cartel doesn't really take a bite, nothing too spectacular. They do get themselves into the snake one. Already down to two minutes, 15 seconds as one of the Grind City guys takes the walk out of the Dorito corner and from the Grind. home as well. So they are down, they are down, Grind City is down two bodies. Yep. So it looks like uh, 43. But Cartel did just lose one out of the Dorito side as well. 43 in favor of Cartel right now. Let's see if Cartel can secure this point without much time left on the clock. Seattle Cartel really likes pushing the snake. It hasn't been working too much for them. They've I think really honestly they've been shooting all themselves day. in the foot. It's uh, 42 in favor of Cartel right now. Body's walking 41. all over the place. I, I think that they think that there's a corner and there's not. There's there is not. one in the center. He should be getting. And oh, yeah. now it's 4-0. Uh, so Seattle Cartel going to charge on the field. Sprint, hit the buzzer as soon as possible to save time. Going to be 6-4 Cartel. Waiting for that thumbs up. And we got it. So point is approved for Cartel. And they're going to be trailing 4-6 to six with 120 left in this match. And they are on X-Ball. So they have two minutes now to get back in the pit, get cleaned up, figure out the game plan, and get back out on the box. This is Paintball23 saying that uh, we need better camera angles. Um, you know, that would be great. Here's the deal. I don't know if you know this. But cameras are very expensive. Um, like really, like life, like life altering expensive these days. So yeah, it would be really cool if we had eight million cameras on the field here and there was just ESPN flying around all over the place. Unfortunately, we kind of do the best that we can. We do have, I think three um, cameras on this field alone. We also have a drone that we can't throw up because it is raining here. Unfortunately, the drones and the rain do not mix. They will end up falling out of the sky. That's no good. I am slow says, where does all the money go? Um, where does all the money go? I don't even, who's? There's, there's 10 refs on this field. Um, there's four fields. I mean, there's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be 200 or so employees. SC Goon saying ESPN, where are you at? Seriously, man, we need we need ESPN. If anyone's got a head, if anyone's got a uh, link in there, breaks and snakes pointing out that highlighter uh, pro shield for that ref, and I have to tell you, it looks great as a ref, but not as a player. I mean, I definitely know it's a ref when I see him running in. That's for sure. But yeah, man, I mean, look, we're working. We're, we are working on the stream. Um, I, I I can tell you that we've seen improvements. From it, even just from last year to this year, there are plans, there are things in place, you know, there are things that, that the WCPPL and I'm, I, I w wants to do. Um, you know, it's just not an overnight process. They are definitely doing the best they can. This is one of the events, one of the best events in the country. I, you know, not to hate on the NXL, but I do think that they that they put these together as well or better than any NXL event. The referees that we have out here, absolutely top notch. Things are well organized, well run. Everybody knows what they're doing. I know it's not perfect, but these guys do a really banging job. 20 seconds left on the box. Grind City, Seattle Cartel. Grind City in the lead right now with uh, 122 left in the game. Up 6-4. Looking to expand their lead. Cartel with the tiniest amount of momentum back their way after that last good point. Let's see if they can double up and make that happen again. You're looking at Grind City on your cameras, though. Like cartel just charging the field. Oh, and that cartel is going to—they're going to poison themselves right here on this thing, uh, uh, on on Grind City's brick. He does know he's there. Oh wow! Takes out Grind City's oh, uh, center player, taking out their home, filling out, taking out the second home. So as Grind well. City falling like flies. I do think. Is Dorito only? Oh, 
Oh, get! Don't let him. Yep. So, so that, that that cartel player looked like he had been shot on his way to the box. So, oh, and there's a. So a late flag. That's going to be a late flag on Grind City. I'm pretty certain that Grind City is going to start down a body on the next point. With 46 seconds left, down only one point. So now uh, Seattle Cartel getting exactly what they needed. A really, really quick point. That was With just, a penalty. It was 20, a 28 second point. Key off. I believe. Yes. Or 38 seconds. So this field definitely running very, very, very fast today. If you lose any one of these snake guys in here and they can just come up and just see nothing but backs and packs and just rip you apart. So the refs having a little bit of a discussion on the field. We are going to get Bobby here. Bobby is going to talk. Yeah, Bobby's going to talk to Grind City, tell them what's going on first, alert them what's happening. Then he'll come over here to the center and he will tell us um, what the deal is for the next point And then we will tell you. So with that late flag at the end of that point on uh, Grind City, it is looking like it's going to be a body down for uh, Grind City at the start of this next point. So Seattle Cartel starting this next point to try and tie up up a body off the break. So yeah, that was, uh, Kyle said it exactly correct. That very, very late and unnecessary penalty from Grind City as they were just getting clobbered off the field is gonna earn them, uh, earn them one body down to start this. I don't know, couldn't be in a much worse, that's, that is crippling, that's, that's terrible. They're 46 seconds, they were, they had a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock, they were up two points, now they are only up one point and down one body to start this game, so. Seattle Cartel could rattle off three points here in less than two minutes to go tie this thing up. If I'm Grind City, I want to focus on getting guns up off the break. Try yeah. to shoot a body off break to make it 44, uh, possibly even a 43 if you can catch two bodies running out wide. Yeah, this Grind City guy in the KC All-Stars jersey that you've been seeing a lot of on the rip, he has been going wide every time. I do wonder if he's going to continue to go wide. He looks like he's going to. You're looking at Cartel on your screen. So they do take a wide berth, only three guns up um, for Grind City. They do have all four alive still. Seattle Cartel still with uh, all five alive. Two players in the snake, one on the inside snake and one on the outside snake. Grind Going City on the cross. The snake 50 right now. Wrapping the snake 50 and about to shoot players in the back. 25 seconds to go. We Snakes got out. one kill out of, the, out, of, out of the Dorito Tower. We have... Uh, kill from the snake corner, kill from the home. Oh, Last guy alive it. is. And they're going to get it. Cartel's going to get it. Ten seconds left. They need to identify. They got plenty of time. The they got time. They got time. Take it to overtime. Wow. So with four, four seconds, seconds to go, seconds. we're going to get a check on the cartel player who is clean. So we are going to. Wow. Overtime. Yeah, exactly six, what we six. just talked about is they were able to rattle off three points there in less than two minutes. Bring this to even. They're not going to play that last four seconds. Um, I guess we didn't talk about that earlier. If there's a game time under 10 seconds and the, uh, any, any team touches the buzzer, they do not play that remaining 10 seconds. They just uh, pretend it doesn't exist. So what that means is that it's going to restart uh, in overtime for a five-minute game point. But they are still an X ball. So they, these teams both still only have a minute and a half to get themselves back on the field. 6-6. Six, six. With five minutes left in the clock, they are going to start 55. So everything back to as as normal now. And I did uh, just learn that that penalty on Grand City uh, just two points ago, the late penalty that caused them to start a body down um, in that last point um, was for talking. So a very, was very really? unnecessary Ooh, penalty that. Um, on that. I mean, there's no reason whatsoever to sit there and argue on the field with a ref, um, especially after you've already been called out and walking off the field. Guys, Just that's keep terrible. your mouth closed. Get they, back in your pit and you know, Kyle. Let clearly, it be. these players are not listening to the webcast. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, clearly, the players not listening. Just, well, I mean, I would hope they're not listening it, because it they're on the field playing. Well, I know. Work, hey, Austin Bush wrong. just commented, "Is this D3? No, this is Premier. Um, we might have some D3 games on this field later. I'm not 100% certain, but this is Premier." First five sports says, "Boo, play till zero zero zero. I get it. 
you just can't really win in you the, the field is physically too big to really win in anything less than 10 seconds it's going to physically take you that long to run from one side of the field to the other so if you have to then stop and try to shoot somebody you really you're you're more people can just get hurt like that people can, i mean it's just it's not it's not a great thing so all right overtime point here all tied up 6-6 six, six. Seattle cartel on your screen right now i'm still taking cartel Oh, get it. Yep, yep, that corner guy got shot in the pack and in the face on his way out, but they do. They fill it out from the home, make it clean, cartel. and it looks like uh, five alive for Grind City. And Cartel and now into the Viper, their favorite little spot here this guy keeps getting into. He hasn't done a ton of damage from here yet. Oh, oh, oh. And Running here comes a penalty. For Bobby and a penalty. Which Major color is penalty. it? It's a red. Oh, oh my goodness. Grinds, this has been a crazy match. So one, two, three, four. That guy's going to get shot on his way out. That's got to be all five. Or there might be a god left. Seattle Cartel, I can hear him right now yelling just to slow it down. And Cartel has They want to find the bodies. Alive. They want to make sure that they don't make a mistake they did earlier and lose a body in the snake somewhere and let him come back from a one-on-four situation. So... What I'm hearing now is I believe that that player did get shot in the pod and then threw it. Oh, then see, I believe, we talked about yes, that. We just talked about it earlier. And like Andrew said, they're not listening to the podcast um, or the webcast because they are currently on the field. But doing exactly what we told them and uh, warned you guys about that players do all the time. It's an automatic major penalty for that. And wow. that just cost them the match. They were up three points and just let Seattle Cartel come back and win this match. Very, very unfortunate for Grind City. Hate to see it, but Seattle Cartel, great camp. Solid players. Wow, what a match. That was great. That was, there was, I don't know, eight penalties and there was 13 points played in overtime. There was like eight or nine played, penalties. At least a half a dozen penalties. People I think arguing with the referees. That was nuts. I think what's crazy is the fact that Grind City got a penalty for talking when Seattle Cartel at the very beginning of the match was doing all the bad mouthing with the refs. He was. But arguing with the head ref. He was technically from the sidelines and then asking, <laughs> asking Bobby to come over and argue right. with him. Not the best plan, however not illegal. Boy, that was crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm sorry. If you would have asked me probably four or five minutes ago who's going to win this match, I would have I would have put all my money on Grind City. And I told did I I picked I told you I picked Cartel. You did. You did. Okay. So I, you know, I am wrong this time. I was right in the Bloodhawks yes, match. You guys, everybody heard it. I, the, and the stream is popping now. There's whole, there's 60 people watching the IG live, which is, I mean, that might as well be a million. They Jesse all, Watkins uh, commenting, best is best. Hey, ball don't lie. They all heard you that you were wrong. So. So we're taking a quick couple minute break here. Um, Idaho Bandits uh, saying, great job fighting from Cartel. Grind City killed themselves with those dumb penalties. That indeed, they really killed themselves. What really cost them the most, I believe, is not even really that major penalty in the overtime match, is that minor penalty, the late penalty, uh, two points before for talking. Like I said, a very unnecessary penalty. Cost them to go a body down. Um, and d having that body down off the box allowed Cartel to be able to easily tie up and push them to overtime. If they would have, in my opinion, I don't think they would have ever gone into overtime if they didn't have that late penalty for talking in the first place. So getting back into this, we got raw material and maintain. Lost the chromosome said, did he get shot in the pod, then throw it? Yes. yes. That's exactly what the home player did for Grind City. And like I said, yeah, automatic you were, major. You were listening earlier. I almost got called on that. And we talked the whole thing about how you definitely can't do that. So maintain and raw material back on the field. Um, I don't have, you have a sheet. I don't worry about that one. Um, don't have a lot of information on raw material. I do remember them from event four last year having a very uh, up and down event, um, which is, you know, premieres hard. That's okay. Maintain, on the other hand, um, like we talked about a little bit earlier, a lot of D3 players mostly here in this division. 
Um, coached by Edward Crosby. Shout out, Ed. Um, they got two second places. They got a third place in the last two years in D3. So they've definitely made some waves. They're a core team derived from the LA Collision and Violence Camp. They're based out of Ambush. So they play a lot of paintball. They know what to do. Um, you know, hopefully they have a better showing here. Looks like Maintain has a snake player right now. Uh, Dorito Tower, the uh, center wedge. And Kyle, if you see a Frankie Montoya or a Jose Paz, I need you to point them out for me. we Will do. I will look for them uh, on, the, on the Maintain. Number 63 and number 10 yeah. on Maintain. Yeah, Frankie over there, um, his nickname is Dranky because he can just outdrink anyone else on the team. Any place, anytime, anywhere. I didn't write that, guys. Hold thing. on just a second. So it looks like uh, maintain player is uh, pass that snake 50 onto raw material side of the snake. Let's see, but if, if he pops, pops up, up right here, now, he can see, see a lot of packs. Shoots that Dorito tower, tower. Looks on the tape. Can't find the snake one. Gets hit. Unfortunate. Gets well, yeah. Raw material losing their center brick player, though. Um, looks like a couple bodies walking off from Raw Material. I believe it's just one left uh, in the Snake One for Raw. Maintaining the Snake One, the center wedge, and in the Dorito as Raw Material just lost the Snake One. Um, I believe that's all bodies dead for Raw Material. Maintain just has to kind of identify, figure out, and charge on the field to secure this point. So, uh... Sushi Merrill, we will not be commentating the D4 as me and Kyle are playing in D4. So you'll be seeing us doing all the things we're talked about not doing um, instead of us being up here in the booth. First five has, has Raw winning this. Um, hate to tell you, first five, you are now down a point. Got uh, Crew Losh there taking maintain. Ah, Mega Legs, let's go Dranky. See, these guys know. No NCK, no Golden Misfits, Colin. So NCK, I don't know a whole lot about them besides they have that, that guy that set up the gambling. What's his name? Oh, um, from NorCal Kings, uh, Mickey Mace. Yeah, he set up the gambling uh, connection. Um, so he played with the, with the NCK guys at Event 4 last year. I don't know why they're not here. Vegas Golden Misfits is a much more interesting story, actually. They... Um, after basically dominating for three straight seasons, winning the Premier League, they are no longer a team. I talked to um, one of their guys. Um, who did I talk to? Ben Sloffer, um, who is going to play, who's playing for the Narcos, who we, we I, who we will see a little bit later. Um, Ben's a good dude. He, I was talking to him in Vegas uh, for the, uh, at, at the Ten Man Field, and he was telling me that the Golden Misfits. They are just no longer a team because all of their guys are too cool. They got too cool of jobs. One of them is a firefighter that just can't can't deal with the scheduling anymore. I think one of them started their own law firm, and so he can't make the commitment anymore. So basically, the Golden Misfits are just too good at everything. They've already dominated paintball, and now they're going to go dominate some in the real world too. So looks like some of their guys still sticking around. Um, I've seen a couple of Golden Misfits jerseys out here today, so cool to see. Really nice group of guys. Um, and absolute killers out here. So, Malik uh, asking any update for the Division 6 3v3 schedule. Unfortunately, no, not at this time. I actually just checked PB Leagues and I don't see the schedule up. You won't get that till Saturday, guys. Lost of Chromosome said that Double Snake is crazy this event. Yes, it is. I uh, So far this season um, at NXL, USXBL, and WC, now we've seen some crazy snake, uh, snake heavy layouts. What are you sure. checking here, Kyle? Um, here, I'm going to take Vegas Brawlers. Oh, damn it. You're supposed to take the Philippines, so I can take the Brawlers. No, sir. Got to take the Brawlers. So, I, the, the Brawlers did not fill out their little um, form for us, but I can tell you that they have Avery on this team. This Vegas Brawlers team just won in the NXL. I think D2 took first place. Um, one of their guys, Avery, who is a beast, mammoth, mammoth human being, not physically large, but it just in, in stature. He won the Hormesis 1v1 event in Arizona. Um, absolute champion. Couldn't have, couldn't be a, a nicer, cooler guy. So I'm also taking the Brawlers. These guys are very, very good. They play terrific team paintball. They did have some, uh, some weird stuff happen in the offseason. As far as I know, they cut everybody from all their lines, Premier all the way down to D5, and said, no one's got a spot. You want to play on this team? Come try out, try again. So I don't mind that kind of thinking from a team. You want the absolute best set of people, that's the best way to do it. As one of the Vegas Brawlers takes the Dorito. Oh, no way. 
Someone check that Dorito side tower. Snake side tower for the Philippines uh, takes the walk, but Vegas Brawler is their snake player, like I just said, he takes the walk. So I think it's a 44. Yeah, it is. Oh, now it's a 34 as one of the Brawlers takes the walk. Brawlers back, uh, Mr. Hall into the snake 50, taking a look at the Dorito side corner. Meanwhile, the, oh, and then he does get shot from the snake one from the Philippines. So the Philippines making, making some good work here in this first game. Crawling all the way down to the snake 50. Now just stay there and rip off that guy's back. Oh, that command center's looking this way. The Philippines player is about to take him out. The Philippines player shoots that guy in the back and shoots the Dorito corner. Oh, that's Avery over there. Shoots Avery. Uh, in the back, and the Philippines are going to go ring this buzzer. Going to go up one nothing. So me and Kyle both wrong on that particular point. However, I think that we both have faith in these brawlers. They are terrific. Can I see that buzzer, please? Uh, Tony tells me that the Philippines is basically Denver Altitude Semi Pro, oh, which was Colorado Blitz Semi Pro. That's good to know, actually. Um, those guys are super cool. They're really good camp over there. I don't. Maybe Tony can explain to me why the name was changed and what the deal is. Why they're named the Philippines now? I assume that they have a bunch of Filipino players. I don't really know. I do know a little bit about the Colorado Blitz team, the Denver Altitude team. They got they got good stuff going on up there. At least they did. So um, interesting to get some more info on that. Seconds. Brawlers are goaded, says Larch Lost Arch Rome's Roma Sum. You gotta change your name, bro. Ten seconds. So we got uh, maintain and raw material back out here. Uh, maintain with uh, Rudy Rudy Javier, Jose Paz, uh, Marcelino Navarro, Frankie Montoya, Sam Wagner, uh, Steve, whose last name I can't pronounce, Checo, Nick, and Omar, putting in some work. Doubling up the home for raw material. Five alive as they have the god, both towers, and two at the home. Maintain uh, with five alive as well. Doubling up with the home as well. I think one of the uh, back home players is having a gun issue. He is having and in a his barrel right now. I think he's chopping some, some paint. Taking a really long time with that squeegee, brother. Making sure it's nice and clean. Excellent communication, I will say, for Maintain as one of the home players uh, escapes from the back bunker, but their snake tower is going to take the walk. One of the raw material players from, it looks like from the God, also taking the walk, and they move, making their way from the snake corner to the snake one for raw material. Maintain with four alive, I think four alive on both sides. Our home player filling out to the God bunker, making it clean. Snake player looking down the tape, looking to move up and try and cause some chaos up the field. Their Dorito tower player fill, filling out to the Doritos. Uh, their god player just got shot. Maintain uh, now in the now in raw materials snake 50, and he's gonna take oh he's gonna take one extra chunk. I don't know if I love this move. Now pop him in a waist. Yep. Shoots the one tower. Two bodies, the ta Ooh. And oh, get him out of there. Get him out of there on his on his hand. I'm pretty that sure that player, raw material. Yep. And here shot. comes a major wow major penalty. Wow. On maintain. On maintain. Correct. And I don't know if they have enough bodies to pull. One, two, but that guy's going to get pulled. Yeah, that guy's going to get pulled from the penalty, and this should result in a no point. Yeah, I believe that's a no point. Um, maintain, unfortunately. That snake player catching two bodies. Not looking at him and then trying to get the trade out with that third player that was in the snake one for raw material, but got shot first. Still still ran him down, shot him, and that's a major penalty. We're just, we're um, just, getting a kill after you're already shot. The refs are still just chatting about it. We're, we're just looking for an official word.
Okay. We're just clarifying, yeah, guys, for you and understanding what exactly is going on. Hold on just a minute. Player. Okay, so raw material is going to pull that point on that last play. Um, sorry, still listening to the, to the refs here. Yes, there was a major on maintain, which would pull, which pulled all of their bodies and gave. I don't, I don't 100 percent know why it was a point for raw material, but it is anyway. So raw material is going to go up 1-0 in that match. And that's just the ways it is. We'll try to get a little more information on that. Meanwhile, hop back into the Philippines and Vegas Brawlers. Um, see the Philippines keep up what they were doing. See if the Vegas Brawlers can go back to doing what they normally do. Um, 55. Both teams double the home. I guess everyone's just going to do that all day. Is just double this home. And then quick, oh, and then both of the home players for the Philippines die as they try to escape that. That's going to hurt. Brawlers stay five alive. They should know exactly what's going on. And they do make a center push. Avery takes a bounce, it looks like, on the way in. Philippines fill out to the snake corner. And now try to take into the snake one. They are mirrored. Um, with Vegas Brawlers, Snake One as well. Brawlers also in the center. Brick, the 200, the Snake Two. And the Philippines have the Snake One and a Dorito Two. As I say that, the Dorito Two gets scalped. So this, this should be a four on one. Snake One only, as the Snake One also gets eliminated. And there go the Vegas Brawlers. They're going to slowly walk this in here and even this game up 1-1. And that's, that is what I expected to see more um, from the Brawlers than I did uh, last game. Thanks. Point approved. So, point approved. Brawlers going to go ahead and even that one up. That one was a real quick point, about a minute. Um, it's going to leave about 11 and some change left on that point. we got 9 minutes, 49 seconds left in this match for raw material and maintain. Oh, we got Uno's Jerky in the chat. I'm only seeing the, uh, the Instagram, by the way, guys. The, 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 I'm only basically reading the, the 36, 38 of you there. They're talking in here. I can't see anything else. So, <laughs> hit up Uno's jerky. By the way, you guys go to Texas. Bomb. Super bomb. So 9:49 left in this game. One one. Like I said. Raw material. Physically very small. Short team. Very short team. They keep all five guns on the rip. All five stay alive. The, the tower guy takes a bounce. Oh, the snake corner gets shot from raw material. So it looks like it's going to be a 45 in favor of maintain. As another raw material player gets clipped out of the home. It's going to be a 53 in favor of maintain. But raw material is still going to push the pressure as they get themselves into the snake too. No match yet um, back from back from maintain. But they do have some center. Uh, they, they do have the center brick, although he doesn't have this gun up here and I'm a little bit worried that he doesn't 100% know that the snake uh, is hot. That snake player not pushing the issue so much. He's taken, he's taken uh, fire from the home. So they do know, somebody knows he's here as Maintain makes themselves into the 400 of the Dorito. We haven't seen people get into the 400 all too much today, and that 400 player is gonna shoot the 200 for raw material. It's gonna be a 
42 or a 50. One, two, three, four, 52. 52 for maintain as they kind of look to clear this up. The raw material player is laying in between snake one and snake two. He doesn't really know what to do. He's in a lot of trouble. The pain is coming. He's slowly trying to back himself up. As soon as he, if he tries to back himself up around this bunker, the snake one for maintain is going to blast him apart. Oh, and he all falls just, oh, and he, some, okay, well, call it either way. Uh, didn't think he got hit, but he did. So that's going to be one left, um, Dorito 200 only for raw material, as these guys are just flying all over the place. They are just all up in raw materials grill. I don't really know why you wouldn't towel this instead of letting your guy get shot 30 times, but I guess that's what you're going to do, I guess. All right, uh, I am back, Andrew. Um, so that player that was in the snake that just got clipped out uh, looking out wide, um, he barely got hit in the side of his leg. It looked like it, it hit before. It looked like it hit the grass before it, so I wasn't sure if that was a hit or not. But. Well, I mean, from a ref standpoint, seeing paint hit a player in the leg, I mean, that close to the ground when you're laying down, it's really, really hard to determine whether that's it hits your leg first or the ground first. Um, but to me, it looked like a hit. Refs called it a hit, so. Joey Castro here is calling for someone to do a flip, and I completely agree with you, Joey. Um, if you guys saw any of the, <laughs> um, any of the, some of the footage from USXBL, uh, Joe MBs from, um, the, from, the, from the charge team, he's actually one of the community kings for Hormesis. He found himself on the on the bad end of a of a video <laughs> clip and found himself doing a barrel roll into a, I think into one of the god bunkers shortly before getting shot up. So I'm with you, Joey. Um, we will we will all root for some some people taking taking a flip. I don't think it's going to be brawlers, by the way. Just to put that out there. Oh, see, breaks and snakes, more flips. Oh, brawlers, no. Brawlers only getting four alive, one getting caught on the rip. Their second home player does fill out to running, the a, oh, wedge a, as they're. A second brawlers player is gonna die. But they do keep three alive. Looks like uh, Philippines home player filled out to the god as they lose their Dorito Tower. Yeah. Um, that snake player now up into the snake two knuckle. This Vegas Brawlers uh, snake corner player directing traffic a little bit, trying to draw that picture, paint that picture for his teammates here as they are down at least one body with two Philippines players into the snake and the snake one and the snake 50 now. Um, this, one of these, one of these inside players needs to look cross so they're all gonna die. Yeah, Chamber here is about to Ripped the back off of that tower play. Oh, oh, he missed him. And the tower player still doesn't look this way for whatever reason. So this snake one guy for Vegas Ballers is kind of on his own defending two guys here in the snake. I don't love this um, for them, but they do. The Philippines has a guy in the 400, so I kind of understand why that tower. Oh, and he does see him now. This uh, Vegas Brawlers snake one player is really putting up a fight, trying to keep in that snake one and battle the... Uh, the snake He's got player. a little bit of help now. The Dorito Tower knows that knows where the snake player is, and if he can get a little bit lucky and throw a bit of a lob shot in here and maybe clip his pack, top of his head. I'm watching this Vegas Brawlers uh, snake one player. I feel like at any moment right now he could be clipped because he keeps playing up over the top. If the Philippines are smart, they would put some paint over the top of that wedge to try and clip them out. This Philippines player being extremely disciplined. We haven't seen a whole lot of this. We've seen people get into this 50 and then decide to just go crazy. Um, as I say that, uh, this guy's gonna, oh, and, and he knows where he's at. So the Philippines player is in, oh, now they're matched. We got a little snake battle here. Oh, and he pulls that off, yep. So he did get help exactly like we were talking about there, that 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 tower. Here comes the oh. Philippines rundown. Oh, okay, they traded. So they do okay. trade. That's Avery, at least getting the trade. So I see I only see one Philippines player. What do you got? Uh that's, what, that's the only the thing I see as well. Uh, yeah, on the three hundred or two hundred. Looks like Looks he's like gonna get shot from across the field there. right now, and that should be the point for Vegas Brawlers. Huh. Another Vegas Brawlers point. Yeah, almost like I thought so. 
Well, you did ask me who I would pick, and I chose the Brawlers. Well, I, was, I, was I know you would pick you. as well. I was trying to bait you into the end of it. Oh, no. What? I mean, come on. It's yeah. the Vegas Brawlers. They're a solid team. And I did learn a little bit about um, the Philippines guys. One that they, minute. Yeah, so they're basically Denver, Ab Denver Altitude Semi-Pro, or was Colorado Blitz. And I guess some of them guested for the Philippines in the Philippines X-Ball League and won. Um, and apparently they plan to play 10-man NXL 2. So thank you, Tony. Shout out. Um, appreciate you. Um, Tony Wendell hooking it up from back home. And now giving the praise to you, Vegas Brawlers does not discredit uh, the team Philippines at all. Um, I mean, they're looking good out here as well. Um, just, I think, making a few more mistakes than Vegas Brawlers are in this current match. And I've watched Vegas Brawlers um, quite a bit. And they have just always looked solid, um, in my opinion. Uh, Vegas Phil 08, slight rain right now. Yes, that is why we don't have a drone up. There is rain. Um, there, the sky looks like it might be wanting to clear. It's threatening to clear. Um, as soon as it does get clear and we get a little bit more sunlight, then we can pop the drone up for you guys and everything could be a little bit better. Meanwhile, uh, one of the maintained players is gonna, oh, and that's a penalty. Two maintained players are gonna take the walk immediately leaving three alive, just the home, the snake tower, and I think the god. Oh wait, maybe there's only two. Yeah, I believe there's only uh, two players left alive for Sorry, maintain guys. right now. I believe one body got shot off break trying to go to the snake corner, um, and then that penalty just cost them two more bodies. Raw material looking pretty, uh, Pretty comfortable right now. Their bunkers in the snake can at home. Um, they're not pressing anywhere though, so they, I wonder if they if they know the kill count or they're just comfortable with playing things slowly. Their Dorito player moving up into the 300 now. Uh, I I'm not sure if he made it clean or not. Uh, yes, he did. Refs calling him clean. So definitely applying the pressure on the Dorito side. Knowing that Maintain only has two players alive, nice. Raw Material really needs to push up this field and take out these last two bodies. See this Raw Material player playing outside of his bunker on the home, like why wouldn't you just go up? Just go up the field. I think he was waiting right, to put somebody in or get a kill to bump out. He did do that. He did a kill out of that tower. And one of the, the Dorito Tower player for uh, Maintain gonna take all the way to the full Dorito corner. Um, and then get blasted by the raw material center player here in just a second. And, and now he's dead. Oh, that's a cool camera angle. I like that one. Is raw material going to slowly walk in? Tap this brother or, or wait for a concession. No, they will tap it. So five minutes, 43 seconds Ooh. left to go in this match. We are going to go to tie. 2-2, two, two. so tons and tons and tons of time. We've seen these fields play exceptionally fast um, when they need to. So we're you know, it's really been uh, back and forth matches all day besides that uh, TJ, uh, TJ versus Maintain. Um, So now back up here is going to be uh, Vegas Brawlers versus Philippines. Vegas Brawlers uh, leading 2-1 to one with 8.44 left in the game. Seconds. Vegas Brawlers all meeting up at the box, high-fiving, keeping those good vibes up in this cold weather out here in Cali at the WCPPL season opener. Looks like Philippines might be charging out. Uh, going out wide to the snake, maybe? Nope, pulling up short. Sending out wide to the Doritos. Dorito tower, Dorito corner, home, snake can. The home is filling out to the snake. Tried to, but got shot on the way there. They have a center wedge. Sorry, excuse me, center brick. Um, so four alive for the Philippines, and I believe five alive for uh, Vegas Brawlers. They have a snake two, snake corner, snake can, center wedge, and Dorito tower. Vegas Brawler Snake player now moving up. Uh, not really getting any heat 
um, from Crossfield at all from the Philippines. Continues to move up into that Snake 50. Going to pop up here, look inside, see if he can, he can catch any packs. Um, doesn't look like he looks at, can see anything right now. Snake corner moves up into the Snake 1, looking cross field. Philippines has the Snake corner, Dorito Tower, and the center wedge. Vegas Brawler Snake player moving up into... Philippines side of the snake, looking inside, blasting the Philippines uh, center player. Philippines snake, recognizing that there's a snake, looking on tape, and what a snap by the Vegas Roller snake player, moving all the way down now into the complete other side of the field, just looking for bodies. He's going to catch this Dorito Tower here in just a second, and does not get him. I guess he missed him. But looks like Philippines is going to concede that point. Vegas Brawlers going up 3-1 with just over seven minutes left in this match. Vegas Brawlers looking absolutely solid right now. Take a quick moment while uh, these other teams are getting back out of the box. They got 30 seconds to get out there. Raw material maintain. Gonna shout out our sponsors: Defy Violence, DOS Paintball, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law PC, Committed Paintball, Max T, uh, Lone Wolf Paintball, and Matrix Gear USA. And if you guys are watching, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you're enjoying your time watching the stream, watching this WCPPL season opener. Got some really great games going on right now. Raw material, maintain. Tied up 2-2, 540 on the clock. Maintain, five bodies alive, doubling up the home. Snake can, Dorito Tower, and sending a guy up the middle to that center brick. Raw material losing their home player. They have a god. Snake Tower, Dorito Tower, and a Dorito 100. So 54 right now, five alive for maintain. Raw material losing their Dorito player, getting a penalty, a minor penalty, flying in the air, pulling that Dorito tower out as well, only leaving two bodies left for raw material, unfortunately. Maintain still with a commanding lead in bodies. Um, Losing their snake corner, pushing up to raw material side of the field though, about to just close up this point. Raw material diving into the snake, moving up, maintain going for a rundown, gets the snake can, notices that there's a snake and he doesn't see him. Ref running in to check that maintain player and looks like he's hit a major flying in the air. So, pen. Uh, a penalty, a late penalty, that maintain player running him down, catching the last two bodies, but draws a major. So one body left alive for maintain after they pulled bodies. So they will be able to go down the field and hit the buzzer. Slowly walking, luckily they had enough bodies Ref's gathering right now to discuss what just happened. I'll be able to give you an accurate update in just a moment. Just under four minutes left on the game time. Currently still tied 2-2. It looked like Maintain had enough bodies on the field. But we'll see you in just a moment.
All right, so ref's still talking. It looks like um, from what I'm hearing is they're trying to discuss whether that major penalty is going to be upgraded to a gross major or not. Um, from what I saw, it looked like that maintained player that was running down the snake can was already shot, shot the snake can, and then as the ref is going in to check him um, to assess a penalty, the player continued and shot the lone remaining raw material player in the snake. Here so comes Bobby. Here comes Bobby to discuss what happened. We'll give you an update in just a moment. listening very intently to try to figure out for you guys what's going on. Give us just a minute. He's explaining it to the uh, team coaches, looks like, from both sides. Sorry, guys. I stepped away, went to the bathroom real quick, came back, and there's just just, just stuff going on everywhere. Kyle, what you, what you got for me? I wasn't here. I missed the whole thing. So a lot of things happened. Um, Paintball happened, you know, Paintball happened, yeah. and usual, like we were seeing today, a common trend is a lot of flags flying. Um, so that major penalty, I just got an update. It was just a regular um, major a red flag. Um, they did not, it was not upgraded to a uh, gross major. So they did have one body, after the bodies were pulled for the major, they did have one body left alive. They were able to go down and hit the buzzer um, to get the point. Now back to uh, Vegas Brawlers versus Philippines. Vegas Brawlers currently on your screen. Five alive, doubling the home, and then quickly getting out of there, just like I like. Philippines, uh, two players, now three players taking the walk. Looks like a five on two um, in favor of Vegas Brawlers. A Philippine Philippines center player going to take an interesting move there, and is that able to stay alive? Looks like Brawlers losing their Dorito Tower right now, so four on two situation in favor of Brawlers. Let's see if Philippines can catch a couple bodies and uh, even up the body situation. Looks like now three on two. Philippines clipping out the snake corner for Vegas Brawlers. So three bodies up for Brawlers, two bodies up for Philippines. So the the god, the center, oh, the, watch comes, the center comes break. Comes he does stab Jade, him. And he's alive. He's get away with it. Another stab, Another he's one. still alive. He is now he dies. on his way out. So one Brawlers player left. On, only from one the on one. One on one situation oh, now. He doesn't know it. And the Dorito player doesn't know it. Oh, he does now. He does. So he's, uh, he's trying to identify the bodies. The uh, snake corner player for Vegas Brawlers knows where uh, the Philippines player is at. So but they doesn't know where each other are. I don't think either player knows it's a one on one. Because if you look at this Brawlers Hulk, guy, yeah, he's looking, looking down the tape. He's looking down the tape. Like, he thinks that there's a snake. I don't like this position for Hall. He's setting himself up to, all he has to do is take one bad ball, but he doesn't yes. want to be on the outside of it because he thinks that he's, he, he doesn't know if he's by himself. So he's still looking around the field, trying to gauge and figure out the bodies. And he moves himself backwards, and, oh, this is, this is going to get tough. That cartel player all over him. I'm sorry, the Philippines player all over him. I think Hall understands now that it's, Probably he just head checked again down this down the corner. So he, I think he's starting to figure out. His yeah, head a I, bit he's he's looking one. he's looking a little more comfortable uh, standing in that position. So I believe he now has identified that it's a one on one situation, and took a deep breath and is now going to just relax and try to execute this one on one. Philippines player though doing a great job playing this uh, center wedge. That brawler player. As I say that. That Brawlers player looked so much more relaxed than the Philippines player. Like, yes. the Brawlers player could have stood there for the next four minutes, 44 seconds. That was well done. I agree. Right he was. He, he did look way more comfortable once he identified it was only a one-on-one. -on -one. But I do have to say that that Philippines player was playing that wedge really, really, really well. I mean, I, yeah, I'd be all over that thing, too. I'm, I, that, that was the, it was just that pin there, that uh, the, the snake tower that was blocking, it looked like, the... Um, the player from being able to see that side of him. If he had yes. been able to see the whole thing, he might have 
Might have been curtains for the for the Brawlers player, but that bunker exists. Those things happened, and the Brawlers walk away with the other another point. And unfortunately, that Philippines player just just looked leaned out right into a ball. So it is it is cold, guys. I don't know if you noticed. You guys probably didn't notice, but it is freezing cold out here. Um, there are. We keep, we, we're getting conflicting reports. I'm looking at one part of the sky, I see blue sky. I look behind me, it's very gray. Um, I'm hearing that we're probably gonna have more rain than not, which means you may or may not be getting any more drone footage. We just, listen man, we can only do what we can do. Maintain's gonna lose uh, two of their players real quick, one from the home, one running into the, one running to the Dorito Tower. So a very quick, what appears to, oh, one raw material, so at least it's, a, it's probably a 43, although I'm not 100% certain um, where all the raw material players are. Yeah, I believe it's uh, four alive for raw material and three alive for maintain. Uh, another raw material player taking a walk, though, so. Being alerted in the chat that it looks like the storm is getting worse and that it's on its way to ASG, which is just, man, I don't know what it is about paintball and rain. It's like, I, we're from Arizona. It rains like seven times a year. Those seven times a year pretty much always come on a Sunday or sometime when we have paintball. It's, it's ridiculous. So we're going to work through it the best that we can. Um, these players are still getting out there. We're still going to go through a bunch of matches. It could get a lot of fun. It raw, already is a lot of fun. I raw material that. filled out to the snake corner then, uh, pushing up into the snake now. Maintain looks noticed, like they uh, only have one left. Does look like they have just one left. I believe it's a three-on-one on one situation and in favor of raw. Streaking down the Dorito side goes one of the raw material players. Meanwhile, upcoming from the snake side goes another one. So here and here comes the raw snake second. player about to take Center. out the maintain guy. Yep. So raw material doing a really good job. Um, they were down bodies. Off, I'm sorry, they were up bodies up from the bodies, start. They shot two off the break, yep. um, and then slowed things down. Identified where the last, Ooh. where the leftover bodies were at, and closed out the point. One minute. Yeah, getting more confirmation that the storm is heading this way. So, you know, one, can someone make a rain dance or the opposite of a rain dance? How does that work? Uh, I see uh, there's a break in the storm right now. Some The sun is coming out. Well, we got see, some sunshine saying, on the but field. I, but I think it's coming from over here. This looks this looks not great behind us. Right. Anyway. I, I believe the storm is going behind us, though. Because okay. I saw the blue pocket in front of us. I'm going to trust um, these California residences that uh, that are driving that maybe live here, as opposed to you, Kyle. No offense, but you know, I just we're going to take the opposite side of the of the bet again. I'm going to bet no <laughs> rain. You're going to apparently bet no rain. I, I, I hope that you're. I'm right. I'm betting I'm betting that if you look on the stream right now on your screen, you can see that blue sky. Yeah. Um, light scattered clouds around. I hope that that pocket. I'm betting it's moving towards us. Oh, going to open man. up for a little bit, maybe for an hour or two. And, guys, Kyle's a pilot, so you're about to get some very interesting information on cloud formations and other weird shit. Hey, to be a pilot, i got to become a meteorologist and so many other things all at once. As got to know the, the weather you're flying in. So One of the Philippines players is going to take the walks. They're going to be down a body right away. Um, but they are going to be fairly nicely spread in the Dorito corner, both towers, and it looks like the Snake 1. And they're now they're into the Snake 2, crawling Vegas, up into the Snake 3. Vegas Brawlers uh, player taking a walk right now. 44, I believe, should be all even up. But I, I think that they've lost this Snake player as, as the Philippines player is now into the Brawlers Snake 2. And I, there's no way they know where he is at. And he's about nope. to just rip them. Nobody has even looked at this snake. Or, I mean, why would you look on your side of the snake anyways this this soon after the break? Um, this Philippines player is really going to. The only thing that can stop him here is this is if this god player and wants to. And this god is not even looking his way. See you later. He get clipped out. One. Oh. Oh. A snake. Oh, and he only, oh, he does get two out of the deal. He does shoot the Dorito side tower before he gets. So he shoots the god in the Dorito side tower before the snake side tower is able to understand that he's there. Um. So uh, Brawler's still with two bodies remaining. I believe it's a 22 with the Dorito side tower and the Dorito 200 left for the Philippines. Solid field awareness, I have to say, by the Vegas Brawler's uh, snake tower player. Yeah, that was player. excellent. He's, he heard and saw his uh, player in the god get shot and knew the only person that could shoot him at that point would be their snake. These so he immediately snapped and looked at their snake one. Yeah, these guys are very, very smart, these Brawlers. <laughs> 
Brawlers appears that they know where they're at. That, we got the command center holding pretty true on that Dorito, not letting him escape there. Um, one from the Viper just moved his way into Snake 1, so he can try to get a better shot on that Dorito side tower or the Dorito. But I do like how open that the Brawlers are. I think that they're in more control than the Philippines are, and they're up 4-1. So you'd think that they just play this smart here. Um, they really have no reason to rush down the field. No, they don't. But this, this snake player does look like he, he wants to go. He may want to go, but should he? And Probably now, not. And now that command center is standing up, he looks like he... Well, okay, now he's back down. Like I said, these guys are these guys are champions, and they're very, very well practiced. So they should have they should know exactly what's going on in this and game. And look what happens. He peeked up over top, caught one in the face. Oh, hey, look at that. So as I'm making all those compliments, looks like a two on one situation in that, favor of so that's Avery. Philippines. Oh, he and gets Avery hit. does get clipped. Yep. Philippines doing a great job closing up that point. Um, needs to get to the box to save time. The Dorito player sprinted to that buzzer. So in my opinion, that was that was a mistake on the biggest brawlers. I mean, you know that it's 22. You know that you're up three points. You know that the time is starting to waste down. I don't know why you'd be taking unnecessary risks um, shooting over top of that bunker like that when you just don't need to. Ah, would you look at that. Sun's coming out. Shadows are appearing for players and the refs. So... Let's see how long of a pocket we'll have a break in this storm. Kyle is right. There is definitely sun out there. Maybe we can get the drone up for a little bit. What's wrong with all you guys in the chat telling me that there's rain this, rain that? I, I, I believed all you guys. You guys let me down. Seconds. We got this is paint. Well, no. Yeah, this is paintball with a sun dance. See, thank you. Sun dance. 20 seconds. We have a special guest just to our right. It's Mr. Mike Hinman. Mr. Mike Hinman. That'd be owner Mike Hinman, Sir Mike Hinman, boss Mike Hinman. Lots of words to describe the man. Don't want to get on his bad side. Uh, no, don't piss that guy off. Um, raw material is going to lose one. Uh, going, trying to streak themselves into the Dorito corner. That tower is going to stay alive, but they do have the 200 as well. So they tried to take a more Dorito side push here, raw material did. Hasn't hasn't totally worked out yet. Looks like maintain has uh, five alive as well. They have a snake t snake can home, uh, snake corner, Dorito tower. I didn't see where that fifth body went, but I did not see any bodies walk off for maintain. MC hinge money. I like that one. Yeah. The dawn maybe. Some good Italian qualities. Maintains Dorito Tower player moving out to that baby Dorito. Both teams here kind of uh, just chilling in their bunkers as that as I just saw it too as the snake corner for the for maintain gets popped out by the home player on the other side. So I one, two, three. I can't tell if it's 44. It's or four live I for maintain. One, yes, okay, so it is four. And it is four. So it's a 44. Sorry, guys, in the confusion. Um, it is 44, and it looks fairly seconds. mirrored. 60 seconds left in this match. It almost looks like both of them are looking to maybe go to overtime. I, boy, All I, tied up. I, I mean. I would not want to be playing in an overtime. I want to get this thing done now. Maintain uh, pushing two players, one in the snake and one in the inside Viper. That uh, Viper getting shot, just as I mentioned it. Uh, okay, so Maintain loses a guy. If Raw Material is able to pick that up, now they have the snake side fairly open-ish. They should be pushing. This this snake side tower just, just does not want to make the move, though. Oh, and they, they do have a snake one. And he shoots the snake one. Go so they need, a, they need a... They have it. They can do it. Raw Material needs to push There's right now. There's plenty of time. And that's exactly what they're doing. Big dive into the snake for Raw Material. He goes, makes it in the snake 50 clean. Um, tries to trade out with... Uh, He's got 10 seconds left. But no, I, don't I don't think, think it's going to happen. Oh, oh, a sliding. Oh, oh my goodness. Sliding gangster gun. What a great move. 
That was on camera, too. It was. That was good stuff. Sliding gangster move to try to get the kill. That center brick player did a great job shooting that snake, shooting the diving snake player. I think that I think that kept them out of uh, out of raw material being able to win that match. They needed an extra four seconds. That might have been enough yep. to, to keep them out of there. So great job from that center player there. Really, really well done. Basically, in my opinion, saving the match. Who got the last point? Oh, raw material maintained. Raw material maintained. I need your coaches. Oh, so there, there might be uh -oh. something going on here. I think, I think they're the only thing that I could think of happening is that center player for uh, for raw material. Um, no, for maintain. Um, so he could have gotten shot because the gangster gun by raw material. Um, he could have gotten shot and then. Spun and continued on and then shot. That's that's what the ref was just motioning to there, right there in the middle of the field. That would be quite a call. It would be, but um, I know that raw material did kind of like point um, a little bit. and that, looked so pretty, that certainly looked bang, bang to me. It, what do I know? I mean, I wasn't on the field. I'm, I'm not a ref right now at WCPPL. Um, I trust these guys out here. Um, they know the rules and are, I mean, they're out on the field all day. Every day of the tournament, multiple tournaments a year. So they know best. Some of the best refs really in the whole world out here, I mean, in the paintball world. Bobby is top, top, top class. So ref's still having a discussion. While they're doing that, I'll take a second to shout out these sponsors. My name is Andrew. On the ones and twos, you got myself and you got Kyle. Thank you very much for having us. We got Matrix Gear on the stream sponsor, Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball out of Arizona. The best DOS Paintball. Always go to DOS Paintball. Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law, Committed Paintball, Max Paintball and Lone Wolf Paintball. So thank you guys for all of your sponsorship. We appreciate everything that you guys do to help make the stream better, make these events better, make the the row of shops bigger and better and cooler so that everybody wants to come and grow this sport together. So we're just waiting for Bobby to fully explain to these captains what it is that's going on. Kyle is all ears. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a penalty on raw material. Oh boy. So we have, an, we have a coach that's that's getting upset that his team is, looks like he's gonna get a penalty on. I can't tell which coach he is because he's claiming that they never threw the flag and I didn't see a flag. So he, it seems to me like he has a case. He's shaking his head. Coach is shaking his head. He definitely doesn't agree with whatever is going on here. I mean, like we've said a hundred times today, Bobby is, is as fair as anybody out there. Hold on a second. All right, so a little uh, update. So that uh, was a maintain and raw material match. Yeah. So the raw material player came around, shot the player at the wedge. Um, maintain was shot and then brought his gun up and shot another player. So it was a major penalty. On maintain. Yep, on maintain. Okay, so I'm wrong. Under yeah, 60 yeah. seconds. Got it. Swing point. Got it. Automatic point to raw material. Game over. So raw material wins the raw match. Raw material wins the match. Woo! That is quite the way. Man, I. <laughs> if there's one thing I hate about paintball more than anything, it's losing or winning a match in these weird last 10 seconds. Is there a penalty? What's the rule? It's all. Yep. Anyway, we'll I did talk say. About it more. 
I did say if, oh. if anything, that was probably what I saw that happened. And we got a drone. Guys, we got a drone. You're looking at the Vegas Brawlers on your left. You're looking at the Philippines on your right. One of the Philippines guys in the, oh, and he's going to get popped out of there. Yeah. Uh, in that in that brick, wanted to make a move into the other brick. Took too long to think about it and got popped out. We got four alive for the Philippines. Five alive for the Brawlers. A minute 35 left to go. Brawlers in a great position right now with the Snake one and the Dorito corner. Um, and no snake presence yet for the Philippines. They, again, this is what I said brawlers should have been doing last time. They should be sitting in these bunkers for the next minute and 20 seconds, rolling their guns until they have no more air or until this time expires. I definitely think Vegas brawlers are gonna seal this matchup right now. I don't think Philippines are gonna be able to come down this field and uh, storm it. Um, they don't really have much time. They got just over 60 seconds right now. They did pop themselves into the Viper one. <laughs> but I do believe that that snake one player for the Brawlers knows that he's there. And hopefully he doesn't play over top and play play silly again, but he does have a lot of help this time. And as I say, that <laughs> Brawlers player inserts himself into the snake. I think that's kind of a smart move. He's uh, protecting the tape because the only real rundown that they can get well, is- Oh yeah, but now look at now he's got, now we have a center, a center player for Philippines who, oh. And he get gets, he gets there. smoked. Philippines player tries to take the 400 as well. I do believe that the command center player for Brawlers knows that he's there. Yeah, he definitely knows that he's there. Oh, but the the Philippines player shoots the home guy while the Philippine, while one of the other Philippines players gets shot out of the Dorito. 10 seconds left. Ten this game this is, is over. not going to be enough for the Philippines. They put up a really, really good fight here. Like we said from the beginning, or like I said from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, th this Brawlers team is is cool, calm, collected, well-practiced. They've played in a lot of tournaments. I think a, most of these guys know each other real well. They seem to all work together really well. I mean, I, I, had, I had very, very little doubt that there was going to be an issue in this match. They looked great. Congratulations to the Brawlers. Great right, way now, to start the tournament. Now that the uh, the sun is out, sun is shining. Sun's rain is, up. Rain has stopped Guns for just up. a moment. Uh, we're heading over to the uh, vendor alley over here at ASG. All you guys. See Matrix gear, die, defy, uh, weapons, violence, devoted. Uh, What's your favorite tent here, Kyle? Um, I already know. Just say it. I'd, I would have to say the violence tape. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I'd have 100%. to. Yeah. Hey, bad news, guys. The violence does not have any tape. I already asked. Um, I actually have a have, have a roll of tape. Fifty bucks an inch. Um, you you know, feel free get get crazy with. It. I got a half about a half a roll left. Um, so you know, come get it. I'm in the I'm in the booth up here. I will gladly sell you as much as you want, guys. Fifty bucks an inch. Get crazy with 50 it. Fifty bucks an inch, Grab man. Grab your whole barrel, like the whole thing. Just to get rid of all the porting, just, yeah, <laughs> I'm all for it. I was able to, I think I was able to charge my teammates enough money last night to pay for my entire paint fund for this tournament in, uh, in just tape fees. So it's, it's really good stuff. It's that violence tape, man. Uh -huh. Limited tape. I think that thing sold out in <laughs> like a couple minutes. Breaks and snakes. That he's got sealed tape. Oh, he's one up on me. Bro, but my tape is used, so mine actually has a little bit more like, I don't know, flavor to it. You know, it's got a little bit of a pink tint. Flavor? So it, it, it's a character. It's got a little bit more character to it. That's really what it is. So More character. Yeah. I know that you're very, very jealous um, of my of my, of my my character size tape. So. Who knows, Jerky? Geez, super bummed we're not there. Hey, we're bummed you're not here either. I can, I can pull some off my tank. I actually, I pulled everything off of my barrels and, and, all, and my guns last night. I was thinking about listing that up on the Violence BST as a, you know, some used, very, very heavily used tape and see what that goes for these days, but it's wearing an Airbnb. We don't, have, we don't have time for that. 40 an inch. Man, you're, now you're trying to, okay. It's undercutting the competition. <laughs> it's called a hustle, baby. <laughs> black, black I am. I've got rolls tap in. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you guys understand tape game. Tape game strong. Oh, Narcos and CEP. Oh, boy. So, hey, good news, guys. We have, I have information on both of these teams. I'm just going to riddle you with, with, with stuff about these two guys. So, let me start. Is that the Narcos guys? Why do they look? Oh, they got new jerseys. 
Haven't seen these Narcos jerseys I'm yet. Narcos. I'm so used to seeing the the black and gray. Yeah, the black and white. Gray. Now they got black and gold. Those those copying bastards. <laughs> All right, so Narcos on your left, CEP on your right. Oh my goodness, the two CEP players ran into each other. Um, that's probably not part of the game plan. Now one of the God players in the CEP asking for a check as he ran into his own player. Meanwhile, Narcos five alive, playing completely pocket uh, that five alive. That's a that's a nice little pocket for for Narcos there. Running refs and a penalty. CEP is going to lose their Dorito side, I'm sorry, Snake side tower and their home. That's going to leave only two alive, only the God and somewhere on the Dorito side. Meanwhile, Narcos is going to take the walk um, out of the command center. So four alive, but a full spread of the field for Narcos. This should just be a matter of time for them to wrap this up. Narcos snake player just taking a commanding. That's Slopper. It is. Yeah. Oh, so, it is. So the snake player that you're that's on the middle right of your screen inside the snake who's now making it into the other side. That's Ben Slaufer. He played for the Misfits um, for the last like two years. So this guy, I mean, bona fide champion. He's and, about to smoke this god player right now. He, <laughs> he's about to wrap it and dead. See you later. One and two in the corner. Get that guy out of there. Bye bye. Yeah. CEP, see you later. Ben's going to walk that one right in. That was clever, Kyle. That was good. C E P C later. C E C later P C. -E -P. No, there's not one. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> I guess since the Narcos one, we'll talk about them first. A um, couple of their guys. They got Oz Rios, who I'm pretty sure is like the face of H K Army. Um, first five sports says, <laughs> I hope Narcos gets like ten penalties. <laughs> they cheat a lot. Of these guys. I mean, there has been flags flying all day on this field these, so these far. So not scared of throwing a flag. So honestly, I to do that. It's on. I don't doubt that there will be uh, plenty of penalties this match. So, um, yeah, Oz Rios there from Narcos. I'm pretty sure he's like the face for HK Army. Like all the ads that I see, I'm pretty sure it's him that like, like, and I'm pretty sure they took it at last year's event. Him just like looking into the camera, all super dope. Anyway. Um, Richie Lopez, Santos Ortega, Steven uh, Mazarek, Kyle Breath, Amir Rios, Kevin Leone, Chad Stolzberg, uh, Ben Slaufer, and then David Maroney from Aftermath. So they do have an actual pro player on their team as well. So expect for Narcos to be good. LA Collision, Seattle Cartel here. So this Collision team is going to be kind of what's left over um, from... Um, from Maintain. So and it looks like Seattle Cartel lost a body off break going out to the snake. Uh, trying to go out wide. They doubled up the home. Their home player now filling up to that. Cure. Center wedge. Cartel had one of the best matches that we've had of the day earlier. Being up 3-0, then getting down 4-3, and then winning 6-5 in, in an overtime point. So they're coming off a nice little high. Hopefully they learn some lessons from maybe not talking to the refs so much. Five alive for uh, Collision, four alive for Seattle Cartel. Looks like a ref going in to possibly take a look at the Dorito side for Cartel. And Collision's been around a long time. They know what they're doing. These guys play together. These guys play smart. Deep camp, it seems like, over there for collision. Good for them. It looks like possibly only three alive now for Cartel. I'm not sure if they have a Dorito corner yeah. or not. I can't no see. No Dorito corner, so I think just the three. Just the uh, Snake Sight Tower, the Command Center, and the Dorito 2. Uh, meanwhile, the Center Brick, Command Center, Dorito Tower, and Snake Corner, and the God um, for a Collision. So still five alive for a Collision. So Collision taking this pretty slow. They, I don't know if they're going to allow him on purpose, but uh, Cartel going to get themselves into the Viper 2 as he did all of last match. Collision now getting into the Snake, going up to the Snake 3. Let's see if he can do some work here. Checking the tape. Doesn't see anything. Not getting any heat. We could have some fun here if this cartel and collision guy understand that each other are there. And they do. And a nice, what a nice shot. Nice little Really, pop. really nice shot from collision. Snap on the Viper. Cartel losing their Viper player. And That's this cartel unfortunate. player sneaking real low. 
That looks like that command center knows that he's somewhere over here, but he's definitely lost him. He can and just pop up here and waste them both. I think that he's probably going to pop. Oh, he is going to stop there. Oh, and he can't see it because of the, because of the, because viper. Of the tiny wing. Viper, the, one. viper one. So he is going to waste that guy at the command center, take his way and shoot that Dorito player as well, and Collision is going to take the first point. Collision player. We got uh, side still hasn't quite figured it out. There it goes. Josh S. Uh, saying in the chat, I swear with each event that passes, the camera quality, venue quality, and organizational quality just keeps getting better. Honestly, I couldn't agree with you. WCPPL, if you look at the past years, even just uh, at the start of last year, um, stream quality, organizational quality, everything about WCPPL is just getting that much better as the events go on. And I am so thankful to be out here in the booth with Andrew Harris and being able to play paintball. Yeah, I'm happy as well. Happy to be here. I heard that um, one of you guys said that I suck on the stream, um, so a big F you. But, you know, besides, <laughs> besides that guy, the rest of you are cool. It's okay. Let the haters hate. Yeah. Um, I'm being told uh, Black I am Masarek, um, Stephen Masarek, also a pro. I don't know who he plays for. Sorry about that. I don't know them all. Um, so it looks like Narcos is going to have three pro players then? Is that between? No, two pro players. Uh, David Maroney. Uh, yeah, David Marothi for Aftermath and Steven Mazarek and then and then Ben Slopper played, you know, like I said, he's a multi time champion with uh, with Misfits. So I would say a big old change. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's good. Now I can see the chat. Uh, the other side of the chat. That's cool. When do the Dutchmen play? Uh, that's a good question, Ryan. Um, they're not on this field. So I can't tell you hundred percent. And Ben is also playing pro in Europe. Yeah, so that makes sense. I mean, Ben's an absolute killer. I watched him just eat people alive on the 10-man field. He really overshot the hell out of everybody, which for me was fun to see. Um, but the guy's a menace. So Narcos, who you're looking at, is going to double up. I don't really like that at all, as one of them does get shot. Um, wow, some very interesting moves. The Narcos is going to take the only pin that I haven't seen play today right in the very, very center of the field. It's kind of just by itself up there. And he can really cut off the field from that part of it. He does have, and he doesn't even see it, but they have, CEP has a, oh, they just look each other's way. This is very interesting. So the CEP player is in the Snake 50. Meanwhile, the Dorito player for Narcos is in their 400. He looks like he's about to get shot. If he's not yet, he does. So two in the Snake for CEP as this point has turned into full chaos. As another one falls, and that very well might be all five. So Hutchinson over here uh, for CEP, putting in some some work, able to look cross field, get a couple of nice kills, and save things from the other side. That was very interesting. Wow, I uh, took my headset off for literally 15 seconds, and then I looked back up at the field, and everybody's dead. Yeah, no, everybody. That was that was I, that was a move I hadn't seen yet. Up into the center, into the pin in between the two 400 Doritos, surrounded by a bunch of tiny pins. I don't mind that move, and if he can stay there and really lock something down, he must. they must have seen something while scouting um, that they really liked from there. That plan just must have not worked out that particular time, but I don't mind that little move. Center stuff seems to be working a little bit out here. There hasn't seemed to be... If you make the move and you're really with it and you and you, and you don't you don't hesitate, you seem to be able. You can get yourself into a poison on the big bricks on the on the opponent's side of the field and cause a little bit of havoc. So the guys on LA Collision play for a Pacific Northwest team called Ology. Oh, this is Ology. Thirty seconds. No. What? Where is um? Ology had a snake player that was pro. Uh, ben Challenger. Is Ben Challenger playing with them? Seconds. I guess Anthony Bonilla might might tell me. Um, but we, I, I watched Ology. Um, I, I watched Ology beat the hell out of the Dutchman um, in semi-pro. That was that was a little rough. They were very, very, very good. I do know, yeah, Ology. Yeah, so we know the collision guys can definitely play. So you're looking at Cartel right there on the screen, getting themselves. Did he get in there? Yes, he did. So, oh, but one of them does get clipped. So four alive. They're going to double a home. Cartel, one more inside of the 
Um, the Viper 2. Viper, sorry. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, taking that Viper 2 and, and making some work with it this time. He hasn't had a ton of success, this guy, uh, for Cartel. Taking, he's, getting, he's, getting, he's been able to get into the Viper every time. Hasn't been able to do some, a lot with it. This time, he's able to take at least two with him. So he'll take that as he just gets ripped alive on his way out of the field. And boy, these last two points, now just crazy. So Cartel, yeah, all five dead for collision. I don't even know how they all died. But Cartel pinching both sides of the field, walking their way up, and they're going to tie this match up 1-1 with 11 minutes left. That was great. That was a very quick point. That was, uh, I think it's going to be less than, Some definitely definitely points. less than a minute. Definitely less than a minute. So Anthony says Ben is not at this event. Yeah, I definitely remembered Ology because of Ben Challenger and watching him just <laughs> do some dominating things in the snake. He was ridiculous. Bobby, water, please. So they play here locally at Impact Action Sports in Oregon. Oh, you're, okay, Anthony is from Oregon. Got it. Sorry, Anthony. So Cartel making big moves. Um, Narcos and CEP up here again. 12 minutes, 30 seconds left. So two incredibly quick points. Um, basically a little over a minute per each seconds. point um, so far in this particular match. I mean, judging from what people are telling me off of Narcos is, N Narcos doesn't seem to be the same team that they were last year. So um, th I don't know if they're being coached by Greenspan in this event. I would assume so as he I feel like Greenspan basically lives in these guys' house. I'm not really sure. Um, oh, and Josh Halberg playing for, okay. Narcos getting a good jump, five alive. The God, both towers, the home, the command center. One of the CEP players taking a walk from the home. Yeah, what a shocking surprise. I expect Ben Slaufer to find himself into the snake here any second from getting himself out of the god. As he doesn't have a whole lot stopping him from the snake side, but they well, might the, have a different game plan. The uh, snake can for CEP, I think, is doing a good job holding that lane. Um, forcing the god Running for referee. Narcos out to the snake corner instead of getting in the snake. A running CEP player, no way. Oh man, you should never be able to make that move in Premier. The uh, the home player for Narcos was not looking snake way when uh, CEP made that move. So Ben Slaufer does find himself into the snake one, but he is matched, and that guy does have the tape. So if Ben looks out, he oh missed him. But Just barely. CEP is going to put himself into the snake corner as well. So one over top. Um, Their Dorito Tower moves out to the Dorito corner right now. Nice quick run, get out there alive. Get to the widest bunkers on the field. The CE play, the CEP snake player calling up now to the snake three. One of the uh, one of the Narcos guys finding himself back into home. It looked like from one of the towers, and then also into the 400. So not a ton of not a ton of play coming out of the 400 there, but I do like to see as a Dorito player somebody pushing something over there. Slaufer over here just waiting for this snake guy to pop himself out on the wire. And he does, and he missed. I can't believe it. Twice. Now into the, oh, I'm sorry. Now the um, Narcos Dorito player is into the 400. He wasn't yet before. Um, if that Narcos player looks cross, and oh, and he does shoot the snake anyway. I was going to say, if the, if the Narcos player had looked cross on the D4, he might be able to uh, peel his head off from up top. But... He does not need to, as Ben's going to take care of that part of it. But they should have, well, at least they did. I believe anyway, CEP still has a snake one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's probably looking he's cross. He's probably looking cross there to hold that 400 in. They do have a Dorito corner still as well. So I think the last two bodies are just staying crossed up on the field. And that Dorito corner. Oh, he's okay. moving up the Doritos. Does not stay looking cross. He's looking down, heads up. Um, and I think one player that apparently must have oh. died for an art or for. Oh, and he yeah, it looks him. like he oh, definitely now he was shot out there. The face. Get him out of there. He's definitely shot in the loader. Oh, that could have been a penalty. So another good one. 
So a little fun fact about Narcos, and I don't know if it was said earlier or not, but it's funny we were talking about quick points earlier. Uh, and Narcos said, most sexy team name and jerseys uh, in the game, yeah. one minute crew. High probability of winning points under one minute or losing points in one minute. So whether it's one minute points, it's apparently they understand that it's on both sides. They've lost them and won them in under a minute. Yeah, I believe that. They're also kind of like we said, um, they're, they're, they're HK Army's factory team. Um, paintball Gateway Temecula factory team. Um, also one of their sponsors, R&L company factory team. I wonder how that works. The shipping company, R&L? Um, and then practice and, and event seconds. media costs. Pit crew, with the agreement on first place podium. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It sounds like they have a lot of sponsorship. So that's good. Good for Narcos. Keep up the good work. Um, I know they got a lot of lines and a lot of different divisions. We got to play them in, oh, the ASG. We played them at the ASG uh, a month or two ago. It was a lot of fun. It's Cartel and Collision back out here. Looks like Cartel losing a body off the break. He was trying to go to the God. Collision gonna Didn't keep make alive it. Alive. Run, running ref running going ref in to check the Viper, Viper and, and penalty, penalty flying. So that's going to hurt. That's going to leave only two alive. That ref is angry. Ooh, I'm that's, my, that's my homie. I'm telling you, he, he, he has the best pulls in all the game. Wow. So Collision is going to very methodically, and now they rip up that center player. So uh, if I'm Cartel, I don't know why you wouldn't just towel this. Like I, don't, I, I don't think uh, the Cartel center player um, knew there's that five, there was a penalty. There's five alive for Collision. There's one Dorito 200 player. Like, what are you doing? Ring the bell. Say we'll see you next game instead of letting your player just get eaten alive out here. Okay. Well, I guess Collision was nice and didn't come run him down with a force of five guns, so that's good. So Collision going to go up 2-1 uh, against Cartel. Back to CEP versus Narcos. Narcos leading 2-1 uh, to one with uh, just under 10 minutes left in this match. CEP, you got Christian, um, Sefuente, Scott. Evan Manners, <laughs> Colin Cherry, Michael Hooks, Corey Jones, Martel Hutchinson. Um, sponsored by Mischievous sponsored Gear. By which we haven't looked up yet, but we will. I think there'll be lunch at some point, and we'll, we'll go on break, and we'll look up Mischievous Gear. 20 seconds. <laughs> the most sexy team name in all the game. That's, listen, Narcos, that is a bold... I, well, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Sexiest name because we. I mean, we got pink dolphins out here. Yeah, we got, we got Baton buff Rouge pink dolphins. Bu buff buff dolphins. pink dolphins. Like, that's got to be. Oh. And, and, I don't know. Narcos. We're gonna have to talk about it later. Uh, Narcos changing up their approach here. Ben Slaufer. Oh, and he does get tagged. Oh so man. I thought they were gonna get a minute point. No. So but the Narcos changed things up. They're gonna lose three incredibly quick. It looked, they tried it again. They tried to go to that pin that you can't play. Looked like CEP took a little page of that, awesome. that book because they're playing the tiny pin. And there's a and fourth body gone, up. and oh, now their last body is dead. So okay. CEP just taking a storm down the field. I literally couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't say the words fast enough to describe no. these guys dying. Well, um, I guess uh, Narcos' oh. description is uh, very accurate. It's living true, uh, living very, true. Very capable of winning points in under a minute mm. and losing points in under a minute. We've seen that happen, what, three points now? Yeah. So. <laughs> I see uh, Seattle Carta and uh, LA Collision walking out on the field. Head into the box, far side away from each of their pits. Looks like they're fist bumping, high five in the middle of the field. Love to see that. Keep the morale up. Keep the good sportsmanship. That's the way that um, it should be, man. Like, honestly. I, I mean, yeah, you're out here to absolutely punish each other, but, like, you can still be nice to each other. I yeah. Someone has a good shot on you, snaps you out, whatever. Give them a high five. Tell them good shot. Move on. You know, I will say, I didn't like, although we didn't like the commentary in Texas, those Texas teams, quite nice, most of all of them. Yes. I thought we got along with pretty much everybody out there. Everyone was, you know, very cool, calm, collected, no issues, no problems. Yep. Especially the, the Gateway guys, you know, couldn't oh. have been one bit nicer. Yeah, shout out PB Gateway. You guys shout are awesome. Gateway for sure. Super friendly. 
Collision and Cartel back at it. Let's see if Cartel, Cartel has had, man, quite the tournament so far. They've been up, they've been down, they've had penalties, they've had, I mean, just a bunch of stuff going on. As a running ref goes in to check the God player in the Cartel, giving him a very, very hefty check. But he says he's clean. So they're gonna stick with five alive. It's usually a good on sign when the, when the ref is taking forever to check you. Means that they haven't found a hit on you yet. So. Drone lens is blurry. RNL pretty sure is the company that gets the paint moved around the country. Yes, I would imagine RNL is one of the shipping companies that, that does that, yeah. Um, I will tell uh, Ryan to clean the lens on the drone. It looks, are you sure it's us, not yeah, you? It, I want to refresh your page. It does look a little. It does look a little blurry. Um, it might just be the bit rate of the stream. I'm not sure. All right, maybe I'm just blind. Sorry, Kyle. So collision has um, themselves into the center brick, the Viper Two. They are matched with Seattle Cartel's Viper Two. Collision gets themselves into the Snake 2 as well, and then into the Snake 3 and the Viper 50. So they are pushing themselves nicely, although I'm not 100% certain that they know that there's a Viper. Oh, that guy would have just. All right, that drone footage looks pretty crystal clear to me. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think maybe it's just so high up. Um... Oh, nice oh, move on the wow. Viper guy. Runs down and takes the trade on the. Oh, now he definitely does. I don't know how that snake can didn't get hit right there. And oh, if he's, he's not hit, he's about to be. He is now. So that's that's two. It looks like um, a collision guy. Oh. Oh, the god. Uh -oh. It's the god. So it's uh, one body alive for so one Shadow on two. Cartel. Yep, 2v1. He's honestly in a great spot. You want to be in one of these wide corner bunkers in a one-on-one uh, -on -one or one-on-two situation um, to limit the abil limit the abil ability for the other team to pinch you out. Uh, but as I say that, he does die. Probably takes a ball to the face, I think. Um, towel is thrown by Shadow Cartel. Uh, collision going up three to one. Back to Narcos and CEP all tied up. Just about nine minutes left in this game. So it's going to be Narcos on the bottom of your screen right now or on the left side and CEP on the far side. Over on the right. Take another quick moment to shout out our sponsors. Uh, Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez, Law PC, Committed Paintball, Maxed, Lone Wolf Paintball, and Matrix Gear USA. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys are enjoying yourself, enjoying the stream. We're glad the sun's out. Where is Soup? Not here, brother. <laughs> oh, it looks like uh, Narcos losing two bodies off the break, one out of the home and one out of the god. EP going to lose one, two out of the home. <laughs> and Narcos losing another body, and, and it looks like a a another penalty. God. Wow. Hey, well, that's... um. I think that's the second penalty so far out of 10 uh, for whoever was saying they wish that uh, Narcos gets 10 penalties. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I forgot about that. Hey, first five, are you keeping are you keeping track on the on the penalty count? I know you wanted 10. <laughs> oh, there you go. He says bye bye Narcos. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's awesome. That was at least two. So. Uh, yeah, it's at least two so far. I've been trying to keep count. Um, First five is on it. He's, he's going to know what's up. He said, keep them coming. 
Oh, uh, Austin Slays TV joined the stream. Oh, Austin Slays TV. Do you know who that is? I do know who Austin, Austin Slays, Slays TV is. Austin Slays makes some incredible videos. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but that guy is a G. That guy puts out some excellent YouTube stuff. You guys should definitely check Austin it out. Austin said, who are these announcers? Yeah. Uh, my name is Kyle Kerr, and next to me is... Mr. Andrew Harris. You guys probably don't know who either one of us are, but that's okay. You guys bet you, bet you guys know who Austin Slays is. What's up? And it's funny because Austin Slays is actually on our line for uh, Arizona Pole Position D4. Um, love that guy. Great guy. Makes some great content. TC saying WC over NXL all day. See, TC knows what's up. That's what I'm talking about. Ten seconds. <laughs> Eugene Cousins, Austin and his wife rule the videos. That's what I'm talking about, Eugene. Oh, thanks, Gage. Appreciate you, homie. All right, let's get back into this collision. Five alive. Nice breakout. Five guns up on the way, and they didn't get any kills, which is a little bit surprising. Uh-oh, Seattle Cartel. Five alive, but it looks like their snake can is having some gun issues right Definitely now. I'm trying to figure that out. Fun. Boy, that is not fun. Home player for collision, getting himself out of there, getting to the god. So this is what I like. They're definitely a little bit more spread out. These seem to be the more workable points when you're not chilling at the home. Seattle Cartel got the home, the god, the snake can, the uh, center wedge, and the baby Dorito. That snake can is still messing with his gun, though. I wonder if he's going to be able to get it back up and running. And, you know, if you're him, this is when this is when some high IQ paintball takes into effect. If he is able to at least mess with his gun while, while checking, while head checking every now and again, he can at least oh. help his team say some, say some things. All right, he's head checking now. I wonder if his gun is uh, working. Nope, still looking at it, not... Not working. And they're going to lose their command center. So somebody, okay, and it does get filled by the home player. Great fill. Good job. I think that that gun is still down. Yes, that gun it definitely is still down. Uh, they lose their Dorito player. Um, Los Angeles closes in and gets their snake player up. Running ref. Uh, ref. Oh, and check. that's a hit, isn't it? Uh, it's rub. Oh, it's a rub. We just called it rub. Yep. So Cartel has three alive. Collision oh, still with five now only, alive. Now, a two, now two alive. And another towel yep. thrown by Seattle Cartel. I'm no sorry. No penalties, though. Yep. 4-1 in favor of Collision. No penalties at that point for uh, anybody. Uh, N3K Rossi. TJ uh, looks great. They're 1-0. Uh, yeah, bring it back to CEP and Narcos here. 3-2. Really exciting games. I mean, we played five points in six in just a little over six and a half game time minutes. So these guys are punishing each other and quickly, which is always, always fun for us to see. Um, I know we, we've got, we certainly have one or two listeners that would prefer all the penalties for Narcos. But you know. uh, Shady says, come on, Cartel, pull it back. Hey, uh, earlier today they played Grind City, and they were down quite a bit of points, ended up coming back, uh, forcing it to overtime, and then winning in overtime 7-6. to six. They played 13 points. That was crazy. That was uh, we've had. I mean, we had we've had a couple. We've had like one five zero, no two five zeros, and then a couple like t 11, 12, 13 point matches. Yes, insane amount of points being played on this layout. Super fast. Oh, it looks like CEP he just took off early. out the box. Yeah, for he sure. definitely left yep. early. I've yeah. seen quite a few players been taken off early today, but refs just yep. And that is such a bad mental mistake. And oh. CEP is now just going to get blown right off the field. Get him out of there too. Yep. There's three walking off. And Narcos is just going to storm up this uh, snake side. Hopefully, if they uh, realize all these There's bodies are walking There's a penalty, and that's going to be all five. Another penalty, Another and five. all five. So that's CEP on the penalty. That was like a 38-second point. And I think and that they had enough bodies to pull, but I'm not 100% positive. I don't. I don't think they did. We're going to get a ref over here to, to tell Thank us. You. I believe the last player that was standing on the field was a home player. And he had the penalty. I thought, yeah, I thought they called it on the home player, but I yes. wasn't sure if they still had a snake corner to pull. No, he was dead from what I saw. Oh, I think they're probably going to start down a body, but let's see if I can mess up like eight calls in a row now. Oh, yep, we got it see? right. We got it right. Let's go. <laughs> um, I got, we got, well, I don't know, Kyle mostly got it, but yeah, we're about one for about seven calls here. 
So hey, when flags fly, I'm paying attention. So for those uh, not paying too much attention or don't quite know, what happened was CEP got a penalty with only one player remaining. So they, the refs were looking for another player to pull. There was no player to pull. Because of that, they will start, CEP will start one person down on the next point. So the next point will be 54 um, in favor of Narcos. So that will be, that's going to hurt. That's, uh, especially for a team like Narcos who has declared that they want to push it, that's going to be tough. Oh, collision! Uh, this is, this is kind of late to the boy, box a little bit. Extremely late. Cartel getting into the 200, doubling up the home, but losing the god, and then oh boy, and the, again, Cartel being just driven off the field. Both of them getting blasted out of god. The one getting uh, dried out of the Doritos. Now one getting shot out of the Snake Tower. They have one guy left. Oh boy, and this this guy's never gonna make it. Nope. Uh, Joey says, refs been waiting all season to throw penalties. They've been brewing. Respect to the refs, though. Yeah, mad respect. But yeah, definitely true. a lot of penalties flying today um, uh, at WCPPL, season opener. Joey, I don't know if you've been paying attention. I, I've never, I, and I've only commentated a couple times on this stream, but I've never seen more penalties than I've seen today. I mean, it, they, are, they, are, they are not allergic to the flags today. That is for certain. No one's getting any mercy. Point approved. I do like that uh, the sun is still out right now, sun's shining. Yeah, again, you California guys, thank you for all of you telling me how it was going to rain and it's going to pour and then immediately turns into sunrise, or rather just the sun out. does look like there's some clouds coming our way, though, so hopefully right, they, uh, they, don't <laughs> they don't stay here too what, long. What kind, of, what kind of cloud system are you looking at over so there? So that right now, there's uh, looks like... Some convective activity with some cumulus clouds. Oh my goodness, cumulus clouds, guys, you hear that? That sounds dangerous. Yeah. Oh, but we do have a drone up. Yes, we do. It's pouring down a bit south. Well, that's not here. Necrosis, oh, I get it, necrosis, okay, got it. It's pouring down a bit south, yeah, I hope that, uh, I think the winds and everything are taking the storms further south or further, further east, so hopefully it doesn't, uh, Come back up this way. 3-3, three, three. Narcos, CEP, CEP starting down a body. Eight minutes to go in this match. I would put my money on Narcos on this one. That looked like Ben left early on that one. I'm surprised that he didn't get pulled, honestly. They're Double. doubling up a weird bunker. I will say that Narcos is doing the most interesting game plan out of anybody that we've seen so far. CEP pushing up the oh, middle. Oh, that's going to hurt. He got a wrong call from his teammate. He went to yep. bunker the wrong bunker. And he, shot the, he tried to shoot the Dorito and missed him. So uh, Narcos is going to stay with five alive. So it's going to be a 53 scenario. Um, Narcos firmly in the pocket uh, with both towers and the home there. Should just be a matter of time before they start to pinch these guys out as the Dorito Tower falls, exactly as I say that. Yep, CEP so taking a walk. That Dorito Tower looked like he took a bounce. They're going to let him play. Again, Narcos playing weird bunkers, playing that weird pin over there. Definitely playing more weird bunkers than I've seen out of anybody today, 100%. Hey, if they're making it work and nobody else can, then I, I'm not going to argue with them. That Dorito player is putting in work. He is about to get one. Get him out. Get. You've got to be kidding. Oh, yeah. Uh, Narcos was definitely hit before he shot the that Dorito CEP Tower. The player is calling. For oh, yeah, my bro, goodness. And they're you calling. can't do wow. that. The CEP player wanted to just argue and argue and argue, and look what happens. They get a major penalty, and here's what's even worse. With 6 minutes 52 seconds left, they're going to be down a point now, down 3-4, and they're going to be down a body because CEP, and look at CEP, is still on the field. They're still arguing. Guys, you can't do this. The ref doesn't, the ref's call is always final. I have never seen in my life where a running ref goes in, throws a penalty, and then is like, you know what, guys, you're right. I'm wrong. I should, you know, let, me, let us pick all that up. It doesn't happen, especially when you come and try to argue with these guys. Like, they're going to flame you. So, CEP kind of doing what they can to just mess themselves up. Yeah, but Narco's getting away with cheating. I mean, maybe, but I, but I can't, you know, I can't see it all from this part. See, the guy, the CEP is still arguing. Oh, and now Bobby's going to get in his ear. I don't know. I guess we're just going to keep talking about it today. Like, I don't know why. I <laughs> keep, keep picking fights with the refs, man. It's just never going to work. Yeah. So, just like we said, yep. CEP down one player and down a point with six minutes to go. I think we're getting a little better at this. Uh, 
Figuring out how many bodies are going to be up or down uh, at the box. Ooh, that's when true. penalties yeah, are that's flying, we're getting two. better. Yeah. We're two for our last two on that. Home field love. Uh, Sil Sylvie, 1904, is out here. The big man is here. I just I just seen him somewhere. I don't know if he's on the premier field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretches over there on the Dorito side. He's hanging out. Yeah, it's really easy to find Stretch. That man is tall. And a really long, like, gray, white beard. He does some really, really cool shots, too, the... the, the his photography is excellent. Oh, yes. All right, we got the drone uh, coming in. Going to be looking at, oh, I thought I was going to be looking at Collisions Breakout, but I guess we're looking at Seattle Cartel. Five minutes on the clock. Five to one in favor of Collision. Collision with a really good breakout. They're calling for a check on the guy in the corner. They are going to get that kill. Snake Runner, uh, yep, Snake Runner dying off the break. Boy, Collision really putting it on Cartel here. Up five to one, just under five minutes to go, up five bodies to four. Oh, and the big man making a run to the god. Did he make it? Um, yes, yes, he did. Cartel calling for another check. Looks like he's not going to get that check, but still five alive. Ooh, the wind starts blowing a little bit. Collision now into the snake three. This guy's been doing damage. Definitely knows how to play the position quite well. They're going to get a kill out of the god. Collision will. So Cartel down to their last Two. Three. They, gotta, they have the Snake One, the Home, and the Dorito. Okay. But this collision player, oh yeah, I see them. I see him now. This collision player, if he stands up, yeah, he should be able to, yes, he shot that, shot the Dorito guy in the home. I'm sorry, sh shot the Dorito player in the hand. He's trying to get this kill on the Snake One, but he's not going to be able to see him from here. If he just looks up a little bit, I think that he might be able to take that Dorito Tower out from where he's at as well. And he has, he's got an over on him. His Snake One should be telling Snake 50 to go just go ahead and look cross or or keep going. But now he just needs to stand up, go punish this guy across from him. He's not going to do it. Looks like the collision snake player is just going to be patient, waiting for uh, Cartel. Oh, he uh, oh, Cartel Snake retreat. retreats back to Snake 1. And nobody saw that. So neither the Snake 1 nor the Snake 4 guy saw that. So the Snake 4 guy is just going to sit here and wait for this guy to come run him down, but he's not coming for him. So they, uh, as Collision loses the body out of the Dorito side, they have a Dorito side command center player. He needs to know that he has the ball. He just looked over this way and pointed his guns at his own player. So he is a little bit lost right now. They need to relay to him that he has the ball and that he needs to be pushing over there. Yeah, so that was, that was really good. Oh, so he, he only got one kill out of it, but he was finally bang, able bang. to look cross. And, and now they got the tower kill as well. It's never fun to get shot in the hand, especially when it's cold. I don't know who the throat goat is. I can't scroll up on that to see what's going on there. <laughs> oh, boy. The fields are a little wet. Um, we've have had, you know, we've had some rain throughout the morning, but they're like it's like a nice layer of water, like where you can start to really just like take those slides and slide an extra like 20, 30 feet than you would normally have been able to. So that's always fun. So yes, the fields are a little wet, but in like it's a good way. It's all a good deal.
So CEP uh, Narcos now. CEP starting down a body because of that penalty um, yet again. Yeah, so uh, Last this point. is now two of these what will be eight points played that CEP is going to start automatically a man down. Like, how do you expect to win in Premier when you're when you're doing that? It's, it's not a thing. CEP, four live off the break. Taking really pushing those Doritos. A Dorito 200 with a snake tower. Again, like they have two at the home. Now you need to get out of there, otherwise they're going to blast you to pieces. CEP really needs this point to tie it up. Narcos doubled up the home, filling out the home to the wedge, but gets caught on the way there. Uh, CEP pushing up in the Doritos now. <laughs> so four alive on both sides. It's a good sign for CEP. Yeah, it is a good sign, I say that. but unfortunately now they have a they have a Dorito 400 player who's just completely by himself because they were doubled up at the home until just now. Well, they have one breakout, but Narcos is going to lose yep. another one. So it's a three on three. Wow, this just should have never happened. CP into the snake one. I do uh -oh. think that he knows where he's at though. And as I'm soon pretty as sure Narcos. Yep. Is, Narcos yep, saw CP yep. go into the snake, waited for him to go around a knuckle. So and I caught just, him slipping. I just wonder if they know where the, that they're in the 400. Because if the 400 looks cro if Okay. Yeah, see, the, the, the snake Narcos player literally does not know the, the snake, the, the kill count. As Narcos loses another player. So the, the, the Narcos in the snake one definitely knows that there's a Dorito player over there somewhere. But I, he doesn't seem to com be communicating it to his snake I mean, player. Narcos well, is just going to go all the way down. I was going to say, the home player has kind of lost track of the snake guy completely. And bye-bye to the home. And the only player left is the 400 for CEP. But I don't think he hasn't shot him. So 1v2, I believe. So here comes yep. the collision. What CEP is? retreating to get a better, what? better spot. The, the, the Narcos guy playing a, not really in bunkers, just kind of. I think Narcos is trying to get a shot on him. I mean, CEP, the real player, ball. playing really, really smart that right was. now. And he's finally hit. All right, so eventually the Narcos player does, in fact, make the right move, get all the way out to the Dorito side and smoke that guy. I think oh, because of we how. Just had a, oh, my God. You must be kidding. Wow. So CEP with another penalty for talking after the point. So they're probably going to start down another body. They might start down two bodies because they don't have anybody to give. Oh, because he was talking while he was already dead. And while everybody oh. else is dead. Okay. So Juan, the, the ref Juan with just a, I mean, just don't mess with this guy. So just one down next point for CEP. Wow. I keep that's, telling them not to yell at you guys. They're not listening. That's the uh, second time today we've seen a team have to start a body down. I'm talking about all on stream. I said, Narcos. stop messing with the refs, man. They're, 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 they're Due to talking. Narcos. On Greenspan. Um, <laughs> 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 we'll cut back to live a little bit too early here. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. I mean, just a small discussion um, with the referees and with the coaches. So.
All right, back to uh, Narcos and CEP. CEP starting down a body once again. So they are 45 against Narcos, down five to three with four and a half on the clock. Uh, CEP four live off the break. Narcos getting shot uh, soon after the break. So 44 now. Narcos having the Dorito Tower, Dorito Corner, the center wedge, snake can, and the home. CEP having the Dorito Tower, the home, uh, asking for a check right now. Uh, from a ref. Narcos making two really good moves at the same time. Uh, moving out of the Dorito, uh, moving out of both towers into the God and into the end of the, the Dorito 300 here. They're nice and well spread here. Five to three points for Narcos with just three minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Um, one, two, three. It looks, uh, looks like four alive still. Oh, three alive for CEP. Oh, two alive for CEP as they lose two real quick. And the CEP breaks out of the snake side bunker, uh, tries to get into the god, then tries to get into the snake one. He's able to make it there by himself. And I don't know if he knows he's there, but they did shoot uh, the Dorito side tower first. So it is just one body left for CEP, I think. Yep, just one body left. He's they, in the snake. They do know where he's at. So there's the concession. Another towel thrown by CEP. So Narco let's see if Narcos CEP now up 6-3 with uh, just over three minutes left in the let's game. Let's see if CEP wants to get themselves another penalty here after the fact. No, they are going to leave the field this time um, without being penalized. So at least there's that. Travis, you're welcome for the stream. All right, guys, we're back. CEP, Narcos, five on five for the first time in a little bit. Yeah, finally uh, CEP having uh, five bodies on the box. Sorry, guys, there's been a lot of a lot of question marks in this match as to what's going on and what's happening. Yes, there I, I see in the chat there are people talking after the mat after they're getting shot, getting penalties while they're walking off the field. CEP has started down two times with less bodies. This very last point, there was a concession, but one of the Narcos guys either didn't hear it, was still running down the field, trying to get checked. There was time being taken off the field. So it's a little bit of some, some. Uh, I, I, well, I don't really know what to call it. Uh, well, I know what to call it, but I can't say it on, on here. Anyway, CEP making their way into um, the, uh, making their way into Narcos Brick and then into their command center. He's all up in their grill right now, and they do not know that he's there. I think Narcos only has three bodies alive right now. Narcos has. Now two. Um, and there's a oh. pen another penalty flying hey. on Narcos. Whoever wanted that penalty so for Narcos. That's uh, three out of ten now for Narcos, for sure. I may have lost count, but I have counted three. We do have a Narcos player in the snake, as well as a CE player, CEP player in the snake. And he just got shot on the arm. Got him out I think it's a one-on-one. Yep. On one. yep. And no, it was a one-on-two. No, it's a it's so now, now it's a two-on-one, and here comes that yep. that Narcos player running down the, and he does get shot. So, he does, but he did trade, and he doesn't. So the snake player is the only one left. Santos here, um, and he does not know. 
Well, he's about to figure it out that he's the last one here. There's the concession. Man, so there's still a minute 37 left in this match that we've played 10 points. And um, we're going to play at least another one. Eugene says, what's the over under on Narco Flags? Um, right now they have three uh, that I have counted. I may have missed one or two, but I think the over under should be what? Uh, and then Sergio asked how many penalties CEP has. At least two, I think. No, three. they no, they have they have four. Well, I've count, I'm pretty sure I've counted four. I thought the Narcos guys have four. No, Narcos has three. Oh boy. Of what I counted. Yeah. And CEP, um, they started two times uh, down a body on the box. Um, another penalty before that where they had bodies pulled, and another penalty at the very beginning of the match as well. So. Um. Yeah, we weren't kidding about flags flying, guys. They are just they are just not scared to be throwing them. It's awesome. I it believe makes things really fun for us. It also makes things a little bit confusing as the things are going real quick and we're just trying to make sure everything is working properly and everything is everyone's getting pulled properly. The times are set correctly, points are set correctly. There's a whole bunch of channels everyone's gotta talk to. I got coaches that are asking questions, players that are trying to get themselves kicked out of here. So there's a whole lot going on. Eugene saying, got to get with that dirty goth boy for betting. Yeah, that's Mickey Mace. Uh, look him up on Instagram. Um, a lot of times he posts about the sports betting that he brought um, the connections to to start a casino with um, doing sports betting for paintball for NXL, I believe, is the only um, available uh, betting on paintball at the moment. Which is lame. Sorry. Should be able to bet on WCPPL. I got bets I'd like to play. That indeed. So CEP making some excellent moves. They up up into the brick. They go around the D t uh, the D tower and get into the 200. But it is going to be five alive for Narcos. It looks like uh, CEP's the Dorito Tower players having a gun issue right now. Uh, I might have been able to get it back up. Uh, I'm not sure. As they lose their Dorito player. So now four alive for CEP. They move up into Snake One. Home throws out to the Dorito Tower. I uh, still have the center wedge. Narcos is gonna, the Narcos snake player is gonna rip up uh, the Dorito side. Oh, and the center player. Three people taking a walk for CEP. This Narcos um, player is just standing in the snake. Just no worries, no problems. He's about to rip up the snake one player, I think. Yep. Narcos, Under 60 seconds, Narcos up by four. And shot him too. Um, looks like this is gonna secure the, uh, <laughs> the mercy. Um, Narcos is gonna go up 5-0 now. And it's gonna be game regardless. Narcos doesn't know Narcos the kill sitting count. At the home box. Um, he's sitting there at the home box, waving his finger, telling everybody that it's over. <laughs> Having to have a, a long field discussion. Meanwhile, you got Narcos players diving into the into the Doritos. Everyone died so quick. The Dorito guy is still <laughs> still doesn't know. Narcos home guy shooting a pot on the ground. Having some fun. <laughs> Filling his loader. <laughs> Gonna just let time run out and that was sick. That'll be it as they let the, the clock run out. Um, Narcos winning that match against CEP, seven to three. So 15 minute game time, 10 points played. Yeah. And some of them were like like 40 seconds. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, yes, yes, okay. Misunderstood, got it. <laughs> Hi, El Torrance, miss you, babe. Called you Google God. <laughs> Did she really? Called you Son Google God. A, it's babe. <laughs> Goggle, not Google. Quitsky said hitting the buzzer is so overrated. <laughs> Wait, Quitsky's in here? Oh, hey, look at that. If any of you guys know, don't know, Quitsky, one of the one of the dopest videographers in the game, although we haven't seen him on the paintball side here for a while. And then we got Dylan Boynum also in the chat here. That's pro. Looks like refs gathering on the field right now. I've been in here all morning, Quitsky says. I, I ha Quitsky, I haven't seen the chat from this part of it. Sorry. 818 late nerds. All right. 
I don't know, I don't know what that means. I could not tell you. <laughs>So we got a couple minute break. Um, no, Quitsky, I don't get it. Sorry, dude. Um, anyway, got a couple minute break here. I don't really know what these breaks are about. I think maybe just a time for the, I would say for the for the rest to take their masks off, but only half of them have their mask off sitting there in the middle. Maybe they're just talking about like how many more flags they would like to throw out. Like that they're they're trying to hit their over under on the day. I would imagine that they're closing in on their over much more on their under because they are letting them fly today. Oh, Andrew. Uh, by the way, Quitsky is eight one eight productions. Oh, okay. Well. So that's what they were talking about in the chat. I guess I'm not, I'm not an I'm I'm not an OG. And only I'm, OGs know. I'm not one of the real ones. Sorry, dog. HK Army says let's go Bloodhawks. Yeah, Bloodhawks look good. They won that match against uh, Violence earlier. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a great match ahead of us, TJ, against the Bloodhawks. Oh, first five points. Uh, sports Ooh. calling Bloodhawks five penalties and no points. Uh-oh. Killing it. Well, let's see. I mean, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be fun I'm watching that. That's cool. Man, oh, these we guys, got some these drone really, on drone action right now? Guys are what is this? Me. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, Brian, I hope you don't get hit with that drone. Can someone please go to the violence field and fix the damn umbrella? I can't see it. Oh, is it covering one of the cameras maybe, Jonathan? David Kim said this will be a good match. Uh, yes, indeed. I, could, I can agree with you there. Uh, TJ Bashers and Bloodhawks both looking, were looking really solid today. Um, Bloodhawks had a few mistakes that they just needed to fix up. And I think they probably uh, did so in the time between their matches. And we'll see you here. Bloodhawks on the right. TJ on the left. Uh, both five alive right now as Bloodhawks making it towards the god. Jonathan, we're going to fix that camera for you right now. Yeah, TJ and Bloodhawks here. This one is going to be awesome. Um, I'm putting my money on TJ. What do you got, Kyle? Um, I, I say Bloodhawks. Um, awesome. It looks like a ref running in to check the uh, TJ player in the Dorito Tower. He's calling him clean, so it's a good sign for you, Andrew. I am taking TJ. I am taking TJ to win this whole dang thing, so I do expect some Ws here. Um, still five alive, getting themselves out of the double home. Always good. Well, but a running referee coming in to check that god. Bloodhawks gets into the snake clean. They are going to the pull him court. out. No penalty, though. Uh-oh, so 54 in favor of Bloodhawks. Let's go. The eight people watching the stream, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, dog. That Viper player playing uh, real tall is going to decide to uh, get rid of that bunker and trade it out for the Snake 1 instead. They have a – Bloodhawks have a Snake 3 player and a Snake 1 player. Bloodhawks player coming in, asking for a check. Bobby will say, continue He's playing, clean. sir. Uh, maybe, yep, clean. Yeah. And uh, TJ losing their Dorito Tower player. Um, so TJ doesn't need all five players to it win. Looks no. like they really only need like one. Looks like three on five. And this Dorito player looking snake Bloodhawks. side, I think. Oh. Can't, he won't be able to see him from that. Uh, he's not gonna be able to see him. That uh, center, that center brick is covering the snake 50 from that Dorito, uh, that 200. Oh, Archie Barnes Jr. in the chat too. What's up, FSU? Archie's a super cool guy. ABJ. Oh, uh, we got TJ getting in the snake two. And trying to shoot cross, trying to shoot that Dorito one. Looks like he wasn't able to pick that up. So Bloodhawks picked up the snake two call, but don't know that TJ uh, he gonna retreated take the snake to the snake, snake yeah, one. Back. Still five alive for Bloodhawks. Bloodhawks looking really comfortable right now. Uh, nice and easy, taking their time, trying to make sure that they can pinch out these uh, these three players. Eight 
ABJ or, uh, here in the chat, about to have a baby, I think, here any day, or just had one. Uh, so either an early congratulations or a later congratulations, future congratulations to you, ABJ. Bloodhawks moving up, and the snake past the snake 50 into past the snake 50 TJ's and he pops side. Up here. Yeah, and he's gonna, but able that, to see the Dorito. That Dorito player now knows he's here, and he missed him. So if he's able to, yeah, and he's able to get his gun out, he should be able to stay there, and he should be, I would I'd be lofting paint all over here. Yes, I would too. And that's what he just started doing. I just, I feel like one of those is going to find them, find their way in there. Only problem now is uh, he has to stay really, really tight. Was able to put that Dorito player in. Yeah, that's kind of a stalemate right now. Trying. He looks like he's almost trying to hit the bounce shot on it. But he, I feel like he's fairly neutralized. If he stays there, he's bound to get this kill. He's got no pressure coming on him from the outside of the Dorito there. Oh, he, do, he, does, he is matched on the... Bloodhawks do have a Dorito two player. Oh, and smart move from the from the Bloodhawks uh, backing up just a couple of feet here. Now he's able to at least play this bunker on both sides and not have to worry about the Dorito. Then he's gotta be careful of that paint uh, bouncing off. Oh, here we go. Oh, what a move wow, from the snake player for Bloodhawks. Gonna look across the field, shoot that Dorito player. So that Bloodhawks get him? player. I don't think he got. Oh man, really? So able to so shoot the home shoot out, the and Dorito only left yep. for, and there goes the concession for TJ. Bloodhawks now up 1-0 with 10 and a half left. All right, so, oh, we have Phoenix Rising versus Philippines. Philippines on the right, Phoenix Rising on the left. So me and Kyle are from Arizona. Kyle, who you got? Um, man, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to vote for Phoenix Rising. Um, you know, it's an AZ team. I actually used to play with Rising for a little bit. Um, Sorry about this drone angle, guys. Ryan's going to figure this out here in just a second and, and switch this over to gameplay. We will just tell you um, that Rising has five alive, uh, Dorito 2, Command Center, uh, Snake Tower, God, and Snake Corner, Philippines, four. Oh, look Looks at like this. Phoenix look Rising this going run. for a big bunker. So Rising is going to take out the Command Center. The Dorito 200. He and it looks like he just hit the Dorito, the Dorito tower as well. Tower. Yep. So rising guys, we'll take a quick first point. Um, yeah, rising gonna take that first point real quick. They look great. That was quite the run through from far deep. Oh yeah, I believe he took off from the home, went all the way through the middle, bunkered their uh, center brick. Man, it was, that was a big run. Meanwhile, the Bloodhawks and TJ back on the field. I'm taking TJ to go ahead and even this thing up 1-1 on this one. I don't know, Bloodhawks were looking really solid. They're, uh, they're off the break shots. I will say the Bloodhawks look incredibly more improved than how they were looking last year. That's for sure. They had, I believe they had five alive that last point, that first point. 
Yeah, they look. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. They definitely look like a like a new team. Even Quitsky says. Uh, they got uh oh. To stand. They Almost them. a jump from the Bloodhawks. He does tag back up and then goes out to the Dorito corner. And he still made it. So still five alive for the Hawks. Uh, only four alive for TJ. Uh, and one. what did I say? Uh, their off the break shots are just yep. on point right now for Bloodhawks. Uh, shooting at TJ, body off the break, making him take the walk. Bloodhawks already in the snake, moving up to the snake three right now. Um, nobody knows that he's in the snake because I've got no guns looking at the snake. Zero. He's about to make it all the way down, look up, and just catch four bodies. Well, as one t walks off for TJ. And he's just going to keep going. Uh -oh. Another one p comes out to the god. He's going to shoot the command center. He's going to shoot the, the tower. tower he's and shoot the that's the point. God, and that's it. Bloodhawks, man. God, the O'Meal. Bloodhawks. One minute. Okay, okay, okay. I've been I've been pretty on point with my uh, predictions today. I think we're fairly close to even, actually. Lots of Hawks fans in the chat. Lots of Hawks fans in the chat. <laughs> Shout out HK Army. H HK, big big fan of the Hawks. <laughs> Meanwhile, we'll jump back to this Rising Philippines game. First match of the day for Rising. Um, they didn't fill out our little questionnaire here, so I don't have a ton to tell you about them. Um, what I can tell you is that this roster is a little bit of a mix of three different teams. Um, Rising Premier from last year, Scottsdale Elevation from last year, and AZ Battlezone that plays semi-pro in the NXL. Oh. So they that was kind of an early jump from Phoenix Rising, but he didn't get caught out. He made it to the God Bunker alive. They got new jerseys. They got new sponsorship. Phoenix Rising done with HK Army. On to weapons. Um, they got a new look. They got you know they got new stuff going on. They got new people. So I wonder how uh, Phoenix Rising feels about the switch as they lose their oh, Snake their One snake player. player. Loses his walk. That's Jay Reynoso, excellent, excellent snake player. You can really get a lot of work done in there if, you, if they can get him in there correctly. Uh, I believe Q is on this team. Uh, Evan McCarty, um, a couple of other guys that I know. And oh, Phoenix Rising losing their Dorito Tower. Looks like just three alive now for Phoenix Rising as five alive for Philippines. And uh, Philippines. Losing their Isn't that center guy, attacker? and as well as someone in the back. So it's now a three on three, all tied up on bodies. Phoenix Rising doing a good job in that low body situation. I like the Philippines position better than I do Rising's. The Philippines is definitely a little bit more split with having the Dorito 200, the Dorito Tower, and the God over here. If they want to, it looks like that snake side can is trying to keep that uh, that god in from getting in the snake, but if they can make that move, they can really be, they can really start pinching out, pinching out rising. Phoenix Rising home player did move up to the Dorito Tower. Now we're into the uh, center wedge. Is that Cooch? Might be Cooch. It's possible, I can't tell from here. Philippines remaining calm though, standing their ground, shooting out that center wedge player, so now a Two on three situation in favor of Philippines. Rising Phil makes a nice move out. Getting wide. Philippines really needs this point to tie up. Seems like they're very calm. Philippines doing a, a small tactical retreat into the snake corner from the god. If you're rising, you're very, very content to let every second click by. No worries, no problems. You can let Philippines come to you. It'd be very, very hard to uh, win this 1-0 with 11 and a half minutes on the clock, but it is possible. Rising is going to be pretty exceptionally well coached. Got a lot of pros, a lot of former pros in and around that camp, and they've been around, obviously, forever and ever. Um, Philippines moving up from the snake corner into the snake one. So slowly taking the ball and 
moving up the field. Trying not to make any mistakes that'll cost them a body. Phoenix rising now, matching in the snake, moving up into the snake too. Philippines noticed that move, caught the snake player, knows he's there, and is doing his absolute best to contain him. I mean, if you're the Philippines, I don't know, you've played enough matches today, you've probably seen enough games to know that center stuff can work here. I don't, I don't really know what the plan is. I don't know if they know what the plan is. I don't know if they'd know the full kill count. So I think that uh, the Dorito Tower player is trying to identify bodies. He keeps looking down cross field, uh, see if there's anything in the middle. I don't think, I doubt he can see the snake from there. It's a very far shot. There's a lot of bunkers in between them. The Philippine snake one player playing way out wide into like a, in a dead zone of that bunker. Um, so that he doesn't get shot from cross field, oh, yeah. that Dorito player by Phoenix Rising, trying to contain this tape on the snake to keep this Phoenix Rising player from coming down and blowing everybody out of the water. And another two minutes has ticked by as Rising, like I said, just very happy to let these guys come on to them and Philippines hasn't done anything about it, no moves. Still in that hundred, still in that corner. Sounds like uh, that might be Cody Rich um, for Phoenix Rising because uh, the snake player keeps calling out his name. Uh, he has the kill count, has proper information, um, and is trying to get that across the field all the way to the Dorito side. But the Cody Rich and the snake or the Dorito? uh, Doritos? I believe it was Cody Rich and the Doritos. Cody Rich, definitely a nasty, nasty player. I could, I could be wrong, but... Uh, if it is him... I, I can understand why the Philippines wouldn't want to move. Right, and it, it makes sense why the Philippines are kind of just remaining cautious. I mean, that um, being said, though, like, you know, that, that snake one to, you know, that cross shot is like is, is a long way. I don't know why Philippines w won't be pushing anything. It's another minute's gone by. I don't really hear the Philippines uh, talking very much as Not a lot of talking, all. not um, a lot of guns. Not at all. I think they're really just trying to, like, figure things out. They know that there's at least two bodies. Um, they know where there are. they are, and Phoenix Rising is just not moving to make any mistakes right now, um, which is in their favor because another minute has ticked off the clock. Um, Phoenix Rising is still up 1-0. Feels like we're kind of at a standstill right now. Not completely at a standstill. Like so almo almost no paint have. in the air. Yeah. There's literally almost no paint in the air right now. I think everybody's kind of getting low on paint. Um, and everybody realizes that. I'm not sure what I, would, what I would do in this situation. If I was rising, I probably would. If you're like, rising, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. Right. But if you're the Philippines, you should be talking. The snake player should be telling the Dorito guys, you got the ball. That, um, one way or the other. Someone's got to recognize this. That, that 100 should probably stay there. That Dorito... That Dorito corner should definitely move up into the middle somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know that he's able to do any good back there in the Dorito corner. Um, so got to find another bunker where you can actually do something, especially when you're up bodies. But like I said, I know that, but do they know that? I hear a lot of talking coming from the Phoenix Rising side of the field, and they are further away from me from the Philippines, so I should be able to hear the Philippines players talking, but I hear nothing. Well, A total of five minutes yeah. has elapsed on this point now. Um, One of the weirder games of the day as finally definitely. that that – uh, Dorito corner player decides to move somewhere into the middle-ish. Goes to the Dorito Tower. Um, Keep going, bro. What's stopping you? As Tyler Harmon tells us. Yep. What's stopping you? He's not shooting his gun. He's not getting shot at. There we go. He fills out to the home. Okay. okay. Well, that's not really what I meant by putting doing something. It's not horrible, though, because he's maybe able to get a little bit uh, support on the snake side. Um, I feel like they 
maybe he's comfortable with his Dorito player being able to hold the tape and hold that Dorito player in. Oh, my goodness. Um, no, he's just I think their goal right now is to try to try to get this snake player out um, since whoever's on the Dorito side, if it is Cody Rich, you're doing an amazing job just holding it down, not letting anybody shoot you. So that Philippines Dorito corner player has moved himself all the way to basically the, the, the god and has turned himself into a uh, snake two player, or a, a two on the snake side instead of a two on the Dorito side. They've accomplished as much in the last three minutes as they had in the previous four minutes, which is nothing. Yeah, this is uh, quite a long point. I, I have to say this is the longest point I've seen in a very, very long time. I think just about six and a half, maybe seven minutes have elapsed now on this game time. And nothing really has happened at all in the last five or so minutes. As the rain is starting to come down again. Ever so slightly. If Phoenix Rising wins this point, then the Philippines uh, definitely are going to have an issue because they wasted a lot of game time. And it looks like, oh, there we go. We get our drone footage back. Uh, thanks to Ryan. Um, Lazaro Lopez says, commentating is hard during points like this. Yes, it is. Where I mean, <laughs> I, I don't really know what to say other than they're still in the snake one. We're rooting for both teams. Still in the gods. Still in the Dorito one. Go, like, go it's teams. still a 3v2 in favor of Philippines, but they are down a point, and they've wasted now seven and a half, almost eight minutes on this point. I, I believe, oh, it looks like the snake one player for the Philippines is picking up paint off the ground. Oh, boy. I mean, you can do that. No, you can definitely do that. Um, <laughs> he's picking up paint, seeing the ones that are chopped, seeing the ones that are bad. I mean, that paint, I doubt it's going to shoot straight. Um, bro was talking about the weather during a point. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> what what else are we going to talk about? It's important to know for me to tell you that the rain is falling. You know that, might, that might make somebody at, rush. At this point, I might as well shout out our sponsors, Defy, Violence, Das, <laughs> das Paintball, <laughs> Gunfighter, Andrew Lopez, Law PC, Committed Paintball, Maxed, Lone Wolf Paintball, and Matrix Gear USA. Thank you guys, everybody watching right now during this grueling point. Um, <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. I think we're at about nine minutes on this point. Yes, because I think the game time was just about 12 minutes um, at the start of this point. And this snake um, one player for Philippines is basically useless. He has yep. literally no paint. No paint. Um, I don't think that the uh, Viper player has paint either. I think I he has maybe nothing. half a hopper. I see nothing um, on his back. Looks like he's going to go try and get a rundown or something, but he's got almost no paint. Um, I think the Dorito player is out of paint player as well. makes, a, makes a retraction, the Phoenix Rising Snake player is going to move back into Snake 1. He so does now, know that he's, in the, that he's in that brick there. Somebody has to have paint on this field. So now here's, here's the question. If everybody ran out of paint, what happens? No point, like, right? No point, right? I mean, oh well, Phoenix, I guess not. It's still the first one to touch I, the buzzer. I, I mean, yes, but Phoenix Rising is up. Oh, he's about zero, to get right? his wig split here. If he can just, oh, he's, oh my goodness. This is. He's playing a super okay. dead zone in that point. That was cool. Now it's now it's getting interesting because we're down to two and a half minutes. Phoenix Rising only up one zero. And the Philippines um, knows they're down that they're a body. Down. They know um, they need a point. The they know Phil basically they lose this point. They're in a whole lot of trouble now. I can tell you that two. For sure, two of their players on the Philippines have no paint on their back yeah. and are barely shooting, so I guarantee you they have like less than a half a hopper. I know that the snake one player has no paint. He's picking up paint off the ground, trying to shoot it in one ball at the snake, but couldn't catch him. Uh, Phoenix Rising retreated back to the snake one, not really doing anything. Dorito player still there in the same bunker he was in uh, about a minute into the point. Um, now less than two minutes left. Wow, this is... Uh, This is fun for everybody. Us in the booth, the refs, the chat, the chat. Chat's loving it. it they, chat's asking for more weather updates. Don't worry, we got you. Yeah, currently it's uh, 48 degrees out here at ASG. <laughs> <laughs> Partially cloudy skies. A light drizzle. <laughs> Tell us about the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, that's a that's the science. That's the a squared plus b squared, b squared, b squared equals c squared. C squared. Yes. Yeah, uh, five you, for, no. yeah. Don't even trip, dog. It's only for only for right triangles. Only though. correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What are you, <laughs> are you kidding me? 
Mitochondria. Okay, this, well, we can't get into Listen. I, I kind of feel bad for the Philippines in this point, but, like, at the same time, I don't. Well, here's the thing. is, that this is it, It's about to get very interesting. Cause it they, is. Because they literally have no choice. They have I mean, to go. He's got to kill two people with, I don't know, to the 12 balls that he has. Uh-oh. Oh, he, wait. He got him. He, he, might, got him. he might be he hit. He did shoot him in the center. Oh, and the Dorito player's hit. He was calling for a check. No penalty, so one on two. Two, but this guy um, still has is picking up paint at the ground. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, okay, so 30 seconds left. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. So we got uh, two on one in favor of Philippines. Know. Snake one for Phoenix Rising. Uh, the 300 um, in the Doritos for the Philippines. The snake one still for the Philippines. Still trying to pick up paint off the ground. Uh, I think he's probably running out of good paint on the ground to use. This this, this can't point. happen. If the Philippines, uh, I mean, guys, 10, seconds. 10 seconds. There's you cannot die on the side of your bunker. They have no paint. Have there's there's go. no way that they're able to do anything. This is unbelievable. Are you? That's insane. That's insane. Wow. One, I literally said at the beginning, I said, you wow. can win at 1-0, but how likely is that going to happen? Wow. And it just happened. That was a 12-minute point, guys. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow, that was. This is why limited pain is a bad idea. Eh, that's debatable. I mean, there isn't there isn't limited pain out here, and they still all managed to run out of pain. So Lee says, "Congrats, Philippines, on being the worst team in the world." I don't think I that mean, that's really the case. Well, um, Lee, I, they I, all everybody on the field ran out of pain. Yes, but you cannot just you can't you have to go. I mean, yeah, you, Philippines it, could have ran down the field just and have hit the to buzzer. At least run through or concede the point or something. You were down one zero. You just yeah. literally let it. Uh, that. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, I think that if they have a coach in their pit, their coach definitely needed to their realize that and concede. To that um, but yes, there. that was—I don't know what that was. Anyway, TJ Bloodhawks back in the field. They've had literally 12 minutes to think about what they're going to do next. So let's see if they're able to do something. Uh, the answer is no for TJ as they lose their first body out of the D side tower. Uh, they put the and second guy in there. He also gets clapped out. Let's see if they try to throw a third guy in there. So now I'm actually hearing paint flying in the air. Um, and it's actually making me happy. Bloodhawk's going to lose their home player. TJ's going to fill into the Viper. But I think it's a 43. The ref going in to check the uh, Viper player for TJ. Running ref. Uh oh. Oh, wait. Well, he wanted wait. a check, so this and should be. And clean. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Hey, respect to players calling for checks, though. You don't want to. You don't want to pull penalties. Oh, you know. If you think you're a hit, ask for a check. Exactly. Especially a as a snake that. player, you're diving in. You never know when your pack could get hit. You don't want to risk getting a penalty. Yeah, and these TJ guys, they know how to play. They know what they're doing. Bloodhawks filling out to the god now from the snake can. Um, TJ charging up Great the snake. Moves oh on my the goodness! Snake crawl. I don't think that they have any idea where he is with. Oh this no, snake. they don't. And he's about to. Oh, 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 oh. He's about to shoot him in the pack. Yep. yep. And so TJ shoot across the field shot up and, and shoot, shoot another player in the pack in just two seconds. And there's and a penalty. A, oh. And a penalty. Oh, oh they, I, think, I think they might have gotten lucky. You know, exactly. Blood they might have gotten lucky. Very lucky. Yes. So I don't know if you s could see on the stream what just happened there, but as the snake player for TJ Rounded uh, Bloodhawk Snake One shooting the last player in the pack. He also got pulled for a penalty oh, as the extra pulled, body. Was he was pulled, pulled penalty, right before, before he got shot. Him, yeah. If he were to get shot before his body was able to get pulled or the flag were to be thrown, then Bloodhawks would be starting down a body yet again today. Another team they would have been. would have started down a body, but not, luckily not I think CEP. they're going to be five up on the box next point. And I also believe oh, they're on X ball I now. Gonna, I was just going to say, yes, correct. Because of that abomination that was the previous match, um, we will be in full X ball here. So for the next eight minutes of game time, you're going to be seeing nothing but Bloodhawks and TJ. So remember, like we were saying earlier, once this game ends, there's two minutes for the teams to get back themselves in the pit, get as much, get all the air, all the paint, uh, game plan, and get back back on the field. So um, they Last. are. Lazaro Lopez saying, I'm out of breath just watching that snake crawl. Yeah, me too, man. I watched, the, I watched it all day, and I can't even tell you. 
When I try to do that, I'm definitely gassed by the time I make it to their side of the field. Yeah, anybody that can crawl like that is just so impressive. I can't, I can't do it. I can't seem to stick my gun in the dirt like that and just like push myself with like, I don't know, like I, like I weigh 50 pounds less and just push myself down that thing. It's not gonna happen. It's been a, uh, I don't think I've ever seen like eight to nine minutes of X ball in a premier match in a long time. God, that rising game was just, Philippines, man, come on. 30 seconds. I just think it's crazy that I was just talking about how you can win 1-0, but with 12 minutes left in the match, I doubt it would happen. And, of course, that's exactly when it happened. So Bloodhawks and TJ now. Bloodhawks looks like four live. They lost a body off the break at the they're at the Dorito Tower, a Dorito Corner, home <coughs> snake corner, trying to fill the snake one gets killed. So three bodies alive for Bloodhawks. TJ now up bodies. I believe they have five alive. As and as I say that, uh, TJ losing their center player. Left alive is their Dorito. Their Dorito uh, wedge, moving up to the, moving up to the brick. One of the Bloodhawks taking a walk. Oh, two of the Bloodhawks. It looks like only one left for Bloodhawks. Just the D corner um, over there. Yeah, just the D corner. Another player from uh, TJ taking a walk as they take out the last player of the Bloodhawks. Now to tie it up, ah. seven minutes. So, TJ. Back 2-2. Two, two. Uh-oh. I guess, I guess all they needed was a 17-minute <laughs> premiere match in which nobody shot paint for six of them to, you know, figure their stuff out. I do have to say, though, um, I know that because of all the overtime points and all the uh, penalties flying today, um, it has pushed the games uh, quite a bit past schedule. So I think that 12-minute point uh, with Phoenix Rising Philippines is going to help bring us back on schedule. Um, and now with eight minutes of X ball, well, seven minutes left with TJ and Bloodhawks, it's going to speed things up quite a bit here. Sun's coming back out once again. Shadows are appearing on the ground. Ty, know it's getting bright and sunny out there, warming up for the refs, warming up for us here in the booth. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I see some cumulus. Cum cumulus. The cumulus clouds. clouds? With some, uh, those, are, uh, those are cumulonimbus the, because yeah, they have the nimbus, rain. And then there's, there's the anvil, of course. Um, there's no anvil. Yeah, there's a, you, you don't see the anvils? No, I don't see an anvil. I don't know, guys. Take, uh, <laughs> chat, chat. Take a look at the sky. Let's, let's talk about the weather. One minute. So quick. Once again, I have to – sorry to cut you off, Andrew. I just wanted to shout out the refs and say thank you to everybody out there. You guys are the best, um, especially during that long 12-minute point, just sitting around doing nothing. You know, it's probably a pretty relaxing time for the refs, right? They're just oh, like, yeah. They're just like, oh, man, this is what's – I'm not getting shot. I'm not getting shot at. Right. I can just get out of the way and just – maybe I take my mask off in the corner here. No, don't do that. No, no don't do that. No they got their do they that. got their lunch break a little early. Yeah. 30 seconds. All right. TJ Bloodhawks coming back out on the field. 30 seconds on the break time to get on the box and get going. Bloodhawks only have four out right now. Um, trying to get their fifth body out right now. Just got chrono. Chase, I believe that the matches might be slightly behind. There, there have been some things, um, but uh, mostly just some penalties here and there. Oh, we're, I think we're checking on time right now. Uh, we have Mr. Mike Hinman. All right, looks like five alive for TJ. They both. Oh. Both corners went out wide. They got the home, the and both towers, the Snake and Dorito Tower. Uh, Dorito corner calling for a check. Ref calls him clean. Looks like five alive for Bloodhawks as well. Anyway, I think the games are running semi close to on schedule. Not terribly behind, but there have been a lot of penalties. So. 
Thank you, Josh. So I, just, Cloudy, I just got confirmation. We are way behind schedule in these premium matches right oh, now. Oh, hey, just kidding, guys. Forget anything that I just said. So we are behind. I don't know how far behind. Um, we'll try to get a more valid... Uh, we'll, we'll try to figure it out a little bit better and try to figure out exactly what's Looks like TJ here. losing a body out of the uh, Dorito Tower. Um, left with only two alive. TJ and the Viper uh, three one, alive. and Bloodhawks in the, in the Snake 50. And they're about to see each other, I think. Oh, ugh, not anymore. TJ knows he's there now, but as he goes back down, he's not going to be able to get that shot in. We'll see what TJ oh, tries to do. Another Bloodhawks player taking a walk. And Bloodhawks also advancing into the 300. So three alive for the Bloodhawks. Into the 300, the Snake Tower, and the Dorito, or I'm sorry, the... The Snake Viper moved out to the Snake 1. Correct. For TJ. Which is a much better move, because he would have been oh, in yes. a lot of trouble over there. Another Bloodhawks player taking a walk. So that's only two Bloodhawks remaining, but they do have decent position. If, if, Arietta knows where he's at, though. Oh. And yep. shooting him in the back is the Bloodhawks player. So it's 21 now. Oh, it's see ya. And yep. gets gogged. That's a terrific shot from Arietta. So he he's... Oh, he's looking behind him. So he does have another player, I think. Yep. So there's a Dorito player, um, Snake, and oh. Snake player for TJ gets shot, taking a big bump past the 50. Um, that Bloodhawks player. Oh, so there were two more Bloodhawks players. That one's yep. going to take the so walk. Now, now it's, it's one a one-on-one. Now it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. We're going to be – it's going to be pretty interesting here. Uh, Dorito Tower. I like that move from TJ. Uh, I was just about to say that retreat from the 100 back to the Dorito Tower is – very smart. You're able to stand up nice and tall. Oh, man. If um, we, get, if we have another four-minute point here. These guys better <laughs> shoot each other in the next four minutes or I'm going to lose it. I hope they don't run out of paint. If, and TJ gets shot out in the face oh, that's by the Bloodhawks. That's not what I wanted to happen either. Bloodhawks player. Oh, oh. I was going to say, if he didn't know. Yeah, that's a good move for the tell. 420s. Plenty, plenty of points left. All right, guys, no one move from their bunkers or shoot any paint. That is correct. That is a, uh, that's basically what happened there, Lastro Lopez. I think, honestly, in that uh, Rising and Philippines match, they should have just, like, walked up to each other and did, like, Rochambeau or something. I mean, really, though, the, the Philippines should have just toweled with two minutes. Oh, yes, no, for sure. Like, oh, we don't have any paint. We need a fuck. We need a point. Right. I don't, like, like I said, I don't know if they had a coach in their paint or not. I know some, some teams don't have coaches, um, but... As a player on their line, I would have definitely been like and noticed. Man, hey, my team has no paint. Nothing is happening right now. No guns are being shot. Um, we're down 1-0. We can't win this. Regime has played. I think they're one and one. Alex, six minutes maybe on a towel. That's a lot. I mean, we've had, we've seen some incredibly fast points today. I think we've seen multiple points under definitely. At least a dozen points, I'd say, under a minute and a half. Probably half a dozen or more points under a minute. Um, really cleaning people up. So, Yeah, shout out Narcos for the one-minute squad, right? One-minute crew is what they said. Winning and losing points in under a minute. Thirty seconds. The refs are still penalty happy, but it's not it, it, that that 12 minute point really messed up the juju. They need, we need we need to, listen. If one of the players for one of the teams is listening here, if you could just go like yell at a ref or do something real dumb and just get these guys' juices flowing again, so that the penalties just start flying all over the place. Because there were some points where like three or four penalties were thrown. We didn't even know a team they were on. It was so convoluted. So we just you know we need more of that. That's for sure. Oh, don't worry, Josh. The Dolphins are coming back soon. We're big fans of the Dolphins in here. Bloodhawks trying to take in that last bit of information from their coach on the sideline as they walk to the box. Still 40 seconds to go. Like we said, guys, this, this match is an X ball, all because of that 12-minute debauchery um, on the last one. So 3-2 Bloodhawks over TJ, a much closer game than, than I personally would have expected. Um, Bloodhawks, just ju just judging from last year, didn't have the world's best year last year, but they're definitely looked like they're a much improved team. I think they're probably a much different team. Um, this TJ team are, I mean, they've been here, they've done that, they've seen it, they know what's up. This should be, this you know, they should know everything they need to do here. So 
We'll see if they're able to put it together here in the next 420, even this thing up. TJ kind of getting uh, a little slow to the box. Let's see, five alive for Bloodhawks and a ref running in. A, a hopper yep. looks like a hopper problem for the Bloodhawks. And one taking the walk out of the Dorito side tower. That Bloodhawks player, at least he's able to keep his uh, wits about him. He's able to do some head checking, I think. Oh, and on the run while trying to fix a loader. Look at that guy. That Another was player for TJ taking a walk and taking some extra balls uh, in the face while he's uh, walking off the field. As Bloodhawks takes the snake 50 and snake one and the home. Looks like that Bloodhawks player was able to fix his loader and another, another concession, concession by TJ. From TJ. So I think about a minute on that point. Yeah, just about a minute. Um, not so good. Not so good from TJ. Um, Elizabeth said they got to be exhausted at this point, but watch them go. I mean, yeah. Hey, that's why having a a decently sized roster is very important for situations like this. You don't want to have five or six guys on your roster because you have to have five at all times out on the field, right? Um, you don't want to have only one sub as well because in points like in times like this, when you're in eight minutes of X ball, you're going to get tired quick. I saw some posts over the last couple of days on the WCPPL page. People are looking to, to get one more, two more players real quick, just a couple of days yep. before the event. So I do know that there are teams out here that – I don't know, maybe the, maybe the roster's just uh, starting to fall apart there at the last minute. I'm not sure if it's any of these premier teams. but hey, Things happen. Life happens. Stuff gets in the way of paintball, unfortunately, sometimes. And we get it. But, uh, you know, having a good roster, you know, seven to eight people is probably about the sweet spot um, for X-Ball like this. You want to have enough bodies to be able to put on the box at all times, fresh legs, Alex said, wow, momentum really shifted this match. That indeed. Bloodhawks up 4-2 with just over three and a half minutes left on the clock. I currently only see four bodies on the box for Bloodhawks. Oh, it looks like the fifth body's coming out right now. Chronoing getting the 10 second timer now. Bloodhawks now being the team to get get out to the box late. Looks like uh, Bloodhawks able to get five alive. Unfortunately, TJ uh, though is one of them. No, they lost ball. the body off the break. So both sides lost the body off break. Forty four. TJ at the snake corner, snake can, Dorito Tower, and the center wedge. Both towers, the command center, and the snake corner for TJ. Bloodhawks got the both towers, center wedge, and I believe the Dorito corner. Taking the Viper, uh, TJ taking the Viper one. Hasn't been the world's best bunker from here, but if he can do something with it and get himself a little bit further, he be able to get a shot on that, uh, on that center brick. TJ also taking the snake two. See if he keeps going. If he keeps going, he'll be able to blast that away real quick because he definitely has no idea that it's here. Ooh, check his arm in the snake. Yeah, as long as he doesn't get a penalty. Shoots the center player. Bloodhawks player gets blown away from the center. He definitely had no idea that he was here. Is that really? Boy, it looks, the snake player looks like he's got a hit on his left shoulder. Looks like he has something on him, but. Like that looks like bright pink paint. It certainly does. Oh, get that player out of there. Blasting sure. yeah. everybody on the Bloodhawks. I think that's everybody. Don't do He's going to go down do and it, touch Don't the do buzzer. It, They're going to check him out. Check his shoulder. This is going to be an check interesting his shoulder. Call. Yeah. Yep. This is there we go. Now, yep. The ref's calling over to for the head ref to check it out. So, in case you guys didn't see I, what we saw, this I think he player, got hit it going in. looked pretty clear that he has a hit on his arm. I mean, it looks. It definitely doesn't look like rub. It definitely looks like a hit. And he's also the player. Oh, point is good. Okay. So apparently it's uh, ruled not a hit. So we're back to making uh, all the mistakes in terms of conjecturing uh, yep. what we think is going on here. So 
All good? I mean, to be fair, if you were able to see that on even on camera, that is a ton of bright pink paint on the back side of your left shoulder. I mean, when would you ever be on your back on the field getting some rub? I mean, I guess if he dove into the snake and then and landed on his side and landed on a ball and it just... Yeah, maybe. But, I mean, boy... I, that's tough. That's a tough call from the ref. I, you know, they, they got a they got a tough job out there. All I gotta say is good on that good on that ref over there by that Starbucks asking the head ref to come over and check, you know, and verify before he called it a, uh, a hit or not. So the really nice thing about being on the on the on the premier field like this is, I mean, I think there are ten refs out here. There's basically supposed to be one ref per player. Correct. These guys have excellent eyes. They, they, they yes, they they are human. They do make mistakes. It does happen. But for the most part, they make a lot of Excellent, excellent, excellent calls. Um, we're, I don't know, at least from the booth perspective and from my playing, my personal playing perspective, I think the refs here have, have always done an excellent job. I've definitely been called out on some hits that I didn't think that were hits. Um, you know, and everything's just a little bit out there. It's hard. Paintball's hard. These balls are very small. They fly very fast. It's tough to see everything. And... We're all a bunch of cheaters. Let's let's be real. I mean, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Is what I hear. Twenty seconds. So two minutes, five seconds to go in this match. Four three in favor of the Bloodhawks. Still plenty of time for TJ. This is much closer than I would have expected. We'll see what kind of break. Yes, the tournament is 300 feet per second. So just over two minutes. TJ trailing three to four. Slightly Deep late break for TJ, but he's able to get into the Viper anyway. Uh oh, uh oh. Shooting uh -oh. one, two bodies off the break and for TJ, and a penalty a from the Viper that. player. So, so four bodies dead very soon after break, and that's and a concession. there's the concession. Um, so that's going to be the quickest point of the day. I don't know how fast it was, but that's definitely the quickest point of the day. So that was, I think, 16 seconds. Was, I, if it so was there was fast, it was 208. Uh, yeah, there was 208 on the clock, um, and there's now 152. So 16, 16 seconds. Yeah, that was a. It's a quick one, and that's all due to penalties. It looked like a combination, maybe of a, a penalty, and then maybe some confusion at the box as to what exactly the game plan was. There was people yep. just running all over the place. That was all bad. Eugene said, "If you're not cheating, you ain't trying." So here's okay. Here's an example of what we were just talking about earlier. There's a Bloodhawks player on the field right now who doesn't know that there's a concession. Right. There's also a ref standing next to him who also doesn't know that there's a concession. The game time has stopped, but the break time is, is kept going. still going. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on. So I don't I don't know whose fault this is. One minute. He's out of bounds. He's just vibing. He didn't use any paint. Oh, okay. So yeah, apparently that player is just standing out of bounds because he didn't use any paint. Because yes, the but they're, uh, but they're oh he and they yeah. play in fifty seconds. Yeah, he ran to the other side. He didn't use any paint, so he's on the other box now. Yep, because oh. Bloodhawks were over here. Oh, is that what happened? Yep. So a Bloodhawks player didn't even go to the pit. Um, he didn't use any paint, uh, you know, necessary of, you know, filling back up pods or anything like that. Okay. In those 16 seconds that TJ drew, I think, two penalties okay. and My lost bad. all their bodies. All, so of that, all of that nonsense I just said, you all can just forget about all that. Is just took a nice little jog and a stroll yeah. over to the opposite start box because uh, that point was so fast. He don't want to hear shit from his He didn't even around. have to go pit. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dylan. Dylan says he don't want to hear shit from his coach right now. So it turns out he just didn't have to shoot any balls. So I guess don't bother taking the extra steps. So 3-5, minute 52. TJ's definitely going to have to push it. They're going to double the home. I'm surely this is not for long. As TJ getting right into the snake, and he's hit. Oh, man. In the, yep, in the leg. No penalty. Probably should have been a penalty, as you should be able to definitely be able to feel that. But So... TJ, a minute 30 left. They're still doubled at the home, and they need two points. So they're gonna, and they're going to lose a body instead. They're going to fill out to the tower. The they're going to fill out to the Snake Side Tower, the Dorito Corner, and the Command Center, and then take also the 200. They're going to take the Snake One. So they're trying to push as their Dorito player gets eliminated. Two on four. 
in favor of Bloodhawks. Now a minute, five seconds to see. Another towel. So another towel, and unfortunately with this one, Yeah, so here's the problem now is that now they're down three points with a yep. minute and five seconds. Mm, I don't know if I would have towel there. Bobby, it like petered out for a second, so then I hit approve, and then it just... <laughs> I don't know if I would have thrown a concession there. I would maybe take an extra couple seconds and think about we're, we're the likelihood of scoring three points in a minute, five seconds, is absurdly low. So you're kind of worrying about about the spread at that point, it's three. What do you do on this game? Do you go and play defense for this minute five seconds and just hope the spread doesn't get any larger? Or do you try to run it down their throat and try to close the spread a little bit knowing that you're, you're still not gonna win the match but you might have an opportunity to get the point a little bit closer? I think realistically, um, yeah, see, why did they concede with a minute and five? Because if they just wanted to sit down and play defense for that minute and five, they could have just done so and had the spread be five to three instead of six to three. Right. Um, so I think what they're probably going to do is come off that gate and just charge the center. I mean, Lastro Lopez over here, he missed the playoffs with a .5 margin, so maybe don't tell. See, it, yeah, I, you know, that's kind of the way that I think about it too. Basically, in order for this to make any sense for TJ, TJ has to win this point. Yes. Right, without question. Thirty seconds. Let's do this. Go take a Twenty seconds. I'll try and keep my mouth shut. Notorious for. All right, here we go. Here we go. TJ absurdly late to the box. Don't love that. One of their one of the Bloodhawks guys falls and still is able to make it to their bunker. Yeah, Danny yeah. Lincoln also falls, is able to make it to his bunker. Losing oh, the, losing two bodies now for the Bloodhawks. So they yep, are push. Oh, well, look at this move. Wow, look what at, a at that. and, and there's a penalty. That's a penalty. Oh my god. And how do you not throw a red? Wow. I mean, and TJ is not going to concede now. So definitely not to con concede <laughs> now. So that whole thing in the last point was a waste. 30 seconds. That's There's only one body alive for the Bloodhawks. He's in the Dorito Tower right now. No, no, no. <laughs> yep. No, uh, the guy walking, the, the guy who's, that's that, he's alive. He's, so the, I'm pretty sure he's dead. I don't no? think so. He's still standing there. That's Danny Lincoln. Okay. Um, in the purple beanie that you may or may not be able to see. The, yeah, he's definitely still alive. Saying at the God Bunker. That's Danny Lincoln. He is. So why uh, wouldn't he go touch the buzzer right now? That's a good question. Touch the buzzer. And, he and now he tries to. And Okay, so that is going to be a mental error from Bloodhawks. Yes. Um, the good news is, is that they're 2-0. and they, they did beat Violence, and now they have beat TJ. So Sean Moe said, wow, TJ Bashers looks horrible. They looked great yeah. earlier this morning. Sean, they, they looked they looked. <laughs> I'm still picking them to win, but um, they. I that, think the Bloodhawks, man. That was not great. I did choose the Bloodhawks for uh, for this match. Oh, do we have? Is there a? Is there a Golden Knight former player in the chat, Sean? I'd like to get. So just for the record, that's going to do it on that last match, uh, by the way. Um, Bloodhawks are going to take that one. That time is going to expire out. And on to the next one, Stoned Assassins versus one of my favorite teams, the Mighty Dolphins. What's up? I have to say uh, the only reason I'm rooting for them right now is because of their jerseys and their name. Um, although they did look good. Um, yeah, they looked good. They, they did look good. good. Yeah. They they were looking good, then they were looking really, really bad, and then they were looking good again.
Yes, Sean, stoned assassins are back. It is not going to be the stoned assassins um, from, you know, basically 2003 or whenever that was. I mean, I remember back at that day. That was, they were fun to watch. They were fun to hang out with, that's for sure. Yeah, go Dolphins. Hey, yo. So, yeah, in case you guys weren't with us earlier, the Dolphins have a pink dolphin on their jersey that is ripped. Like, I mean, this guy, this this dolphin would easily, like, like bench 400. He's a, he's a gym bro. Yeah. Definitely a gym bro. Yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't have a mullet or something, like, on his, on the jersey or whatever. Anyway. Someone go get me one of those new badass tanks from HK Army. Where already got one, bro. I'm on it. Those new Alpha tanks are J Tuck says it's sick. purple. Is it a purple dolphin? It looks like a pink dolphin dog. Are you sure? I mean, because their jerseys are purple. Like, unless, unless we're talking about different shades of purple, but I don't know. I, it looks I, pink. I think it's, uh, <laughs> do you even dolphin, bro? Yeah, Eugene, I dolphin, bro, of course. Who doesn't dolphin? Come on, man. Um, this should be really fun. I haven't seen a Stone Assassin's jersey or player in about uh, 15 years. Um, wow. So let's see if they, it's, it's pink, bur pink purple. I don't, can't even say it. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Tuck. Anyway, J hey, Jay Tuck, if you're like plugged into this group, and I was saying this earlier, I need a, I need a jersey from these guys. They are legit. So let's, let's make it so, yeah. 10 seconds. Oh, Steve hopes the SA Mercy rules the Dolphins. Oh, we got, we got stuff going on. All right, guys, the Bloodhawks are over. Let's move on. Perk color. Stone Assassin starting out five alive, doing something a little bit different, taking the 300 on the rip, doubling up the the snake tower, and then immediately break, breaking off of that and taking the god, although that's, that Dorito 300 uh, runner does get popped. So five alive still for the uh, Mighty Dolphins. Looking fairly strong out here right now. I mean, the Mighty Dolphins, pretty sure they're going to win this whole thing. So. Oh, another Stone Assassin take the walk. No penalty, though. But there is only going to be three Dolphins yeah. left. One of the Purples, uh, sorry, one, one of the Mighty, Mighty Dolphins. Oh, that is definitely going to get him. Yeah, he's going to take one, and he's going to, oh, could that be a penalty? Uh, no, he didn't shoot. Well, he didn't shoot anybody. So there's either one, maybe two Stone Assassins left, I think just one. Um, I think just one. No, there's two. There's one in the god and one at the uh, So camp. the, the, the uh, God is the last one alive the for god is assassins. I see splashing paint everywhere. He's he's about to die. He's not yet. And now he's dead. dead. Yeah. So Mighty Dolphins picking up right where they left off. So Mighty Dolphins looking strong, would you say? Alex Goldman, number 89 on Dolphins? No way. Is that, that can't be right. No, there's, what? No, 89 is... Peter Peterman, something I, I can't see. That. I can't. Oh, Spiegelman. I don't know how to say that last name, but HK still piping in hawks, hawks, hawks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> HK is not putting uh, fire emojis in the chat. Well, uh, with the blood and the and the hawk. Yeah. Yep. That was clever, Dylan. Though you did get me. That was that was funny. <laughs> Do you even dolphin, bro? <laughs> There's oh, the there we go, the blood and the hawks. Nah, it's Mouse, Dylan says. <laughs> I know what Mouse looks like in person. That guy is a mammoth of a human being, and whoever 89 is of the dolphins, no offense, but. Oh, there's the fire emojis by HK. <laughs> HK, I don't know who's running your site right now, but I expect this kind of love when we play. I don't think Same. it's Marky, because I'm pretty sure he's in Cabo. <laughs> So Narcos and Seattle Cartel coming back at it for the second set. Uh, Cartel had a rough, rough uh, match on the last one. Narcos looked pretty darn good on the last one playing CEP. Drawing Narcos just lost two in. bodies, as you say that. And Narcos did, and then Cartel is being pulled. Are they going to get a – what are you doing, bro? Don't argue. Okay, so he is, he is going to get pulled uh, out of the Viper, but he isn't going to get a penalty. So still four alive for Cartel as they bounce out to the Dorito 200 and then fill that uh, Dorito Tower as well. So four on three in favor of Seattle Cartel right now. Narcos with only three alive. They Got do the have home, a snake, but he is on a snake. Line. And the center wedge. So 
Seattle Cartel small bump into the snake one out of, out of the snake corner. And try to take away that, uh, if he can get himself into the snake one, at least he can battle for tape domination. As we just lost the video source, just kidding. And we're back. Aw, oh, HK, this new webcast is a thousand times better than previous WCVO webcast. Thank you very much, Mr. HK. Oh, plus one on, oh, it's Gray. What's up, Gray? My dog. Oh, yeah, get him out. Yeah, oh, so wow. Seattle Cartel player tries to battle with the snake one, snake one, and he gets popped. But one of the uh, one of the Narcos players does take the walk anyway. So, yeah, only two alive for the Narcos, but they are into the snake three. I think it's a two-on-two -two, uh, situation right now. I just, does the snake, does the snake three oh, player it's a two know on the snake one? Now it's two on three. Do they know that he's in the snake here? We're about to find out. I don't think so. No, get oh, now he does. He definitely and does now. He's dead. See ya. Oh, and that's Ben Slaufer, who, uh, that, that's that's pretty rare. Oh, look know? at this snake crawl right here. Look at that cartel stuff. That dude is moving. That is beautiful. And bye-bye to the Waste dude. that fool. Yep. See ya. Yeah. I mean, you deserve every bit of that. Shooting Ben Slaufer, and then and then that amazing uh, running dive slide, whatever you call that there. Yeah, you deserve all those kills. Give that to cartel. Up 1-0. Good job. So Cartel kind of all over the place this tournament. A pretty good match, or actually a really, really good match on their first one, a really, really bad match on their second one, and then starting out pretty strong here on the third. So they're, I, I don't know, probably the most all over the map uh, team so far in the Premier Division. We're not going to talk about that rising uh, match anymore. That was those both those teams are disqualified from that discussion. Meanwhile, the mighty dolphins uh, sitting out here with their purple dolphin. Um, Stone Assassin's going to be on your right hand side. Twenty seconds. Assassins uh, quite a, late to the box right now. Time. Still don't even have five on the box. Oh, got to pause. Yes, Scott uh, Spiegelman. It is Mark Spiegelman. It is not Mouse. So you can blame uh, Dylan Bonham for him for that. Thank Definitely you. his fault. All right, five alive that for the Dolphins take right that now. Center bunker, and he's going to take a bounce off his loader. That was lucky. It looks like five alive as well for uh, the Assassins. The Assassins taking the Viper, the Snake Tower, the Dorito Tower, move into this uh, center wedge. Uh, the home. And a nice big move from the Mighty Dolphins as well, taking the 300 Dorito. Making their way, uh, Stone Assassins out of the, out of the Snake Tower into the God and the Viper, but they do lose their Dorito player over there, so it's a, and, ooh. Mighty Dolphins making three really nice moves. They're, they they just got into the Viper one, into the Dorito four hundred, and into the opponent's command. Yeah. Oh 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 oh. Oh, and he doesn't get him. Oh my god. So goodness. he made a great move to get into into Stone Assassin's brick, and then didn't get any of the kills for it, and got lit up instead. Meanwhile, these Stone Assassin's players playing real loose goosey out of that command center right there in the center. I. God just like got pulled for the assassin, so now it's a three on two situation or three on three situation.
the Mighty Dolphins with the Viper One, the uh, Snake Tower, and the Dorito Corner. Meanwhile, the Stone Assassins just lose their Viper, kind of Viper player, kind of playing in the middle of nowhere. They also have the center, oh, the center's gone. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the home is gone. The Stone Assassin down to one player, only in the center bunker. Uh, looking Dorito side, he's about to get run down here, and he's gone. Uh, so Mighty Dolphins taking that point now gonna be leading 2-0 against the Assassins with 11.43 in the game. Dylan said mouse is feasting, <laughs> told you. <laughs> it's not even, <laughs> no snake work done, none. <laughs> Back on the field, Cartel and Narcos. I think Dylan just woke up today choosing violence. Choosing like, violence. Like that day with DMG, the coolest clip of paintball of all time. Oh boy. Thirty seconds. Sun is still out for a little bit here. Uh, the WCPPL. Looks like some dark clouds are going to start rolling in here soon. I hope it doesn't bring any rain. Oh, man, are those ambidextrous clouds? <laughs> ambidextrous? No. Super super sand That's clouds. not even a cloud. Super super sand clouds. Super rain clouds super or something. Super rain, yeah. Anvils. Anvils. <laughs> Anvils mean thunderstorms. Shh. Seattle Cartel on your right-hand side, Narcos on your left. Cartel losing their snake runner off the break. Narcos does something different again. They double up the home and then they double up the the snake tower. They move out of the home and they move out of the snake tower. So when, I don't, are they? They did get a kill out of it. So I guess it works. Just don't love the idea of doubling up tiny bunkers. Marco's taking the snake one and getting into the snake two and into the snake three. That's Ben Slaufer again. He's, he's, you're gonna hear his name on most of these matches because he does work. Now into the snake four. From here, he should be able to get them both. He should be able to get the, the home. He's gonna yeah. That should be a, that's a kill on the god and that's a kill, yeah on the Dorito side tower, and Ben will just go ahead and lock that in with his buddies, because that's too good. Narcos tying it up one to one against Cartel. Just over 11 minutes left in the game. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. We, uh, we are uh, partly cloudy, expect potential thunderstorms and rain now. We're back to us in the studio. Uh, Kyle, are you able to confirm these uh, these details here? No, Kyle doesn't even have his phone on him. He's not checking. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd have to check the weather. Yeah, yeah J-Tuck -Tuck knows Ben is a beast. Absolute domination. Whoa, whoa, there, drone. Whoa, drone. Ben Batman Slaughter, okay. I mean, seriously, I, when, I, when we played Ted Man and I was just watching him, he was overshooting everybody and it was like I mean he just he was walking them off the field and quite and the, the the refs was a little bit questionable there on the 10 man um, so they didn't really care about much of any of that stuff and he just let them have it Josh wants to know who's commentating Josh my name is Andrew Harris and next to me I have Kyle Kerr and we play for Arizona pole position on the D4 line how's your day going Josh If you're not shoot, overshooting in 10 man, are you really even 10 manning? Dylan said. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can agree with you on that one. Also, Dylan confirmed. Drone operator definitely hanging out with the Stone Assassins. <laughs> so we got my dogs, my purple, my, my just the Mighty Dolphins, not purple Mighty Dolphins, against the Stone Assassins. Stone Assassins are able to get five alive this time. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Five alive this time. We got, we got five dolphins alive. Ref running in to check the snake corner for the assassins. Calls them clean. Snake corner bumps up to the snake one, now getting in the snake. As also their the home player moves up to the Oh, but that rig. snake player does in fact get clipped. So that, that snake player didn't make it, so they're only four alive for stone assassins, but they do have, they are uh, mirrored up on the, uh, on the big center wedges. 
Mighty Dolphins also taking the 300. Oh, now the 400. But he is shot getting into that 400. No, he's not shot in the 400. He does shoot the center player, but the Sun Assassins take the snake too, and I don't know if anybody knows that he's here. No, this snake one player has absolutely no idea. Oh, and he does now. Oh, and that snake three player is going to get shot in the head, but he is going to take one with him, or two with him. So a bunch of chaos there, which is all going to end up in the Mighty Dolphins um, taking this point. Get that guy out of there. Have the have your have your teammate here hit the buzzer. Do, don't don't let that guy hit the buzzer. I think they uh, yeah they shot his own teammate. So uh, it, well, it looked like maybe the the guy from out back was shooting the the inside of the bunker when while his other guy was going to wrap. But then I thought that I saw his his teammate hold his gun up like he was ready to pull. Oh, that's that's 89. That's <laughs> there's Dorito work. There's there's Alex Goldman doing some work for the purple guys. See, I can't even say it without laughing. Dylan. God damn it. Adrian, the most dominant side is definitely the snake side. We've seen some incredible kills uh, from the snake side. We saw a five pack earlier this morning. That was wild. 20 seconds. And a 71% chance of rain and thunderstorms for the next hour. Back to me. I am now all alone up here in the booth. Kyle left me. He said, I'm hungry. I'm out of here. So you're just going to hear me for the next little bit. I imagine that lunch is soon, but I've heard that we're behind. I don't know. I'm just going to keep hanging out in this booth until they kick me out. So we got Cartel. This is actually backwards. Uh, Cartel is on your right, and Narcos is on your left, um, the way that you're looking at it. So don't pay, necessarily pay attention to the, the names at the bottom of the screen as they're uh, reversed. What I can tell you is that Narcos is in this very funny pin at the center 50, and now he's moved over into the into Seattle Cartels 400. Um, Narcos also has the 300, so they have a very interesting Dorito side push. They've shot the they've shot Cartel out of the corner, out of well, as three bodies now far fall, four bodies fall for Cartel. Only one remaining there in the corner. So that's going to be your last cartel player falling, and is that? Yep, that's Slaughter again, eating over there. So Narcos really cleaned that up. They had a, a definitely, they're definitely. They're playing some of the most, the more interesting paintball that I've been watching. Their their breakouts are different, their attacks are different. They change. They don't have. They have guys that are playing all over the field, both sides of the field, and it's it's it seems to be working out really well for them. It's keeping the other guys completely on their toes. You know, if they, if they decide that they want to key in on a Ben Slaughter and they think that he's going to go to the snake and they send him the Dorito, well, you've done nothing, and now you might have a guy out of position and are drastically behind. So. Um, Really, really, really nice play from the Narcos. I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I, I will give some of that credit to, to Mr. Ryan Greenspan. Surely he is uh, helping them with all those switch ups, but they are doing some, some good fun stuff there. Mighty Dolphins up three nothing on the Stone Assassins. Uh, just a tick under 10 minutes to go in this match, but this one could be getting out of hand pretty quickly as one of the Dolphins guns is semi down. Looks like he got it to work before it, before it went out. Um, all five alive for the Dolphins, as the Dolphins are going to take the Snake into the Snake 3. They are slightly matched by the Stone Assassins, having the Snake 1 and the Snake Corner. Also the Dorito side, or oh, the Snake side tower, but he just got blasted by the Snake. Uh, Gaskin over here for the Mighty Dolphins doing some work. He's got two in front of him, and he, hopefully he knows that he's 
on an island here, and he just needs to take some paint, and he's done most of his job. As Stone Assassins go ahead and build themselves into Snake 1, if he pops out and tries to shoot that tape on the Snake 1, he should take him. Okay, now the Mighty Dolphins, Snake player does have some help. He's got a Snake 1 over him too. Ooh, I don't like this move. He's playing on the outside of it. He's able to make it into the Snake 50. You're not able to see this from here, but the, the, the Mighty Dolphin Snake player is ripping him up, and he needs to shoot. He's got two more on his Snake side here, and that's going to do it. He needs to tell his other guys that they have the ball as some of the Mighty Dolphins players uh, lose from their Dorito side. So a whole bunch of... Oh, so, wow. Okay, both of the... Both of the Mighty Dolphins players get eliminated from the snake, from this one snake player that they kind of lost track of. Meanwhile, um, the Dolphins have a Dorito side tower player, and I think, yes, they do have a Dorito player as well. So this should be a two on one. Yes, this is a two on one as the snake one for Stone Assassins retreats all the way to the home bunker from the snake one. So I don't know, I don't think that they've picked it up yet. The Mighty Dolphins are in complete control here. There's eight minutes to go. They're up three points. They need to just sit in their bunkers, talk to each other, locate that last body, or Stone Assassin's going to tell this. So that Dorito 2 player uh, retract, uh, goes back to the Dorito corner because I, I, I do think that they do have no idea how many bodies are left and where they are. Um, they're, they're looking cross. That Dorito corner player is looking cross to the snake side. The snake side tower obviously looking Dorito side. You'd think that he could, oh, and he's asking for a check. Oh, and he does get pulled. So this is now turned into a one-on-one. -on -one. Dolphins and stone assassins, and I do not think that the dolphin player knows where that assassin player is. Mighty Dolphin player retracts back to the home while the Stone Assassin player pushes up to the Dorito side. Now he's into the 300. So we have a Snake 1 and a Snake... Th oh, and the... T oh, my goodness. The Stone Assassin player has... Oh, that... So now it's a... It's Snake 4 on home. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he, so Collins does shoot the Stone Assassin's player. He's still not sure that everyone's dead. And he is now. But that was something. That Stone Assassins player ran a whole quarter mile over there. What in the D6 was that? <laughs> there was a whole lot of running. A whole lot of running around. So Stone Assassins not having the world's best premiere coming back uh, to the Premier League, but they got some time. They got some more matches to play. Everything will be just fine. Keep it together, don't get your heads down, all the things. Stay positive. Don't rip each other up in the pits like so many players love to do, just attack people. Terrible idea, guys, by the way. If you play and you're playing on one of these teams and you're one of those guys that gets off the field and just rips into your own teammate, you're never gonna be successful. Don't be that guy. Cartel does this weird cheers thing with their barrels. I don't love that. I, I, I just, that doesn't seem right. Your fist works just as well, much harder. Anyway, Narcos up 2 1, 10 minutes, 12 seconds to go. You're watching Cartel on their breakout. It looks like they're going to make it 5 alive. They're going to take the Viper, the Snake 1. They're going to double the home. Uh, meanwhile, Narcos is doubling the home just for a second, but then they're going to bounce out and they're going to have both towers. They're also going to be in the, the Dorito 300 and the Snake 1. Uh, now Snake 2. And into the Dorito 400, although that player did just get pulled. And the Dorito corner, or the, the Dorito tower player for Narcos moves out to the Dorito corner. The Dorito, um, the Snake tower player moves over to the God. Uh, and that now into the, oh boy. The snake player, oh, get him out. Snake player for Narcos is getting eaten alive over here. And now actually the ref is just getting shot for it. But he was able to take that command center player with him and then gets blasted. 
So in all that confusion, there are still three bodies left for Narcos as Ben Slopper finds his way into the Snake One. They have a home, and I th that will be the, oh, and the, and the Dorito player takes a walk. So only two left now for Narcos. Um, one in the Viper One for Cartel, and in the Dorito 200 for Cartel. And now into the snake for Cartel. So snake one, both uh, snake ones are mirrored for both teams, and then a Dorito 200 and a home. As Cartel makes his way into the 100, I'm sorry, the snake one. Ben Slaufer matches him, snake one as well. That home player for Narco standing very tall and very open, uh, trying to play catch with that Dorito player over there. And now Ben's taking some fire from, uh, from the Dorito side, so that Dorito side is crossed. If he's not careful, he could take one in the side of the head there. That home player for Narcos cannot shoot him as he's shooting the inside. As the cartel player moves himself backwards into the snake one, it's just a small retreat and see if he can get a shot on that home. Seven minutes, 30, 30 seconds to go. 2-1, Narcos has it. As the home player is gonna get a check, but he's gonna be clean for Narcos. Hey, Mr. Taylor, how are you, sir? We have a very, very special guest for you guys. You might know him um, from quite a few pro teams, from building these layouts, from doing all the things that you know and love, from owning his own paintball field. I got Mr. Thomas Taylor standing next to me. Hey! We've never met. I'm a huge fan. I've been one of your fans since I was a, we just a knee-high to a duck. So it's super nice to meet you. Thank you for building these layouts for us. This is awesome. Sweet, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You guys are doing great things here. You know, I enjoy getting to watch all these from home. And, uh, you know, uh, now I get to be here this year, this so it's going to be better. Um, are you coaching this year? I am. I am. My infamous kids were oh, that's right. coming out of the D5. youth and coming into it. So I have two lines in D5 this year. Okay. I'm looking at the brackets, and I was like, guys, do not sleep on the infamous kids. If you don't know who the infamous kids are, they're a bunch of children that are about to mess your world up if you're not careful because they are coached by one of the best that's ever done it. I mean, I've seen your son play. His highlight reel is outstanding. The guy Thank is you. a nightmare. Yeah, he's, he's, he's coming into his own, man. I'm proud of him. We just got him a personal trainer to get him a little more athletic. Yeah. He, got the, he has the mind for the game. You know what? I got to make him an athlete now. What so. a shocking surprise! You got the mind for the game. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So who do we got playing right now? So we got the Stoned Assassins, who you know and well love. They are not the same guys as you probably know from you know back in 2003 days. And then one of my favorite teams, the Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. One of the best names out here. One of the coolest jerseys. They have a pink dolphin, Thomas, that is that is as ripped as anybody that you'd ever seen. Nice. Just, I mean, the most ripped dolphin ever. And they're playing great. Up 4-0 uh, up on the Stone Assassins. They're really putting in the work. They've been playing some super smart paintball. Stone Assassins doesn't have it quite together yet. Have and is this is our premier division? This is our premier division, yeah. Okay, perfect. I saw some of the people over there for the um, the Mighty mighty Dolphins yeah. and some, uh, some NorCal boys in there. Yeah. Yeah, the... Um, uh, I think one of the guys who used to play with us on Excessive was on that one. I, he was wearing a purple jersey, so I, I think that's them. Unless there's two, is there two teams that look like that? No, I believe that's that's the only purple-looking team that I've that I've kind of seen. <coughs> Unfortunately, it's not as cool as those Excessive jerseys, which, in my opinion, the best jerseys that have ever been made. But like the original ones, not like the, the, yeah, yeah. a little bit towards the new school. But that that beautiful XSV in the silver and the gold, right in the center plate. Oh man! Right. Well, the, the, it's it stood the test of time, that's for oh, sure, that's, right? It still does. Still still want some excessive lowers. Right, my, right. My proplexes. Yo, Junior, you hear that? Let's, let's do a little throwback for the people. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so you built this layout. Yes, this is one of my layouts. You it's a little different this layouts. year. So just just uh, for all of you that know, I've been making these layouts for, uh, I think, 10 years now. Um, all Mike's layouts, um, all his leagues. Um, 
But now that I'm here coaching, it's going to be a little bit different. So Mike will have a number of different layouts to pick from. Oh, okay. He'll have a number of different versions. So this particular version had, um, there's two different Dritos I had set up and three different snakes. Um, just so, you know, there's always going to be those people out there that think that somehow it's an unfair advantage because I make them. You're never going to make but everybody happy. <laughs> you're, you're not. No. But I just want people that, you know, people that if you're following along at home, yes. Um, I'm still working with Mike. I, I think he has other people, you know, sending them some stuff too. But, um, you know, uh, these layouts don't get chosen until literally the day of, right. of the event. Yep. Um, uh, usually it's uh, depending on what day setting up, Wednesday or Thursday. Yep. Um, they're all blind layouts. No one gets to see them ahead of time. And I've been doing it for 10 years, never shared any of his layouts with any teams, no matter who I was coaching. Um, and he trusts me to do that. And uh, I enjoy doing it, so I wouldn't want to ever, ever jeopardize that because it's, you know, when I started doing it, it was because I was tired of seeing fields that people didn't like to play or that were not conducive to good paintball, right? So, um, you know, uh, but, yeah, I'm glad you like them. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy doing it. I really Most do. Most fun. And you don't, you don't do the NXL. You do this. I do uh, the uh, USXBL. What, USXBL, and I do the WCPL. Yes. Yeah, and then I do my, my only guy back at home, the NWS. I'm not going to lie. I hated that, w, that USXBL layout. I couldn't make a Dorito save my life. <laughs> yeah. So drop, uh, body's dropping all over the place real quick. We got one uh, dropping off from Stone Assassin. Yep. Uh, looks like actually just one dropping off. Yeah, Stone Assassin started to do two on that dr uh, Dorito floater side. Lost one, but they made the snake on the break, and they were right up into snake four. What are you calling this, snake four or snake three? Snake, fi yeah, snake 50, 50 snake. snake 50, and you can tell they don't. They definitely don't know where this guy is. Oh, this is why I designed this, so you could do stuff just like this, people. Here we go, and he's going to get a two-pack. There's two. Wonderful. And he does get shot by the god player, but he does his job, that's for sure. Oh, and they're gonna. And there's a penalty. There's a Penalty on the spin from the guy in the center brick. Yep. So he'll take three bodies for that any day of the week. Absolutely. Now, if I could give him any advice, I would have just crawled all the way up to the snake knuckle instead of popping up in the middle, and you could have got three, actually. He would have been able to shoot him, him, and that tower over there. But and I've been seeing some weird things where people will, will take the snake, and they will, instead of even, they can get all the way down, and then instead of stopping even at the snake one, they'll actually go into their far into the... Uh, what would be, I guess, technically the real snake one yep. there, and go all the way around and then shoot the god first and then go that way with it. And um, it's a beautiful move when you do that too, right? Because you come there, that god is usually battling heads up, trying to get itself out. So if you can get there before they come out, it's a free kill, and you are going to shoot the rest of the team. Yeah. We saw a five-pack earlier from a guy that just crawled his way all the way down, and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. As I, I said, I don't think you guys are going to see many of those today, or really hardly at all, but that was epic. <laughs> if I was to get in the snake, I would be trying to do what you just said. Yeah. That seems like the best way to do it. That Mighty Dolphin player just tried to take the world's uh, largest fill from what looked like a Dorito corner all the way to the snake corner. That didn't work out for him. Nope. Meanwhile, the Stone Assassin player has filled out for his other player. He needs to, just like we were just talking about here, like he's going to crawl one more here. He's going to check off the god, make sure he's not there, and then look over and then pop that Dorito player. Oh, he doesn't see the Dorito doesn't player. See him. So if I was at uh, um, the Dolphins player, he should have just stayed in that Dorito corner because it's actually not that bad. The snake doesn't have many shots on the Dorito right. corner, and they were in the uh, 100 or the Dorito 1, whatever you're calling the, um, the first Dorito on the tape. You could actually battle back a two on three over there because they had no Dorito presence at all. We have been seeing, especially on low body situations, of people that were maybe 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 into the 100 or the 200 popping themselves back into the corner so they can play a little bit better defense. But it looks like both of these corners, the snake and the Dorito corner, are both excellent for playing playing some defensive points for sure. Absolutely, right? I mean, it's there's really not a lot of shots on them. Um, and it, the shots that are on them aren't like surprise shots, so they shouldn't get picked up. Um, okay, so coming up next, what we got Cartel and Narcos. Now, Cartel's one and one. Narcos are... Do we know? They are, they're either one and they're, they're either one and zero or two and zero, um, but they okay. they've been they've been I think they're I'm pretty sure they're one and zero. One and zero, okay. Yeah. They've been playing some excellent paintball. They have a lot of uh, big time guys on their team: Metzlaufer and David Maruthi, David uh, uh, Mazur, uh, Mazurik, um, who I guess uh, two uh, two of those guys play pro. One of them plays for Aftermath. I don't know who Stephen plays for, um, but definitely a different team than maybe Narcos was last year. I think a whole new group of players. They still have Ryan Greenspan. I think coaching, if not the premier line, all their lines. Okay. I see him out there with them all the time. So they've been having the coolest breakouts, in fact, of anybody that I've seen. They've been doing some way different stuff, which has been fun. Let's see if they do something fun here. Well, going to 100 off the break. Or yeah. Are you calling that the, the big Dorito the first Dorito or the little one the first Dorito? The little one would be the first Okay, so the 200 off the break. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that God Bunker, yeah, probably. But they've been playing some inside-out stuff and playing like this center pin that's that's surrounded by the rest of the pins here, which is very different. Oh, they okay. They walk off this side completely, and just some bigger chunks than you wouldn't expect. They've been switching people around and throwing people in different directions that they wouldn't typically play, which I think is throwing the other teams off. 
Got it. So getting it in some spots. You see here, uh, Cartel lost one off the break. And now they've lost two more. So they're down two on four. I lied. They just shot two of them. So now it is a two on three, yep. unless there's someone hiding over there. Yeah, we got a three. Oh, the, the Dorito yeah. player. Okay. So they had lost one off the break, and then they got lost one filling out. Yep. But you see over here, um, uh, Narcos lost their front Dorito and then, the, and then the back guy over there. So they got three on three, yeah, so and they're this, coming down the snake. This Narcos player just needs to go, go, go. He doesn't have anything to worry about. Oh, oh. now he does. Yeah, well, they just filled what the a good move by this cartel player. Yeah. He sneaks in there. He, doesn't know, know he doesn't know where he's at, but he's like, you know what? If you pop up, I am going to shoot you in the head. That was a really good move by that cartel player there. Because I don't think they have any clue where he's at. Now the Narcos player sees him. And I think he just got shot in the top of the loader. Well, maybe that's, not. That's one right there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's maybe not. the ref. He does not mess around. <laughs> all right, all right. He's good, he's good. Uh, it was a weird angle. I, it looked I like it was you're seeing. I think it was in a little, speed feed. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Uh, can't like it because yeah, I don't know. Anyways, and Cartel's uh, gonna match him here. Oh, yeah. and that center player on the brick does get shot, but that he's gonna. How was his snap game? Not as good. No. It's oh, bounced. he got bounced. Well, you already shot him once. Shoot him again. Yep. Now he see, could do the same thing that guy. If he stands up, he could shoot. The I tower. was wondering if he, if yes. he from here, is able to see that tower or not. Yes, he could. We and have had some interesting things where just a little bit of block here and there, and you're not well, able. So to what see happens right is when that. they're down, right? A lot of people aren't playing to stand up, and I understand why it's scary. But when you're down, these block them out. But when you stand up, you actually have those shots now open up. So it's like playing two snakes in one snake. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. I like that. I'm 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 old and slow, so I would appreciate bunkers that are tall that I can stand up in like this. Oh, is that Narcos player going to take them into the 400? He's going to... Oh. He got him in his loader. He got him in his loader. Now he needs to... Now, now turn. Oh, no. Oh, but oh, this guy's going to run wide. He had uh, to have gotten him, yeah. Oh, I didn't see another... I didn't see another uh, Narcos. Yeah, he was out here, in the corner. So. He ran wide out to the corner. So oh, and that Narcos player is still alive over there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't believe he didn't get that kill. Wow, yeah. So a concession over there from Cartel. Four minutes, 15 seconds to go. Good matches, good matches. Oh, Quisky calling for Grayson to get in. I think Grayson's probably working this event. I know that he, if he's, he's not coaching, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be refing. I think. Taking a look at, uh, at the row, the at vendor row here, in the parking lot. Stop by, guys, if you haven't. We got Matrix gear, Die Paintball, Defy. Violence, a bunch of things to eat. Hey, right here on your screen, you can see that Finlay booth. That's the one I'm manning. I brought oh, down the Finlay okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Working with SSC Customs. And then inside there, I got my own troll line, got some uh, fuel by fire markers, and the infamous kids got all their swags. So if you want to support youth paintball, uh, please stop by and help out the kids. They got hats and shirts and all kinds of cool stuff over there. Hear that, guys? Go support. Go support Mr. Thomas Taylor so that he keeps making us awesome layouts. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Stone Assassins has got to bring it. They're down by three. They, are, they definitely got to bring it. Dolphin's able to take that center brick kind of almost at every point. Stone Assassin's able to get into the snake corner and the Viper one. Um, they also have a home guy who just wants to, it's taking too much time to get out of there. But he does make it out alive. They do know he's in the Viper one, and they're matched uh, They're matched face up on the Viper one, but they are in the snake one too. If that snake guy can get into the snake two, he should be able to blow that Viper away. I like this here, good go. Oh, as I say that, that the, the uh, Dolphins lose one in the corner, but just saying everybody in their spots rolling their guns, and that's kind of what you want. You're up four on one, you, uh, you, or four to one, you don't really have to do a lot. Stone Assassin's trying to make this crawl here. I like this, up into the 50 snake, good retreat. That was quite the retreat. That's better though. I mean, he, he would have gotten absolutely blasted away by the snake guy as soon as he pops his head out. Well, and now he can help with the Doritos too, right? right. So he can help on the slow down of the Doritos from there. And you can see the, the short cut and the long cut. We haven't had the world's most uh, explosive Dorito um, play. We just, just not a whole lot of kills from, from that side of the field, not a whole bunch of push from that side of the field. As a Dorito player, I hope to see more of it. So we'll see what happens maybe in the divisional stuff. As the Dolphins uh, bounce their way out, out to Snake 1. So we got, look at this, though. Stone Assassins in the center 50 in both Snakes. Come on. Come on. So 
the Stone Assassin player is just going to wait for this Snake One player to make a mistake and find himself on the tape. I, do, I don't think that he knows where he's at. These two Snake players should be working together using that center brick to get farther down the field, right? This, this Snake player should be in their Snake. That one should go move up the, the inside Snake a little farther. They could be applying the pressure really good from there. They got the extra body. I mean, it's five on three, right? A four. They're in the oh, it is in the corner too. Yeah. Unless he got shot out when I was looking no, at the no, snake, but I, th there. I think he's still there. Yep. Well, they do lose one out of the center. <laughs> so it is a 44. Hey! Oh, and the center snake player, the 50 snake player. Takes one from, I think, the Dorito corner there. And that's gonna put the Stone Assassins down on bodies. With only two minutes to go, down three points. They need to make something happen as Dolphins go ahead and uh, get out of that Dorito corner and take the 200. And wrapping that command center, moving themselves into the brick as Stone Assassin players just start falling off all over the place. Viper gets taken out quite a bit, oh boy, and really put it on them extra. And the Mighty Dolphin's gonna go ahead and charge in, take a commanding 5-1 lead. Uh-oh, and a late flag. So a late flag is gonna pull two of the Mighty Dolphins, but they did have four alive. Mask, what about them? Okay. It's a, tell them it's in the phone, the 50%. Yeah, there, I, I put it in the phone, it's 50%. Which, which color are you gonna get? Having a small discussion here. You be around a little bit? As it looks like Stone Assassins is going to let the timer tick away, playing a little bit of the of the margins game. And now they're going to towel the boy. They waited a really, really long time to give that towel. So there will be okay. one more point. So what? Well, who got the penalty? Uh, the the Dolphins got a penalty. It looked like a late hit from one of these guys here, but they had. Yeah, four so I bodies, saw Spiegelman so. when he jumped over this beam. He wiped his loader. Oh. So was it was that? A, I didn't know if he was wiping off rub or it, if he wiped off a hit. It, no, it wasn't. He didn't wipe anything. It looked like he got shot in the back or something like that. Okay. They, they only threw a yellow and not a red. So. Okay. Still enough bodies to pull. Nothing to worry about for for them Dolphins this time, and an exciting match here with Cartel and Narcos. The cartel won their first match, then they lost, I think, and they lost, by yeah, a they lot got, to uh, they, they collision. Got crushed, but they had a really like a 13 or 14 point first match. I mean, really, really exciting. They've kind of been all over the place. Um, a lot of penalties, a lot of penalties. Oh yeah, they did have the overtime comeback in the first match, yeah, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's definitely been. A whole bunch of penalties flying today, which has been awesome to see. Awesome. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad the refs are throwing them because then hopefully people <laughs> stop cheating. <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cartel going to the 200. Cartel's going to God make and three shooters. Narcos losing their God player and going to Drew to corner, but he wraps real quick right around up into the 200. Uh, going to the 300. Look at that. Nice yeah. move. Yep. Oh, but that Dorito side tower coming in for a check. Cartel looks like they're pushing the snake hard. They got three in here now, but at the same time, Narcos is up into the 400 now. So as Cartel pushes this way to get away from it, Narcos is pushing that way. I like this. We got ourselves a battle. And the first time I've seen someone really rip down the Doritos. Good yeah, for them. That's what I like to see. To see if Justin picks up that snake corner. He misses him. Running referee. Nope. Juan says, you are good, sir. All right, we got ourselves a five on four. Just three minutes, 30 seconds to go. Cartel down by one, but look at this guy. This guy's going to make a move up into snake one. Oh, nice shot on his loader there. He just shot the can in the loader, but the can's not coming out. Oh, 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 oh. And that there, there's going to be at least a minor. No. Oh, there oh. it is. There okay, it is. there it is. I was like, yeah, shut up. You got to throw that. <laughs> you got to throw that. Uh, now it's a five on two, but the Narcos player is still in the 400. And someone definitely knows that he's there. So he won't be moving anytime soon. Yeah, and that tower player needs to get crossed up immediately. I'm sorry, the Narcos well, Cartel's not really into rush here, right? Four on two. They don't have to just make sure you don't lose the point, right? 
Narcos player gets shot out, so only one left in that Dorito 400 over there. Cartel should make quick work of this. Here they come, and there they go. Oh, nice. So Cartel's here battling. He got three on three. He said Narcos is up 1 0. So, or I mean, uh, they won one match yes. and then they're um, in this match. Yeah. Coached by Mr. Ryan Greenspan. I don't know if you've heard of that guy. He's been around a little bit. Been around a little bit. Just had twins, by the way. Crazy. Congratulations, I Ryan know. Greenspan. Yeah. I didn't even didn't, didn't see him or say congratulations, but a big deal. Very big deal. It's very, very cool. So you got it out of your way early. You had a kid. You were, much, much younger, so that you didn't just grow up. Well, I mean, I felt like I was old kids. when I was having kids. Ryan just waited till he was really, really, old. really old. Yeah, really old. Yeah. Like, his <laughs> twins will graduate, and he'll be like 70. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, Ryan, more power to you, Ryan. It's I didn't say it. Thomas said it. I said it because I'm older than him. I'm allowed <laughs> to say it. I'm allowed. We, we both old. He's just a little bit, yes, less old than I am. <laughs> we don't, no, the reason I can say that, though, seriously, my wife and I are like, do we want a fifth kid? I'm like, you know, like, I could be the walker by the time that kid that oh, graduates. You know, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I love kids, but shoot. That's a lot. All right, here we go, guys. You're watching um, Stone Assassins on your screen right now, breaking out on the left-hand side. Three guns up and a bit. Look at this. They're going everywhere. Sending it. They may. Hold on. The ref's going uh, in and checking. There's the penalty. There. Oh, and it's a. It's a yeah, it's yellow. It's yellow. But look, they're, they're in 400. Yep. And in the, oh, oh. That center blurt gets blown away. The 400's the murdering some away. people, though. They're just throwing. I like this. It was like the Hail Mary. They just sent it all over the place. If their can didn't get a penalty, that would actually was a good play. Because the guy that didn't send, the one guy they didn't send down the field got a penalty. Yes. Everybody else was there. Yep. I mean, go, baby, go. That Stone Assassin player, he's in here, and he's he's got most of a charger here. I don't think there's much anything holding him up. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Look, at, look at this run. Look at this run. Look at that run. Game time finish. Uh-oh. He felt those ones. Yeah, that hurts. Yep. So that's going to do it for that match. Unfortunately, Stone, Stone Assassin's going to go 0-1 uh, to start the day. That's okay. Lots of room to lots of room to get better. Yep. Meanwhile, my Dolphins. Dolphins. Shout out the to game. the Dolphins. Killing yeah, so, the game. So I'm, the more I'm looking at those jerseys, that's like some excessive uh, semi-pro guys from a couple years ago. They got um, an excessive player that played uh, with me. I think uh, um, uh, was it uh, who's over there? You know, I wish that I had a you roster. Have a roster? We, well, we see, okay. So this is everybody's fault, but we asked we asked all the teams to like submit to us like their roster, tell us like you know who they are. You know all the things who their uh, who their sponsors are. You know some fun facts. Well, we got about 25-ish teams of the you know 130 that are here. So, oh, I don't think I did that. Yeah. Well, did someone tell me to do that? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, I should have done that. Yep. Uh, you need me to fill it in now? See, even the great, <laughs> even the great Thomas Taylor. <laughs> do you need me to fill that in? Didn't get the memo, so I guess you guys are less to blame. <laughs> Ooh, Narcos left early, but he uh, touched back up. We have and let's see if he still makes the corner. Early, and he does get pulled. He does make it. Okay, so he made it. He had a, he did a little touchback. Ref's going in. Oh, but it looks like he got shot going out of the corner anyway. Oh, oh there's, a, there's, the there's the can film. you're talking about. Yeah, right, if you're following a home. So that's oh, camera, get the, camera, can you get that? And he's in there, oh, he did get he shot. Let, so that was a great move. I wish the camera would have caught that. He went to the Dorito 50 can, yeah. shot cross field. Oh, look at this. We got a battle here, though. Oh, David Best. I think that's David Best. He's about to get pumped up. If this Narcos player looks inside. He gets one. He might get two. Oh, no. David sees him now. Time. Oh, the, I don't think the clock was running. Or something. Something was amiss there. Why are we timing? Oh, Narcos towel. So Narcos towel that. Oh. The troll replaces Maddie. Let's fucking go. Hey, <laughs> trolls in the house. <laughs> Let's talk about how sweet that helmet is. Because that, that's how I want to ref. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Surely you know Bobby. Yeah, I do. And the myth, the legend. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just like, look at that thing. Yeah. If you got to get shot in the dome, that's how you want it, right? I think he had a different one last year. Yeah, that one, that one looks different. Stickers. Yeah. There was a lot more stickers. Hey, did you decorate that hat recently, or was it always like that? Cause I see a monkey with a gun sticker. No, that's a new monkey with a gun sticker. Yeah, that one looks. Yeah, like that's sure. not that's not normal. Couple couple good helmets out here. Hey man, 
listen, you got to give it up for the refs. You know, refs that oh, aren't yeah. here, refs local, national, whatever you do around the world. I love y'all because uh, I run events, and I've only had to ref a little bit. I don't think I could do it. I don't. I like it. It is that is a hard job. It's, yeah. You are, you always lose. Someone's always mad at you, even when you make the right call. Yep. You get shot all day long. All day long. It's and cold. it's never like a. It, you're on your feet yeah. trying to watch 200 mile an hour paintballs for eight, ten, sometimes twelve hours. And then you got to clean it all up. You got to pack it all. Oh, up. You got to do all these this guys thing. are. I mean, I I'm. There's no way they get paid enough by any league. And I'm not. I'm, I know Mike pays well. He does a good job. Yeah. I'm just saying, like that is a that is a that's a that's a job. So your boy Best from Seattle Cartel was getting. He's, he's been getting a little mouthy. I'm getting a little mouth oh, the boys out there. Send and it, I told him, I said, bro, like, you cannot, you can't, he's going to mess you up. Why Maybe would you do that? Why? I shit. learned my lesson a long time ago. I even told oh, him, I said, Bobby especially, he takes zero crap from you, I promise. I like a, I like a stand, though. Oh, Best yeah. Best chance of getting shot. Power stance. The, uh, yeah. you know, places you don't want to get shot. All right, all right, if you're walking along, this is an awesome game here. Back and forth. Narcos are down three to four. Let's see what they do. They had a sweet play last time. You think they're going to do it again? No. Okay, so this time they're going three shooters, spreading it wide. Quick release out of the back center. Cartel five alive, makes the snake corner. But they're stuck double in the home, and that double home here is bad news if you get wide, and they did. Narcos now in the Dorito two or the 200. There we go, Cartel moving out into the zipper, the inside snake into the one, following him up into the can. We got ourselves a five on five. The Narcos get shot in the... No, I'm not going to say it. Whatever. Um, Narcos <laughs> loses their god player and moves into the into the 200. <laughs> you saw that, though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Narcos now four on five up into the Dorito three, moving into the Dorito four again. Four on four as Cartel loses, loses another one, three on four. So the Dorito four player for Narcos shoots two people. Justin in this can right here for Cartel is in a really bad spot. Oh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. because look, he's getting pinched. Yep. Narcos did a great job. They're in the God and they're in the 400 wrapping. Cartel really only has a chance here. Somehow this uh, Drudo 4 gets shot. 44 seconds. The move needs to come through the middle. You guys seeing this on your screen? Oh. Narcos needs to come through the middle here. I wouldn't have done that. You go no. up and you trap this can and you come through. You got two bodies. That's you have the first one to waste. Seen doubling the god. I don't yeah. Think that Why not send one right through the middle? You have one body to waste. Go get two with it. Give yourself time to score. And he's been the most explosive player Ben Slaver has. So now look at. But this is good. Narcos. He can come wide and he can put he's balls good, but on he's the only can. Only got 20 seconds. You got 20 seconds to get all the way down the field, hit the buzzer, and be clean. You better hurry. Oh, they're not, they're not uh, blowing it. it. See, well, look at they went wide, wide. If he just had gone to their brick right here, he could have traded with at least one, and now they have the chance to win that point. We we had it looks Tyler like he Harmon. just got he he's out. It's in his arm. Yeah. Wow. One of the most important lessons that we took from we had Tyler Harmon come to our camp and and give us a couple lessons and this and that. And one of the most important things that he told us is to never die on your sword. And that is exactly what we just saw from four Narcos players here sitting here with as the time is expiring, not trying to go get yours, try, not trying to go get yours. That's that's not good. Right. You especially like paintball players. If you're watching this at home, your outside guys are both trapped. Three guns are shooting at two guys. Your inside guys are free. That's where the move comes from. One of them goes through, punches it, or you just get so close enough, you make one guy have to switch and respect you, then, then someone you can the break the tape off. open. Right. That's all yeah. That's all communication. You have to be able to tell your guy where the push is coming from, who's looking at who. you got to draw that picture for your guys so that you can push them up the field. We've seen some bonehead plays. Well, let, let's pretend in that scenario they didn't even know that the um, 400 player, the 3-4 player, had shot two. They should have because they're both looking this way on the snake side, and they, those guys had to walk past them because they're – their pit is on their side. Right. But let's say they didn't see that. You still don't do what they did here because that they're guaranteed to lose. Unless you're cool with losing or, you know, you wanted to have only a one-point game. But at least one of those two should have tried to go through the middle. Maybe it doesn't work. Okay, cool. We're going to lose by one. It's three on three. And I feel like Ryan is, Ryan is going to rip them apart in the pits and tell them exactly that. Like, what on earth are you guys thinking? That There's no way that that's how he drew that up. When you make these layouts, Thomas, do you – are do you look for, are you trying to do anything specific? Are you kind of just trying to throw something out that throws something different? Or are you thinking in your head, like, I want there to be more center action. I want there to be more Dorito action. I want there, I want the snake to be crazy so where you just have people running into each other. Or so I, I really, that all, all layouts are built with this in mind, that the risk is worth the reward. 
right? So I start there. Um, you should never be making a layout, whether it's middle, Doritos, snake, that the, the risk of passing the 50 is less than the reward of passing the 50. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in all things I do, I try to create it. Now, a snake like this, I'm going to make it hard to get to, multiple places to stop it, because then, you know, it's really not a risk. It's just all reward. It's yeah. all payday. Yeah. Every now and then I put that in there, but then I'll also do it on the other side. So it's like, which side are they going to attack, right? Yeah. Um, but I try to make it where there are multiple ways to win a game, multiple ways to not lose a game. But I'm always setting it up that, like, even here, you see these two bricks. I've seen people go brick to brick to the middle. If you go and you trap the outside guy right, and you know what the guy on the, on the snake side is doing, the risk is worth the reward to go to their brick. You know what I haven't seen, especially when you talk about center brick stuff, is two people going in there and shutting out both sides and really just closing both those things which, down. Which you could do. Oh, yeah, 100%. Could do. We just haven't seen it. We haven't seen it yet. It, yeah. it, it's doable. Yeah. And I, I'm, I think it's because people are so intimidated by the length of the snake. They're like, if we both get trapped in there and they do make it wide, yeah, we're, we're, we're dead. dead. Yeah. So I, it's probably, so you know, once again, the, the idea. But yet, yeah, all, all the field layouts, what really, when I really started getting into making layouts, people started making layouts, and I won't name leagues or names or whatever, where there was no point of going past Snake 2. There's no point of going past the Dorito 1. There's no point of even trying to attack the middle. So then we were watching paintball be boring. Um, now, we've all gotten so good, you can still make a good layout boring, right? We've all gotten better. I mean, kids these days are, you know, as good as we were yeah. at Pro 12 years ago. It is wild how good people are. So you can always slow down any layout with good communication, good gun skills. Watch Dynasty do it to everything in the world. They're phenomenal at it. Damage can do it. Like I heard New York Extreme is pretty good at it. They are, they are pretty good at slowing down the field, too. Yeah. They are. They are. Um, yeah, it's really, really <laughs> watched them last year, and they uh, they, they have the, the talent. We have the talent uh, yeah. now that I'm here. Yeah. Um, no, there's a, it's a, they're good at sh shooting, the, shooting the field, right? You know, it's one of the things that I came in I was really happy about. I was like, man, this team's good at shooting. They're good at holding it down. They can slow down the field. They can win one game, uh, one-point games, two-point games, right? So um, uh, this last event obviously didn't go quite that direction. We had a couple injuries, and, and you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, so the, in the idea of layouts, you want to give people a reason to risk it, right, to push the envelope. Yeah. And if you don't, we're going to watch people just shoot their guns. Yeah. And that is not fun for the spectators. It's not fun for paintball players. But if we ever want the sport to gain any kind of momentum. Need something new. Well, yeah, you don't want people watching people no. just sit in their bunkers. They can't see the paintballs flying out of their guns, so it just literally looks like people sitting there. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we're not all mic'd up. We don't have cameras on our barrels, like, you know, which should be done if we ever want to do something cool. Um, but yeah, I want paintball to be exciting. I want it to be fun. And ultimately, you know, when Mike puts, you know, stuff in my hands or uses one of my layouts, I want people to be like, wow, I enjoy playing Mike's leagues, right? You know, the best. I, I, I mean, I, I haven't played a ton of NXL, but I have played a very small amount. Of, I've been there and this is just as fun, if not more fun than any NXL league or any other league that I've been to. Dude, if you haven't been here, go check the, out the Vendor Village. I was yeah. mind blown this morning. Yeah, it was great. Oh. This is awesome. And the USXBL also amazing. I don't think you were there. I haven't got to go to one of those yet. I'm going to try to get to one this Man, year. And it was. I, yeah, I'm going to try to get. I didn't, I didn't love your camera. layout because I couldn't make a Dorito. Like, <laughs> but, but once we figured it out, it worked a little bit better. But the, right. the whole thing was, and anyway, just amazing. All so right, coming up set. now, we got, um, is it Maintain? Maintain and Violence. Violence losing their snake player off the break, but doing four big guns. Oh, and a nice big trip going in the command center there for yeah. Violence. But he that looked make rough. It. Yeah, that hurt. I think with all the wet, they'd just be able to do a nice slip and slide. But right. Violence pushing that center a little bit. Violence a little bit of a of a collective team. There's some collision jerseys out there. There's a couple of guys who have been this, that, and the other way. I think maybe a Golden Misfits player from last year might be on this team. Um, so a little bit hectic, and then uh, the maintain guys, mostly D3 players that have had some success in D3 and trying to push themselves up and trying to do something cool. They've, they've been uh, a little good, a little not so good in their first two matches. I think they're one and one, Okay. Um, but played pretty good paintball. They had to go through TJ on one of their matches, and TJ is, I'm, as I'm sure you probably know, I mean, they're very well established. They know exactly what they're doing right. and really knocked them out. Um, but overall, all in all, smart breakouts, good play. Maintain shooting the uh, Violence Dorito Tower player. So Violence down three on five now. Like to see that if you're a Maintain fan, that's for sure. 
Violence losing an earlier match to the Bloodhawks, which was a little bit unexpected, in my opinion. Good communication out there. Still got both of those towers with no Dorito presence yet from that Dorito side. You'd think that they want to push that a little bit, and there it goes. Gets himself into the 200 there. Still in the center brick, both mirrored up. See if this violent snake player is able to maybe pop one more knuckle and get himself a kill or two. They do know that something's going on in the snake. That center brick player is putting down paint somewhere in this area. He just has no idea where he is right now. Oh, he definitely knows where he's at now. Yep. That Viper player also going to know where he's at as well. And this maintain player could, in the middle could really just go win the game if he wanted. He could get, walk right up to this brick, dunk on that guy, shoot the other guy, and kill the snake. There's no one, nothing stopping him. And there goes the Dorito player into the 300 for maintain. Yep. Yeah, once it gets real quiet, someone go yep. make a move. Yeah, this is the guy that needs to go make the move right here, the number eight in the middle. That seems to be what the most, the, the, the middle seems to be hard to, you seem to catch, you seem to catch moves late. The guys seem to be able to be moving from brick to brick and getting in there relatively at ease. Right. Oh, see, he's, this collision player, he's very confused now. But that's okay, he's still, he's still putting paint somewhere. Snake player for violence, looking center way, looking for that maintain guy, I think, to just pop his head a little bit higher. And, oh, yeah, and he, he did, but he missed a shot. And maintain gets into the 400. This, this could be where you get some work done. Oh, violence player getting shot out of the wedge over there by the Dorito 4. That's going to be big. Now 400. somebody has to go dunk on that center guy. Yeah. Well, they got, well uh, Maintain has to be careful because they're gunfighting one-on-one -on -one to that brick. If he loses it, all of a sudden it's a two-on-three, and he does. Oh, and the, yes. So like I was saying, like, now now they, the guy in the brick can turn the field back on uh, Maintain, even though they're down on bodies. Yeah, but now that brick has to stay Dorito side now, right? This is, this is a, you know, they're still in good position. This guy in the middle now has the ball, right? The guy that's in the um, inside snake one. He's the one that needs to, to do it. Like, get these two to work together. He yep. comes in, and he can change the game. Uh, I thought when I came to California, it was supposed to be hot and sunny. Bro. That was what I was told. Bro. Um, it was. Oh, see, and then he loses his next gunfight. Oh, man. So two on two now for maintain and violence, with violence having a slight upper hand, having uh, that middle brick and snake three against the Snake one and the Viper one for Maintain. Ooh, is the, is the rain starting to come down a little bit? Yeah, it's hitting us on the angle. <laughs> it's not, not ideal at all. Look at this good move by Violence, backing up out of there, up uh -oh. into the wedge. And you, can, you guys can probably see on your screen now that that rain is starting to definitely it's come. It's actually down. coming down. Yeah. That is not sweet. So if you don't have a rain lid right now or a visor, um, not the best place to be. So that center player for violence has taken himself out and, and put himself in the 300 over there. Yeah, that's a good move right by him. He's oh, spread 100%. the field. Yeah. Been calling for a check, but didn't get one. And well, they, did, they, did, they didn't even know he was in there. They were calling snake only. Oh, and so that Dorito player just pounced that, uh, just shot the snake one, and now, yeah, so now they're both done. Wow. So good job by the guy in the center brick. We got himself a four pack. Nice. Yeah. yeah, turn that game around. Violence coming basically down from a four. A, a two four, on four? A two on four. Yep. Yeah, to end that, that was great. Yes, Adrian, the rain is pouring now. It is, uh, it is definitely wet. I do, I don't mind a little bit of rain, but it's now gotten <laughs> pretty cold. I am, I am, I am chilly. <laughs> I brought a blanket. Sorry, Thomas, you can't have it. Nah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, see, he, he saw what you heard. Run the highway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there's, Maintain had a lot of opportunities to win that one there. Just 
you know, you could tell the inexperience, right? You know? Yeah, it's another thing uh, we were just told, you know, what's stopping you? If you're not feeling that pressure, get going. Right, well, and, you know, there's a difference between playing to win the game and playing not to lose the game, and they're playing not to lose the game, 100%. and ultimately that cost them the game. 100%. You know? Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, I'm going to back up a little bit and maybe get a little less wet here. So up next, we got Regime and Vegas Brawlers. Uh, Brawlers have been looking great. Um, they like we just we were talking about earlier. They did win D2 NXL, um, coming out here looking real strong. They've got a Hormesis uh, champion on that squad and Avery, and this should be an excellent match. All right, zero zero. Vegas Brawlers four guns up off the break. One guy One being called out for Regime. No penalty. Yeah, they, Regime would lost their Dorito corner, and they're calling the God clean. So Vegas Brawlers up five on four, rolling five on their guns. on three as Regime loses another oh. one. Uh-oh. Ref's running in. If he's hit, it's going to be a penalty. Oh. It is. It, it is. is a penalty. So an immediate three on three. After, oh, now it's three on two as the God player gets shot out for Regime. Guys, we're sorry about the cameras. It is a little bit windy and a little bit rainy. We're doing the best we can. And people are just dying left and right. Vegas Brawlers now up in that center 50 out in the um, uh, Dorito corner in the God. So taking they got a, a good spread. Yeah, taking a big bite and then filling the snake one here as well for, for Brawlers, making his way all the way, I think, from the home. And he, I don't think that they know that he's there. Uh, yes, Ryan, that was definitely one of the worst events ever. Literal, like, I don't know, it was like six, eight inches of rain. The streets were rivers. <laughs> Up over the curbs. <laughs> oh, look at this move right here in front of us. Oh, oh, and he gets and he caught. caught. And what a snapshot. What a snapshot by that regime player. That was terrific. What, what the Brawlers guy has to ask himself, why, why not crawl to the end and win the game instead of picking a gunfight, which is 50-50? You know, I don't care how good you are, it's 50-50. Yeah. Flip a coin with the game or just crawl down and win it for free? You, your choice. He flipped the coin and lost. <laughs> Now it's a two on two. He got a little bloodthirsty, saw, saw, yeah, saw yeah. something over there, wanted to just go get the cheap kill real quick. Yeah, and he said, you just crawl one more, this yeah. guy can't see you, that guy can't see you, you just dunk them both, it's easy. You know, maybe he's worried about like the guy jumping out and getting him, which is a possibility, you know, I mean, I don't know, but. It's probably like a little bit easier for the guy that's been playing paintball for like 25 years. And, you know, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> We're all trying to get to that level, Thomas. That's why we start here. Fair enough, all right, all right. Well, when you go back and watch this, Mr. Vegas Brawler, you learn something. I'm certain that they will go back and watch this later, but listen to Thomas, dang it. So, slow down quite a bit, it's a 21. Um, it should be two on two, actually. Yeah, I think the uh, the brawler should fill out to the Dorito corner. I don't know if these ever come off the field. Okay, so I can't we, see him, but yeah. I think he's still out there. So a Dorito corner and then the center brick yep. against the uh, Dorito side tower. Yep, and the see, there he is on the corner. screen. If you guys are looking top left corner, you can kind of just see him. He's looking cross field. He's trying to keep the guy out of snake one. There he is. No, both of them kind of blind shooting at each other. You know, they both they both know they exist. Oh, that was actually a pretty good shot. Yeah, it was. He's going to make it in there. Oh, oh no. no way. No way. Corner to corner. What a, what shot. a shot by the Vegas Brawlers. Now going up two on what one. What a shot. And he waited on that for a long time, too. And, he, and, your, and your center brick player does not know that he's a kill. Yeah. All he saw was him flash. And then yeah. the guy, because the, the player leaves on that side. No penalty. No way. Yeah. And there goes the streaking Vegas Brawler player to attack the first point on the board, nearly a four minute point. And just over three and a, almost a three and a half minute point. <laughs> Brawlers are gonna take a 1-0 lead. 1-0 lead, and you know, that was a good back and forth match actually. You know, you, you, in the beginning we thought, okay, Vegas Brawlers are gonna take this, they're up five on three. Then, then really they weren't because one of their players was hit. So he takes a friend with him. And then we had a nice back and forth there for a couple minutes. It's already starting to, the layout is already starting to slow down just a, just a little bit. It might be the rain uh, or these players are starting to figure it out maybe a little bit better. But it is, we, we had some quick, quick points this morning um, that have definitely taken a step back. The, um, you know, if both teams choose to play the pocket early, 
this field can really slow down because now everybody's in those same spots. Yeah. And then it's really hard to leave your initial bunkers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's why, like, on this side, you have three different risks. You can go to the first snake, the god, the second snake, or the corner. And you can run all different routes, right? So do you want to take one of those four and keep mixing it up on a team and hope they don't, you know, they only catch you one out of every four times? And I, it looks like, and I, I unfortunately I haven't been able to walk it as much as I would have hoped, but it looks like there's a, there's a lot of lanes all over the place, but, you know, from the from the side. Uh, I've seen people getting shot out going into the god, going into the Dorito corner, or going into the snake corner. Ooh. Maintain losing two off the break. Violence still five alive. Yep. There is a ref going, no, he's not going to check the home. Nope. Pretty good communication out of these violence guys. I don't know exactly how much practice that they've had going into this, but they look, they look pretty solid so far. Taking two, maintain guys, make it a five on three. Oh, just as I say that, now it's four on three. There we go. It's kind of what happened ma ma last time, right? Maintain got in there, shot a couple bodies. No, no, last time maintain was up on bodies, yeah. sorry. Yep. The violence player in the can is playing it like he's getting shot from both sides. Am I missing? Is there someone like? I don't think so. Yeah, he was playing it like he was like his bunker was getting like. I mean, they do have the Drew to corner, but there's no one at, you know no one in front of him pushing him around right. in, in that bunker, right? I was just the way he was playing it. I was like, maybe I missed up, messed up. Maybe there's someone hiding in here. I don't know about. I don't know. When I say that, uh, looks like violence up into the Drew two now, two hundred. <laughs> They got two bodies over there, so that's going to be a nice little power play for them, right? They, they can use those two guns to start pushing around um, the Drito corner and then get down the field. And they do shoot that center uh, brick player for maintain. You'd think that snake corner, there he goes, yeah. That snake corner would, would get out of there and get himself in. And uh, maintain trying to match trying him. Trying to match, but he only gets himself into the god. That could, yeah, that could be a problem. There we go. Gets so two on four. One, yep, two on four, he gets out here. I mean, they're still way down on bodies, but they have a you know an opportunity now, right? He put himself in a position to help his, his teammate out in the Drito corner. Oh, Ooh. the Drito corner does take a walk. Yeah, the Dorito corner tried to go forward. That wasn't the move there. There goes a big old move into the 400 on the Dorito side. Here comes the snake runner and a concession. That's the right play. No need to get your guy just blasted out of there with four guns rolling on you. Ron Snide asking for for struggle to come back. That would be cool. So violence going up 2-0 there two in low. that match. Yep. Vegas Brawl is currently up 1-0 to Regime. Have uh, Has Regime played yet this morning? Uh, yes. Kay. Yes, they, I think, uh, I need, I need, see, this is why I need a computer. I can't yep. remember their record. Okay, no worries. Teams. This should give you a little sheet where you can just put a little dot next to it or also something. Also, that would probably be good. You, just, just, you know, like yeah. a dauber? Yeah. You know, we could bingo it or something? I mean, they gave us that, that cool orange sheet this morning that told us the schedule. Mm -hmm. I probably could have used that to write on Yeah, it. yeah, and you got a dauber right here next to it. I chose you know? to not do any of that. Listen, I'm still learning, Thomas. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll teach you the ways. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I get paid the big bucks, Thomas. <laughs> Brawlers, I like this. Four guns up yep. with a snake runner. But their they, snake runner does die. They did. They did. And uh, main, uh, sorry, Regime playing four in the middle. I can't find their fifth body. I think it's Dorito Corner. One of the Brawlers guys uh, separating himself out of the back center, moving himself into that into that. Oh, no, in the God. The center. Brawlers very much in the pocket right now. Couldn't be more pocket play. Regime getting a little bit more out with the God and the Viper one. And now in the center push.
I like this guy just standing over that wing. Just rain, buddy. What paint bill? <laughs> right? <laughs> Almost gets caught there, though. <laughs> he's like, he's looked like he's asking for a check. Looks like he might have taken a bounce off the top of the head. Oh. That'll, that'll put you down back in your bunker real quick. Oh, get him out. Yep. Oh, nice shot there That's by that. Snakeside the... Tower takes a walk. And then very quickly, Regime puts himself into the Snake 2, walking himself into the Snake 3 and the Viper oh. 2. But that they, uh, the Brawlers are going to fight back. They're uh, taking that center brick spot. Yep. Uh, they, Regime called it, though. They're calling it Monster. So I'm assuming that means an M middle. Yeah. Um, so I think they saw him go in there. Oh. If he had gone in unseen, it was a good move. But now that he's there, you're like, so I think that, yeah, this is Avery that's playing the center, and he is the Hormesis champion out of Arizona. This guy is a nightmare to deal with, but he has a lot of guns looking his way. This guy, I think, uh, their snake player is about to run right into it. Keep putting it on there, Avery. Who does Avery play for um, in general? He plays for the Brawlers. Okay, he played Brawlers, for the Brawlers yeah. last year, okay. and then they didn't, they didn't go to Vegas for the Hormesis championship, so he decided to come to us and just wreck us instead. And he does take out that snake player. Yeah, and the guy's a boss. So, but I think that, he, I, yeah, there's two of them here, and he's about to get run down, at least take a trade. No way. Doesn't get shot, and now we have a poison on the wing. Oh, this bit. How, how does that happen? He's still not hit. He's still not hit. He went through two people looking his direction. Oh, this guy's getting shot, though, because he doesn't know that this guy's shooting him. Yeah, see ya. Oh, wow. Did he, he get that other guy, with too? all of them? I'd... No. Looks like the that only last... guy that's alive like is the that guy that did the alive. double wow. run through and should have died. He had two barrels aimed right at him. Not only did he have that, but he had a running ref come in and check him in a poison. Like, how do you not feel that if you're that player on the other side of that bunker? Like, just go get him. Well, shout out to whoever that w was for the Vegas Brawlers and the Snake shooting three out of the four. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's good that's for how you him. Don't die on your sword. Well done. Wow, that's nice. One minute. <coughs> so the refs initially said trade, and then he's like, "Man, I am not hit. You yeah. better come check me." And somehow during that whole thing. The player on the other side of his bunker didn't notice. That was wild. It doesn't even make much sense, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. who did um, Kyle? Kyle. Kyle. Who did Rising play that 11-minute point? Uh, Philippines. Philippines. Yeah, we had Rising play the Philippines earlier in an, eight, in an 11 and a half minute point, seconds. which ended in a no point. The Philippines lost the match 1-0, and two of their guys just died in their bunkers with no time left in the thing. It's just like, Ooh. they were picking paint off the, off the turf. But, I mean, you could just, it, what a wild match. I really, you, that's one of those things you, you, even, you should go back it. and watch. And be All right. like, what in the D6 is happening here? Just bad, 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 bad. Maintain three guns up. Snake corner, violence, four guns up, also snake corner, but losing their snake can, or uh, what are you gonna call them, the snake can, just snake can? Yeah. Okay, cool. Snake can, um, snake Violence tower. getting shot coming out of the back center, now down two on, or three on five. Still in the double up for maintain on the, on the back, on the, on the home. Getting into the snake two, quickly into the snake three. Both teams in the snake though, he's gonna get okay, caught well, down the line stop. if he's yep. not, ooh. Yep. The and violence he, player almost caught him there, he was a little sloppy on that. Maintain making two moves over on the Drito side, playing together. So this Maintain player in the can needs to join his Snake player. Because you're giving this uh, Violence player the opportunity to turn the whole game. If he right. snaps this guy, he can come down the field and turn right. the whole field. And there's nothing stopping that can from coming over here, joining the game, or even the back center coming all the way over and being up in it, right? Yeah. You want to you be as close to your teammate as you can, especially when they're the most vulnerable. Yeah. That's one of the things that we we figured out at USXBL is that we needed to put at least two in the snake. That layout was just calling for it. Yeah, almost on both sides. Yeah. The reverse snake and the forward snake. So a good move from the maintain player to get himself up one, but he does he is taking all the fire from the Dorito side tower, who definitely knows where he's at. Not the best. There's a better Once position. again, one of these two players needs to join him. If this guy dies, this one violence player can turn the whole field. And that's why Maintain lost that first point. And that match. tower player is just sitting there watching him do work. Just, just, do, I mean. These two are doing nothing. Just right. like last time, that the center brick guy could have went and won the game, yep. and they waited until they lost. These guys are waiting to lose again. 
Hey, Who's their coach? I was going to say, Who's maintain. I don't know if you know okay. if you're listening. Listen, but, uh, listen. I'm I'm a, I'm available love, for a weekend. Love to teach you guys. It'll cost you, but you yeah. just call me. I'll come help. <laughs> now, now maintain losing a Dorito player right. on their strong side. Ah, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. These guys just going to sleep against each other. Like, how do you not know? Yeah, I mean, at least they at least they're feeling a little bit on the Dorito side. These two guys in the back just hanging out. Yeah. We don't love it, Maintain. The man, the myth, the legend has spoken. As we say that, the home guy does leave. He does leave, but once again, they're all focused on, do that over here, get your player down the field, we can win the game, right? Help out, or once again, if you lose this player, you have someone in, but I also really like getting out here in this double. You can help cross field, you can help here. There's a lot of stuff you can do from being over there. They can, he's already passed your gun anyway, so I mean, what are you doing? You're not doing anything there. You're, you're hoping he doesn't wrap on you and you get shot out of that thing because it's not that great of a bunker. No. When they're wide, yeah. obviously. When they're short, we, it's a good bunker. And he actually goes the opposite way. Goes the he decides <laughs> to go Doritos. Bold move, Cotton. Bold move. Let's see how it works out for he him. Might. Maybe, maybe he goes in the. Maybe he, he fools me. He gets out in the blind oh, right so now. Now, and he he's, gets one. now he's playing a total dead area. Oh, I don't love any of this. And he... Okay, so they do shoot the snake. They do shoot the snake. And that guy is going to get that kill. It's, it's a trade there. Very, very long awaited. But Maintain is going to take this point. They got three minutes and... Plenty, plenty of time to put another point on the board. So, you know, yes, you know, you, you're going to come back and watch this Maintain. You're going to see this. Oh, hey, we won the point, though. But, like, break it down. Like, how could you have won it easier? How easily could you have lost it? I mean, easily in this game, they could be up 2-1 right now. Pretty easy. Just understanding the execution of the whys. You know, why, why are we doing what we're doing? It, sometimes it just takes time. It takes repetitions. But these are good opportunities to go back and look at it and just understand the why. Part of me does wonder, like, does the team have a coach? Because somebody should be able to notice that. Like, if you're going to push aside, just push the side. Send your guy. Joystick him up the way. And go in this thing. Absolutely. And it looks like the good Lord's going to bless us with a little bit of sun because that is good. I am freezing right now. A little now. bit of sun. <laughs> Where's our guy in the chat that was, that was uh, he was full on the weather report. He was even, he was saying back to you guys in the studio. I mean, it was good stuff. All right. So um, up next, Regime and Vegas Brawlers 1-1. And if you are here locally, I just want to give a shout out again. Please head on over to our booth. Support the uh, iconic, infamous kids. Check out some of my troll swag. Um, yeah, it's a long trip down here. And, yeah, we got some cool stuff over there. Vendor Village is just awesome in general. Vendor Village oh my looks goodness. great. It's it so is great. Packed to the gills. We got lots of awesome, awesome stuff. And now the sun come out. So yeah. Well, listen, we drove all the way here from Arizona. You guys can you know travel from your homes down the street. Come out. Come hang out. Support. Maybe, maybe, maybe you get a, a Finlay bucket hat to stop the rain, but then there you get you Finlay go. glasses to stop the sun because it keeps going back and forth. Guys, <laughs> guys, Thomas has it on lock. <laughs> we got we it. We have things for all. We got it. Thomas has things for all <laughs> weather think. in his booth: <laughs> sun, rain, shine, anything snow related. Yeah, Thomas. with anything. beanies, yeah. beanies and sweaters. There we go. That's that's fine for snow. Yeah, we'll take that. All right, all right. yeah, yeah, beanies and sweaters. Hey, Yordster, yes, that is the Thomas Taylor. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Come on out. Uh, roll Let's out for see a bucket hat. See, Let's go. Daniel knows. Yeah. There we go. So okay. short break here while the refs air things up, wipe things down, do all the things, throw that pod willy-nilly basically into a bunker. That was a terrible toss, right? Did I just hear violence is starting down one? I could have sworn it. It sounds, it sounds like what I heard. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Uh, regime breaking out into the god but losing that player. Losing it looked one. like they got shot early. All five alive, it looks like, for the Brawlers. They double up the home yet again. This is kind of Brawlers' basic breakout here, huh? God yeah. can tower outside, double homes. Yeah. It's what we've been seeing from a lot of people, is a whole lot of double So home. is the home not shooting the God as much as, I mean, no. people are making it a lot, huh? It, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, it seems like, I don't know, it, 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 most teams either are picking a side. They're either going to put two guns on the Dorito corner runner, or they're going to put two guns on either the snake uh, corner runner or the god runner. Some people are making it, some people are not. It's it's, it's pretty close to 50-50. Okay. Uh, one of the brawlers guys at the home having a problem with his gun. Gonna take some things apart. 
So. Like Brawler's filling out to that uh, Dorito corner and looking inside, it really chops up a lot of stuff there. And then they move into that wedge, and that wedge chops down the Dorito. So, like, if you're looking on the top right-hand corner of your screen, those two actually have pretty much most of the field locked down right now. Good on the Brawler's guy to be able to clean his gun and keep his and keep his head up and and still help draw that picture from his teammates and let them know if there's any movement going on. There's, there's Josh. Appreciate that, Josh. Our weather looks good till, till 5 p.m. with an 18 chance of rain. It looks yeah. like we might have some more sun for the next couple hours. Let's go. Is that Dorito player for Regime? Looks like he wants to make the move. Looks like he's trying to put somebody in and go. As the God player for the Brawlers bounces out to the snake corner. And only two alive for Regime. And he does make that move into the 300. Oh, and I lied. There were three players for Regime. And oh, but they do shoot that, that snake corner player. They do. Brawlers. Regime, when he, see, I like what the Regime player did. He saw his player move into the Doritos, so he came back to help out with the cross because he knows that we, they got to create some offense, right? And they're down on bodies. Oh, Except oh, for his Dorito player got shot out. Lots of movement as Regime just peels off all over the place. Oh, did he get the kill in there? He didn't, but I like to move into the inside snake. So they definitely know that he's there in that Viper with a with at least two guns looking that direction. So he's going to need to pull some trickery. Yep. Oh. Oh, he looks like he's trying to run the highway. Regime player definitely trying to make some moves. Yep. I like this. Yep, this I like nice. that. This is we'll nice. take all that. But he does get matched, and he doesn't know it, and, uh, or not necessarily matched, but uh, a player moves into that 200 there. This is nice. Oh, did he get shot? He got oh, shot. Oh, he did get shot. Oh. So he could. What a, if he, this guy goes to take off, and he's going to get murdered. Correct. He doesn't know where he's at, and he's so scared to move. So the, the, the kill here has to come from the can. If they get this can kill, which they could, This guy, he's feeling, look, see, the can is on Briggs Bros. He's feeling the heat. He feels like, I just got to get out of here. Oh, he saw him. He That's not it. what he wanted. Nope. So now he's going to switch his gun. He's going to switch his angle. And they're definitely going to know that he's there now. This is, I really like this move here. Because he has his Dorito player protecting him, too. So, like, these guys want to get him, but they can't. I'm shocked that no one at least tried to go and try to stab him. Look at the patience by the brawlers. Just saying, okay, fine. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. Let's just wait for it. Good job. Oh, thank you, son. Coming out. So Brawler stuck three in the little baby triangle here in the middle. What the regime player has that I don't, he can look over the top of this thing and play the whole bunker. Yeah, I can't That's do it either. That's not my jam. Yeah. I got I got two sides I can play. Even when we had the X's, even the small X's, only if they were like semi-deflated was I able to like look over the top. Should we of bring that. those back next event? Yes, please. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh my God. <laughs> More <laughs> X's. <laughs> oh, is the Dorito oh, player does get popped? Oh, he can't die there. Now his dude's getting run now for sure. Now his dude's gonna get run. And it should come, oh, and they just take the concession instead. Okay. Save him. Yep. Yeah, he did everything he could. That dude started in the Dorito corner, didn't he? Um, that's a, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. He was, he was everywhere. Yeah. I think he played like half the field. <laughs> and such, such good patience from the Brawlers. We talked about that uh, in, the, in their last match. They had a, uh, I mean, just the whole match was incredibly patient. And they had one of the guys that was in a 2 on one playing the corner, uh, playing the snake corner by himself. And he was just able to just... I mean, you could just see it in his posture and the way that he was looking, doing all of his things. He was just ready to pop everybody, and he certainly did. He took them both out, won the game, and Brawlers look good. Brawlers look very, very good. So we did get confirmation. I don't know what happened. I'll have to ask the rest, but Violence will be starting with four. What? Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened there because, well, they'll maintain scored the point. Yeah. So they must have was been it a penalty and then no bodies to pull? Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that. All right, well, Violet's starting with four. What are they going to do here? You think they're going to play pocket, or are they going to risk one? You know, I'm, I'm thinking heavy guns. 
Oh, and they lost their tower player. Yep. No way. Maintain up five on three, and they and lose their other tower player. That guy got uh, shot too going in the tower. 100% right in he did. Yeah. Uh, he's hit. Yeah. But he is playing anyways. Maintain now losing their back center. Oh, man. How did that go? I don't know. Maybe they're too busy watching the other player that got <laughs> shot. I have no clue. 100% he got shot, though. That's not even a question. Uh, so three on four. Violence in the pocket, playing the little triangle here. Uh, maintain out wide on the Doritos, so it's good for them, right? They're in that 100, looking or 200, sorry, looking inside. And they have that center brick. Nice move out into the god. And the can, you know, maintain, you got two minutes here. You could just play for an overtime. 100%. Right? You don't have to push it. He makes it in the snake. If I'm him, I'm going to their snake. Game over, night-night. As Nikki Cuba would say, shout-out to my dude, back coaching the newbies. Um, oh, is he really? Yes, he is. I got to talk to Quinn from Iconic the other day. It was pretty cool. Um, he's he gonna, coach him last year? He's going to sponsor our kids because our kids are called Iconic, but with a K. And here we go. Like I said, night-night, baby. Good. See you later. That was awesome. Asamata Lakeham. But he only got two, and then, oh, jeez. Yeah. I don't, they don't rush this. If I'm them, why, why are you rushing? What, what's the stop, point stop, of this? Stop, 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 oh. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. Make sure you're clean, man. You got four bodies. No I mean, need for that. I mean, that and with 147. Yeah, now you're saying, hey, violence, you get, you get a chance to try to win this. But, you know, it's, it's a personal preference, right? Like, it, it, I assume it's team specific. Like, at 147, are you, are you trying to play with the tie? Or That's do you true. Want to run, do you want to run that down to 50 seconds so that, like, you know, you can you can push two real quick and then and then try to shut things down. My team, personally, we are not good at defense. It's really not our thing. We need to work on it more, and we try and try, but it's just for whatever reason, it's just we like to we like to play the attack. Yeah, we want to we want to try to shove it down your throat if we can. The the like, like a real Russian legion of of old type of playing. Going forward, yeah, and I like it. No, 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 you're a okay. Props to the drone pilot. You hear that, Ryan? Way to put that drone in the air. And, yeah, it looks good. And not move it. Looks it looks good, Ryan. Yeah. All right. Out, guns out. Lots of time here. Neither team really has to do anything. Four minutes is basically a whole game when it comes to paintball. So, regime just got to put a point on the board. Vegas Brawlers, four guns up off the break and go to the god. Snake. Regime, five guns up, staying in the pocket. Oh, he made the snake. Yeah, You're right. He made the snake, but then they lost their Dorito Tower. Yep. Well, well Brawlers, uh, or I mean, sorry, um, Re Regime it went five guns up, and they just tag teamed that tower with two of them, right? Yes, yeah, so that's what it's, it seems to just me that they're just, they're just they're picking a lane, and they're just going to wipe somebody out of whatever one they decide to. Let's see. Do they know that he's here? I don't think so. He's gonna should get a free free kill. He got his first kill. Shot well, now he should be able to be, go all the way down. See yep. you later and go in this game just like Thomas taught you. You guys aren't yep. listening. Well, the uh, um, and I can he see it from he here? Is he gonna get? Oh yeah. yes, he certainly can. Yeah, you got to push up into <laughs> it though. But, but he doesn't see and the wedge he's somehow. He's gonna get shot for going into the god. He hasn't shot the wedge, but I do I do think that he knows he's yeah. there now. This should just be a matter of time. Oh, look at that paint coming underneath like that. So a quick towel that, from That's regime. crazy. He's yeah, shooting that's under the right. beam. Yeah. He was shooting under the beam. That's interesting. Is there like a low spot there? They saw it too. They saw what you're looking at. Like, what are we doing here? Let's take some air out of this thing. <laughs> I don't even we know. You don't want that. Uh, I mean, I've shot under some things before, but not the middle of the snake. I mean, that's that's uh, a good a good a good stop of the regime for me even noticing. Yeah. Well, Regime got the kill on the Druda side, could not capitalize on it. Yeah. And great job by the Vegas Brawler Snake Guy just to come down and handle business, get himself a nice little three-pack, and, um, you know, go up by two. 147 left in this game you're watching right now. If you're following along at home, it is maintained up two, or I mean, sorry, tied 2-2 two, two with violence. Uh, you know, give you a little recap. Maintain was down 0-2, um, scored a points, then violence got a penalty afterwards, had to start with four, letting the game be tied up. 
You're watching violence break out here on the away side of your screen. Violence going four guns or three guns up, going to the God and the Dorito Tower, but lost their God player. Five guns up, for, or not five guns up, five guns alive for Maintain as they make it into the snake corner, both the towers and double up the home. Maintaining a real defensive posture here. They took the snake corner, but then looked inside. Yep. Yep. Um, maybe they were trying to do that so they could release into the snake. I'm not really sure, but they got that kill. And I'm, you know what? You don't want to go with violence in overtime. You got your kill. You know, someone seems to go through and drop a hammer here. Or at least try, right? I don't want to play overtime. I never want to leave it up. Oh, and they get another one out of the back center. So Mantin needs to pick this up right now. Okay, they once again, look at both back home. center guys could go straight through the middle of the field and win the game. And instead, instead of letting violence do it down right. three on five. Here he goes. Okay, here's a late but he's foot. going to lock oh, no, the field no. down. He's not going to win the yeah. game. Like, he just keep, just keep going. You can go all the way through and just bunker this wedge. Still maintain in a defensive posture in the snake corner, looking inside the can, doing absolutely nothing. They still have time, but they are desperately running out of seconds. 40 seconds to go. Yeah, that back center player needs to get in the game. Now they let violence fill out to the Dorito corner. And that now it's bad. Now you can now you're now your run through through the middle is not near as now good. Now there's a late out and only to the god. Oh no, he is gonna go to the snake one. But 26 seconds, he has to go fast. Violent shooting their Dorito player over there. The down. And he's even and he's, now he's stopping. Uh yep, yeah, he's not watching that clock. So this one's gotta get up on your feet. Over no. time. Right? You know, if I'm him, I'm on my feet. Yeah. And he shot his gun, so he let the snake know where he's at. And yeah, not enough time. You're crawling for no reason, bud. You're oh, so Corey Field is coaching the Bloodhawks. Maybe that's why they look quite a bit different. So that one is going to end uh, at 2-2. We are going to send that one to overtime. First, we're going to show one more. Uh, well, well, there's 2 minutes, 54 seconds left yeah, in this game. It could be a number of Vegas points Brawlers. here. It could at least be two points here. Well, um, Brawlers are playing the field real, real yep. tight. Yep. So unless Regine comes out and throws some haymakers or gets a couple kills or and we haven't get a penalty, that. like, yeah, just, uh, I mean, this could be the last point of the game. We haven't been seeing a lot of deep pushes, a lot of appropriate pushes at the right times. A couple mistakes here in the last little bit. You know, it is, it is you're, like you're saying on the Dorito side, it is kind of weird that no one's really using it. Yeah. I mean, it isn't the best spot to get kills from, but, like, uh, it's not as easy to shoot as the snake side, and everybody keeps forcing the snake, right? At the very you minimum, know. at least if you can get up there, you can draw some guns, and you can right. at least help your snake side by pushing them in that way. Absolutely. It's all good. So it's a little bit flipped for you guys. You got on your screen, you're going to see Regine on your right and Bragus Brawlers on your left. Regine is going to go three guns up, and they are going to make a push into the snake one. I like that. And they went to the end. They went to the Drado corner. The corner yeah. Vegas Brawlers losing their There's home and their god off the break. There's that center push and a snake push. So I think that they might have gotten the memo at least. Yeah. They, so they heard what we said. Hey, yeah. unless they're going to come fast, this is over. And Brawlers they're coming is, fast. Brawlers mat lashed them a little bit and tried to get outside to the snake corner, but they oh, is a running referee? No. No. Good move outside. Regime in the 200. Or 300, sorry, the Drito three, the center brick, snake three, and snake one. But they let this guy, but they let uh, Rising get, uh, Vegas get into uh, snake, snake one. one. Now this is where it could get interesting because he could right shoot this here. guy down the wire. Yeah. Oh no, he saw him, he saw him. Yeah. Oh. That Brawlers player forced to take an uncomfortable position. I think he's a little bit worried about uh, paint coming over the top of him yep. from the Dorito side. But the Dorito side's looking the other way now. Well, and the nice thing with that, you see that the uh, Vegas Brawlers are out in that Dorito corner. They can't really, you can't really push the middle because that Dorito corner sees them. Yeah. Right? You know. But now, if you're that 300 player, like, why are you not in the 400? Yeah, and you know, I mean, they were, and they had two kills, and they were up five on three with you know, two, almost 2.20 left. And now a minute's been burned off the clock. And this is not what you want. And I don't think that they have a corner over there. I, I, I feel like they have Charger on the on the Dorito side. They, I wonder if they lost the body count. No, he's in the Dorito corner. He is in the corner. Yeah. Oh, there's a the running ref. 
Someone's have to go in, in this game here. Oh, so that, that Dorito, oh, and there goes a the penalty, and there should be everybody. Now go run, 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 run. <laughs> that regime player really wanted to light him up and decided to hold himself. So, but that's, I well, mean, honestly, that wasn't, that's not a great scenario because even though it's an automatic point, they're going to start with five. Now you got a five on five game with only, with 47, only 47 seconds yeah. where you were five on three with almost a uh, two ten left, uh, you know, two minutes, we'll say for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, no, it was actually closer to 220 if I remember correctly. Yeah, so like you, you burn off a minute and 30 seconds kind of doing nothing, you know. Um, Mr. Paul Yoon, I see on the field, getting his, getting his white kicks all dirty. Shout out violence. Shout out to Fi, shout out violence, shout out DOS Paintball, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law, Committed Paintball, Max Paintball, Lone Wolf Paintball, and of course, Matrix Gear USA. And of course, a big shout out to the guy next to me, Thomas Taylor, making this layout, coming up in here and joining us in the booth. He's got a tent out there. Go buy some stuff from him. Remember, he's got stuff for rain, shine, thank sleet, you. snow, all the things. Thank so, you. Thank you. It. Good shout out. Bragas Fallers and Regime. Just 47 seconds left. No, this is wrong. Uh, no, the, the thing didn't change. This didn't is uh, change. No, this, this is, is violence. violence. And maintain. Yeah, maintain, maintain. Um, does need to score this point, though, to tie it up. Correct. Right? Yes. No, maintain won the last one. They're up by one. Maintain's up 3 2, I'm pretty okay. sure. All right, maintain losing one. Yep, maintain only losing one. Violence. Violence in the 400. They lost, no, they haven't lost any. They're in the 400. They're all up in the middle. Violence in a good position right now. Maintain, maintain double, and double in the back center. Not, not in great roll. position. Nope. It looks like that tower player is, is starting to get pinched a little bit. I like this, this move back by Violence so he can come help the snake side. Violence in a good position on the Dorito side. We do not have the time in front of us, so uh, I don't know how much time is left, but I know Violence is down three, um, two to three. They need to score this. Wait, maybe it's two, two. Dang it, now I'm forgetting. I'm mixing the two games, aren't I? Small technical difficulties on that bottom stuff, uh, trying to get the, oh, overtime 2-2. Two, two. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, that's correct. We, are, we, we got is, lost this, in the this, other game. This is the overtime point. So this is the overtime point, and we're just having a little bit of scoreboard difficulty because the, it doesn't really matter, electronic stuff, blah, blah, blah. But this is an overtime point. It is 2-2. Whoever wins this will win this match. Um, and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program on the bottom. So don't worry about the uh, the scores and the game time and all that stuff. And this particular point, we will just guide you through it here. So let's get back to the game here. What I do like um, is maintain, got out of that back center, got into the inside snake and is looking cross to help out with the, the big push from violence on the Dorito side. Violence trying to make the move through here. So it's, four, it's a 43? I, I it's, yeah, the player I think needs to stay inside. He's looking outside now. Oh, so he should not be looking, in. he needs yeah. to go back to looking inside because violence is gonna make the move through the middle and he was the only gun stopping that move through the middle. Violence doubling up that brick. Don't know how much time is left. Probably somewhere around three minutes. I'm, I'm thinking the move. He, I think this violence player is trying to make the move go to brick to brick. Oh yeah. I mean that's where he wants to go. Listen, he goes. makes it and he does. He does. So he's alive over there. This this yeah, player he right here. his head off and on the home. He gets one. He yep. might get two here. Oh, are they going to throw that penalty? They have they to. Should. Is that guy hit? Yeah. I, I, that that should be a. That was if he's hit, that has to be a penalty. Oh, wrong team, wrong team, but no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. 
That is what it is. You know, it's really hard. The refs can't see on those angles, right? I mean, All I guess to be fair, we couldn't see if he shot. Absolutely, him it's really hard to see on that angle. You know, it is what it is. But then, why wouldn't you have thrown the flag right away? Why wouldn't you have thrown the flag right away? Instead of going in to check him, what does it matter if he's hit or not? Yeah, they should have just more immediately. Just go and throw the flag. Who cares if he's hit? Right. Pull him. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, okay. You um, know, it's hard for us. Don't, don't take what we say from here in the tower. It's hard to see. You just When you're seeing a player that's still shooting his gun and has like four or five hits on him, up, even yeah. if the other player got a penalty, we, we could at least agree probably both should have got a penalty then. Fair. If, you know, yeah. from, from our angle, definitely the violence player probably should have got a penalty. Yeah. The other player got a penalty. Either way, violence is still up three on one. It's really not going to make a difference And that there. was the, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, ultimately, they, they pull to a violence is going to win that point anyways. The, the other guy went down the Doritos. But um, good game, though. Into overtime. Great Loved game. It. We love the back and forth maintain. Way to, you know. A lot of things you could work on there, but you're banging you know, all the way through the end. I mean, so and you, um, you know, the center move, great move, and I, to, to, violence should have won that point. To be, I mean, so yes. it, I guess it ended the way that it should have been. Absolutely, they were already wrapping the yeah. four five hundred. Yeah. They had two bodies over yeah. here. It was going to go down that way. All right, here we go. Though forty seven second, will regime do it again? They oh, went they, hard last they're point. Gonna, they're going to oh, and almost left early, but they're going to go hard for sure. All right, they take the snake one. Guns. They take the center. They take the three hundred. They're going to go into the four hundred. Look brick. at that. Love that three to four hundred move there. They've already they've, uh, they're into the snake three. Center brick, D four hundred, uh, one taking a walk for regime, but this snake guy is untouched. He just, and, but he's about to stand up and get ripped apart by the snake one. Oh, there's just and two he's left. Not. There's just two left. He needs to go through. And he's not going to get him. The uh, Dorito guy is going to shoot the snake one before he gets oh, there. Oh, yep. there's no one left. Will they get to the thing in time? Oh, we're going to another overtime, baby. And I wish I knew because the, the timer technically didn't start, so I don't know how much time is left, but point approved. Point approved. So we are going to have another overtime. Nine seconds left in that one. Oh, boy. So unfortunately, you guys didn't get to chase the clock as it was going down, but uh, only nine seconds left on that point. Regime is going to put it up. So they're going to go to overtime against Brawlers. That means this one's going to go into X-Ball. Man, he's good with this thing. I got to do this. I'm not near as good with that. And I'll be messing it up all the time at home. You got this down. Woo! I'm, I'm watching his fingers move like crazy. I don't even attempt. Man, no, I, man, I got I to gotta do this and I got to do that while I'm at my events for the NWX in the Northwest. Um, shout out, if you're a team that wants to make the NWX, we have an X-Ball series. We basically, are, the reason I do that X-Ball series is to prepare people to come here. So um, it's pretty cool. It's, we cap it at like 12 teams. It's a much smaller event for um, each division, but um, yeah, it's fun. We, we run the same same rules here, um, get, get the teams ready, get them practicing, and then, yeah. then send them down here to, you know, test their merit. For the real thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a good series there at Impact Action Sports in, uh, in 12th in Oregon. So anybody has any questions, message me. We'll... We get you signed up our next events uh, right after the uh, June Vegas event, I think. You hear that, guys? Support your boy. If you're in Oregon, go see the man, the myth, the legend. Sign up for one of his events. Do your thing. Support, you know, grow local paintball, all those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, that clock on the bottom isn't working. Um, yeah, it's still stuck. Seconds. All right, here we go. Listen, normally I wouldn't say this because, you know, it's overtime, but regime needs to attack. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's I mean, every time they've attacked, when they played slow, Vegas Brawlers won that battle. Yeah. You just need to keep going. 
And they do. Did he make it? Well, Vegas also is going to play a little bit more offensive. They're going to take both corners. Uh, they're going to double stack the home, but they're going to take the uh, the snake tower. Oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. He, both teams lost both wide guys. It's a three on three. And no penalties. <laughs> no penalties. How does that even? Oh, boy, that was crazy. <laughs> So I know that the bottom of the screen shows something different. This is, it is three on three, and this is the overtime point. And it, uh, whoever Look wins this, this, this does it. win Regime's it. And the Regime spot. is definitely in the spot. Dude. And he's, he should, oh man. Oh, he's going to get that wreck house. Coach, right? Oh, he got the back center. He just shot the back center. Oh, but he gets pinched out. Yes. Oh, that can oh, player, man. sick route, two on and two. And he had the chance to kill the Dorito Tower player first and got pimped out. Oh, oh that's why he went so good. Oh. That's my boy Sakaguchi. That's why. I was wondering, like, dang, who's moving? Oh, was that the Sakaguchi? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. I just thought he was wearing the jersey. Maybe no, that's no, the that's the Sakaguchi. Oh, I know that name. That's why it went so well. I was yeah. like, dang, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. But that was just a nasty. Whoever this player is for um, Vegas Brawlers in the can, that was a sick snapshot. Inside, outside, one ball. Caught him slipping. I mean, but he wasn't giving up much. It's not like Sakaguchi was out wide. I didn't quite even know that he was there, honestly, he just until did, he popped he just on the did, inside boom. there, and that was money. Yeah, that saved. That definitely saved the game. Oh yeah, it was over. Yeah, it was over. He had just shot the back center. Um, great move by both of those guys there. Now we got ourselves a two-on-two -two, um, regime out in the Dorito corner, moving up into the Dorito two. Both Vegas brawlers still stuck in the middle, so Regime kind of has a little bit of an advantage right now. Definitely. Um, but this Vegas brawlers player, if he checks off the Doritos, can jump into the snake if he wants. I do feel that the brawlers have a uh, that they have an edge. They've been here. They've done that. They've been doing this as a team for a long time. They've played some very, very, very smart paintball. Not only this tournament, but in tournaments prior to this. Um, and you can tell that that Dorito side tower wants to go. Two minutes off the clock here in our overtime. Still three minutes left. We got ourselves a two on two. Thomas, when you're in these kind of situations and things really slow down and points like you're in an overtime point like this, does your heart start racing still? Or are you are you over that now? I'm pretty much over that now. Yeah. I will say though, the very first um, the I think the first two matches I played with New York. And Vegas, like stepping onto the field, I, I actually felt my heart beat again. For the first, yeah, just that's that, been that years. New team, that new, you know, yeah, yeah, like you know, because it's a, you know different players, you know, more to prove. I don't know what it is, yeah. right? You know, just you don't want to disappoint your guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. like uh, you know, like just was I worth the pickup? All the things, I yeah, mean, yeah, right. Uh, so, uh, oh, and he he put one right through his his head strap. It looked like. You will on the fifty, but I guess not. Yeah, he has to be careful. This 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 guy in the, the in the can right here, he can, he's got a nasty snapshot. Oh man. yeah. I do and he's wonder tall. If he, I, I do wonder if that's Avery. If it is, he is nasty. Nasty with it, that's for sure. So we got a little bit of action there. A little um, bit of action, you know. As that Dorito player advanced into the 300, and then everything kind of went cold again. Yep. I like this. I like this move. I, I like definitely this like so this much. move. And, ooh, but he, but and he, he missed him. But you got to be careful, because that dude's not going to give it up. Okay, now, now he has a chance to move to the 400. Yep, there we go. That's the move. That's the move. Regime did the right move here. Oh, and the, but he, he caught, caught him. And he cyclopsed him. He's gonna go for one. Oh my goodness! And uh, see, just like, just what I thought. Oh, Avery, don't Whoa. do not hit that thing. He's got a. Is that a hit or is that a I don't run? know. That does not look great. That's a lot of pink. I would not hit that. Yeah. Button. I would get anywhere near that button. Just in case, do not touch your friends. Do not you touch your <laughs> friends, friends. <laughs> like, just walk off the field. <laughs> oh. He was just pushed up into that can really hard, though. Was it? Wow. Point approved. Brawlers take it again. Man. So who's this guy right here? Well, so the guy that I thought was Avery is, is the guy that actually hit the buzzer, so not the guy with the, with the six okay. snap shot. Well, so I cannot whoever that dude name. in the can, you, you deserve the yeah, MVP All for this the match. All the props, play. bro. You just, that, was that was nasty. Money, money, money. That was good. That was awesome. All right, well, thanks for having me. I'm going to jump off. I'm going to go hang out with the kids, hang out at my booth. Maybe I'll try to hang out a little bit more this weekend, maybe after our matches tomorrow or something. Um, uh, yeah, this is awesome, guys. Keep it up. Thank Enjoy. you very much, Thomas, for joining us. Chat, he's leaving. I'm sorry. It's going to come back to me <laughs> and back to Kyle, I think. You're just going to have to deal with it. Maybe we can get him later on, but please thank him. Remember, go see his booth if you're yes, here. thank you very much. Go thank him for making the layouts, all the things. Thomas is an extremely nice guy. I've only met him whenever he showed up at the booth, but he's been nothing but nice to everybody, so just, you know, say hi. I appreciate you, brother. Have fun. God bless everyone.
Test, test. Alrighty, folks. Uh, Kyle Kerr back up in the booth right now. Uh, just had to say goodbye to Thomas and Andrew for a little bit. Uh, give them a break. Getting in this Bloodhawks and Raw Material match. 13 and a half minutes left. Zero to zero. Bloodhawks look like they're in the Viper one inside Snake. Got about, I think, three or four bodies alive for Bloodhawks right now. And Raw Material with four. Four alive. Raw Material Snake Can moving out to the God Bunker. Got the Snake 2, the home, the Dorito Tower. The snake players uh, rapping now, trying to find something along the tape. As he's playing the god bumps out to the snake corner, trying to help him support on that uh, snake side. Bloodhawks rounding the snake corner, moving on to the snake one. Looks like Bloodhawks have four live. Is possible 44 situation right now as Bloodhawks lose their snake one. Material now moving up to the snake. Snake three looks like you might try and wrap this. He misses the shot on the Bloodhawks Viper. Snake player trying to pop over the top, get another shot at another player and gets popped right in the head. Unfortunate. I believe that leaves a two on four situation in favor of raw material and there goes the towel. Bloodhawks unfortunately forced to concede that point. One minute. Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, let's go Hawks. That's right, I got Hawks all day. I'm laughing, Bobby. It's okay. I promise. Ah. So now on to Narcos and Grind City. 20 seconds. Grind City going to be on the uh, right side. We're going to be looking over here at Narcos, their start box. 10 seconds. Watch Narcos break out. It looks like they got only two guns up, the home and the snake can. As they run out to the god, the Dorito Tower and the Dorito Corner as he pushes up to the 100. Narcos losing a body as well as another player from Grind City taking a walk. Looks like a second player from Grand City taking a walk out of the home. And a player from Narcos taking a walk as well as a player from Grand City running down the Doritos. I think he was, I think he was shot. Yep, there is a major. Uh, major penalties flying right now uh, for Grind City. He was definitely shot on his way down the Doritos. Took out one or two bodies. Uh, with him after he was shot. So definitely gonna be a major. I believe that's all the bodies left for Grand City. They might be starting a body down this next point and we will update you in just a second. So what it sounds like is they 
might have had enough bodies to pull for that uh, major penalty there. <laughs> so both teams will be starting up. Uh, bodies up this next point. So Narcos does actually get that point because of that major penalty. Yep, yep. So it's 1 0 Narcos and back to Bloodhawks and Raw Material. Raw Material up 1 0 with just, on, just over 11 and a half minutes left seconds. in this game. 30 seconds. Oh, <laughs> Great minds think alike, my friend. 20 seconds. Looks like HK Army in the chat saying, aiming to work out a deal with Mike to get HK Paint at WC. All right, looking at Bloodhawks on your screen right now. Oh, that might have been an early jump. No, I guess he just timed it perfectly. Five alive for Bloodhawks. Looks like they shot one body off break for Bloodhawk. So raw material now four alive in the snake corner of the home, the snake can and that Dorito Tower. Bloodhawk's up in the snake one. We got the back center, Dorito Tower, that center wedge and the snake can. Snake one mush, uh, pushing up into the snake 50 now. Extremely aggressive, trying to clip out a couple bodies. I'm pretty sure that snake can saw him. Uh, he might be hit. Ref going in to check right now. The, the raw material does lose their Dorito Tower player. Um, and two refs now running in to check that Dorito Tower player. Pulling him. Minor flag flying for raw material. And they're going to pull that snake can out, leaving just their snake two. The last alive for raw material. Bloodhawks doing a great job storming down the field. Identifying that those penalties were flown. Now Bloodhawks. Thanks. Point approved. All right, and as we get that point approved, Bloodhawks are now on the board. It's all tied up 1-1. One, one. It was just a minute and two second point, um, I believe, for Bloodhawks there. Seconds. 20 seconds. All right, and back to Grand City and Narcos. Narcos up 1 0, 14 minutes in the, in the game clock. 10 seconds. Grand City on your screen. Game on. Breaking out to Snake Corner. Looks like five bodies all alive for Grind City and five alive for Narcos off the break. Narcos making a big move into the Snake 2 from the God. Wrapping and looking inside. Moving up to that Snake 3 now. Going past the Snake 3 all the way up to the Snake 50. Looks like he's going to wrap this snake 50 here and probably catch a couple bodies slipping. And a penalty on Grind City as three bodies are coming off the field right now. So. Grind City has to concede that point. I don't think it had any bodies left alive on the field. Narcos now leading 2-0. What another quick point. And these refs really are penalty hungry today. But I don't think it's the refs fault. I, honestly, I just think the players are playing sloppy. 
penalties all over the place on this field today. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Raw material on the left side of your screen right now. Tied with the Bloodhawks one to one. Looks like five bodies alive on both sides off the break. Bloodhawks losing their Dorito tire player, but they do get into the snake, past the snake three, into the snake 50. Snake player looking to go to work. Ramatio recognizes the snake, they know where he's at. Home player filling out all the way to the snake corner for Bloodhawks. Looks like Raw Material might only have three bodies alive on their side of the field. Riff coming in to check one of the Bloodhawks player in the center wedge. And that's gonna be no penalty on Bloodhawks, but they do pull that center wedge player out as their snake guy goes all the way up to Raw Material's side of the snake one. It looks like Raw Material, the snake corner catches the snake one out on his side of the snake. Unfortunate for Bloodhawks. They do have a second snake up in the snake three right now, looking inside. He's gonna check the tape. He doesn't get shot. So it looks like Sanders here on raw material, trying to go to work. Now retreating back to the snake one. They don't see the retreat. I mean, it's kind of hard to see that from any other bunker on the field. Bloodhawks not sure where this snake player is on raw material. Looking down the tape. I know that raw material, I can, I can see two bodies alive. I'm not sure if they have a third or not. I don't believe so. It might be a two on two. have the Dorito corner and the snake three. Raw material with the snake one and the Dorito tower. Snake three now moving up to the snake 50. That's a trade while the Bloodhawks do shoot out the uh, Dorito tower player for raw material. Um, it looks like, oh, they did have a third body. He was hidden in the Doritos. I couldn't see him over here from the booth. Uh, moved back to the Dorito Tower. So it looks like a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, Bloodhawks in the Doritos now. Raw material in the Dorito Tower gets hit. Let's see if the Bloodhawks player can identify the kill count. Slow and steady, looking at bunkers, making sure there's nobody else alive.
Uh, Dorito player slowly moving up the Doritos, checking off bunkers, and there's the towel by Raw Material. Save time. Six minutes left in that match. Bloodhawks go up two to one. One minute. Go Hawks. Narcos on the left side of your screen here. Gonna watch their breakout. And if you weren't tuned in earlier, we went over a Narcos. They did <laughs> say they are the most sexy team name and jerseys in the game. They call themselves the one minute crew because there's a high probability of winning points under a minute or losing points in under a minute. And as you can see here, that 15 minute game time total, they have 13, 18 left on the clock and two points scored. So they definitely scored two points both under a minute. Let's see if they can do it again. Narcos, all five alive off the break. Looks like their Dorito Tower might have gotten shot in the arm. Um, they lose their Dorito player. Ref went in to check the God. The God and the uh, Snake Can both move out um, and bump at the same time. Two big moves as their Snake Corner dives into the Snake. Grind City making two big moves as well, going from the home to the snake corner and the snake can to the snake two. Still have their inside, uh, their center wedge player. I think he's calling for a check. Looks like now their snake player has some backup. The snake one and the snake two for both teams. Uh, Narcos has a snake one and snake two as well, so they're matched up. Narcos with the home, filling out to the Dorito Tower to back up their baby Dorito player as Narco shoots out Grind City's snake player. Narco's up in the snake 50, looking inside. You can see here on your screen, you got the two Dorito players, uh, Dorito Tower and the Dorito 200. All right, Bloodhawks, raw material. Bloodhawks up two to one. Six minutes left in this game. It's like five alive for Bloodhawks and five alive for raw material as well. Well, 
Well, Hawks moving up into the center center wedge. Excuse me, center break. Matched up with raw material as well. Um, I don't know if they know. The either side knows that um, the other team is in the break as well. Looks like raw material losing their Dorito corner. And a looks like a penalty flag was flown. Thrown on raw material. Um, player getting pulled out from the Dorito tower. They can move it out to the Dorito corner now. Bloodhawks in the snake one, shooting over the top. Bloodhawks losing a player out of the Doritos. Four alive for Bloodhawks, three alive for Raw Material. It looks like uh, another towel. Point being conceded by Raw Material, so Bloodhawks now up three to one. Bloodhawks are honestly looking extremely solid today. All right, Roderick here, hopping in on the mic. Welcome in, Roderick. Happy to be here. Glad you're here to join me. So, Kyle, we got 3-0. Narcos are up. Grind City with the zero. We're going to see if Grind City can come back now playing from the home side. We'll see. I mean, Narcos has been finishing these points really, really quickly here. Definitely looking in form. Uh-oh. We got a ref pointing on the home side. Ref running into check. Looks like a penalty is going to be thrown on Grind City once again. Oh, man. And Narcos with the five start. Not the look Grind City was wanting on this point. Not at all. Narcos now getting into the snake. Definitely going to be flipping the field here very, very shortly. Big push coming in. Blowing right by the snake 50. And Grind City losing their home player now as well. Only left with two alive. Dorito corner and this uh, middle brick. Looks like he's about to get blown to pieces by this snake from Narcos. And just heard the players on the field call out kill four, so they know the kill count. And there's the five. And there's the fifth body. And, and there's the towel. Right on script. We have now played four points in under five minutes total. That's crazy. Especially with uh, how some of the points have been playing out today. Oh, yes. We had that 11 and a half, almost 12 minute point earlier with uh, it was Phoenix Rising versus Philippines. That was grueling to watch. It was That was a um, tough one. That's interesting to win 1 0 in a premier match with 15 minutes of game time. That doesn't typically happen. No, I, I don't think I've ever seen that ever before. That's definitely a Sunday paintball move <laughs> if I've ever heard of it. <laughs> definitely. It's not the kind of. Uh, Point margin you want in prelims? No, definitely not. You need every point you can manage in prelims to try to cushion that out. So, but Bloodhawks, back to Bloodhawks and uh, raw material here. Bloodhawks have been looking solid all day. Um, I don't believe they've lost a match. Um, Maybe one earlier. Have they? Are they? Are they flawless so far? I'm. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think they are. Because I'm, I know they beat TJ. Um, all right, let's look at this start. Five alive for Bloodhawks, and it looks like five alive for Raw Material as well. Um, Raw Material, widest player out on the Dorito corner, um, and the God. They got back center, Dorito tower, and the Snake can. Uh, the God filled out to the Snake one, as well as Bloodhawks filling out to the God, uh, getting shot on the way there. Um, ref is running in to check the back center player for Bloodhawks. He is clean, so he can continue playing now. Tries to take that spot of his teammate that just died. Filled out to the god, but gets hit as well. So I guess that Raw Material just has that lane locked up. I think it's that uh, snake side can that's holding that lane and doing a great job, obviously, because he shot two players going there. Yeah, well done on him, and this is the point that they need to bring this back on to try to get this uh, momentum swing going back in the right direction. Down by two, up in bodies, got plenty of time. Yep, and I think that they just shot the uh, center player out from uh, from Blood Ox. Yep, 
So. Okay, losing a body, snake side. Still got enough guys to close this down. Oh, plenty. Um, it looks like a three on two situation. Um, and three on one. Yep, three on one now. Do they have a Dorito player over there for Bloodhawks? Well, they are acting like there is. Oh, there is. I just saw him. Okay. I just saw his head peek up. He's in the, he's in the 300. There we go. Um, all the way up in the Dorito is about to get clipped out. Yep, he's totally pinched. Four on one. That's. I mean, when you're in a when you're in a Dorito and you've got four people coming after you, it's really really hard to hold your hold your ground. That is a brutal place to be. Just making sure we're getting this one clean. We're going to be two to three with about three minutes left. Uh-oh. Ruff was just checking a player. Okay. Oh, they're calling it Rub. Okay, so. Good news. The player that Corner touched the buzzer material. is clean. Point is approved. We get the thumbs up from the ref. Oh, and it looks like the sun is coming out again. As a Florida boy, I'm very thankful. <laughs> Been searching for a sun ray this whole morning. Dude, it has been really, really cold, windy, rain off and on all day. And I hope that it's just this, like just today for the WCPPL season open because, man, it, that would be a rough start to have it raining all weekend for the brutal. first event of the season at WC. That would be brutal. Oh. That might mess up your team count, but that's Mother Nature's fault, not us. Yes, no, very true. <laughs> All right, so Narcos up 4-0 against Grind City with 10 minutes still left in this game. So plenty of time. I mean, hey, I used to say you t you, you could not typically see points, like one point within, you know, 10 to 11 minutes. But after today, I've seen it. So um, you never know what can happen. Absolutely. Narcos, Narcos could run this whole clock out right now. 10-minute lockdown. Or they, if Narcos gets this point, it's a 5-0 mercy, and they, they get to end the match early. Send the other teams into X-Ball. We love that. Help out the schedule a little bit as well. Oh, yes. Looking like a good break from both teams here. I believe, uh, yeah, five alive on both sides. Yep. Grind City taking the initiative on the Snake side. All the way into Snake 50. Uh, Narcos, uh, God player, filling out to the Snake corner. They just lost their Snake can, though. So it looks like four live only for Narcos as they push up into the Snake 1 and get up into the Snake 2. Grind City already up into the Snake 50. Battling the tape. Oh, and that's the Snake Battle 1. So it looks like it was a trade. He actually was hit. Definitely uh, tried to play possum there, it seemed. Yeah, I, I saw the hit on the inside of his leg. Oh, okay. And he... he he tried to lay down in the snake as the ref, as he asked for a check, so that maybe the ref would call him clean. Mm. He could play on, but, you know, it's okay. We've all been there. We've all probably done it. Oh, yeah. Can't get over on a veteran like uh, Bobby there, though. No, oh, Bobby's too good. Yeah. Narco's losing another one. This is looking like a good Looks like, an, and then a penalty on Grind City. Oh, my Lanta. So it looks like it's going to be only the snake left alive. Oh, the snake and a Dorito player. Nope, only Dorito now. Okay. Looking like a possible, it's a one-on-one -on -one right now. One-on-one. -on -one. Dramatic change of events. They're mirrored up in the Doritos. Uh, Big move. Take that back, Grand Grand City, City player. Yep, Grand City moves back into the Dorito corner. Like I said earlier, you want to be in those corner bunkers if you're in a low body situation or you think that you're last alive, or even if it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. No, it's definitely an ideal place to be. Really good vision. Great lanes to hold. What's beneficial is the Dorito Corner <coughs> is a stand-up tower, so you can stand nice and tall. You can get nice and tight if you want. And as I say that, he now is going to move up and then over into the Dorito Tower and now over to the home. I don't think the Narcos player has seen him a single time. Grind City might think that... And Narco okay. players picked him up into the S1. And back into a corner bunker he goes. The movement is great. This this player for Grand City is uh, is not very tall, so it's kind of to his advantage right now because he is in a mini Aztec, and he can kind of stand up straight and be completely covered by that bunker. So nice and comfortable. 
Looks like the narco player might be struggling with the body count as well. Yeah, I think he's uh, I think he's afraid of the snake. I mean, as you should be, snake's always hot, right? Oh, always. Coach will tell you that. I mean, I don't think that Narcos is worried at all right now. I mean, they're just running on the clock, just under seven minutes to go. I mean, they know they're up four points. If they lose one, it's not the end of the world. And there you go. Try to make a move to that can on the Dorito side. Gets shot on the way there, and the Grand City Snake player sprinting to the buzzer. Trying to save as much time on that clock as possible. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing guys down on points and uh, walking it in. And then especially if they run out of time to tie it up with like, uh -oh. they, you know, they, if they had 10 more seconds, right. you know, they could have made it to the buzzer to tie up to go to overtime or something. But, you know, three points ago, they walked to the buzzer when they were down points. Man. It's like clock management at its finest. And paintball really can come down to a game of seconds. Yeah, we can have 11 minute points. It but can. Nine second points can happen. And you got to really be on the clock management. It comes down to your coaching staff and stuff like that. A lot of really good coaches out here. Oh, for sure. I mean, it also comes down to the, the fact of, you know, when you need to run the clock, run the clock. Those seconds count. Every second that you burn off the clock helps you. Um, and there's been times, situations I've been in where if I would have stayed alive in a 1v3 situation, you know, later earlier in that game for an extra five, ten seconds because the other team came back, tied up the game, hit the buzzer at one second to tie up right. and force us into overtime. And if I would have stayed alive earlier points for an extra five seconds, we wouldn't have had that. That's brutal. So Every second counts both ways. Looks like five alive for both sides. Well, we got one taking the walk for raw material. Okay, so late pull in the god, Bloodhawks, getting the snake per usual and going all the way up to the snake 50 and past the snake 50. See if he keeps going. Yep, uh, it looks like he's gonna be in there. Snake three gonna just. And this has and to be he, something that you're ready He just for. took three bodies with him and took a fourth. So and looks like the rum, uh, Bloodhawks, excuse me, Bloodhawks just cleaned up. Cleaned up four pack for tree garden there. Wow. Just over two minutes left in this game. Uh, raw material forced to kind of concede that point to Bloodhawks. Now up four to two. Now back to Grand City and Narcos. Grand um, City taking the timeout here. Trying to use that momentum to their advantage to figure out a game plan, make sure that we're all proper, ready to go, get this three-point sweep and bring it back. Dude, that would be insane to see because Narcos has been looking pretty, pretty good. They've uh, been down on points earlier today, came back and won. Um, I think it was that game that was six to seven. Yeah. Um, Narcos came back with <laughs> the seven points. I mean, 13 points is insane mm. in 15 minutes. Absolutely. But um, especially to come back, like, after being down three points. So Narcos definitely knows how to keep the momentum. Let's see if this one point that Grind City took away from them uh, to also take away that Mercy stops their momentum in any way, gets in their head, um, and see if Grind City can keep it going. So far, Narcos is definitely proving to have the mental to not let this get them down. But Grind City's hoping for the opposite, obviously. Yes. Anything that they can to get in Narco's head and break them down mentally, to break them down as a player as well, to make them make mistakes that they can capitalize on, um, they're going to. 20 seconds. Six minutes, 41 seconds on the clock is plenty of time for some good paintball. Absolutely. And four to one is not an impossible spread. We've seen crazier spreads get beaten down out here. It would be it would be crazy to see Grand City come back though. Narcos almost mercying 5-0 and then Grand City come back to win. That would be I mean that might a be a sight to see. The story of the event right there on day one. Guaranteed. Uh, so it looks like five bodies alive for Grand City. There was a player getting checked by a ref on the snake corner, but he is clean. Narcos, Narcos looting 
losing two bodies, sorry. Nope, pulling a penalty as well. Oh my. So yep, three up for Narcos there. Grind City, oh, Grind City just pulled a penalty as well. Oh man. So now it's... Uh, three on three? Yep, three on three. Player getting checked in the snake corner again for Grind City, called clean once again. Moving up to the snake one. Adrian in the chat said, great drone work. And that's thanks to Ryan. Uh, Narco with the lead in the snake there, getting the Grind City player out on his bump in. Narco showing they might just have what it takes to flip that momentum back, not even a problem. Yeah, I don't think that they let that one point. Uh, and with the towel, there it is. Wow. That little head check at the end to let him know that you were dead anyways, even if the towel didn't come through. The, head of the mental games are oh, very yes. strong. Even as simple as, uh, you know, making eye contact with the last player on the field. Yep. Uh, I mean, that can really break you down. Just know you were done, son. <laughs> Raw material, down two points. Got two minutes and 18 seconds left. It is possible. They don't have the momentum right now, but maybe that long break, Took their time, figured something out. Maybe they might change something out, send a guy up the middle, or maybe send strong D side. Yeah. Who knows? I have I have yet to see. I've I've, I've, I've seen strong uh, a strong flood of the snake with um, other teams. I think it was Seattle Cartel putting three in the snake at at one time. But I've yet to see teams flood the Dorito side. No, it just doesn't seem like the worth is there. A lot of times they get into that Dorito, they anchor down, and they let Snakeside do the work. This is true. Losing one from the Bloodhawks. Late kill from Raw Material, so that's four on four, three on four. Bloodhawks losing another one. Raw Material just lost another body, taking a walk. So it looks like two on two. Two on three. Two on three, correct, yes, uh, in favor of the Bloodhawks. There we go. This is right where the Bloodhawks want to be. They got some bodies off the break. Another one walking for Raw Material out of Dorito side there. Raw Material does have uh, the, an inside snake player um, that I don't think any of the Bloodhawks know he's there. Um, nobody's really looked at him. Um, it's but now. He knows now. Yep. As soon as he rolled his gun and shot at the Bloodhawk snake player, they knew. You gotta really have those kills confirmed when you're trying to do something like that, trying to play the sneaky game. Bloodhawks player pushing oh down. Oh my gosh, that, kill that was that such a snake. bad gunfight to force. That was a rough one. If you know somebody's shooting on the outside of your bunker, why would you peek right into it? <laughs> Especially as a snake player, I'd expect you to know that. Absolutely, you should be used to hunkering down in the snake there. Yes. 60 seconds left, Bloodhawk with the ball in their hands. Moving down the court now, snake player in the 50. Definitely looks like Bloodhawks are gonna take this point. Uh, 45 seconds left on the clock. No concede from raw materials. I think that they're okay with this one just to be an over. Yeah, might as well stop the bleeding. Save the fellas for the next match. Bloodhawks with the decision to burn down the clock here. They don't want to play another point. Raw Material doesn't want to play another point. I think they're going to hit the buzzer uh, under 10. Yep. So 10 seconds here, and there goes the buzzer. Boom. Players being checked, and point is approved. So Bloodhawks now winning 5-2 to two against Raw Material. Great showing from the Bloodhawks today. Oh, yes, definitely. And I'm sure HK is very happy about that. Oh, yeah. For those of you watching that may not know already, if there is a point that's finished with less than 10 seconds on the clock, they, the teams do not play that um, uh, any time that's left over on the clock that's less than 10 seconds. So there the Bloodhawks waited till the time ran down to about seven seconds, hit the buzzer. And now the match is, they get the point, and the match is over. 
19 seconds. Has the weather changed at all? Um, sun's been coming in and out behind some clouds, um, but it hasn't been raining. Uh, as you can see, shadows are pretty uh, pretty strong right now. So sun's, sun is out. It's been a little bit warmer. It's kind of nice. Ground's drying up. Less slipping and sliding going on. Perfect time to get back into this Narcos and Grind City match. Narcos up five to one with five and a half on the clock. Looking like full breakouts from both teams here. Oh. As, as I start talking, Narcos player takes the walk. So Narcos, four alive, Grind City in the snake, pushing up to the snake 50, and it looks like he's gonna pa go past the snake 50, and past the snake, their snake three, all the way to the other team's Narcos side of the snake. Gonna keep going, and he's gonna he's gonna take packs right here. One. Two, three, and four. So Grind City Snake Player going to work, hitting the buzzer with four and a half left on the clock. Insane. I'm gonna tell you, don't let anybody get to your snake one. They're just gonna blow up everybody on the field. And I wanted to make a comment about the players skipping the, the Snake 50, getting into the opposing team's S3, and not coming up and shooting. Right. there's some really great shots there. Right. But I'm glad I didn't say anything, because he blew right past that, ended up with the four pack, taking the point home for the boys. I think, uh, I mean, it was definitely smart. I think that there ha I mean, there has to be some type of, type of uh, solid communication uh, with your team to know that the widest player is the god, um, because then you're free to go down the entire Snake unseen crawl all the way down there and if your teammate can hold that lane and keep the god out of the snake like he did the entire time it allows your team to go down the snake and blow up everybody in their packs absolutely and it worked out this time because we saw the god tried to fill the snake corner there but he was already in position right earlier that same kind of play happened god made snake corner no one was there to cover that lane yep that snake player got eaten up mm. yep so it's uh a lot of uh, that shows that um grind city player had a lot of faith in his teammates to hold his back. And he's, I mean, in this point of the game, you know, down four points, you got to make risks like that, big moves like that, to try and make big plays, to save time and get some kills, hopefully uh, succeed and get the point. Absolutely. Big plays play off, especially when you're down on the brink of being mercied. you got to play like this. got to play hard. got to put all your cards on the table. At that point, I think Narcos was a little too comfortable in their bunkers. Nobody was looking snake. Nobody read that there was a snake at all. Um, so they weren't even worried about it until they were all getting shot in the back. Absolutely. And you should know at this point, snake is, snake is the play. Yes, you should snake is the play. You always need someone on that outside. You always need that locked down. There is somebody in snake every point. Yeah, it looks like the Dorito players are usually on an island. Um, a lot of teams have been doubling up the home. Like, just as I say that, both teams double up the home right now. Send a Dorito on, on an island. Um, wow. It's almost like we've been watching this field play all day. Right? We got so our running ref. Grind City losing one of their home players. You can't survive doubled up in the home very long at all. Nope. If you're going to be there, maybe 10, 15 seconds max. And then you gotta you got to fill out somewhere. Grind City losing their snake fill there. So it looks like a three on four. Narcos player taking the walk as I talk. So three on three now. Uh, yep, three on three. Yep, another Narcos player taking the walk out of there. Oh, and Narcos loses their snake as well. So two players left alive only for Narcos. Um, and it looks like Grind City just lost their snake corner. Their god fills out. Um, into the snake corner as well. They have a Dorito and snake corner. Narcos with the tower alive, the home alive. Is this a two on two now? I believe it is a two on two. Wow. Not the position you want to be in if you're Grind City, but you know what? They've got three and a half minutes. They've got two bodies alive, so that's a plus. And you have time to work with, but you don't really have the point spread to work with. That is also correct. HK Army said, webcast has improved a 1,000%. Commentators and cameras are so much better. Thank you so much. 
I mean, we're doing our best out here. Absolutely, and please don't judge me. I am a, I am the backup, backup commentator, <laughs> and I'm just happy to be here and be included. First time in California for California Paintball, and it has been great. Well, we're glad you're here, having a good time. As we're sitting here having a casual conversation, Narcos running down the D side. Uh, Grind City forced to concede the point, so back to a similar situation as earlier. Uh, Grind City down four points. It's X ball. One more point for Narcos, and that's a uh, mercy. Yep. So Grind City back in the same position. And you know, they say third time is the charm. Narcos <laughs> in position to close this out for the third time this set. It's just been a back and forth. Never ending. And that, it's, that's been the theme of a lot of sets, though. You don't have a 13-point set without some good back and forth. The paintball has been fantastic today. And I would rather see a 13-point set than a 5-0 set, if I'm being honest with or you. Or a 1-0 set, um, like yeah. uh, Phoenix Rising in the uh, Philippines. That was just good gameplay. That was a, it, that it was. was a, it was. was. I have to give it to them, especially Phoenix Rising being down like it was a 24 for Phoenix Rising. They killed a body, and so they made it a 23, and they got lucky the Philippines just did not have any paint yep. at all. So Philippines really couldn't do anything. But um, Job said uh, backup commentator sounds like Matty Marshall. Oh, wow. That's kind of a compliment. But <laughs> I would believe so. Yeah. Elizabeth says you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. Ironically, I, yeah, ironically, I work with Matty a lot. So I definitely you look for him for influence when I have to broadcast. That's awesome. <laughs> so the ref huddle, um, honestly, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, maybe just having a casual conversation. A little update on situational. If it's anything like the chat's been and we've been, they're just talking about how nice the weather is. Glad it's not raining. H. Camry said the new voice of paintball, all hail. <laughs> 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 just happy to be here, gang. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, ref huddle, usually getting everybody back on the same page. Yeah, you're, uh, you're totally right. I mean, usually, like, especially when they just meet up in the middle of the field, it's usually nothing serious. They're just kind of like, hey, everybody doing okay? This is what's going on. You know, we have this many sets left. How you guys doing? Need any water or anything? You know, checking up. Yeah, making sure that those calls all align. you got a lot of refs from a lot of different places that ref different leagues. You want to make sure that they're on the same page sometimes. I wish that when they uh, left the huddle like that, that they just did, I wish they would like do like a clap or like a break or something like a, nice. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like a football huddle. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. Make, it, make it funny like, go refs go or something refs. like cringy. Yeah. I don't know, just, just something funny to boost the morale and keep the spirits up. You got to keep that energy up. It's really important, especially when you're out here getting shot for 12 hours straight. Oh, yeah. And once again, thanks to all the refs out here at WC. I mean, they do amazing. Well, looks like uh, Narcos on the close side of your screen right now with five alive off the break. I believe they shot a body Grind off break City. for Grind City. Yep, that's right. Grind City with four. Uh, I know we've been saying it a lot, but this is not what they wanted. Two and a half minutes left, down by four. Oh, and just as we say that, they do shoot out one of the, uh, the Narcos Dorito player. So it's back to a 44. Okay. I do have to say Grind City has been doing good in these later points right now as they've been down, down points and down bodies. They've come back and made it very uh, positive, like a positive change um, midpoint for them. Absolutely. With body count, um, communication, uh, risky moves that are benefiting them, and it's great to see. I think that's good mentality and staying flexible. Not letting the BS get to you. Right. And knowing that you need to make changes to make this work. Yes, and uh, Grand City Snake player taking out uh, Narco Snake. And I believe Grand City sent a body to run down someone in the middle. And looks like Grand City Snake player just going to work. Ryan Hoskin on the push again. Shooting all the Narcos players. Got one. In oh. the last Dorito player out and running to that buzzer. Just about a minute 30 left on the clock. Oh. Now only down three. I mean, hey. We've seen some 16 second points today. Yeah. With I mean, it takes it takes a lot of penalties. Right. But it happens. I mean, 30 seconds a point isn't the craziest thing. A 30 second point isn't crazy. Doing it three times in a row, that's where that's, it gets hard. Yes. Yes. Lasro Lopez says, show this footage to the Philippines. 
little shot there. Oh, man. I mean, hey, there's not much to say. When it's three to one situation, you got to close those out. Steve says refing is a thankless job, and they should get way more credit. We take them for granted. A lot of people do. I don't. I uh, definitely make sure to thank them anytime I can, uh, whether it's walking out of the field and getting uh, when I'm chronoing um, at the Starbucks, at the end of points, everything. Yep. They're just coming up to me, you know, checking me midpoint. Make sure to give them a thanks because those little things like that make their day so much better. Um, and like you said earlier, they're, they're out here all day, standing here, refing for us on the field, hardly any breaks. I don't think I've seen any of these refs walk off the field. No, we've uh, no lunch break. We've yep. just had the rotable ref here yep. and there. And a lot of these people, a lot of the referees out here, they have full-time jobs. So they work full-time, work full week. They travel over yep. here. They get shot up for the weekend. <laughs> a lot of them just love the sport. Yeah. Want to be here, be the, here with their friends. I honestly think like being a ref, you do have to have love for the sport because nobody wants to come out to a field and go home looking like a human cheetah with all those welts all over you Absolutely. Um, at the end of the day. So I mean, you got the physical, the physical abuse, the, the mental abuse that you can take you, as a ref. You can't see it on the camera because we're looking at Grind City's uh, Starbucks, but on the Starbucks for Narcos, there was a, a ref wiping down a Narcos player before the point started to make sure that any rub and everything didn't look like a hit. I mean, things like that, it's making the ref's job easier, but it's also helping out the players, and that's so nice of them. And it looks like penalty being assessed on Narcos as Grind City Snake player is taking the walk as well. That's given Grind City the room to push the issue, though. So they're up four to three for Grind City. 60 seconds left on the clock. Ryan City really needed a little bit more momentum on this point, I think, to bring they really the did. back. But you're right. I mean, they, they stayed looking consistent. They looked good. They didn't play bad paintball. Just other teams were playing better paintball. Yeah, Narcos is doing a really good job. Um, oh, as <laughs> Grind City center play gets shot in the face. Narco player, it's from the snake taking the walk. Lee said, LOL, human cheetah. <laughs> Darker player pushing down on the D side into that D4 now. I don't know if they're looking at the clock at all because they only have 12 seconds left and they're about to run out of time. They really need to just rush for the buzzer to try and, you know, close up this point margin. I but do keep talking about winning the set, but the spread is just as important here in Freeland. Yes, yes. You can you can win you can win three matches and lose one, but if you lose that one by five, and there's another team that has is three and one as well, they're going to be seated above you because they'll have a better point margin. Right. And you yes you may make it to the next round to Ocho's or whatever, but um, you could have missed out on a bye. Right. Now you're more tired. Yep. You got to play more paintball, spend you've, more money. You've shot more. You've shot more. <laughs> you've played more. Right, our next set going to be getting started here in about three minutes. Oh, this is going to be interesting. TJ versus Violence. Mm -hmm. TJ versus Violence, and the other half is Cartel versus CEP. Should be a pretty fun set. Definitely TJ versus Violent. Excited for that one. Oh yes, TJ. Uh, TJ was looking good this morning. Um, they got beat by Bloodhawks earlier. Um, Bloodhawks, like we said earlier, is looking like a really, really solid team today. Um, so, who do you think is going to win this one? Oof, I think, I think violence is sick of losing. Yes. And I think that they might have the fire to take this one. I also think that uh, TJ might have played Seattle Cartel and lost. I'll let me. I'll have to look that up real quick and double check. Um, but if that's the case, then that means both teams might be sick of losing and might both have the fire under their butts to get out here. Well, and that'll just lead to a great match. Yes. So I'm good for that. Give us the fire, boys. Give us the fire. 
as far as the other half of this match, Seattle Cartel versus CEP, how do you feel about that one? I'm thinking CEP could take it as long as they say penalty free. That has been their biggest problem of the day. I honestly would take Seattle Cartel Okay. for, for that matchup. Yeah, they are a solid team. Okay, so I just looked up uh, TJ's um, record right now. So they mercyed their first match against Maintain. Okay. They lost against Bloodhawks 3-6, to six, and this is their third match now So against Violence. So coming off a loss, and I believe Violence is also coming off a loss. Um, let's see here. Yes, Violence has – oh, Violence coming off a win against Maintain. Okay. So, um, yeah, Violence beat Raw Material, lost to Bloodhawks, and then beat Maintain three to two. So, Violence might have a little bit of moment momentum right here, and yeah. but TJ might just be not wanting to take another loss. Yeah, ready to go. Because that was a brutal, brutal match against uh, the Bloodhawks that they had. Yes, indeed. So I really don't know who to pick. For this one. Uh, I guess I, when you lay it all out there like that, yeah, it's definitely it's, a tough one. Because violence could have the momentum, bring it into this match, but TJ might just be a little more hungry. Ref's doing a great job. Thanks to Bobby out here with the leaf blower, blowing all the extra paint off the ground around the bunkers, Stay things nice. like that. Keeping areas clean, trying to minimize rub. Rub, diving on those old ball, balls. Looks like five alive for TJ. Pushing up in the Doritos, the wedge, the back center, snake can, and the god. Five alive for violence, two in the home. And I know we want to break out of there. Having two stuck in the home is not an ideal situation. No, you don't want to double up the home uh, very long. I'm surprised they've actually uh, su survived this long. So, oh, and, and as and I say that, <laughs> they lose a home player. No longer. So now only four live for violence. violence. And I believe only four live for TJ. Okay. Squared back up at 44. Yeah, I believe they. I believe TJ lost their snake player out of the god, as the home fills the god now. So we're mirrored up over here on snake side, and no longer TJ, TJ god player moving to the snake corner, bumping now, into S1. Oh yes, and then that uh, snake can moving out into the god as well to try and support. Violence pushing up the center brick and moving out to the snake corner. Um, TJ going all the way down the snake into Violence's side of the snake three. I believe they pulled a little magic trick on him and they think that the snake corner is the only snake player. And he should have shot, he should have shot that Dorito tower but missed him, yeah. I don't know how. Adam dead to rights. And now he- You never want to miss that shot. No, now his spot's blown for no kills and he's got three oh. guns on him. Found a snake player calling for a check, called clean. Now what this does do is uh, take the guns off your teammates and let them push up the field to support. Yes, you. it does. I honestly think that uh, TJ's Dorito player should move up. Oh, just he does right now. I think he should probably move up a little bit more. He's got. I don't think he's got a single gun on him. All guns are looking at Snake right now, and uh, there's only one gun down the tape on Dorito side. But I don't think that Dorito corner can really do much to stop a lot of the Dorito progression. No, and the Dorito corner just bumped into the D1. As he gets and he gets shot. Oh, he gets shot on the way there. Center player for violence uh, calling for a check. He is called out. Um, unfortunately, more bodies just dropping for violence. Um, I think TJ is just a little bit uh, a little bit hungry right now. Yeah. 42 in favor of TJ on the field, body wise. I said this earlier, but you know, as a snake player, sometimes um, you don't have to sit there and force a gunfight. Just being that far up in the field and the other person's snake causes the chaos enough to let your team do the rest of the work. Absolutely. He sat there for a good maybe 30 seconds to a minute doing absolutely nothing but sitting there, yep. not getting shot. And oh no. Oh, a major at the end there. It looks like it was for uh, violence. 
Yeah. Yep, Major on violence, the player running down. I did see a hit just above the pod pack on this left side. Violence currently starting with two, three bodies. So they're gonna be two down? Yes. Oh my down. goodness, because that was the last player, wasn't it? That was the last player. Oh not no, that is not what you want to do. Nope. And now you've taken a one point. <laughs> possibly made it a two point swing. I mean, you just made it so that much easier right. for the other team to, you have to shoot two bodies off break to make it even. <laughs> And we haven't been seeing two bodies drop off break very often out here. No, today. not at all. And actually, as re as of recently, we've been seeing a lot of five five alive on both sides off break. So, starting to figure out those dangerous lanes, make adjustments to those breakouts. Yep. yep. Confirmation. Yep. Just from the refs, we just heard violence will be down two bodies, so they'll be starting with only three. Unfortunate. That is more fuel for the fire for TJ. <laughs> yes, it is. I guarantee they're going to sit in their bunkers, let them come, let them, uh, let violence come to them and storm the field, shoot the bodies. They only have to shoot three. I mean, that's not a lot. Nope. All right, CEP five alive as their second home player filling out to the God. Alex Hicks on the chat says, I got $75 on CEP. Who wants in? Oh boy. That's good. <laughs> Andrew Harris, who was uh, commentating earlier in the booth, he said he would like to take that bet. There you go. Got some side action here. WCPPL. I would, I would love to take that bet too, honestly. <laughs> well, Seattle Cartel is. You may want to lock in your bet soon because we got <laughs> one walk in from CEP. Oh, also one walk in from Cartel. Oh, another one walking from CEP. So. These games really can develop quickly from a five alive to a four on three. Alex Hicks says, tell Andrew Harris to lock it in then. I mean, Alex, I don't know if you know, but uh, Seattle Cartel has been around for 20 plus years, winning every year, and they were the 2023 D3 WC PPL series champs. So coming into the Premier League, very strong, a lot of momentum. Sounds like on paper they are definitely poised to do well this event. Greg Fenn now chiming in in the chat says, Alex Hicks, I got friends on old school CEP, but I'll take that bet for you, for everyone else. There you go, a man of the people. So, and. William now uh, replying to Greg said, me too. So I think a lot of people now in the chat are really wanting to take that bet. I don't know, Alex. I think you just cost yourself 75 bucks. It sounds like it. Make sure you get all those names locked down in the chat there. Might be time to collect later. Alex said, I had no idea and I would still take the down south boys. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. You, you can just have this back. You're good, man. You want it? No. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want it? Not really. Oh, you don't? I, okay, just, I just don't like leaving people seconds. by themselves. That one's all right, boys and girls, Fine. children of all ages. Finally, a button that makes sense. All right, I'm back. <laughs> all righty, so we got Andrew Harris back in the booth. I'm back. Welcome back. He heard all the uh, there's the bets in the chat going off. Well, I had to get myself a microphone after after someone wanted to make a bet like that. Lock that in, Alex. So TJ and Violence now. TJ up 1-0. Violence, Violence up in the middle. Check there. Is this the point that Violence started down two? 
Down, they were down two, yes. And it looks like they have only two alive. Oh, they have three alive. So they still have their three bodies. Alex, you're not locking me in for your bet, bro. I was definitely the first one to take that. This player in the snake here has a hit. It's either a hit inside of his loader or a ball broken inside of his loader, but he looked at it a little bit funny. Yeah, that's a little questionable as a TJ no player comes way. running down the middle. There's no and way, there's and a there's a major on TJ. Oh, no, that's definitely a hit on uh, Slaughter. In his loader, Def right? Yeah, definitely, 100%. Definitely a hit. And then he was <laughs> he's calling for the other guy to get a penalty. Like, <laughs> he should have gone one. Hey, I mean. Greg said, sounds like we got our three. I don't know. Alex doesn't seem to be locking me in. Oh, there he is. There he is. Alex said, I got you, Andrew. <laughs> Dustin said, Dustin everybody. wants to be the broker. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be the middleman. <laughs> oh boy. One minute. All right, we got Cartel and CEP back. Cartel up one nothing, locking locking in that bet with Alex. Um, Cartel, yeah, you know, they are the D3 champs. They've had definitely an up and down day today. I would say more positives than negatives. CEP, of similar nature. I mean, there was at least two points where they started down at least one player and for, like, dumb stuff, talking after the point, talking as a dead person, trying to argue with a ref. Don't do any of that. If Cartel wins, I'm proposing to my girlfriend. <laughs> Cartel on your right, CEP on your left, a running ref coming in to check the CEP snake guy. He's getting all up in him, but he does call him clean, so we are going to start five on five. Seattle Cartel's going to make their way into the Viper one. You see what Lasro Lopez said? Yeah. <laughs> if Cartel wins, he's pr proposing to his girlfriend tonight. Oh, my gosh. All right, Cartel has to win now. Yeah, Cartel definitely has to win now. And right. just like that, a Cartel player goes <laughs> walking out. I think he heard you. He did hear me. CEP oh. pushing up the snake. Got a CEP snake player about to dominate. Yep. And there's one. Not two yet. Not two yet, but it's definitely coming, and he's trying to fill out. And a cart. Oh my gosh! Big move. Longest fill of Huge all time, move. And he still made it. What a fill! All the way from the Dorito Tower to the Snake One. Oh man, Alex is really gonna lose his shit if that was the. That's the fill that seals this one up. It is four on two, um, so not looking great for. Yeah. And the rundown, no penalty, they call it a bang bang. Looks like CEP okay, now going down to tie it up. With just under 12 minutes. They're just putting that fire in cartel. That's all it is. Oh, it's getting a little chilly here now. It's cold, it's getting late. The sun keeps coming out. Going away. Coming back. Thank you, CEP, for saving my sanity. <laughs> might, be an, might be an early thank you. Oh, Alex. man. We'll see. It's a long match. And yes, Giovanni Paintball does rock. Hey, guys, I got TJ in this set. What about you guys? <laughs> I, uh, you know what? 
just for Alex, the hell of it. You want to I walk in another bet on this on this TJ? I'll, I'll take I'll take violence. <laughs> Perfect. I will take violence in this one. <laughs> just because I have to choose the only other team that's playing TJ right now. Hey, at least violence has five guys in the box this time. Yes, that is true. Ten seconds. All right, five live off the break for Violence. Doubling up five that home. Off TJ. Violence filling out from the home, learning as, uh, from their mistake in the first point, uh, dying at the home, doubled up. TJ Don't want to do that. Themselves in the big brick and uh, not learning Violence lessons by doubling up the home as well. No, David, I'm with you. TJ is obviously taking this. It's Kyle, the one that you want to take Kyle's money. <laughs> I wouldn't put money on it. I would just. Uh, I wouldn't put money on it either. It'd be a bad call. I just want to see a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. We've been here for years. Violence still five alive. And it looks like. Four alive for TJ. Four alive for TJ, yep. No Dorito, no Dorito side say, at all. I mean, for TJ. Just, we see this a lot. That one side kind of just gets blown open, and no one seems to be able to do anything with it. You know, as a as a Dorito player, this is that. really sad. It's depressing. I can't wait to get in those Doritos. Yeah. All right, still four alive for TJ. Still five alive for violence. I just, if you're violence, how do you not know that the Dorito side is blown open? How, like, what is that home guy even doing anymore? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I don't know what he's shooting. It looks like he's shooting across towards the snake lane, possibly, to try and keep him out of the snake, which is smart. He's got the, he's got the um, snake tower right in front of him. Looks like can basically do the same job. Ref's going in to check, and the god clean, player clean. for TJ's clean. <laughs> You're right, David. TJ was, it, they are hungry. I mean, after that. 4 on the other hand, not clean as it gets blasted on the sidelines. Sorry, big man. Guys, don't shoot the photographers. Violence home player finally making a move up. Give me the snake can. Alex says the only gamble is on his friends so that he can make them all feel bad if he does lose. That's fair. I mean, Alex, I would want to bet on my friends too. I'd probably either sue or ask for your money back <laughs> this match just from your from your buddies over at CEP. Meanwhile, TJ, uh, uh, the guy in the Viper, he's having a having a barrel problem or a tank. He's having a whole bunch of problems. He's going to try to work this out. Gun is currently fully on the ground. I think that's already it. Barrel swab on the ground. Barrel getting screwed back on. See if his gun works now. Yep. Back up and running. Looks like uh, Violence center wedge player taking a walk. Violence trying to fill out to the guard. Made it there clean. TJ charging up the snake. Just keep going, brother. Keep going. One more. One more. One more. Keep going and stand up at this Keep thing. Right there. Stand up at this wedge and shoot everybody in the back. Yep. Shoot everybody in the back. And keep going. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs> he did blink him one time in the in the side there. Great rundown. Props to the pit, uh, the violence pit, for trying mm. to save their last player from getting shot. They did concede, but paint was already being shot. David, I 100% agree that the Rito side is not being utilized enough. I feel like there could definitely be some good shots from there. I mean, they're not super far away from each other, so the bumps that get into them shouldn't be all that troubling to make. Now, I could be wrong. I am a shitty D4 player, and I haven't played the layout yet. So, you know, I could be wrong, but it just seems a little odd. We have seen some 
excellent play uh, from over there on the Doritos. If you're able to get into that 400, you can definitely do some things from over there. At the very minimum, you're you're taking you're taking one or two guns on you, and you're allowing your snake side to get back to work. So, to me, it just makes sense. I never never loved being in the home for all that long. Certainly never loved doubling it up. Gotta get out of there, man. You know this. You know the side's open. Take charge. Can't argue with that. So you got CEP on your left, uh, the way you're looking at it, and Cartel on the right. Cartel's gonna double up the home, send one in the God, one in the tower, the, the snake tower, uh, and one in the wedge, we're calling the command center. Another running ref going in for CEP. Looks like uh, there was a got, penalty. That's a penalty. On so. CEP. Losing two bodies now, 53 in favor of uh, Cartel. Cartel spreading the field, getting over that 200, getting into the Viper, getting that back center out of the back center, and there goes the Dorito player into the 300. See, I guess they must have heard us talking about some some good Dorito play, as that guy has to get smoked. You've got to be kidding, Noah. He made that. Oh! Poor Bobby. Head ref getting smoked Bobby right now from the Dorito like Tower. In the chin. That is rough. All right, CEP, if you're mad that you're losing bodies and getting penalties, do not shoot the refs. So Cartel looking to go out there and end that game and gets absolutely swiped. So Cartel four alive. Only two uh, left for CEP. CEP has both of these towers. Oh my goodness, don't do not get a penalty. The Cartel Dorito 2 player uh, gets ripped up, so it's a three on two now as it becomes increasingly closer. Go, man. Oh go. no, what CEP with a nasty dive. Oh, CEP. Catching a ball on the way there. Balls, and, and the other guy gets shot as well. Yep, but Cartel, Cartel will, will end up walking this down. Getting these guys out of here. There's a concession, and I am one. I am only 10 minutes away now from a 75 dollar <laughs> win. One minute. How you feeling, Alex? You know Alex is shaking in his boots. <laughs> He's about to lose $225. Alex, if you want to get those uh, those bills ready in ones, um, you can just show up to the booth here and just let it rain on us. That's fine as well. You choose to go that direction. 30 seconds. Cold hard cash, baby. Right, I'm gonna take this moment to uh, give a shout out to our sponsors. Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball, out of AZ, baby. Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law PC, Committed Paintball, Maxed, Lone Wolf, and Matrix Key. At least you got a helmet. Bobby's getting shot in the mouth instead, so. Oh, no. <laughs> Alex is not afraid. That's good. I like the confidence, Alex. Meanwhile, we got Violence and TJ coming back here. TJ's going to take the first walk from the uh, trying to hit the snake corner. Violence is on the right side of your screen right now. TJ on your left. Looks like uh, another player taking the walk, looks like for TJ. Yes. Dorito corner player. Yep. Dorito player taking the walk. And Snake Cannon player taking the walk for Violence. Two. As well as Two the Dorito. Of both towers yep. taking a walk. But the uh, Snake player for Violence here into the Snake 3. He feels pressure from the Snake 1. He's looking to rip this guy up. Oh, we should have gotten him. He missed him. Center player for TJ knew that violence was in the snake, posted up, and almost got smoked. The TJ's Dorito player pushing up though. Violence feels that that heat on his back, pushes up into the snake three juice box, and it looks like TJ. Wow, TJ's eventually going to tell, but they really uh, there was a 41 there that they were 
Looking to not shoot that last guy. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, uh, I regret taking violence now. Uh-oh. Shouldn't have done that. Nope. nope. I think violence is getting in their own head right now. Lost the momentum, and they're just letting TJ kind of handle business. Oh, man. Alex is already hedging his bets here, trying to self-promote himself here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's a bad look, Alex. It's a bad look. Mods, get him. <laughs> David said he'll collect. Oh boy. Yeah, go get him, David. I'm sorry. I'm not used to being told that my nerves make me shiver this far. Ten seconds. So two to one. Cartel up. Ten minutes to go. You got C E P on your right, cartel on your left. Oh, looked like one of those CEP guys wanted to leave early. Guess he might, might have touched up. Staying five alive for CEP. One cartel taking the walk. So again, in my opinion, CEP spending way too much time doubling up the home. Meanwhile, Cartel taking the center brick, both towers, Dorito and Snake. And I believe that there's a, yeah, Dorito, uh, Dorito two player over there. Interesting move. From the, the from the center brick player who goes and takes the inside snake, he has a snake one that is looking at him um, from CEP, and I think he knows that somebody's there. I don't think he knows that he's in the snake one because his gun is definitely not at the right bunker. As the CEP player is going to get himself into the firing lane of where that cartel player actually thinks he is. Looks like we're gonna have a snake on snake battle right here. The snake three for CEP. Uh, Seattle Cartel has that inside Viper two. Um, looking cross, waiting for a trade. Still five alive for CEP. Four alive for Cartel. Cartel definitely, uh, definitely knows what's going on in the snake as they have the snake tower looking that way. And then here comes the real action here in just a second. Yep, and three, two, one. He's got him. Nope. No way. And a run. And a trade. That's and a, a trade. That was a clean trade. So we'll trade out Snakes. It'll be three left for Cartel, four left for CEP. CEP found themselves in the Snake Corner and the Snake One, Dorito Tower, and the Command Center or the Wedge. Also in the snake one. Seven, just below seven and a half minutes left in this game, so almost three minutes off of this uh, off of this point. Seattle Cartel looking to just burn some clock, try and find some bodies. At snake one and snake two, basically on top of each other. Might as well hold hands. The CEP guy, I just heard him say he's only got one pod left, so. He, uh, hopefully he's not taking any lessons from the Philippines from earlier, and he's going to make some magic happen with what remains of that loader. As he's about halfway through it already, you should see him, yeah. If I was your Snake 2 guy, I would hand you a pot. I've got also that. six, he does, in, he's six got on my guy back. behind him has like seven. hit he did not he's got to have very few balls left I'm looking I can see through the window on his uh, spire he's got about half a hopper right now he's about to jump over the beam go on the inside snake has really dominated this point but they just they're playing it real slow 
And for the first time, we're seeing a player on the inside, inside part of the snake in enemy territory. And he does get a kill out of that Dorito over there. So this about to get his head blown over. off by the he wedge. Does yep. get his head blown off, but I know he's got about four rounds in that loader. So he did his job. Definitely. A uh, small retreat from CEP. It's going to take the Viper 1, uh, but also push into the Snake 50 on the outside and the Dorito 300. So CEP just trying to find these remaining two bodies. I don't know if this Snake player, and he didn't, but now he does. He didn't know that wedge was sitting on him for sure. Luckily, this guy has plenty of paint, so he won't have to worry about that. CEP snake player made his way. Oh, and, and he's making a great move. Up. Yep. Peeking up over the top of the beam. This will end. Taking out that wedge. Just gonna go second. try and they run down. Him in the head. Does not get caught. Bobby gets shot again. I don't know how that's not an overshooting penalty, but. So after a five minute point, we are going to get a CEP win and a tie up. Oh man, last row Lopez needs some needs some more yeah, come on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Cumulo nimbus. <laughs> <laughs> Cumulo Nimbus clouds. Oh boy. So Cumulo Nimbus is I'm only going to bring rain, and there hasn't been rain for a while. So. Astro Lopez. We got some oh angels my goodness. in the sky. I got <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, all sorts of oh, Nimbus. Man. Nimbus. <laughs> fucking. Well, yeah, you got it. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that we got the chat talking about the weather now. <laughs> They're all about it. It's, it's great. See, and Dustin saw what I saw. I also thought that he got hit in the head, uh, and he kind of just sat there and just kind of waited. I saw him kind of eyeing the ref, and no one came to check him, so he just kind of kept going. He might have been a bounce. David said uh, Phoenix is raining right now. Oh, my. Gee, we can't escape it. No, we can't. 20 seconds. Josh says our current forecast is currently 53 degrees, partly cloudy, 17% chance of rain till 6 p.m. Sunset is set for 7 12 p.m. Back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, seconds. Josh. You know, actually, I think the most important part of that was knowing when the sunset is because the way that these matches are going, we might be here till 7 12. Yeah, it, I mean, we've had so many overtime points, so many penalties to assess. It's pushed the schedule back so far. I don't think we're getting uh, overtime here as uh, TJ's up. Four to nothing, four minutes to go. Oh, we are getting a massive run here. That's, wow. that's not going to work. I mean, really, the violence, I mean, Head that's kind of all that they yeah. could do. They blew out the Dorito side. Um, TJ sitting here comfortably in the snake one and snake two. So violence decided that they thought the snake was hot and then now completely turned away from it. So they actually don't have anybody on this thing. And if TJ knows that, they can just they can just go. And it can just keep going. And Violence uh, center player tried to go run down, got shot on the way there. He can just go all the way down. And yeah, don't worry about anything. TJ can just pop over the snake one. And um, oh. just blast everybody in the back. There you go, taking out one. And going to continue wrapping, shooting the center player. Who's going to shoot the center? <laughs> violence the violence player is so confused. Shoot, yeah. He's looking around trying to figure out who shot him. He's going to shoot that Dorito. And he can see, oh, second. yep, there he was in the snake one. So TJ going to take this point. Mercy Violence 5-0. Mercy. Unfortunate. So, hey, hey, Kyle, remind me, who did I pick to win this tournament? Uh, you picked TJ. Oh, okay. I That's picked good. I picked the Bloodhawks though, so I don't think the Bloodhawks have lost a match. Well, you know, I'm and TJ playoff. lost the Bloodhawks. Just gonna get to playoffs. <laughs> just gotta get to playoffs. I've been told. Uh, I was told the Bloodhawks are being coached by um, the. Oh, damn it! Chat, help me out. Bloodhawks are being coached by. I'm not sure. Not Corey Field. What am I thinking? No, um. And it's not Corey Hall. It is Corey Hall. Oh, is he? Because uh, Corey Hall is. Uh, no, Brandon, not Corey Field. At least I was told Corey Hall originally. Hey, Brandon's in the chat. I don't think that's the same one. 
Well, yeah, no, no, Brandon, Brandon Sutton. Sutton. Yeah, he's uh, he was Phoenix Rising. Yep. Oh, they are saying Corey Field. Okay, okay never mind. So it is Corey Field. So I was right okay. the first time. Huh. Look at me. Corey Field. Corey Field. 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 All right. Seconds. Noted. Wow, now everybody chimes in. When Andrew's wrong, everybody's correcting him. Jesus. And even H HK. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. What's up, Brandon? How you doing, buddy? So Seattle Cartel, CEP 2-2, 4 minutes, 39 seconds to go. This could be the result of a swapping of around $225. We have Seattle Cartel on your left-hand side. They are taking five alive, double up the home. Looks like five alive on both sides. I believe so. It's a beautiful drone shot, courtesy of Ryan. Oh yeah, that tower is going to take a walk. Snake tower is going to take a walk, which is it's going to let um, that's going to let Cartel into the snake, and here they go. And it's Cartel is just going to keep three. on going. I guarantee he's going past this snake fifty. Just keep going, buddy. Don't just go do one more. Okay. Yep, just go one more. Nope, keep going. Keep going. Now you now you let them know that you're there. Now they're going to shoot at you. Wrap the inside. See if you can catch a body in that Dorito. See, I, and this is what Thomas was talking about. Is I, you know, I don't love this play. They did not know that he was here. He could have gone all the way yes. down, and this game would have been over. Every um, time a snake player has. No time left. Oh, is it, no penalty. Wow, they did not pull a penalty for that. As they, as that snake player does shoot the Dorito, that they filled the Dorito. This snake player is still doing work. I believe that this guy, yeah, he's looking at the wrong spot. It's only two alive for CEP. Not looking good for them. It's tied up 2-2 with just over three minutes left in the match, and a snake can is that getting obliterated. Get blown uh, away. Dorito players running CEP down the Doritos, finally gets shot. Life. That's not going to work. Time, time, time. So three minutes to go. Seattle Cartel is going to be up one. Okay. So the determining factor there was shooting that uh, shooting that tower out originally and really got that snake in and they just they completely forgot about him. CEP did uh, concede that point. Three minutes left on the game clock. Seattle Cartel now Seattle Seattle Cartel now up three to two. So after about eight hours of talk and I'm starting to get tongue tied. It's a little bit. It's 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 kind of a lot. Yeah. It's fun though. I'm enjoying it. By the way, um, Seattle Cartel, while we just have a second, they are sponsored by Anthrax Paintball. They call it the number one sponsor. Best quality jerseys around. Uh, also, Matrix Paintball. Always help them with any needs they have. Carbon Paintball, local Northwest owners. Um, KC Crusaders and Impact Action Sports, their favorite fields. KC's being the home. Um, and NWS. Oh. oh, it's the tournament series they play in. Okay, very cool. So Seattle Cartel got a lot of sponsorships. They got a lot to play for. They are defending D3 champions, and they're starting to maybe pull it together a little bit. Oh, and we're in x ball. So we're going to see these guys again right now, which is great. That means me and Alex don't have to wait to get this bet settled. Three minutes to go. Seattle Cartel up 3-2. You know, I haven't seen Alex uh, type in the chat recently. You know, you're, you're still there, there, buddy. I don't know. How Alex, are you feeling? Alex might have ghosted us. <laughs> Now, if you're Cartel, I'm not playing defense here. I'm going for the point. I'm playing oh, yes. this point like 100%. any other point. I'm not looking to run three minutes off. Nope. I'm looking to increase my margin, especially after the day that they've kind of had. They, yes. They, they, they need this point. They need to play the smart. Maybe four guns up, send one a little rogue, see if they can probe something out of there. Uh-oh, Brandon was saying he's on that no paintball dad life watching WC from work. Glad you tuned into the stream, though. So Cartel does take a bite out of the... Oh, he's going... We're running ref. And, and a penalty on Cartel. On the D side. That's going to lose two. Yeah.
So CEP going to make a uh, pretty quick work of this one. This this guy, CEP, is shooting with one hand down by his hip. That's an interesting way to do that. So um, Cartel didn't take any of my advice. They, in fact, didn't win this point. They are going to lose this point in 40, 38 seconds, and we're going to have a tie game again. Brandon, we got myself. My name is Andrew Harris. Next to me, I have Kyle Kerr. Yeah. Uh, I think you might know Kyle. Anyway, we play for Arizona Pole Position. I hope Brandon remembers me. I don't know, Brandon. Don't I mean, from when I, when I played on Phoenix Rising. Back when Dan the Man was in charge. What's up, Brandon? I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. We appreciate all of you guys hanging around, sticking with us, chat. You're making this more fun for the rest of us as well. And we need things to bounce off of, and if we're just talking to ourselves, then we can just do that from home. It's not even that fun. I do enjoy sitting in the booth with Andrew, though, just talking about paintball, talking about what's going on, all watching day. these premier teams ball out on this field. I mean, this layout's... This layout looks so much fun, and I just cannot wait to play it tomorrow and Sunday. I think that we're going to play it a little bit different than some of these guys are playing it. I definitely do. Some of the lanes are going to be different yeah. um, in the lower divisions. I mean, D4 is not going to have as strong of lanes as Premier. Um, a lot of these guys have been playing paintball for a very, very long time, so they know what's up. Got BB Shady here popping. He's got some popcorn. He's hanging out with his mm -hmm. dog. What kind of dog? Yeah, Pitbull, I miss my dogs. Yeah, I miss my puppies too. It's only been well, all of one day. I miss my dogs. It's time to go home. Dustin said this is a good match, but let's go cartel. Yeah, I agree, that's, let's go cartel. That's right, Dustin. Oh, a little Frenchie. A little Frenchie. So we were just uh, in a little bit of a break while these refs swipe down some of these bunkers, fill up some, talk about some things, you know, all the stuff. I think uh, one of the teams uh, called a timeout. Um, so they still got 50 seconds to get on the box, be Which ready. Good, because it looks like they need it as they now only have three on the box. And Cartel, listen, if you're listening, we're going to need all five. Oh, there we go. There. Two more coming out. Wait a second. Is uh, Who is that? Ward? Let's see. Seattle Cartel. Chris Ward. You see his jersey number? 3.14. Pi. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Clever. That's I've very clever I've never seen that. Board. It's only taken how many matches for me to realize that? I mean, this is I think the fourth match that we've watched them play and we didn't notice until just now. So not great, but you know, we're doing our best, guys. We have a cartel on your screen right now. Two minutes left in the game. Cartel's about to run through CEP. Three seconds. Ward going out wide to the snake corner. Cartel keeps five alive. Something CEP. wrong with his gun there, trying to fix like it. Looks like Cartel taking a walk. Son of a biscuit. That other home player is going to leave as well, but he's no, and he is going to get shot in his way to the god. So a five on three for CEP, not looking great. Oh, and a really quick towel from Cartel. Wow. So Hold on a second. Just 20 or so seconds burned off that clock as CEP is going to take a 4-3 lead. Oh no, some commotion in the pit on uh, cartel side. Um, sounds like sounds like someone said no towel and someone toweled. That's um, not good and it doesn't even look like it's a car one of the cartel's players. I mean, that, that kind of stuff should never happen. There should be one guy and one guy only that's in charge of that buzzer and, and that should be the that buzzer gets hit. Well, good news. Um, yes, there is Greg overtime in prelims. <coughs> um, good news for Cartel. 
is no matter what was going on there, uh, they didn't lose a ton of time. They did always lose a point. They lost about 25 seconds. Or I so. mean, they do. They did lose a couple bodies, so they probably would have lost a point. Yeah, I don't think it was a bad call to hit to hit the buzzer. They were five on three. The Dorito side was completely blown open. The uh, CEP had a much better position than Cartel. Yep. Now Cartel's going to have a little fire under their butt. Uh, try and charge on the field and tie up the tie up the game. We got dancing refs at the very bottom of your screen. <laughs> I don't like know if you can see that, but see it, but yeah, yeah. Like it's so fun to be here together. Fourteen seconds. Oh yeah, I know. She's running off. She's running off of two hours of sleep right now. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, we do not know who is uh, who is coaching CEP if they do, in fact, have a coach. They did not list that on their uh, little list of goodies here. All right, so here we go. CEP, five alive off the break. Cartel, five alive. Oh, four alive for Cartel off the break. So losing their Dorito player. Oh, man. I th it looks like CEP might have just figured something out. And now Cartel lost their home. Looks like Alex might have been right. You suck, Alex. And CEP is going to drop a body. Argued for a second with the ref, but decided to walk off anyways. There is a snake player for Cartel. Just keep going, buddy. Just keep going, buddy. Don't do that. Okay. No one's listening. I don't know how that snake player didn't get hit, but he uh, made it alive. Not looking good for the bets. Uh, TJ is looking good. I believe that they are either two and one or three and one. And CEP just lost their snake one. Uh, Cartel loses their snake as well. Um, CEP loses their center guy. Left uh, two alive for CEP, two alive for Cartel. Okay, so they have 34. They have 30 seconds. They're in a much better position. They have it. They have oh, a yes. chance to win this game. They pop the home out of here. They go run this thing down. The home is about to get blasted. Yep. Blast and and cartel coming down, player. about to destroy the Dorito corner. Oh, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. No, it's two on. No, he died. No, it isn't. There's, I heard another gun. Did I not? Nope. That's uh, somebody chronoing. Oh, that's that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Nope. Uh, cartel is clean. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, so with two, with two seconds. seconds. Did we get a point approved? Wait. Point approved. Point approved. Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow, wow. Alex. <laughs> oh. Overtime, baby. Alex, how much are you sweating? <coughs> Scale of 1 to 10. Is it just like, is, it there, is there pools of water escaping you? Let's go, Greg, Dustin. Hype up the chat. <laughs> We're really happy that everyone's loving this as much as we are. Hey, as soon as uh, Cartel wins this overtime point, uh, we got to get Fs in the chat for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, man, two seconds. They what didn't a, get what a, a play. whole lot closer than that. <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better dub right here. I mean, honestly, if this – is how CEP is going to beat Cartel. I mean, this would be the way to do it. Um, go to overtime. You have five minutes for one point and one point only. That's it. You know what, you know what would make it even better? Go to one on ones. One on ones. One on ones. One on ones. Boy, it would be sick to see one-on-ones. We haven't seen any all day. We've gotten close. We have not seen any one-on-ones. Gotten all day. close. I've only seen, honestly, like I've only seen it happen. I think like three different times in three different matches throughout my most of my tournaments of paintball. I've uh, I've seen four or five, I believe, and it usually has happened in ochos or quarters. I've actually seen a one-on-one in semis before nice and that was that That'd was interesting be, because be it went to the it went to the third one-on-one -on -one 
because the first two sets of one-on-ones, they yeah. Simo traded. Yeah, yeah. So Simo, as Mr. Oliver Lang would say during the Hormes yep. event. Man, I heard that so many times. Simo. 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 Lasso Lopez saying we lost a 1v1 for leaving the box, quote unquote, too early. Yeah, well, Stream you can't provided leave otherwise. Box early there. Oh, wait, Mr. Lopez, were you, did you go to USS, USXBL? Was that you guys? Hmm. 30 seconds. Never mind, you said he lost a 1v1. That was not the same scenario. Although, really, how do you do that? Apparently, leaving the box too early. Um, horrible. If the stream provided otherwise, I feel like. Coaches could challenge that. It's just not quick enough. I, well, I, I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I, we, it, there, unfortunately, there's just no rule for it. So, I am announcing the games on bias. I just, you know, really want one of the teams to win over the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that's totally biased. Okay, got it. Sorry, sorry, Madison. Uh, after this match, I'm, I promise we're, we'll go back to totally unbiased commentary. We've been enjoying talking with the chat. Um, oh, that's what Lopez says. That was at Bunker Fest. Ref pulled my player, couldn't rebuttal. Oh boy, that's well, unfortunate. There's a lot of jokes that I could make here um, that we're just we're just gonna leave. Okay, maybe just one. Um, Bunker Fest sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you shouldn't have said that. Because now now CEP is gonna win. <laughs> None of that. None of that. Chris Long said, take who you want. Hawks. Hawks. I mean, they look pretty good. But yeah, Blood Hawks look great. And I did, like I said earlier, Andrew, I say the Blood Hawks take the tournament. Okay, okay. Listen, one thing at a time. Let's get this win, Cartel. Totally unbiased. Come on. All right. Five alive, doubling up the home. Looks like they caught CP. Um, off the break, it looks like the player for Cartel is hit in the loader, on the top of the loader right now, um, in that wedge. Definitely hit on top of the loader. Running ref, ref is going in to check right now and call him out. They're no penalty being assessed. How on earth? Oh, well, that, that is extremely lucky. Yes. Did CEP, play, did CEP lose a player? Um, they lost one off the break. So I see three bodies. I don't see a fourth from my angle. Um. So I heard a snake one call as uh, Cartel does get into the snake. They know he's there. They know he's there, but he just needs to oh, keep going. Running into check CEP. Just keep and. Going. Just keep swimming. Oh, checking the player in the, okay, rub in the player in the wedge for CEP. Just keep swimming, there you go. Keep on going. So CEP now Concerned about the snake. They right. know snake is hot. If this snake player goes They just don't know where he's at. This game is over. If Cartel goes, if Chris Ward goes keep all going. the way down. Just keep going, Chris. CEP really needs to watch their snake. And their snake can is now peeked back in with their gun not up. Ward going to be, oh, shooting people in the pack now. So he does shoot one, but he didn't go as far. And down. he shot two. Okay, there's two. Um, oh, and he is going to shoot the home here in just a second, I think. Taking his time and shooting the home. So kill four and shooting the last aware. player in the last Dorito. The four. Dorito. There's five. Oh, burn. wow. Alex, unfortunately, weather is getting in the way of the drone. Well. So. Time to Wait, pay. And, and there it is. Point is approved. Seattle so Cartel going to take that match. Totally unbiased. Five to four. Uh, really happy for Cartel. Just a really, really good teamwork. Um, honestly, a really, really, really good match. That was that was excellent. Um, that really seems to be the biggest key is is getting one of these snake guys in here and and if, if he gets he can just get lost in here. Yes. If they want to send him down. I mean, it's the game's over. There's no nothing can hold the tape besides the snake too or any of the Snake 3 or Snake uh, 50, so. Totally unbiased, William, thank you. Two overtime wins for Cartel today, that is correct. Three minutes. David said, sorry Alex, time to go yell at your friends. 
You know, chat, I mean, when someone in the chat, for example, Alex, wants to put up a bet um, with some people, including us in the booth, for who we think are going to win. And so guys, when someone Alex, offers me free money, I'm going to take it. So Alex bet 75 bucks to three different people bet that CEP would win. Buck. So how to take that bet? <laughs> Alex said he's going to yell at him for sure. <laughs> I do not doubt it. And if anybody One wants to give Alex some of his money back, you can go visit him on his website. That he'll post here in just two seconds, I bet. <laughs> Parker says, let's go Seattle Cartel. <laughs> well, that was a really, really excellent match. That I mean, really, four on four into overtime. Can't ask for a whole lot more than that. That was excellent. Um, we're going to move on to the next one. Bloodhawks and maintain. Bloodhawks. Right, Bloodhawks all the way. Kyle's pick here. Bloodhawks, Bloodhawks all the way. Picked them to win the tournament, and they're still trucking. Hey, you, Kyle, you're supposed to be unbiased. I'm <laughs> sorry. All right, my bad. Uh, Bloodhawks are going to win. Chat. Kyle doesn't <laughs> win. You can't. Chris Long said fifty dollars on the Hawks. Uh oh, now we got some bet more bets going on in the chat. Kyle, take a picture of that. I need I need Alex's email here so that I can collect my dollars. Alex, I'm I'm Man, a Man, Cartel with the craziest matches today. I'm gonna email yes, you after sure. matches today. Cartel had a crazy comeback uh earlier today. Um yeah, Cartel down quite a bet. Quite a bit wild, and came wild. back to win seven that's to six. Their second, that's their second playoff one. Yes. Man. Oh, overtime win, not yeah, playoff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, overtime. All right. Moving on, let's Elizabeth. see how the Bloodhawks are looking. They got five alive, excellent breakout. They did not double the home, which I like quite a bit. Elizabeth said, I love your bias. Smart man, thank you so much. Wait, Elizabeth, I thought. <laughs> she wanted it unbiased. <laughs> as, as we say that, Bloodhawks taking a walk. Um, only four alive left for Bloodhawks. Looks like five alive for Maintain. One in the god, uh, Snick can, two at the home, the and one at the Rito Tower. Schmeagle is on this team here. Home filling out to the wedge for maintain. Four still alive for the Hawks. Looks like they've got pretty spread out in both towers, the uh, Dorito corner and Snake corner. Yeah, so this is maintained. So Frankie Montoya is on this team. His nickname is Dranky Can because he can now drink anyone else on the team, any place, anytime, anywhere. Again, I didn't write this, guys. Jose Paz in there. He grows his hair out to look like Legolas. Oh, Marvel. here we go. Hold on. Maintains in the snake now oh. as a player from Maintains taking a walk. Bloodhawks reading that snake play, filling out to the god, and then out to the snake one. They also have a snake corner, so Bloodhawks are going to try and match up and protect this tape. And protect this snake. They are gonna protect that tape, but he's he's just stay there. Let him let him. There we go. There we go. Got to come to it. He's got. Over Choose your battles wisely in the snake. Oh, I can't believe they couldn't see each other there. So, maintain gives away tape dominance to the Bloodhawks here in the snake, and if he just pop, oh man, he could have had a shot at his foot if he wanted to let himself out there a little bit. Drinky can, a.k.a. Pasta Schmeagle. Oh, it's the same guy. Okay. And maintain snake player getting uh, caught trying to go to the snake 50. Man, snake Schmeagle. can taking a walk now, too. Bloodhawks looking good. Still four alive. Um, yeah, see, this snake player understands understands what his job is, understands what he's supposed to do. Although, maybe one more. Be better. Wow, his LV2 yeah, is I really say, poppy. I was going to say, that did not sound, that does not sound oh. right. This guy in the, in the snake here. And this wedge is about to get his face blown off. Oh, barely missed him. Wow, I thought that, I thought he got him. And. So we got Hunt here for Bloodhawks and the snake. If he's, he's, he's calling it out, he's letting his people know. He should know they got the ball, and they in fact do. Maintain does have the Dorito player as well, so only two bodies left alive in the wedge and the Doritos. Four still alive. I'm sorry, three, three. alive yeah, for it's Bloodhawks, it's so three, three on two. two. This Not Bloodhawks horrible for Maintain. This Bloodhawks guy just needs to get on the stomach and go crawl down the snake. And go I, the I agree. You 100%. have a guy who's right next to you. Let him do his thing. He's got your back. Yeah, see, and he heard me. There he we go. He heard me. <laughs> He's just taking, he knows exactly what to do. That's, that is the play. 
So here in about 15 seconds or so, you will see both of these maintained players get shot in the back. And Bloodhawks losing their uh, back snake player, and but their front snake player made it all the way to the other side of the field, and rounding the snake corner, and shooting the last two bodies. Yep. I, th ooh, and that that Bloodhawk snake player, he's, he's walking away. I don't know if he got hit. Okay, he didn't. He was waiting for a concession that isn't coming, so he will walk himself to the box. Ref standing there on the right side of your screen doing the finger twirl. Uh, the game's still going. You know, they ought to put together like a diagram for us for all the all the calls for the referees and all the things that they do. Because sometimes I'm not 100% certain what all these different motions are that they're making. Well, I could probably explain it. Um, but also, different groups of refs have different hand signals, calls, everything for different situations. So... It's kind of compl complicated. That's probably what they also do when they uh, do that little huddle in the middle of the field. Just make sure everybody's going over if any Everyone new calls. Over the hand signal calls. Yep, hand signals, all that kind of stuff. And it's important. And, you know, yes. just, like, just like we study the field and we studied the bunkers, the refs should uh, you know, be on the same page in terms of uh, their, all their hand signalings. Yep. I mean, there's, it's really hard for the refs to communicate across the field with walkie-talkies. Um, already, they can't yell across the field, and um, hand signals is the best option. Elizabeth, thank you for make, telling me <laughs> I sound so good. I appreciate that. Oh, do I have my boys up here? Lasher Lopez oh, said, my girlfriend said no. I don't know what that means. I don't know what he was responding to. He said that if Cartel won, he was going to propose <laughs> to his girlfriend. <laughs> and Cartel won. <laughs> but I'm confused because he also said, just well, kidding, he plays paintball, he doesn't have a girlfriend. Did he take the bet, though? Did he also win $75, or did he not win $75 and get shut down from his girlfriend? It's not good. Can I take this? Corey Field is coaching the Bloodhawks. Yes, thank you. All right, so collision on, City with a nice big on your screen gun. right now. Taking the 200 on the rip, but one of them is going to take the walk out of, the, out of one of the towers, out of the Snake Side Tower. Five alive, four collision. Collision been playing some good paintball. Greg said, let it be known, Alex pays. He's a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. I'll be emailing Alex later to collect my debt. <laughs> Alex, I appreciate you uh, buying me some paint this weekend. A whole what? Two whole two cases. Two and a half cases. Two cases and a diet coke is basically what that seventy-five buck is going to charge. I appreciate that. Let's go collision. That's right, so Ashley. Collision is in the snake one, and if we've learned much of anything, it's that he needs to just go ahead and scoot on down to the end there. He did in fact hear me as he makes his way into the snake three. Looking behind him, checking to make sure he's got some overshot. He does. Collision player going to make his way into the snake 50 now. Uh, another body dropping down from Grind City, so at least two down. So I, I, I think it is a 53 for collision. Oh, as another, as another Grind City guy takes the walk. And there's a fourth kill. Yeah, so... That's going to do it for that one as Collision's going to take that first point. Which will take us back to the Bloodhawks and maintain. I've, uh, I've heard the chat likes the Bloodhawks. So there will be no shaking hands between the players as they cross the field. They're looking to kill each other, and uh, I can approve of that. It's no problem there. Here now. 
HK still in the chat, checking on their boys as Bloodhawks uh, four only at four alive. They do take the Dorito 200, both towers and the home. Maintain is going to take the center brick, the 100 Dorito. They are going to double the home and the Snake Tower. And they make their way. They're going to split uh, the home and take over both towers again and then bump one of their, their Dorito towers into the Dorito 200. So better positioning for Maintain. Maintain choosing, oh, now finally choosing. Oh, and a big old tumble from one of the Maintain guys as he takes the snake corner, but he does make it there and he's alive. Bloodhawks in the nice dive in the center. So mirroring the bricks in the center of the field, mirroring the towers that have been being played all day. Running ref going in and checking the snake corner for Maintain. Players clean, but they do lose their Dorito 200 player. Doesn't look like anybody's in a snake for either side. No one's I can't in snake tell if there's side. a snake one for Bloodhawks. There is not, but there is a snake. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there's not a snake one for Bloodhawks. They have nothing going on on that side as they lose their Dorito player over there. And again, I don't know how many times we got to say this. Get in the snake and crawl all the way down and eat these guys alive. So it looks like a uh, 43, four on three for maintain. Yeah, yeah. Good spot that uh, Maintain wants to be in right now. Sorry about the camera, guys. It is windy and cold. Oh, as the corner player for Maintain does take the walk, um, that's going to kill the opportunity that they have to fill in the snake. They do have both towers and the center brick still. Is it, uh, oh, so we're totally, oh, yeah, we're totally mirrored. We have each player at the center brick and one player each at each tower. So 33. 33. And Maintain moves out to the god. Bloodhawk's trying to keep him out of the snake. And they move out of the Dorito corner into the Dorito 200. So uh, Maintain getting wide again, which is exactly what they should be doing. You'd, you'd like to see that Maintain guy that took the, the snake one or seeing the god. Oh, he's in the god. He's in the guy who's going to try to work his way into the snake one. You want to see him try to make that move. I th he should only have to put in one guy, and that Dorito player should know that. I mean, you got, you got two barrels looking snake side. Oh, he finally just switched. I just feel like Dorito side was just not getting a lot of pressure there. A guy could have been in there 400 very easily. I, I believe so as well, unless it uh, looks like that Dorito tower is. Uh, he is now, but, but for, for gave it some 30 seconds, they were both. See, and now the Bloodhawks go to try to fill that Dorito as that center player takes a shot at him. A ref is going to come and check him from afar, which is normally not a good sign. Calls him clean, Maintain. says play on. So still three on three. Boy, it's getting windy out here. Very windy. Maintain player that's still in the god just never decided to escape himself out of there. You would have liked to have seen that make that bump into the snake one and start to try to wrap and start to try to get some outside pressure here. Besides that, that blood, oh, and the Bloodhawks the blood uh, snake temple player does take the walk and shot right in the center of the chest. Not sure exactly where that front came from. Uh, the maintain player did, in fact, hear me finally. He, he's going to make his way into the snake three. Crawling, crawling, crawling now into the snake four. I was just about to say, this is getting to be a long point. I hope we don't have a uh, another 11-minute no, point. No, we're not going to we're not going to have that problem as a uh, as 187 here on maintain is going to rip up that center player. Yep, and we'll wait Continue until he on has down. dominance and shoot that. Oh, and shot the real player as well. And there we go. So maintain on the board now. They're on the board. Well, not yet. We'll, well see. They're about to be. Got to be about to be. As long as the point gets approved. Thanks. Stop the time at 6.42. Ref's checking the player, and point is approved. Got the thumbs up. So maintain officially on the board. Maintain officially on the board. Tied up with Bloodhawks, 1-1. One, one. Officially, you know, in a, in, a, in a tiny bit of a, well, you know, maybe breathing, maybe just a little bit extra heavy. Maybe, maybe wondering if the game plan is the right game plan. And you know what? I wonder if uh, 
maintain. He's going to be able to put the uh, the pressure on the Bloodhawks here because, I mean, Bloodhawks have been looking really good all day. Maybe they got a little too comfortable, um, especially after winning the first point. But we shall see. Uh, we move on to Collision and Grind City. Uh, Take this time to give a shout-out to our sponsors. Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law PC, Committed Paintball, Maxed, Lone Wolf, and Matrix Gear. A special shout-out a little bit to DOS Paintball. Elevate your game with DOS Paintball, the ultimate destination for your paintball needs. From top-tier new and used gear at DOSPaintball.com to adrenaline-pumping Arizona streetball tournaments. We got you covered with classic PSP, uncapped semi, and mechanical events. Got to say, those street those streetball events are really fun out in Arizona. Uh, one of the uh, Grind City guys taking a walk. He's one of their, in my opinion, probably their best snake player. So one of their really, really, really good kill for Collision, who's been playing really excellent paintball today. I don't know exactly that they have. their record, but I, they, I, they've looked much better than they have. Not as good. So. As that Collision player takes his way into that center brick. It almost looked like he was tripping up to that uh, center brick. I believe it's uh, five alive for collision, four alive for Grind City. Uh, BB Shady, the teams are shooting not Defy Paint, no. They are shooting the best paint ever in the entire world, GI Evil Paint. Literally, without any question, the best paintball that has ever been made. Shout out GI. Great tournament paint. Love shooting it here at WC. Yes, Elizabeth, it has been a long day. These guys are definitely tired as we get really deep into these sets. Collision now all the way up into the Snake 50. Looking down the tape, going to be wrapped a little inside, looking at that god. Shot the god, wrapping to the home. Oh, and he's going to, oh, and he and almost took one off his shoulder. He didn't. Oh, he just shot the ref, and he is going to shoot the home player. And as Grind City loses their center player in the wedge, they thought he's still there. Shooting a ghost. Oh, and the collision player, did he just get hit by his own team? No, he didn't. That looks like a rub. A rub on his elbow there. Yep. Right. Towel by Grind City. Collision going up 2-0 with uh, 11 and a half minutes. Yeah, theme of the weekend, crawl all the way. Um, you know what, I agree with that. I wasn't 100% sure as the day got started, kind of what we were looking at and how it was all going to play out. But I would say the most common theme out of anything is if you can have a snake player and there's nobody in if there's nobody in the opposing snake, you, I mean, basically can crawl all the way down into that bunker that you're looking at, right at the right on your screen, that that big wing right there, um, and I mean you're you're seeing nothing but backs and packs. Yes, I have shot Hellfire. It is not as good as GI Evil. Richard, you're right. Uh, evil is so evil, non-wipeable. It makes it so hard. I mean that paint is just. I mean when you get hit, you know you're hit. I mean, just take a look at this field. I mean, these bunkers are, they start red and they turn, I mean, literally pink. They spend all day wiping these things off. It's crazy. Bloodhawks and maintain, going back at it again. Maintain up to the center very Bloodhawks early and looks like a minor penalty being thrown on maintain. No, that's not going to help. Pulling their snake can and their center player. And uh, in case no, oh, and and another a penalty for Bloodhawks. Oh my goodness. So one, two, so we're gonna have a 33 the hard way. Wow. Bloodhawks find their way into the snake. So Bloodhawks have their, learn their lesson. Although there is a snake um, a snake corner for maintain. So he'll, he should be able to keep them out of incredible harm's way from there. The Dorito side temple um, is, is definitely in harm's way if they don't know that he's in the snake though. Oh, as he gets shot immediately. So I think only two players left for maintain the snake corner. Yeah, the snake corner and the Dorito 200 as the Dorito 200 also takes the walk. So just the snake corner only and the, as the rain now starts to, to come down on us as well. That snake corner is gonna get shot. It's just a matter of time. 
and he does. Unfortunate. So a much quicker point than our first one there as Bloodhawks are going to take a 2-1 lead. Uh, just a little under five and a half minutes to go left in this match. And I know that we've said it a million times now, the Bloodhawks look pretty good. Pretty good. I'm still taking TJ, though. And I still got Bloodhawks to win it all. One minute. What was the penalty for? Uh, more than likely, a player, there was two penalties on that point. Elizabeth, um, one penalty on... Maintain, uh, he got shot off yeah, break. Maintain would have got shot on the break and then would have slid into his bunker and fired his gun, which would draw, which will automatically draw a penalty, a yellow penalty, not a red. And then on the other side, more than likely the same thing, although I didn't see it until the flag was already flying. But um, 30 seconds. yeah, that is the, the biggest difference between a red and a yellow penalty is that you're going to get a red penalty if you get shot and then you shoot somebody else. If you just get shot seconds. and fire your gun and don't hit anything, you're going to get a yellow if you get shot, pull up, and then shoot someone, they're going to take a red because they have to pay back, essentially, the guy that you just killed. So reds, devastating, and almost nearly impossible to come back from. Not a fun thing to play with. Collision up 2-0 on Grind City, 11.33 left in this match. Collision taking five alive and taking the snake one the hard way all the way around the snake corner. And a penalty flying for Grind City. Oh, no. <laughs> and bodies just <laughs> dropping so ever so quickly. Was it a major? No, it was a minor. I thought I saw um, a red flag on the field. So he, the ref went to pull out the yellow and uh, dropped his red flag, but he did throw the yellow. Got it. Um, same scenario. The player going out to that uh, snake can got shot off break, pulled up at his bunker, shot his gun. So... So this grind, uh, this collision player did not take my advice. He decided to pull up and wait. Now he's going to take my advice. He needs to go one more, though. That's not the bunker. I don't even know what he's looking at here. I think I heard one of his teammates calling out the snake one. And you can tell on your screen, if you look on your screen, just on the just on the left there, you can see uh, uh, that snake player laying down in the snake. You can just see basically his head in his loader. He's looking for somebody. He thinks that there's someone basically right on the other side of this wing here. They're not. And another uh, conceded point by Grind City. <coughs> Collision going up 3-0. So Marshall, not a fan of, uh, of GI. Well, Marshall, I respect your opinion. Um, I just, I think that you're wrong is all. Do you have a soft tip bolt on your gun? And are you probably using a Lux? I wonder. Probably using a Lux. I mean, let's, they, they, the Luxes are rough on paint. If you don't have one of those soft tip core Ten bolts seconds. in there, you can definitely shred some stuff up. So it does make me wonder. I know that guns are, are, are picky and a little finicky on some paint, but. 20 seconds. Cool hat, bro. And, and I love the physics, though. 10 seconds. Hey, chicken! Hey, watch the Dorito runner! Yeah, Marshall, I got it. You, you'll never use GI, only HK, I got it. Yep. Yes, so we shot Zap back so. in the day. Maintain, oh, no. Bloodhawks. Okay, Marshall's back. Looks like uh, yeah, yeah. player might be hit for Bloodhawks. Calling for a ref, check. Not a good way to be. And, and he dropped his red flag again. There's the not a penalty yet. He's asking and for a check there. and no penalty because oh. he did not shoot his gun. He asked for a check okay. like he should. Got to his bunker off break. Looked over at the ref. I'm not looking at the Instagram chat anymore, but I know that how much they wanted the Bloodhawks to get penalties. So. No penalty there, and we will, uh, it is going to be a 44 as Maintain, oh, 34, as Maintain's going to lose two of their bodies. Um, they've cleared out the home Maintain has. They're going to have both towers and that center brick against both towers, the home. Where's that? Oh, and the god for, for Bloodhawks. Oh, and that's definitely going to be a penalty. No or penalty on Maintain. Oh, as they lose their Dorito player as well. Um, they have their snake can, and I believe the snake one. 
Bloodhawks can uh, go negative. through this real quick. Just the snake can. And that'll be all the bodies down for maintain. Towel being thrown by maintain. Bloodhawks going up 3 1 with just over four minutes. Boy. I don't know what the Bloodhawks have been doing on their offseason. You, you guys just keep doing exactly whatever it is you were doing. It looks, you guys are looking really great. And also, that, uh, that Instagram chat on that live stream was uh, rooting for Cartel to get penalties. Oh, was it Cartel? Yep. Hey, Team Not Draxus. The Draxus isn't bad. Draxus isn't bad. Um, the silver is, it, you, you know, the silver is shootable. That zap was good stuff. I'm, I come from all-star paint and um, marbleizer. Those are my two favorites from, from back in the day. You know, we were paying like 65 bucks a box, just unnecessary amounts of money, but it was outstanding paint. 10 seconds. What? Got a little pause in the ref here. Ten seconds. And we're back on. Good, good job. So three nothing for collision. Ten and a half minutes to go. Um, uh, and Grind, Grind City, City losing their snake can off the break. Snake can. You don't want this one to get away from you as they just. Oh boy. Okay. Well. They're going to take a big chunk out of the Dorito. That guy's going to get shot. They're going to go into the corner. Is it? They only have two? Yeah. Um, so Grind City already lost three of their bodies. Collision picking up on all that. Um, Collision in both snakes right now. Snake guy just taking a small reload as a fourth body drops. And I believe the last guy alive is going to be the center player for Grind City. Going to be... Shot in the back oh, multiple that times. Collision player put it on him in that center brick. Well, you know, if you don't look that way, what are you going to do? Wanted to make sure he was hit. Yes, Elizabeth, the Hawks uh, did win that last point. They are up three to one with four minutes and six seconds left in the match. Um, it Honestly, it doesn't even feel like it's 3 1. It feels further away than that. The Bloodhawks look like they are dominating pretty good. And so I was like, she's wrong. Elizabeth said the feet is jumping. Who won the Hawks? Um, so I just told her. <coughs> oh, okay, my bad. Yep. My now see now my now my co-announcer is not paying any attention. I was focused on uh, what was going on on the field. There were some players like talking. They were on opposite teams. I think they were just saying hi, giving fist bumps, and keeping the morale high. So. So APX paint was also nice. I mean, there was a time when it was nice. There was also a time when it was um, I don't know the worst. All right, so we're looking at Bloodhawks here. I honestly do love that black and red. Those black and red jerseys Their are, jerseys this are, year look sick. They, I, they look I didn't sick. love their ones from last year. These ones are pretty tight. It looks like a graffiti-type yeah. lettering for Hawks. Looks really good. Yes, Elizabeth. I'm maintaining my position on TJ. I am not, not going to flounder. So this... This Bloodhawks player calling for a check. He is out. And no penalty because he did call for a check. Yep. Don't worry, Elizabeth. I got you. I'm still on the Bloodhawks train. Brass Eagle makes the best tournament paint. <laughs> All right. So looking like five alive for grind or maintain. Sorry. Four alive for Bloodhawks. Maintain posted up in the center. Trying to keep the Hawks out of the snake for the best they can. Inklings of sunshine cre creeping through, although it's still very cold and windy. So sunshine it not doing much for anybody, really, except for stopping the rain. HK says, uh, Hawks train, choo-choo. <laughs> Grand City ma or maintain making a uh, so big move. So one of the Hawks players on the Dorito side is going to take the walk, and they're going to be down to three, and they're not in a very good position right now. Um, they just Somebody just oh. needs to get to the outside of somewhere. Maintain uh, God player taking a walk as the God is immediately move, filled by his player in the home. 
And Bloodhawks taking a walk out of the can. So just two left as they fill in that can again. Oh man, that guy just got away with one. Oh, oh, and then he's definitely shot. Yep. Bloodhawks gonna lose another player out of that can. There's only gonna be one alive. It's gonna be in the in that in that command center. Oh, that guy's out of bounds. That guy's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh, Hawks player almost falling. What did I just watch? So one on two. And now he's hit in the head. Yeah. So the Bloodhawks player finally will take the walk. And uh, Brandon commenting, making a good point. Hawks picking up former rising coach Corey Field. Corey knows how to coach those HK teams. Mm -hmm. That indeed. Corey Field was a great coach on rising. Um, so, I mean, it definitely shows he's coaching uh, the mm -hmm. Bloodhawks. They're doing great. Um, I know when... Uh, Corey was coaching Rising. They were doing phenomenal as well. Um, definitely a good coach to pick up. Uh, finding a professional paintball player to coach your divisional team sounds like it would be uh, advantageous. I would hope so. I mean, if he, <laughs> if he's a, if if you find a professional player to coach your team and you don't do well, either you're doing something wrong. Well, I think that you would just be doing something wrong. Yeah. I don't think it would be the coaching. 30 seconds. You, know, you see a lot of coaches giving out a game plan, and then you see players go out there and then not doing the game plan. And that's, um, yeah, that's 100% on the players, not the coach. Sounds seconds. familiar. I think we've had that happen a couple times. No, it never happens to us. <laughs> Always follow directions. <coughs> 10 seconds. All right, so Collision and Grind City. Collision up 4-0. If they win this point, it's a mercy. I think this is over. I think Collision absolutely mercies them on this point. Oh, as one of the Collision guys uh, takes a walk. Oh, just kidding. That's, uh, yes, one of the Collision guys is going to take a walk. One of the Grind City guys, oh, it's two. Grind City's going to lose two, three. Yeah, so Grind oh, City down boy. three players here in just the first, like, what, 15 seconds? Four players yep. now, so they only have the snake side can remaining. Oh, this is unfortunate. Collision will figure that out very, very fast. They play excellent paintball, and they will end this game. As that guy definitely got hit and on the hand. He's hit. Yep. And that's going to do it. That's going to be a mercy. So we're going to go into X ball on the. Oh, just what? Okay, I lied. There was one more player. Yep. Sorry. He's sorry. in the uh, wedge, I believe. And now he's dead. Actually, I think he was dead. He, they were shooting at a ghost. So, point approved. Collision going to win 5-0 against Grand City. The remaining 8 minutes and 46 seconds do not matter now. Uh, maintaining Bloodhawks going into... Maintaining Bloodhawks going into X-Ball with the last minute and 49 seconds of their game. And I think with the way that these games have been playing out, uh, you can almost expect this to, this might be the last point of this of this match as well. Um, Only five points and- We'll I mean, see, we've, we've seen, seen a we saw, lot saw of a overtime. 13, we saw a 13 point match earlier. Yes. Well, I'm just, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. It, it could go to overtime. Bloodhawks appears to me to be the better team. I would expect them to win um, this match and I would expect them to not win this point in incredibly fast fashion. I, I do think that seconds. this might be the last one on this one. If I'm being honest, even though I want Bloodhawks to win, I kind of want to see an overtime point. Ten seconds. We've made it this oh, far. I always want to see an overtime point. Thoughts on WCPPL compared to USXBL, Brandon asked. Ooh, Brandon, we have, we will tell you after this point. You're looking at maintain. They're going to double the home and get all five alive, putting in the god, oh, as they lose their snake tower real quick. So one of those back players needs to fill that position as one of the Bloodhawks takes a walk from the Dorito side. So 44. Four on four. Maintain still down a point. Minute and a half to go as a home player fills out to the center wedge. One of the home players, but they still left that snake tower empty. Um, I think the home player is uh, messing with his gun now. Uh, looking like he's breaking, breaking some paint. Got it back up and running. Hopefully he's shooting straight. As they lose their center wedge player. I don't know where that center wedge player is going. He's running to the wrong side of the field there. Uh, 60 seconds now remaining. Just three bodies left for maintain. They, another Bloodhawks uh, player taking a walk. 
Looks like a three on three situation. And another taking a walk for maintain. It's gonna leave two. And so. this guy in the in this in the tower. Oh man. Big hit move. Back. He's definitely and back. got hit on the way to the Dorito, so. Dorito Tower. So the god player left. Just one player left. Last alive, but 28 seconds. Um, if you're the Bloodhawks, uh, you'd like to get this kill and, and go got hit the, kill. the buzzer. They, they didn't do this last time. Last time that they had five dead and the time was running there down, we go. they didn't hit the buzzer. Right, and now they're looking at the clock. They're waiting, One and wait they're going to jog to the buzzer. Nice and easy. Check themselves real quick, and they hit it. Wait until one second. He doesn't have to do that, but yes. Wow, 4-0 Hawks, HK yep. says. Let's go. Let's go, boys. So they are, oh, okay, so they're 4-0. They much. are. So that's uh, that's going to you, you a, a number one seed. It should, at least. Well, I, There could I be another bracket it, with. Uh, else is 3-0. Oh. We, we don't, I don't have my phone on me or, or, any, or the scores in front of me or anything, but I, I don't believe that anybody else is 3-0. Or four and zero, because Bloodhawks are four and zero now. Or I'm sorry, or, or four and zero. Yeah, I, well, there's a couple sets left, but let me see if I can take a look here. Pull up the. Uh, I still think that TJ is probably in second place. Collision has played good, so nobody as of right now um, is four zero. Besides the Bloodhawks, but Vegas Brawlers are three and zero. Oh. So. Okay, so two minutes left. Um, two minutes until this next point. Quick thoughts. Uh, we got asked uh, difference or uh, thoughts between WCPBL and USXBL. I oh yo, I'm I so really sorry, really Mama. really loved the USXBL. I, um, I thought paintball fit was unbelievable. It was a great place. The vendors were outstanding. The USXBL bringing out a bunch of canopies for everybody, 10 by 20 canopies, was fantastic. Everybody had covered spaces. Um, I, I enjoy, you know, not having to play against 50 other teams in my division. Um, so I don't mind having the divisions being a little bit smaller. You know, there's only one winner no matter what. So. All right, so we've got a situation here. So currently, Bloodhawks have the number one seed. Okay. Okay. But Vegas Brawlers are 3 0. And in their last match, they go up against the Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. Oh, man. How do I pick between those guys? And they're, both their margins right now are currently very close. So if Brawlers Vegas has Brawlers. A chance at, the, at the one seed. Is what yes. You're telling me. Is so you're saying exactly what chance. exactly what I'm saying. Um, how my how my TJ is how my TJ looking? TJ is three and one, two and one right now. Two and one. So I got one more. Oh yeah, they're about to play right now. They're about to play raw yep. material right now. Exactly. So. All right, chat. I'm not even paying attention to the screen. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted. Yeah, we had a blast at USXBL. Um, you know what I wish? I wish that Texas wasn't a thousand miles away. Do you guys know it takes 16 hours to drive from Arizona to um, to Waxahachi um, with, a, fit? with a truck and a trailer attached to it? It was a nightmare. I'd never want to do that again. So that's TJ you're seeing break out as pretty standard, doubling the home, uh, getting out to the Dorito corner, then taking the Viper, but one of those home players that goes to Phil, he's going to get shot immediately. So... TJ with four live, the God, the Viper one, the Dorito corner, and the home. Um, I'm, I see one raw material taking the walk. I see two raw material taking the walk. Uh, raw material takes the snake one. I'm not 100% certain who, I, I can't see anybody. I, def I definitely know the two are dead. And TJ is gonna have control over this for sure. So TJ has lost the count. I can hear them asking where are the bodies. Um, so I I don't think that they know they don't know a where everybody is and b how many are left. Um, as we discuss that, one of the raw material guys takes the snake three, and 
misses the home. They, and I don't know, okay, then now they've definitely picked him up. Oh, I think that Dorito player just took, no, he didn't, he's still alive. All right, so TJ lost a lost. Oh, a raw material it. losing raw their snake material, eye. That is a bad. That's that's a bad death. Raw material is going to take the run. Oh my goodness, on the Dorito side and get clobbered, and TJ is going to take this back. Oh, raw material had a, had an excellent chance of winning that point. They definitely did, but right. both players left alive just ran straight to their death. Oh, I just. It, it, again, we just watched the snake player decide to not go all the way down, decided to get a little cheeky and try to get a free kill and yep. get himself away and then get and get absolutely sniped on his way to do what he should have done the first time. They tried to get one free kill early when they could get four free kills yeah. in the next 20 seconds. He could have just gone all the way down. He'd have torn off both those guys' heads and the game would have been over. Instead, they're down one. Stoned Assassins now up against the Philippines. Um... So Stone Assassin in Philippines. Last time I saw the Philippines <laughs> on the field, they were playing in a 12 and a half minute point that resulted in a 0-1 loss to Phoenix Rising and two players still alive in their bunkers. So um, not saying that Stone Assassins has a better chance. However, Stone Assassins definitely has a better chance. Philippines making a huge run to the 300 and getting caught. And getting caught. Tried to make something risky uh, off As, break. Uh, one of the stone assassins also takes the walk out of the snake. So gonna be, a, gonna be in a 44. Philippines going down the snake. Hopefully they do not pull up at the snake 50. Oh, they keep going. Keep go oh no, he's gonna stop, isn't he? Nope, he's, oh, okay. See, he's, he's stopped. Gonna catch backs though. He's gonna get at least two. Yep, that's, no way. Now stand up. Yep, cool. that's one and that's two. Yep. I was going to say, there's no way that he didn't get that. All right, so that Philippines player proving me slightly wrong by being able to stop um, stop up a little bit. Oh, game's still going on. Okay, I'm ducking him out. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, shots fired um, there on the Philippines. That was, if you guys didn't watch that match earlier, you should watch that match just so that you can never do that again. Just wanted you to know. Well, I want you to know that I know. <laughs> so back on the field, raw material, TJ. TJ up 1-0. Just over 13 minutes left in the game. Raw material definitely had a solid first point, but threw their last two bodies away by just running to their death. Not even dying at their swords, unfortunate. 20 seconds. And both teams slowly, ever so slowly, getting to the box. 10 seconds. From a two, TJ Bastards. TJ going out to the god. Doubling up the home for a second, then pushing up to the center wedge. Dorito corner and the snake can. One raw material player taking the walk out of the Dorito side. And we got the drone back up. Yay. Tell us the truth, chat. Drone is the best way to watch paintball. Yes? Yes. You don't even have to answer. It's okay. Raw material. Another player taking the walk. Three left alive as they push that inside snake. De they're, they are decently placed, raw material is, for, for some defense here. Let's see, as as TJ is going to take the 200. Oh, is he able to get a shot on that side? He did, but he missed. And TJ also fills the snake one. So I take back what I just said. TJ is in a much better position as they shoot. Oh, and there they go. TJ is going to take the 400. He's going to take uh, raw material's 400. Get in there cleanly and shoot the snake one, and that will do that. 
So TJ is going to take their second point, and they're going to do it in three total minutes of play. So that's pretty good. Um, I lost my chat window. I'm going to see if I can get it back up for you. But uh, I did I did see if WCVVL is going to add a 10-man. They tried. They tried last year. Um, we were we were signed up for it and everything, and then it got canceled um, for reasons we're not 100% certain on. We don't really know. What I can tell you is that they are still trying. Um, I wouldn't count your chickens on it. Um, if you want a 10-man, you know, might not be the worst idea to go play an NXL 10-man. We did it in Vegas. It was fun. Refing was a little bit optional out there, but, you know, it's 10-man. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, Looks like we've got the sun coming out. Finally trying to warm up the out, area a little bit out. for these last couple of matches. Definitely not guns out, though. We're still freezing. Oh, uh, BB Shady played Vegas uh, for Hydra, so we might have played against you. We were, whoa, were we Goulash? No, Cray. Cray, K-R-E. I know we played one of the Hydra teams. Wait, Eric Carrera's on uh, Philippines? Eric Carrera. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I did not know that. So you are looking at uh, the Philippines here. As they're going to have five alive. Eric Carrera is a baller for sure. Yeah, see, there's a nice little Dorito side push. I like that. Do some work, bro. Oh, as he gets absolutely snapped out of that tower. Philippines. Oh, player. here we go. Yep, Eric Carrera in the snake now, all the way on their side. Uh, just lighting, taking three bodies with him Ooh, and, and getting clipped on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ref taking a few <laughs> balls, throwing up his hand. Why, bro? Why? Get that back player out of there as he's going in for a check. Yep. Stone Assassin's down to, I think, their last body. Uh, in that little wedge. So they're calling Dorito too, so there might be two left yep. over there. He's definitely in the 200. Oh, he's definitely right in the there. 200, yep. Man, these pins are placed so, like, perfectly to oh. block all these shots. Thomas Taylor doing work. Oh, last guy. They, they've lost the kill count. So there are two left, and they do not know that. So after a little bit of waiting, the Philippines are able to dig both of those players out of there. Yeah, BB Shady, Hydra mentality. I know that there were two of you, and I can't remember which one was which and which one we played, but, you know, 10-man, it was fun. We missed out on the playoffs our team did by 13 seconds, which is um, lame, lame, lame. WCPPL needs to add a pump series. Yeah, right, Andrew. You pump players are hilarious. I mean, we love you guys, but like, you guys don't show up to anything. We get like, we get one event out of you guys like a year that we can get like 15 or so of you guys at. But I think it's a pretty easy call if, uh, you know, if you guys were able to get enough players to commit, I'm sure that they would do it. WCPPL, listen, if Mike Hinman is nothing else, he wants to grow this sport. I think, you know, he, he, he doesn't do this to, to make a million dollars because he doesn't. And, he, you know, he does this to make you guys as happy as humanly possible. So if there was a big old calling for a pump event, I guarantee you that there would be a pump event. But, you know, it's tough. Darren in the chat saying, let's go Dolphins. That's what I'm talking about, Darren. Darren knows what's up. <laughs> Darren does know what's up. What about them Dolphins? Ten seconds. Was there actually a pump division in Vegas? 
Also, that was Vegas. That's like, that's a one-off. You know that. All right, raw material. Close out of your screen here. TJ on the opposite. Oh, and a, and a one raw of the TJ material. players playing that little dead zone there. It didn't work out for them. They didn't get a kill, and they lost their snake side tower, but that was a little bit different. We haven't seen that yet before. And then he works his way into the god. So TJ definitely, I'm sorry, uh, raw material definitely with a better break. They got five alive. They got the Dorito two. They got the middle wedge, both towers. Yeah, raw material definitely up on bodies right now. It's five on four. Just over 11 minutes left. Down two points, so they need to make something happen. Plenty of game time left, though, so. Hey, uh, ZZ Ermeno, go ahead and ask, ask some questions if you don't understand some things. We are happy to explain whatever it is that you would like. We do try throughout the throughout the commentation, but it, uh, you know, it's hard to explain it all the time. And we're not professionals. We don't really know what we're doing all the time, so. If you have questions, guys, please ask. We're, we'll do our best to answer them. Both myself and Andrew, um, we do our best. We're doing this for fun. We're volunteering to do this. We enjoy doing it for you guys. Uh, watching paintball, we love the sport. And we're trying to create a uh, an enjoy an enjoyful, or how do you enjoyable. say that? Enjoy enjoyable atmosphere and stream for you guys. Kyle's a pilot, guys. School, not really his thing. He just likes to fly stuff, so. <laughs> Just kidding, Kyle. It's okay. Words are not my strong suit sometimes. I really like this raw material on the, on the one, two, and the Dorito side, but like, what are you doing with it? Why are you, you got five alive. You, you're way up on everything. Push. This uh, outside snake player should definitely just keep on going, but popping up at every knuckle. Nope, no one's listening to us. And and hearing He's what not going to do justice. Do. And you don't, you guys Popping don't up and you don't see anything. To Thomas Taylor. If you pop up in the snake and you don't see anything and you know your tape is clear, then why do you not keep on going? And this home's just waiting for him to make this mistake. Yeah. He's going to wrap yeah. up wide and catches one body but dies. So, I mean, he, he gets his one for one, but it took him too long. I mean, Raw material is going to win this game, but it, it just could have been ended earlier with shooting less paint. You know, just, just all the things. And now they're playing a two-on-one when they very well could have had a – oh, no, it's a three-on-one. I apologize. So – Although that player, boy, he certainly looks like he's got a hit on his loader. No, that's definitely rub. That could be rub. Question that's in the chat. Rub. Can a team complete forfeit – a match and not play a certain team if they choose to do so. Yes. Of course they can. So if you do not show up for your match, you do forfeit that match. BB Shady, was that a shot at us for missing our first ten man game at at, at NXL Vegas? Because <laughs> that happened to us. They started ten man about thirty minutes early and we totally missed our first game. And Zoe has a good point. They could, but why would they want to do that? Um, it's a great point because the teams that come out here um, it's not cheap to play paintball. If you were in the stream earlier, I was talking about how paintball is probably one of the most expensive sports that you can get into, sport and hobby. Without getting um, anything back. Like, ex exactly. And um, so if you're going to spend all this money to come out and play paintball, you want to make sure you're at every match. Even if there's a team you don't want to play, you want to play them because just like in any sport, there's upsets always. 100%. Um, 20 seconds. You see it in NXL, in the pro divisions. You see it here at WC, in the premier divisions, all divisions. Upsets always happen. Everybody always plays their matches. It did. Um, it is something that used to happen. Guys would skip out on their matches. We'll, we'll cover that after this game. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, you got Philippines on your right, Stone Assassins on your left. It's not looking great for the Stone Assassins as the Philippines has figured out how to not play a 12-minute point, which is great. Stone Assassins matched up, heads up at the snake one. The sun is starting to become a factor as the sun um, slowly starts to set on us. I can see a little bit of glaze, and you can see it on the stream as well, you know, that glaze over the bunkers. These guys have to look into the sun, depending on what side of the field they're playing and where they're shooting. So it will make this more difficult for them. Um, this is not the time you want to wear a clear lens. This is not the time you want to wear a clear lens. This would be a time that you'd want to wear something like a hat or 
Something that's trying to keep the sun out of your eyes. So the Philippines doubled up in the snake. <coughs> snake one and snake two. Stone assassins patiently waiting at the snake three also, on the tape. Also in the snake three and the snake two, but they have a, we have a center push coming from the stone assassins. He definitely wants to go. Oh, and he's gonna hold himself back. I would have gone. Philippines oh, losing their snake, snake one and the center brick. And a Ref good going push, to check the viper. A good push into the viper. Correction, there's just, oh, he's just, a, laying down. just laying down, doing his job. Meanwhile, Stone Assassins are gonna take the Viper uh, on on the Philippine side of the field. He is looking on the wrong side. Yeah, he's definitely looking on the wrong side. Now he's looking on the correct side. And the God the shoots God out shoots that, that center that, guy, yeah, does not so get guy, shot. He gets nothing for that. Fills out to the snake corner. Oh, go check that corner. I think he just got clipped in the head. Jeez, I saw it. And, then and now he gets shot in the face. So there's a concession. <laughs> These guys are terrible ears out here. Nobody seems to be able to hear anything like concessions. It's okay. So both matches now 2-1. Um, so real quick, uh, BB Shady, there once upon a time, there was, you know, these tournaments, they last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Depending on what division, division you are in depends on how many games you play in a day. Um, so, for instance, tomorrow, uh, our D4 line will play two matches. And then on Sunday, we will play two matches. Um, it used to be that you would play three matches on Saturday and one match on Sunday. Now, sometimes... And the reason that they changed this is because you would play those three matches and for instance, say for instance, the team goes 0 and 3. Well, they know they can't make the playoffs. So why play that fourth game, shoot all those extra cases of paint that cost, you know, 35 bucks a box um, and, you know, stay in a hotel the extra night, all the things. So that's, those things can happen. It doesn't happen very much anymore though. Oh, and Drubby Doobie says Kyle is a nerd. Oh, uh, Drewby. Uh, so, how you doing, Drew? You're looking at raw material on, this, on the bottom part of your screen. They're going to have five alive, play super, super pocket. TJ's going to take the outside and take, and they're going to get themselves into the Viper. <laughs> and my boy Drew coming up in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> Josh still killing it with the, uh, with the weather updates. Thank you, Josh as one of the raw material guys is going to take the walks. 35 bucks, 35 bucks a box in this economy is crazy. Is that is it too much or too little? I think if you ask most paintballers, they would tell you that it's an excellent price for the best paint ever made. Paint a long time ago used to be about like 60 to $80 a case. Gee. It's not fun buying that all-star and marbleizer back in the day. Not at all. Looks like four live for raw material. Just over seven and a half minutes left in the game. Only down one point against TJ. Making a big dive into the Doritos. Makes it cleanly. Still four alive for raw material. Now three alive as that raw material guy tries to break out and get into the Viper and does not get there. All right, looks like TJ moved up from that Dorito Tower up to that uh, center wedge. Still has their snake can. Raw material taking the 300 now. TJ Four, matching him. Now. TJ up in the 200. Looking to tape, trying to battle this Dorito player. Not much paint being shot right now. It's gotten very quiet. Yeah, everyone just trying to figure out where everything is. I think it's a two on three uh, for raw material as TJ loses their Dorito player. Dorito, it's okay. Now it's a so three on two. Looking good for raw material at this point. They have good positioning. They're up on bodies. 
Only down one point. Oh, but he is uh, They just lost their Dorito guy, so oh. now it's a two on two and a minor yeah, penalty. A penalty, yep. That, I think that, that I. It was on that Dorito guy. Should have been on the Dorito guy. The Dorito referee did not pull the flag. The yep. other guy did instead. I think that was the right call. So they just. So that's realized be, home I think yeah. it's a one on one. I think it's a two on one. Uh, no, they lost their Dorito guy. Uh, the last guy for TJ is up in the center, Rick. So it's a one on one now. And TJ losing the gun battle. Raw material winning that one on one. Wow. Going to tie up this point. As long as he's clean. Yes, BB Shady. The uh, is it Baby Shady? It's probably Baby Shady. I like the Goku uh, thing there on the side. Goku is tattooed on me. Um, yes, Premier and D and D three wraps up tomorrow, and then um, tomorrow D four and D five play, and then the finals for D four and D five are on Sunday, as well as on Sunday all the D six guys will play. So. Very, very busy. Lots and lots and lots of paintball. That indeed. And we're getting back to the Philippines and Stone Assassins match. Philippines up 2-1 with just under 10 minutes left in the game. Plenty of time for some good paintball. Excellent. Stone Assassins have plenty of time to come back, tie up, and switch this lead up a little bit. Um, but the Philippines are looking good right now. Yeah, yeah, finally. Yes, Stone Assassin in the Philippines haven't won any of their matches today. They're playing for fun now. Well, yeah, uh, well, mostly. That's 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 mostly true. I think at this point they're both playing to not go 0-4. Um, you never want to be 0-4. You definitely don't want to be last. Going 0-4 in a tournament is never fun. And it looks like Stone Assassin's losing a body off the break really quickly. Stone Assassin's tried to double up that the snake can, and I just don't understand. And it looks like Philippines has five alive, moving up into the center brick now. Snake can holding that lane, keeping that snake uh, insert covered in paint. Moving up to their brick, bunkering, runner, yeah, and nice gets the bunker. kill clean. Philippines able to go and get a quick stab and stay alive. That's always fun to see. What a move. And there's a player that's hit at the snake can, and he didn't want to leave his oh, bunker, penalty. so a penalty. penalties being thrown. That should be all five. That's why I say, when you get hit, just leave your bunker. It's not that hard to just run away from your bunker and off the field when you get shot. I mean, it sounds so easy in, in theory, and yet we've seen, I don't know, 80 flags get thrown today. I think it's because some of these players, they get hit while they're in their bunker, they wave their hand, and they wait till they their bunker stops getting shot to try and move. But staying in your <laughs> bunker as a ref is having to yell at you and then run across the field to come get you out, that will draw a penalty. Definitely can. Yeah. And that's exactly what just happened right there. 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. So a closer game than we thought here. 2-2, two, two. TJ, raw material, 5-18 to go. You're looking at raw material. They are gonna lose one on the rip. Oh, and TJ's doing exactly what you're supposed to do. Just go, buddy, just keep swimming. Just keep. You can't see it on your screen, but TJ has a snake player crawling all the way to okay, the yeah. opposite so side of the field right now. Keep watching your stream, guys, because you're just going to see a whole bunch of guys with pink on them leaving the field. And there's one. He does know where he is now, but he is going to pop over. I don't think he does because nobody he looked. Shot, and he shot the tower in the pack. Yep. And... The can is now sh is going to get shot. And yep. there's can another is one. shot. And then, yeah, see, I told you guys. See? All the bodies. All the bye bodies. Bye. That's a four pack.
Is that Arietta? I think it is. Yes, it is. Number 44. Hey, chat, do me a favor. Is Arietta the same Arietta from Enemy of the State? Gonna need some clue in here. Uh, ZZ Armo, Armeno, who is in the snake? That is who we were just talking about. I believe that is uh, Mr. Arietta. Um, if it's who I think that it is, he is a killer. Um, not somebody you want to toy with. Definitely somebody you want to keep an eye on. And uh, Raw Material decided to do none of that and instead uh, had all their bodies walk out the field. I don't know if he's Spanish, but Arrieta. Yes, I do have a rolling R. I can say it correctly, although I don't, <laughs> think, that's how, I don't think that's how you say oh it. Oh, my gosh. I cannot roll my R's. I told you, Chad. I, I went to school. This guy flies planes. This is the difference. What happens? One minute. All right, chat's telling me I'm wrong. Just because you make him sound, sound like, like an, an anime, anime character. character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Arietta just sounds like a normal. Okay, I get, yeah, yeah, I guess I can kind of see what you're talking about. Most of Stone's Assassin guys are D4. I wonder why they decided to play Premiere. Um. You know what? That's a good question. You know, so we have this, uh, we, we, we debate that very topic. Uh, quite often, basically before and after most all events. Yeah. One hour and 45 minutes till sunset. Good news, Josh. We're going to finish before then. 20 seconds. So here's the deal chat. If I mean, I hope so. Us. We have. So TJ and Raw Material, Stone Assassins in Philippines. Ten after seconds. this set, we got one set left. Just one. Overly ambitious. No. Baby, we're definitely going to finish in the next hour, 45. Uh, Narcos has green span for coaching. Stone Assassin's getting into the Snake 3 here. This is where they want to be, although they do have an uh, enemy in the, in the Viper 2 who looks like he might have just had something go happen with his gun, but he has changed directions. Meanwhile, uh, one of the Philippines players takes a very, very wide berth out of the Snake 1, gets himself clean, but... If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, the Philippines oh, only have four time. alive. Uh, Stone Assassin's losing their Snake Can right now, dropping another body, so... Not looking good for Stone Assassins. They do push up in the snake now, all the way to Snake 50. Is he going to pop up inside? He feels some heat, so I don't think he's going to. Look at this! Look at this Philippines player playing literally nowhere. And here comes the rundown. Yep, clean rundown. On both players, well, stays alive and hits the buzzer. Oh, the confidence. Wow. That guy played about 20 seconds uh, shooting his gun behind zero bunkers, just just completely out in the open. Decided that wasn't good enough. He's going to go ahead and take care of it himself. Go ahead and runs down both snake players and hits the buzzer. Gets the point approved, and that is how you do that. Go ahead. Seconds. Darren said, that's pimple right there. That indeed, I mean, that run seconds. through was insane. Made it through, bunkered two players clean and hit the buzzer. Run and gun, baby. Run and gun. 10 seconds. All right, raw material, TJ. TJ on your right, raw material on your left. 
Wow, that sun is beaming. We've been waiting for this all day. All right, TJ, five alive on the box. Ref running in, calling out the god. And one body dropping for both teams. Yep. So four alive on either side. And finally, we have a little bit of a Dorito push as TJ gets into the 400. Elizabeth said, hey, thanks for being here all day announcing these games. Good job, even though Andrew isn't on board the Bloodhawks train yet. Good job. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. I think mostly it's just jealousy, Elizabeth. I just wish HK loved us as much as they love the Bloodhawks. Another player for TJ taking the walk. Guns are starting to get a little bit more quiet. Not as much movement. Looks like TJ only has three alive now. So that guy in the 400 doing basically nothing with it. I, d I just don't know why he wouldn't be trying to take their 400. Raw material losing their snake can. Tactical retreat there from TJ. Going to take the home again. So they identify all the bodies. because Oh, TJ did lose their, their Dorito players. So that 400 player did get shot. Oh, they did. Yeah. And it looks like, so it's probably, so it's a two-on-two, two, I think. It looks like uh, Raw Material has a 400 and the center brick. Okay. I don't think there's anybody else over there. Although they and did pull out, TJ. They did just pull out the, the Dorito players. So they do yep. still have the center brick. Um, it's a two-on-two. Two. TJ hasn't figured it out, though. They're going to talk about it. Oh, oh that no. Was a really, really terrible play. Smaller bumps, guys. Smaller bumps. That was never going to work. TJ did figure out that kill count, and they are going to walk this one in quite slowly as they have nothing to hurry about. If you're raw material, you need to hit the buzzer. You need to, you need to concede the, the point. Concede the point. Yep. And there's a the concession. There we go, concession by Raw Material. Now TJ up 4-2 to two with just under two minutes left to go. Boy, does that look good. No audio. Can you hear us? Sorry about that. We had a mute. We were talking about food because oh, yeah. uh, we've been sitting in this booth since 7 a.m. Um, haven't eaten really at all. Um, so definitely hungry. Saw some. Saw somebody walk by with a delicious-looking Polish dog, I believe. Fully loaded. Oh, that looks like a juicy. huge chunk and get blown out from both. Sides. Oh no, they made that was see. I like this that inside out route to take the 300 on the on the go. He went straight up the gut and then went from the wedge out to the 300 and made it there clean. That was nice. Stone is stone, stone assassins now rounding the snake corner into the snake one, filling the snake corner from the god. Philippines doubling up the god. Um, now one of them filling out to the snake corner. Yeah, and someone should tell them that they need to get into the snake. And now the Philippines are matching in the snake. So Philippines um, at the snake two, but some assassins get up into the snake three. As well, uh, the Philippines have that 400 Dorito, which looked like maybe the snake player was trying to get a cheap kill out of, but I don't think that he can see him past all those bricks, or uh, pins, rather.
All right, so the uh, Philippines with uh, four alive still. All the way up in the 400, the Dorito Tower, the Snake Corner, and the Snake 2. Stone Assassins all the way in the Snake 50. Trying to battle on this tape, trying to catch a body. Stone Assassins just locked down that tape, so when this Snake 1 takes a peek here, I think in just a minute, he's going to blow his head off. Oh, and he gave up the snake. He gave up the, the tape. Just stay there, buddy. Oh, I guess he can't see him past this, past this snake wedge. So Philippines still with the Dorito 400 and the Dorito Tower. Uh, Stone Assassins. Up in the oh. snake can, still in the snake 50. Yeah, and if you're the stoned assassins, I mean, the, the push is clearly in the middle. Oh, and they just got the kill out of the 400. Yeah, someone from the stoned assassins needs to get down on the inside middle of the field. Because this snake player is fairly locked and up. And oh, another kill over Philippines here. lose their Dorito Tower. They're going to get a, a Dorito push instead as that Dorito player slides into their 400. He's going to try to take the cross shot, and he... Here comes the run does down. shoot the snake, too. Shot the snake. And it looks like all bodies are dead except for the snake corner. Um, oh. And a great trade. Yeah. Darren says, what the hell was the snake skin blue paintballs we used? Oh. Oh, back in the day. Snake skin blue. Hmm. What's blue? The the uh the Vulcan um their their graffiti. That's oh, yeah. that's blue. It's got some it's not snake skin. It's like spirals. It's like weird spiral-ish yep. kind of thing. Maybe that's the one he's talking about. Well, um, Stone Assassin's actually uh, taking that point. Um, so I believe it's 4-2 to now in favor of the Philippines still. TJ also up 4-2 here with just under two minutes to go. Minute, 40, uh, minute 59 left in this match. If you're TJ, I don't know, you're, I think you're putting guns up. You're putting five guns up, and you're just going to let these guys come to you and, and just try to end this thing. 30 seconds. I couldn't agree more. Run this clock out, make it easy. Because TJ's not, they're, they're pretty much locked in for a playoff spot. They cannot get the one. Um, you know, they don't, they, don't have, they don't have a whole lot to gain by, by going ham here. Yeah, sorry, Andrew. The Bloodhawks have uh, that one or two seed lo pretty much locked in. Oh, I didn't tell you. My second team is actually um, LVP. Vegas, uh, uh, Vegas Brawlers? Or? Is the Vegas Brawlers, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Raw material going to get spread out pretty nicely, but they do lose one of their uh, snake players. They're trying to get out to the corner, but they do take the 200, both towers in the home. TJ losing their god player soon after the break. No penalty assessed there. Again, though, I'm staying right there if I'm if I'm TJ. I'm not, I'm, I don't even know if I'm splitting the home. TJ making a fill into the Viper one, the inside Raw material snake. takes a long way out to the snake corner and the center brick. Um, Both moves clean. TJ gets into the Viper one, so they are going to push a little bit. And they're going to split that home as well. That home's going to get out of there and take the snake side tower instead. Looked like he was, the Viper player was calling for that, asking him for a little, you know, just overshadowing. Oh, I don't love Big this move from the Viper out to the snake he one. Makes it clean. Make no it. gun was on him at the time. Now he just needs to stay right there. Don't get cheeky. You don't need to pop the top. Crush that guy that's going to run down. Yeah. yeah. I was Crush just about to say it's a four on four, but and now it's they a. just lost two of their players real quick. So it's a 42, yeah? Yep, 42. So four on two in favor of TJ, who are up four to two with 42 seconds left. All those things. Now, however, if you're TJ, you got 30 seconds left. You're up two bodies. If you know where they're at and you know you're up two bodies, oh, and another one just takes the rock. Someone needs to scream down this field and try to get another point real quick. 
and, yes. and try to get that, that fifth point. And it looks like the snake player, oh, he got he went on his belly, so I don't think he's going to make it. He's got 15 seconds to get up on his feet and hit the buzzer. Not going to happen. 10 seconds. This is where uh, clock awareness needs to be. Five. Yep. Four. And three. game time finished. Game time so they just finished. needed another two seconds, game but they didn't get it. That's okay. No points. Game finished. One minute. So TJ's going to take the win, which is ultimately what they want. They will be making it into Sunday. So they will be, go I'm sorry, uh, Saturday for, for the Premier guys. So they will be on their way to the playoffs. So my number one, or my, my seed lives on to see if they can win this thing. That's my overall pick. And by the way, guys, you will not be seeing me and Kyle on the stream tomorrow or Sunday. We have games to play, so I don't exactly know who you're going to get tomorrow. It will not be us. So if you liked what we did, um, you know, send a little shout out, I, you know, do whatever you got to do. If you'd like to uh, know what our, my, I don't know, my Instagram is, it's goggle underscore god underscore 22. I got some cool paintball stuff on there, some cool videos and whatnot. Um, you can follow Pole Position PB. That's our little team page. So you can learn a little bit more about us. And here we go. Stone Assassins 2, Philippines 4. Three and a half minutes to go in this game. Two wide bodies and around the corner with the Dorito player for the Philippines as he makes it in clean. Five alive, staying clean for the Philippines as Stone Assassins going to lose their snake corner. They're doubling up again this snake side tower. This, this not this not very enormous bunker they're putting two or one very very large man and another smaller person in next to it uh, and they're apparently are gonna chill there as the sun comes blazing out and this is the time guys where you, you can watch for shadows um, you can definitely play some shadows understand where people are looking and where they're gonna go and what they're gonna do before they do it because these shadows are getting very very long so one of the Philippines players fills over into the god Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Still five alive for the Philippines. As Stone Assassins are still doubled up in this snake tower. Their center player gets ripped alive. I mean, how on earth are they still playing those two bunkers? Somebody has to move. Honestly, I have no clue. I mean, I and there we go. They break out to the snake long. corner. Yeah, I mean, that's better. Philippines getting into the snake too. ZZ, we are on Arizona pole position. We both me and Andrew are on the D4 line. Yeah. As that tower player finally dies, as frankly he deserved to. And a towel for Stone Assassins is going to make it 5 2. With a minute 53 left for the Philippines, so that's pretty much going to lock that one up. Philippines just had to play a little bit of smart paintball for a little bit of time. Um, shouldn't be the world's toughest task. This should be okay. And we've had a lot of concessions today, a lot of flags. A lot of flags, but they started. I, I think they were. I think they were a little, a little hungry there in the beginning. Then they got uh, they, their appetite might have been a little bit filled towards there the uh, latter part of the day as definitely less flags are flying. I think it was either that or just now teams are playing a little bit smarter. Um, I mean, being the oh. season opener, um, it could be a lot of these teams or players haven't played an event since E4 last year. Yep. Um, so getting that sensitivity as a paintball player to be sensitive to hits and calling yourself out, um, that could have gone away um, over those couple months of break. I mean, I guess. You're a lot more positive than us, than me anyway. Andrew, Andrew. said, hopefully uh, we see anxiety and pole position in the finals again on Sunday. Yeah, that would we be love nice. playing you guys. <coughs> We'd love to see our anxiety friends. Hopefully tomorrow the weather is a little bit warmer, less windy, uh, less rainy. Oh, is that Jaden Johnston from, uh, I think he's on Purple Ballers now? Yeah. That's AZ right. Rep. Was on Phoenix Rising. He was. 
Moved to both Purple Ballers. Of, both of the of the Johnstons were. Yep. So Stone Assassins in Philippines here. Philippines just um, not doing anything that I suggested as they try to take the snake and immediately get themselves called out of it. So, okay. Josh Braid says, see you on the field, Andrew. Yeah, you will. Schedule's already out, it's easy. ZZ Romano said, when do schedules come out for tomorrow? Um, they are already out. Yes. Um, so you can look up all the divisions that play tomorrow. You can see their schedule. Um, and, and a big old run through coming here from Stone Assassins. Oh, yes. One, two going. Oh, and he, really? I think he, I think he made it clean. Well, that wow. was pretty impressive. That Stone Assassins player. Ref is definitely going to take his time checking with that. with anger. That guy definitely wanted all that sauce. Taking a look at him pretty hard. But he gets a thumbs up. Thumbs up, point approved. Wow, what a run through. So a minute, three seconds left remaining in actually both of these matches. That was X-Ball. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just going to stay right here. <laughs> it's a long day, guys. We're almost done. And we have one, one set more after this. One set this. more. One set more. Um, yeah, so we're going to see this matchup again. I Before this point, I said, you know, Philippines just need to play some smart paintball for about a minute and a half. They went ahead and played uh, about 30 seconds of uh, not very smart paintball, and it cost them the game. That's going to put two more. Um, I'm sorry. That's going to bring Stone Assassins uh, one point closer and two point behind. It not impossible for them to get two more points here in the next minute, three seconds. We saw a lot of very, very fast points, especially in the beginning of yesterday, uh, this morning. It's definitely cooled down a little bit. The sun is definitely going to be a little bit more difficult, but, I mean, Stone Assassins really have zero choice but to uh, send it and see if they can peel off two quick wins in a minute. In I mean, they just seconds. did it. I mean, doesn't mean they – I think they could do it again. Why not? Um, ZZ, you can check schedules on pbleagues.com. Been cheating off the gym for two years. You guys haven't noticed shit. Twenty seconds. <coughs> Time out. Timeout being taken. Oh come on, guys. Well, add time. a little bit of break, extra break time. I think that was for the Philippines. They only have three bodies on the box right now. I think they're waiting on uh, two more to come out. So the fourth one walks out. Oh, who do I think the final will be for D4? I mean, you know, we're a little bit biased. And Since we're playing D4. 49 teams. So, it, it's... Oh, who knows, who knows, who knows. I mean, I think I know. But who, hey, jo who do you think, Josh? I think that's the most important thing. Who do you think is going to be in the finals for D4? Thirty seconds. Oh, he said, who do you think will be the final four for D4? Hmm. Not this team from Arizona? Oh. Wow. Okay. Katie, I thought we were friends, dog. You know, there's actually a lot of teams from Arizona playing uh, in D4 now. Yeah, and we all have to play each other in the, in the prelims, so. So let's see if Stone Assassins can do this again as they... A little bit of a center push, and he definitely wants to go, and he is going. He's going to take their brick, and he's going to take a hard fall and get shot on his way in. So that's going to hurt, but he's going to take one with him, one of the Philippines players. So it's, I think it's a 44. I think he – did he just pop that brick? No way. Falling into it? I don't see, I don't see it rapidly deflating. Okay, I hope not. I mean, that would be that would not be very good. 
Yeah, the, 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 the match fixing is definitely in, Shady. Check my app, uh, there's been just so much max match fixing in the last year and a half, crazy. All right, so 10 seconds left. Stone Assassins really need to do something. I mean, I don't think they're gonna get to the buzzer in this time. Um, so at this point, I think they're just nope. gonna Three seconds time run out. to, yeah. I mean, that was an extremely uphill task for those Stone Assassins. Yeah. Probably one of their better matches, I guess, of the day that they played, since they are 0-4 anyway, but they took, I, I Okay. Hopefully they learn from this. Um, hopefully it doesn't get them too discouraged that they're able to pull themselves back, get themselves, you know, the, I, I, they, they should know what they need to practice now. So Josh says he thinks Exodus, Dark Horse, AZ Pole, and Shooters. Hey, thank you. Who do you I play? would hope we're in the Final Four. Who do you play for, Josh? Three minutes. Guys, good news. We have arrived at the final match of the day. It's going to be Vegas Brawlers, my my team Vegas Brawlers against my other team, the Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins, and then on the other side, we're going to have Regime Regime rather and Phoenix Rising. Um very excited for this one. I don't really know how to root for though, the Brawlers or the Dolphins. Now here my my heart no, 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 my head, my head tells me that the Brawlers are going to win. Uh, I think they're the better team. My heart, you know, really likes them Dolphins. So, how you feeling, Kyle? What do you think? Ah, uh, dude, I'm rooting for the Dolphins in this one. Hey Brawlers, Brawlers, they ball. Hey I got to say, they definitely ball. But those mighty Dolphins that mighty putting Dolphins. up a, a mighty fight, would you say, huh, Andrew? They're, they're boy, <laughs> so mighty. Yeah, Kendrick knows. Dolphins definitely a crowd favorite. Not as much of a crowd favorite as the Bloodhawks, but maybe, I don't know, probably second best. All right, Brawlers on the left. Dolphins on the right. So and one of the Dolphins taking a walk out of the center. Unfortunate. Well, I can hear all the communication from Brawlers. They are just, they are right on point. They're into the 200 of the Dorito as well. The the Snake Tower, they've doubled the home, and now they're splitting the home at the exact same time. Oh, running ref. They had two refs asking for that for that guy to be checked. And so apparently he's, he's clean. Wow. So 45 in favor of Brawlers. Yes, this is the Premier Division, guys. Brawlers losing their snake can Brawlers, yep. <coughs> as they get into the snake three. Popping up looking inside. Uh, one of the dolphins also getting taken out of that same bunker on the other side of the field. And it looks like Brawlers is going to keep on going on the snake. Don't going, stop at the snake three. Do not stop. Going, Just keep buddy. going. He look. He pops up. Doesn't really see anybody. Um, he should have kept might going. Be better. Oh, well, he's, okay. he's going to wrap and find the home out wide. Um, doesn't catch him. You've got to be. Oh, boy. Well, at least he's going to go now. And oh, he does now he's dead. Out of the home. Great communication coming from the brawler side of the yeah. field. Yeah, I can brawlers. hear them loud and clear. I'm not sure if you can hear them on the mic either. Oh, yeah. oh if you, yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear it. So that, that, that brawler's player, he, he's looking into the sun. That's why he's having a hard time. He doesn't quite see that Dorito player. He finally does. He shoots him. Calling his guys off, and Vegas is going to take this 1-0 oh, in a pretty quick minute and 50-second game. And on the other side, Regime, Phoenix Rising. All right, who do you got for this one? Um, Regime. I got Phoenix Rising. Perfect. <laughs> after that, uh, after, uh, they, after they survived a 11-and-a-half-minute, almost 12-minute point against... The Philippines. I'm happy. Um, for with this. only two bodies alive, I think that Phoenix Rising has some good defense. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I will give you that. <coughs> Thirty seconds. But man, I think it's really all going to matter on the breakout. Um, if they can get five bodies alive for Phoenix Rising to their bunkers and guns up, then uh, I think they'll be in a good spot. 
Um, regime definitely likes to push the snake. Um, so we will see that. Yes. Ten seconds. Yes, we will see that um, depending on who the starters, for, starters are for Rising. We will also see that from Rising as they have two or three snake players that can definitely go. And it looks like they're going god off break for Rising. The snake can. They do shoot a uh, Regime player off the break. So Regime up. Or, I'm sorry, down one body. Regime does get into the Viper, though. Uh, they match a little bit going into the God for Phoenix Rising, but they do get into the 200 um, Doritos, Rising does. Rising player being checked in the wedge right now by a ref. That ref as long as, uh, oh, not sure. flag flying on Rising. Flag flying so on Rising, that's gonna hurt. Taking out the Snake one and the home leaving just their Dorito 200, their uh, center wedge, and their snake can. Not the center wedge, the, um, well, okay. Not the center brick, yeah, the wedge. Meanwhile, Regime has the brick. A little tactical retreat for Regime, yeah, going from that Viper, that inside Viper snake to the God Bunker. Looks like a possible three on three yeah. situation right now. Um, regime pushing up to Phoenix Rising side of the brick. Up in the center, trying to kill that Dorito player. Can't seem to get a shot on him. If that Dorito player looks inside, he's gonna have his head taken off. We'll see if he yeah, as you can see on your screen right now, he's just staying nice and tight up in that Dorito, trying to stay alive. Regime uh, filling out from the Dorito tower to the home bunker, losing a pod on the way there. Also in the Snake 50, wrapping. I don't know if Regime knows the game plan. Somebody should tell him. Yeah, the game plan is crawl all crawl, the way. Crawl. Just keep swimming. He's gonna, he feels a little oh, bit of heat, so he pulls up short. Keep swimming. They know he's there, so they're gonna look across. Uh, Dorito Tower might have gotten clipped on the arm. No ref calling him out yet, so he must be clean. He's clean, but he now he has to play like this super far outside of this bunker. He definitely has to get out of here. And he takes a little. I don't love that. Move into the baby. I don't like that either. It's not a bunker you want to be in. And he goes back to the snake or That's Dorito a better corner. Place to be. As he gets shot on his way there. Yep. Unfortunate. Regime's going to fill into the snake one as well. So just two bodies left for rising. Oh, what is happening? Playing a big dead zone. Yep. Right here for Regime out in the open. This snake player. And for going for the rundown in the gods. Still. Towel being thrown by Phoenix Rising. Regime will go up 1-0 with 12 minutes left. One minute. God fears me. Happy that Regime took that point. 30 seconds. 13 minutes left in this set. Last sets of the day. Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins with their amazing uniforms and their sick, seconds. just ripped dolphin. And Vegas Brawlers who, you know, nothing incredibly fancy except for a whole lot of winning. 10 seconds. Brawlers take the 200 on the rip, get their clean, double up the home, take the snake tower. One dolphin player taking the walk. Brawlers now moving up to that center wedge, looking Dorito side. Nothing really, nothing much to look at over there. And a penalty. 
penalty on the Dolphins. That's going to take oh, uh, three boy. out. Brawlers are going to recognize that pretty much immediately. And yeah. Very quick towel. That was a 59 second point. Yeah, now Brawlers up 2 0. Making that look uh, real easy. <coughs> Which is going to put Rising and Regime back on the field very, very quickly. Basically putting them almost immediately in X ball. So we'll see if they're ready. Jaden has Pull or Omega taking D4. That would be nice. Oh. No, Oscar, no pump play this event. I don't think that there's ever been a uh, pump division for WC. Um, not in the last couple of years, that's for sure. I think that would be really interesting and fun to watch. Honestly, I completely disagree. Well, I just don't know if you'd be able to get enough <laughs> players out. <laughs> so you're watching Regime there at the bottom of your screen. They're going to double up the home. They're going to double up that weird. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, now they're going to uh, take themselves out of the double on the home. Oh, and that guy. Yeah, see, you can't double that bunker. People need to stop doing that. Guys, if you're playing tomorrow, you're playing D5, you're playing D6. Please don't double that snake can tower thing. It doesn't, it's, it hasn't worked for anybody. So four alive for Regime. I see a whole lot of players walking off for Rising. One, two, three players yeah. for Rising. Unfortunate. And another one taking a walk for Rising and another towel, another quick towel. So it looks like both of these matches, two quick towels, two quick points. Looking a little lopsided to start. Back to Brawlers and Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. Seriously, guys, look at those jerseys. Look at that dolphin. Dolphin is ripped. Yeah. Pump is where the real killers are. I, You know what? I actually don't disagree with that because a lot of pump players are like old guys that like used to be incredibly good. Oh, the dolphin's loving the drone shot. Very nice guys, yeah. Um, yeah, I will say, I mean, there's, there are some incredibly skilled pump players. That's that is, There's no doubt about that. Not take that away. I just don't think it's very fun to watch. Nice move up to the snake can and then immediately into the Viper yeah. for uh, Mighty Dolphins. Yeah, running uh, catching a body. But clean, but they did catch one body at the, at the snake corner there. Playing the inside of that Viper. To no avail. I think he was trying to get a shot on that home. It's tough. And it looks like uh, Brawlers might going. have a body in the up. snake. Yep, get him out of there. And yep. the yep. Dolphins player. Fortunately losing that gunfight. Jeez, Unfortunately. You know I wonder what this Brawlers player should do on the outside of the snake. Crawl all the way, baby. Oh, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I would do that. LA Hitman, oh, very cool. I know them. All right, so a little tactical retreat for the Dolphins all the way back to the home. So that snake, that they're all the way in their snake now. He's gonna shoot the one out of the 400. Now he's gonna try to wrap around here. The home decided to look a different direction, not a smart plan. Looks like they only have two alive. And, and the alive. home dies, and, and Doritos another extra soon to follow. And he... It's a 1v4, yep. and they lose their last player. Another towel. So another towel. Brawlers up 3-0 in under four, in just under four minutes of total play. Um, they seemed to have gotten their their stuff together. Regime also looking like they have their stuff together. Up 2-0 on rising. 11:18 left to go on the game clock. 
Ooh, Pirates taking D5. Pirates are good. We played them last year. Uh, Rufino saying, come on, Dolphins. Come on, get Mr. it back. Rufino. If you guys don't know, Rufino, one of the one of the dopest flex collections of all time. And, you know, for the small price of what? What is it, Rufino? A thousand bucks? You can get yourself a mystery box? It was 1500 Was it 1500? 1500 I saw it with the inside of it, I though. I saw it, yeah. It was worth 1500 bucks. Oh, yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 10 seconds. If you're a flex enthusiast, then that was definitely worth it. Or hit up DOS Paintball. They have build a flex. You can just build anything you want. Game on. So Phoenix Rising going to double the home. They're going to take both the towers, and they're going to take the snake corner. That snake corner, they're definitely going to want to... Bro talked down on pump because he's skillless. Oof. So it's a rough sentence there, shysty shooter. Big fill out to the Dorito corner for Phoenix Rising from the home. Uh, one of regime players taking a walk, two, two players, players taking a walk. So Phoenix Rising might have figured something out right now, just see if they can close out this point while being up two bodies. Need to make sure they don't make any dumb mistakes. Um, big fill from the corner into the snake two. God, I assume, wants to go and try and help back him up in the snake one. Um, it looks like that's what he's about to go do, and yes, he does. So five still alive for Rising. This Phoenix Rising player, I believe that's... Uh, actually, that's... I don't know who that is, but um, he needs to just... Crawl all the way, baby. Get down on your belly and crawl. Uh, this is going to be, that's not Q. Who is that? And Snake Player kills the home. Guy runs down the last guy. And Phoenix Rising with, uh, I believe, five alive at the end of this point. So Rising not going to go quietly in this set. No, sir. Take one back. They didn't like going down 2-0 that quick. They're going to be. They're going to have under nine and a half minutes and only down a point. So everything definitely within their grasp. Point. Nothing to worry about. Point approved. Well, good news. We have less than. We only have one less than minute. nine and a half minutes left. So 11. the longest point we can have 11. with Rising. No, with Rising. Oh, with Rising, yeah. Is a nine and a half minute point now. If Rising has a nine and a half minute point, I'm never commentating the, on them again. It's just absurd. An 11 and a half to 12 minute point, and then if they do a nine and a half minute point, that would be insane. I mean, I would have to give props to them for their defensive play, though. I, um, I feel like Brawlers might know their standing, and they might be going for a first place here, and they're they're – I, they probably know their point differential and are looking to oh, yes. clean sweep these Dolphins. Dolphins have been playing really good all day, though. I know that I've been especially up on them because of their amazing jerseys and whatnot, and they're super cool guys, as it turns out. Um, but the Brawlers do look like they've turned on a different gear. Either the, the Brawlers have turned on a different gear, or the, the Dolphins have turned off their gears. Not 100% sure. Let's see if they can pull it back together on this one. All right, so if uh, the Brawlers mercy the Dolphins... Their point margin will be the same as the Bloodhawks, and both teams will be 4-0. Oh. So that would get uh, pretty interesting. As Brawler's going to lose one out of their snake side corner. They're still doubling the home. I don't see anybody walking out for the Dolphins. So still doubled up at home. Now Brawlers losing there. their snake can. Going out to the god, getting shot on the way there. And I think their home just got shot as well. Yep, leaving only one yeah. body alive for Brawlers. Just gotta and go. that just towel this. No, I don't think they should towel. I think it should burn off as much clock as possible. I mean, yeah, it's just like it's a 41. It's and they have two guys about to go run him down, maybe three. Um, 
Well, I think Here comes the bunker, and there it is. Just under 10 minutes left, see if the point is good. And thumbs up, point approved. So Dolphins are on the board. So we have matching three ones. One minute. Oh, I'm sorry, it's two one. Two to one regime, 920. Seconds. X-Ball 211 says, plenty of time, bring it back Dolphins. Hey, they certainly can. I mean, like you plenty said, plenty of time. Of time. Plenty of time. 20 seconds. All right, so Phoenix Rising on the top of your screen, Regime on the bottom, five live for Regime, uh, four, one, one body taking a walk for Phoenix Rising. So five on four situation. I think Regime just needs to get in the snake. Uh, I've heard it's helpful to get in there. Another body taking the walk, and a third body taking the walk for Phoenix Rising, and a, another towel by Phoenix Rising. So now matching three ones. Now it's matching three ones. Regime up three to one. Vegas Brawlers up three to one. Seconds. Looks so like one of the Phoenix Rising players arguing with the yeah, uh, head ref. I love the, the call, and they they might have actually had a case. I didn't I didn't catch all the words in it, but I, I caught seconds. some of the hand signals and whatnot. And it, it Phoenix Rising might have had a case there. They might have been pulled um, on a hit that didn't exist or something of that nature. But either way, you got to deal with it. Move on. Yep, refs have final say at the end of the day. You're looking at the, the, the mighty dolphins here at the bottom of your screen as one of the brawlers takes a walk from up top. So five alive, still alive for the dolphins. Ryan says, all the actual players who live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana have never seen a dolphin that far up in the Mississippi, but are definitely rooting for the dolphins here. I think that was like one of the first things that I said when I when I saw these guys. I was like, are there dolphins in Louisiana? I'm not 100% sure. Kyle didn't even know where Baton Rouge was. so I had no clue. <laughs> And my apologies if you take that, take any offense to that, but you know what? I've just never heard of Baton Rouge in my life. I mean, it's a, definitely a city you should visit. Dolphins on the bottom of your screen here, still five alive. Just under nine minutes left to go. And as I said that, their Dorito Corner players taking a walk. Well, Ryan says there are, in fact, dolphins. Okay. Dolphins get into the Viper. The Brawlers try to go up to that center wedge, but get shot out on the way there. Oh, and they're falling off. The Dolphins, they're going to they're gonna end up winning. They should win this point before too long. 
and should have plenty of time to make this even. I believe it's a uh, four on two, four on two yeah. in favor of the Dolphins. Brawlers have the snake corner and the Dorito Tower. A Dorito player definitely should make a big bump and push that side of the field. Dolphins getting into the snake, needing to just crawl all the way down. They need to just keep going. You know, we've mentioned that before. Shockingly, that guy's not going to take the advice. As one of the refs does call, yeah, for one of the brawlers to get out anyway. So last body alive for the snake corner and... Dylan Boyum over here uh, giving you some knowledge, Kyle. Baton Rouge is where LSU is located. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they also have uh, LSU Kevin Gates and plenty of culture. Standout player for the Hurricanes, Jacob Does he Seawright right? lives in Baton Rouge. Oh, well, I guess they are the New Orleans Hur yeah, Hurricanes. I really like the Hurricanes. I was really rooting for them to win uh, on this on that last one. That was, I, I was actually, I brought my girlfriend to NXL Vegas and we were walking right past the Hurricanes camp and I said to her, I said, I know you know who Dynasty is. I know you don't know who anybody else is, but if there's a team that can beat Dynasty, it's these guys right here. So to be able to see them in the finals was great. I really did think that they had one hand on that trophy. They're just a little bit of inexperience compared to Dynasty's been there, done that eight million times. But I also in an unbelievable the Hurricanes can win a tournament. This an week. unfortunate injury that their uh, their Dorito corner player had um, right out the gate, and that overtime point that was so unfortunate to see that. Yeah. Yeah, it, lot, lot, plenty of injuries in Vegas, but, uh, you know, well, you got rosters more than five. It's just horrible to have an injury in overtime on the field. But, anyways, back to regime in uh, Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising on the Phoenix Rising, five alive on the bottom of your screen. Doubling up the home. Snake can, the God, and the 100. I believe it's uh, five alive on both sides. Uh, one of the Dorito refs calling for a check, maybe. Yeah, calling for a check on one of the rising players on the in the God Bunker. The rising player is going to take a chunk into the 400 and get absolutely blasted. That's not going to work. Uh, the hey. God player called clean, so but the Dorito player does take the walk. So four alive for rising. Five still alive for Regime. Actually, I may be mistaken. I think it's only four alive for Regime. Oh, nope. No, there you go. I see the home player now. Seven minute mark in this match. Three to one regime. They have the better position. Oh, hard fall into hard the. Nobody <laughs> does make it. They have better position and they are up bodies. Um, we will see if regime can bleed this clock. As one of the rising players does take the walk from the snake can and. Rising goes and tries to play the 300 over there. He does get into the 300, or the 400, rather. Gets a kill at, out of the uh, center cool wedge well. for Regime, so it's uh, back to three on three now. You can see a ref uh, there on your screen on the Dorito side just taking a knee in the middle of the field. Six minutes left. A 
like I said, if there's one thing that Phoenix Rising does well is just a defensive point, which is not what they're wanting to do right now. But uh, with low body situations and not sure exactly where the bodies are at, they're trying to figure out how to attack this. Josh says 30 minutes to sunset. Yep, the sun's getting real low right now. <laughs> We're going to make it, Josh. I told you. Barely, but we'll make it. Phoenix Rising Dorito player taking a walk yeah. now. So left uh, two bodies alive only. Um, the inside snake, Viper One, and the center brick. Three bodies still alive for Regime. Up 3-1. Crossing the five minute mark. Regime. They definitely have a plan. They're sticking to it. They're doing a great job. So they Regime. have recognized the guy in the middle, calling the monster. I think their goal right now is just to try and run the clock out. Oh, oh they lose the body. Driver. So two on two. And here comes a rundown. He gets shot before he gets there. So really? two on one now in favor of rising. The home player only for Regime. Oh, uh, one on one situation. Is it a one on one or one on yep, two? Yep, their Viper just took the walk. Oh. No, two guys. Two is guys it two? Where, does he, where is he at? He's in the corner. Oh, okay. Yep. Regime player does get caught on his way back. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it was a one on one. One minute. Did Regime just towel that? No, Phoenix Rising toweled. It was a one on one. Phoenix Rising player got shot, and as he got shot, they toweled. Oh boy, I'm a little bit confused. Garrett says, why so many bunkers? Why not? Well, he's saying, look like seven man. Oh, but it's looking like a seven man field. Um, well, it's, it's not. It's a five man field. I don't really know what to tell you. Regime had two players. Yeah, sorry, Dylan. I, 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 I mixed up the sides. I thought it was uh, reversed. So, yeah, Regime's going to uh, win that one. Seconds. Yeah, see, Josh, you saw what I saw, but I, I, I was, uh, I was mistaken on the teams, guys. That's my bad. I had it mixed up. Yeah, I think I had it mixed up too. That's my fault. Oh boy! I only actively saw like early. one player on each side uh, with their gun up shooting. So I really thought that Brawlers player left early. He didn't, I guess, but they did get the kill. Uh, the Dolphins did out of the snake and side runner, a running referee going to check the home. Cause they are clean. clean. But Brawler's not in a great position. Let's go Dolphins. And they're only down one point. Except Dolphins That's are trying to move Dolphins down the middle of the field. Up. Dying on the way there. Not a smart move. He's way out in the open. Brawlers on the bottom of your screen. Dolphins on the top. Dolphins in the Snake 1, the inside Viper 1, and the Dorito Tower, as well as the 200. Just under six minutes to go left in this match now as one of the Dolphin players gets checked in the Snake and is called out and gets a penalty. That's going to hurt really, really bad. Yes, that is. You do not want to get penalties, especially when you're already down bodies. Especially just late in the day, only five minutes to five and a half minutes to go in the set. They were only down a point. They're definitely going to lose this point now. Oh, Brawlers, uh, two players That's from Brawlers hard. taking a walk. Oh, uh, three now. What? In so the, okay, hold on. One left alive. Nothing. Might not hurt okay. as bad as I would have thought. Oh my this goodness! This is a two on one in favor of yeah. Dolphins, and the Dolphins they're going to win anyway. Oh, that was crazy. Okay. So it looks like that D side just got absolutely blown apart. Points. Points approved. 
All tied up now, just over five minutes left in this match. Vegas Brawlers and Dolphins fighting in the last set of the day. Meanwhile, Regime and Phoenix Rising battling it out. Sorry about the uh, miscommunication there on that last Regime fight at Phoenix Rising Point. We'll try to get it right this time. Four minutes left just left in this match, so you know if your Regime probably playing some defense, but every time I say that, I see a guy basically take off and try to get into the snake, so I, yeah, I'm probably wrong. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of the bodies out on the field right now with the sun yes, blaring right. in our face. There is uh, overtime in the prelims for the upper divisions. 20 seconds. No overtime in D5 um, or D4, um, but I think D3 and Premier do have overtime. I could be wrong on D3. Oh my God. Phoenix Rising losing a body off the break. Immediately in the snake though, losing a second body, losing a third body. So only two alive for Rising as they are in the snake and on the opposite side of the field. As uh, um, Q here for Rising gets all the way in their snake, but he decides to stop. So Phoenix Rising snake player does take out three bodies. Um, could take out a fourth right now, does so. And now turns it into a two on one, and I think shoots the last guy. So a quick turnaround. Hold on. Oh, is he still live over yeah. in that corner? Yeah. Oh, I can't even yeah. see him. He's and in a shadow. A, it's a one on one. All right, well, Rising better pull this off because they just totally flipped the field after being down two to five. Oh, check his loader. Wow. So, so Rising is going to get the point. It's going to take them just a little over a minute. So that was pretty good. This is going to leave two minutes, 56 seconds left in this match. They are checking it. He is good. All that, ha all that had to happen there was their snake player crawled all the way down, stood up, and shot everybody in the back. I heard that that's a popular move around here. Dolphins and Brawlers tied up here. Um, this match definitely matters. This match is gonna matter for seeding. Um, this match could um, have in or out implications for the Mighty Dolphins. I think that they're two and one on the day. So if they end up two and two, that could cause um, some issues they may or may not get in. Three and one will definitely get you in. Um, and then the Brawlers, on the other hand, are fighting for first overall seconds. position. Now, they're spread. I don't think that they can get it anymore. No, I don't. Um, no, they cannot. I was saying that, yeah, the uh, the Bloodhawks that everybody Ten loves seconds. in this chat. Um, that I love. Have a, yeah, <laughs> have a very, very large uh, uh, point spread. They're up 4-0 on their matches. So it look, they are going to lock up the number one. Uh, but Brawlers can definitely lock up the number two with a just a win in this match. That's all I need is just a win. As we say that, Brawlers losing a body out of the home shortly after the break. Five alive for the Mighty Dolphins. Brawlers does get a snake player. He's at the snake three. He needs to put his head down and go, but uh, as pretty much usual, he's just gonna not, gonna stop. And he's gonna try to get a cheap kill out of the tower, the snake tower, and he doesn't get it. Um, instead, he gets the award of having th two guns on him. As soon as you peek your head up in the snake, especially the snake 50, you're gonna get two to three guns on you at all times, and now you're just stuck. Yep. He's trying to get a cheap kill on the Dorito player that filled out. Oh, Ooh, oh that, that looks tower. like a hit. Oh, um, check that tower. Yeah, I can hear them radioing each other to look at him. Yep, he's And he's, he's out. Hit. Throw that penalty. Oh, and then one, two. Oh, no, he just moved back. So they did lose two real quick. Tried to fill out to the snake All corner. the way out into the snake one. 
very slow, and the snake is getting clipped out for the brawlers. Um, the dolphins, they have three bodies alive. Dylan still pressing the issue of Marcelo and Mouse playing in the Premier Division. It's not going to work anymore, Dylan. We're on to your, on to your shenanigans. It's three to three, tied up with just over three minutes left. Dolphins have three bodies. Brawlers, I believe, only have two. I'm not sure if they have a Dorito player over there. I can't see on that side of the field. See, they're calling a 33. They are calling they it a 33 on the field is what I'm hearing. They either the player, have a body so. that we can't see or they're wrong. But under three minutes to go. Score tied 3-3. Did I just hear a Megatron call on the uh, on the field? Oh, I didn't hear a Megatron. <laughs> oh, get that, check that tower. Running ref going into the tower. Looked like he got blasted yep. in the loader. Yep. So maybe the last player alive for the Dolphins is a 300. Oh. Flips no. out the brawlers. And, the bra and he knows that he messed that up. Oh, it might be a one-on-one. -on -one. I, th I think it, that it, it is. It is a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Is that? That is Avery. Okay, yeah, this is a guy you do not want to play oh. with. And sure enough, Avery puts it to him. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. So they're going to tell it anyway. Brawler's going to go up, make it 4-3, two minutes to go. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with Avery. One minute. Uh, Dylan's wondering if uh, I've seen them with their masks off. Um, well, no, but I can. Oh, he's gone now. I did see Mouse in the pit earlier, and he was wearing regular clothes. Um, and then I also saw Marcelo um, standing um, at the PTG booth. So they cannot be in two places at once. So sorry, Dylan. Null and void. I mean, unless they did like a Superman kind of changing deal where they like run into the porta potty and they run out and they're in full uniform and then they just do that again one more time. But I, I, unlikely. Let's see if Regime can lock this one out. Up 4 2, less than three minutes to go. Running ref. Like five alive for regime, up in the snake, and the inside snake as well. Snake can Dorito Tower and Dorito Corner. Rising looking to push the issue on the Dorito side, getting all the way into the 400. I don't know if they know that he's there, and he does get a kill out of it. They're, they're going to push it, and they're going to push it one more and take. And there's two falling. Um, regime does retreat back to the snake corner, which is going to keep him a little bit safe for sure. And they do have a snake one. They need to talk to their snake one. Just under two minutes left. Phoenix oh, rising down two points. Yeah, and the regime player just, just wiped him out. Oh, and then went and hit the buzzer. Okay. Okay. So Regime looks like they might be playing for a little bit of spread. They do get the point. It is approved. And we will see that one again. Dolphins and Brawlers now. Two minutes, one second to go. Dolphins three, Brawlers four. Um, nearing the very end of this set. Nearing the very, very end. end of the first day of the WC PPL season opener. <laughs> here in beautiful Paris, California. I don't know how beautiful it is. It's been rainy and freezing, but you know, it, I, I guess it's green. Yeah, as I said, beautiful. The sun's going away behind a cloud. What kind of cloud, Kyle? That right there is a cumulus cloud. Good news, guys. More cumulus cloud references. <laughs> 20 seconds. 
Ten seconds. All righty, uh, we got Prowlers, Mighty Dolphins, two minutes. Dolphins on the bottom of your screen. Prowlers on the top. Looks like five alive for the Dolphins. Ref running in to check uh, one of the players on the Brawlers. I guess he stopped short. So five alive both sides. And the Dolphins get all the way into the 400 with five alive and the Viper. Oh, but they do lose their snake player. Oh, and nope, Viper guy stays alive, but they are in the 400. They also, Dolphins take the 200. So they have the 200, the 400, the snake. Oh, that's. Up, and yep. the Viper, and the Viper gets knocked out. Unfortunate. Just over a minute left, and Brawlers taking out another player of the Dolphins. Yeah, the Brawlers, they, they just play really, really smart paintball. Dorito side only, and they, they got Dorito tower. So you're going to have a Dorito corner and a Take Dorito out the Dorito corner. player. No, Dorito, Dorito corner only, and they both die. Really? Howling? Okay. So 5-3 now. Brawlers up on the Dolphins with uh, under a minute to go. Meanwhile, rising to Regime 5, game time, 1 minute and 47 seconds to go. Regime pretty much controlled this set, in my opinion. Um, playing good paintball, getting into that snake. That indeed. I mean, Phoenix Rising got into that snake one point, and that was a five-pack, actually, for that snake player. I don't know if you realize that, Andrew, but... Um, Crawled all the way down to Regime's side of the snake. Stood up, shot four bodies, turned into a one-on-one. -on -one, won the one-on-one. -on -one. So it went from a 2v5 off break in favor of Regime to Regime losing that point within the next 35 seconds. Did we see two five-packs today? Yes, two five-packs confirmed. Say like, what? I didn't think we'd see. I did not think that we would see two. I am shocked. Oh, Rising, rising. a huge bite, and he does get there clean. He's asking for a check, and he's saying, get him out. Oh, no, he's calling his other ref to come in and check him. Running referee. And he says he's clean. They're clean. Oh, turn around. Oh, wow. Oh. So he got all the way there. Unfortunately, had to waste a bunch of time asking to be had checked. Had to waste a lot of time, yeah. But you know what? You don't want to pull a penalty. Uh, Regime playing these weird pins on the left-hand side, on the Dorito side, which is uh, very uncommon. We've got a snake one player for Regime who's kind of hiding away. I don't know if they know that he's there. Regime uh, snake can't fill it out to the god right now. They have a snake one, the god, and the time, so they are familiar with the clock. But there's still a uh, player alive in the snake, yeah, snake and they don't see each other. <laughs> wow. Well, that was a fun view that you guys got to see. <laughs> wow. As the, as the regime player. Boy, he was a little bit confused and turned around, huh? <laughs> he thought on two separate occasions. So it looks like if they wait to hit the buzzer. So they should wait four more seconds. Yeah, don't hit it at 11, please. Okay. Now they can hit it. Now they can hit it. And increase their, their, uh, their spread Thumbs. there. All right, so if you don't know already. Thumbs up. Point approved. That match is over. Yep. Six to two. Regime beats Phoenix Rising, who you picked, and I picked Regime. So I'm wearing Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I had to I had to root for Phoenix Rising. Fifty seven seconds left in this final match. Vegas Brawlers versus Baton Rouge, We're Mighty Dolphins. Uh, take these last 43 seconds as this probably is our last point of the day. Thank our sponsors. Thank you on the webcast, Matrix Gear. Uh, Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball out of Arizona. Shout out DOS. 
Gunfighter, uh, Andrew Lopez Law, Committed Paintball, Max Paintball, Lone Wolf Paintball. Guys, thank you much for having us. Uh, me and Kyle had, holy streaming drone, that was crazy. <laughs> I thought he was going to fly gonna that drone into the net. I really thought he was going to crash. <laughs> thank you very much, guys, for having us. We appreciate you um, tuning in and listening to us. We hope we didn't suck too bad. Um, if we did, um, don't tell anybody. If we didn't, tell everybody how great it was. Um, like I said, you won't see us on event or uh, on Saturday and Sunday. We got games to play. Josh said, with 15 minutes to spare till sunset. Bro, I told you an hour and a half ago, Josh, we were gonna hit this. As the Dolphins trying to make a, a last-minute push, you got four, four, four reps, reps over looking there. at the same player. <laughs> Oh, is they, so they are. Looks oh, like they it are looks like they're. Down. It looks like they're running people down. Oh, almost oh, trips oh, oh, over, oh. and wow. Okay, so gets the point. Twenty-two seconds left. So we're gonna play one more, guys. We're gonna play one more. Thirty-five second point. Five four now. Four. Yep, five four for Vegas. So this wow, is, this isn't totally over. Um, we All it takes is one major penalty uh, yeah, yeah. on the Brawlers yep, yep. to force it into overtime guaranteed or the Mighty Dolphins to do a 20-second point. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. And then they just go, uh. So we got uh, 56 seconds left. Players walking onto the field. Sun very much on its way down. We are just going to get in there before, um, before the sun goes all the way down. If we were a paintball fit, we could just play throughout the whole night. But we're not. Fly, dolphins, fly. 30 seconds. All right, so we've got 25 seconds of break time left on the box before these two teams play possibly their last point of the day. If the Dolphins somehow get this 22 second point, it will go into overtime against the Brawlers. Make your predictions here. So Dolphins not storming the field. Oh, now pushing up to the middle. Sending one. They're sending one in some change. No, that's a kill. So they need to stop. And they need to stop. They lost two bodies at this point. They need to try and either draw a penalty or storm the field. They have four seconds. And game time up. is going to run out. Game time finish. No point. No point. Brawlers are going to take the win. That was actually a really good match. Turned out great. Great, great job for the Mighty Dolphins. Great, great job for the WCPPO. We are finished with day one here. Every game in the books. We are. We ran a little bit late, but we got it all in. We got it all done. We had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Give one last uh, shout-out to all our sponsors. Matrix Gear USA, Defy, Violence, DOS Paintball, Gunfighter Sports, Andrew Lopez Law PC, 
Committed Paintball, Max Paintball, and Lone Wolf Paintball. Thank, Thank you guys, guys for tuning in. We Hope will you guys see enjoyed. you tomorrow, but the stream will be up tomorrow. Tune in. Tell the other guy that he's not.